Good evening, thank you for calling the show. And Grant, how much I should call? Yeah, hello, who's that, please? My name's Michael. Hello, Michael. Yeah, I think I've, yes, I've got the right guy. Uh, listen, Michael, I was giving you a number by your neighbours. Uh, the name is Chuck Penk. I'm a tree surgeon. We've got problems with a tree outside your house. You know the big tree outside your house? Yes. Uh, your neighbour called us on the emergency number because they're very concerned about this tree actually falling over. And uh, they were per- Where? Yeah, outside your house. And they were perfectly right to do so because this thing is in a bad way, Michael. Are you sure you're calling the right person? Yeah, I mean, it's real bad, Mike. Uh, we've got the guys working on it down here right now. And where do you live? Uh, sorry? Where is this address? Well, I've got the... Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of noise down here, Michael. I'm sure you can appreciate. Uh, so, listen, we got your work number from your neighbour. Uh, now, the reason I'm calling you, Mike, are you insured? Are you sure you're calling the right Michael? Yeah, I've got the right guy, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. are you insured? Because the, the, the thing that I'm concerned about is that, uh, you know, I think this tree could fall into your house. No, I'm actually, you're calling the wrong Michael. No, I, I've got the right guy. I was no, gonna... no, you got the wrong guy, sir. The, the, he said that you were working at the Sheraton Hotel. So I've got the right guy. But I just want to make sure that you are insured, Mike. Yeah, that's, that's not me. C- careful with that! Careful, careful! Eh, eh. Oh my god! <laughs> it's plowed into your house, Mike. <laughs> It's wiped the house out, Mike. That's okay. Oh, my God, what are we going to do? Are you insured, Mike? Uh, yes, I am. Oh, no, this is bad news, Mike. Ba- I'm insured with Lloyds of London. Oh, you are insured? Yes, I am. Oh, thank heavens for that. There's mess everywhere now, Mike. The alarms are going off and all sorts. Oh, God. We've got a hell of a situation what down here, Mike. What is the address? Mike. I'm sorry? What is the address? I, I, well, I've, I've, I've not got the details here now, Mike. <laughs> Hello? Brenda, is my mum there? Yeah! One. Hello? Mum? What? So I'm a mate. Um, I've been thinking all night and all week and I've decided not to have the epidural like you told me to have. Why? Why? I Why? Just, I just don't want to have it. Well, so you want to go through what you went through with Brandon? No, but I've heard of a lot of people all, all different things. All right. And I just decided not to have it. Well, well, at the end of the day, Ellie, it's your decision, but I just don't want you going through what you went through with Brandon. I mean, don't forget how old we were, I? I know, but... So, how come you... Ch- who have you been talking to? No, oh, well, I went to the doctors yesterday. Yeah. And I was... What, on Tenetto? Yeah. And they said, well, if I'm, if I'm not too happy with it, then not to have it. That's up to you. You're, you're, you're having baby, not me. Yeah, but you advised me to have it. Yeah. Everything... everything you advise me, it's all nonsense anyway. Nonsense? Why is it nonsense? Is it anything you say, it's nonsense. Well, why is that? Why is no, it nonsense? Right. Anything you tell me to do. Look, at the end of the day, I'll, I advise you, that's up to you whether you do it or not, and more often than not, you freaking well do it anyway. So what's brought, brought all this on? Anything you say is just wrong. Well, obviously, you've been talking to more than a doctor, if, 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 if this is what you're saying to me now. You're telling me, right, that any anything I say to you, it's just 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 regarding the baby, this or anything in general. Yeah, anything. So why bother coming round to the house then? Why bother sitting here drinking my bleeding tea for me to te- for you to come to me and say to me, um, I'm having a problem or whatever, man. Uh, what, what what do you think I should do? And you and you, you have to cheat to friggin' sit there and and have me explaining or advising you what to do. And now you're saying that basically that it's a load of crap. Oh, yeah. Is she still talking nonsense? Who the hell's that? Who's, who's that? In you? Where are you at home? Put her on, put her on. Who's that? Hello. Hello? Uh, yeah, it's Tony. Tony, uh, uh, who are you? Uh, a- Ailey's new boyfriend. Uh, since when? Uh, we've been seeing each other about a couple of days now. I don't uh, freaking think so. Uh, she was telling me last night about, you were t- about this epidural. Yeah. Well, I, I, we can't have that. Hang on a minute. What, what business is it of yours? Well, I, I'm, I'm just... Hang on. I'm, what I'm, business, what business is it of yours? Well, I, I, what she does. You're not, you're not the father of that child. Well, you I, shut I, your freaking mouth. Well, I've had kids before myself. You can't be advising like that. 
what business is it of yours? Well, you are not the father of that child. Well, it's right? So you keep your mu keep your freaking nose out. Well, it's what doesn't concern you, shall well, it's we? Nothing to do with you. Why isn't it? I'm her mother. Well, you know, I, and, and she was telling me that you, you know you're talking crap half the time. So uh, you know she just doesn't she don't want it. Hang, hang on, hang on a minute. Hang, hang on, on. Hang, hang on. I'll just put you back on. Hang on a minute. Hello. Who, who the frick's Tony? When did how's all this happened? Where's Brett? Well. We had an argument the other couple <coughs> of days ago. Yeah. So where, how come, where, who, where's this fella come from then? I met him in town. You met him in town? No. You don't meet anybody in town. And especially after... When I went out with Sarah. No, no. You don't do that. You've never done that. When you've... If you and Brett have been finished, right? There's no way you're going to go out and pick some other bloke up just within two minutes. I'm not having that. Tell us to shut your face. Who, who, Put him back on the phone. Put him back on the phone. Yeah, hello. Who are you talking to? Uh, no, I, I'm just saying. Hang uh, on a minute. Are you at her house now? Yes, you're, you're filling you're her head. Are you at her filling house? Filling her head with rubbish, aren't you? Are filling you? her head with rubbish. Shut your mouth. Right? Are you at rubbish. her house now? Uh, I, I am, yes. Yeah, well, I'm on my way around. I mean, the, the thing the thing is, just... <laughs> put the phone down. Hang on, let's just call her straight back. Hang on a minute. I just, I'll just speak to her. Let Tony speak to her. <laughs> <laughs> Does she live far? No. Hello? Kath? Yeah? Kath, before you come round... Yeah? Yeah, just before you come round, uh, it's not Tony. Oh, who is it then? It, it's Steve Pank. I don't believe it, you've done it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I don't believe it. <laughs> hey, Kath. Oh. Hook, line, <laughs> and sink. <laughs> I tell you what, I'll kill her after. Hey, I well, can't believe she, uh, got yeah, me. she got in touch with the show yeah. and she says, uh, Panky, you've got to call me mum, Kath. And, uh, and Kath, here you are! Oh, I don't believe it. I mean, you can talk to Steve <laughs> Pank or, or if you like, you can talk to Tony. Oh, I'm going to kill her. You're going to talk to Tony instead? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not over there. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, Hayley, what do you want to say to your mum? How are you feeling? I'm going to kill you. <laughs> if you weren't pregnant. <laughs> Oh, I don't believe it. Hey, Kath. What? We love you. <laughs> I just think you bloody do, giving all this entertainment. <laughs> Good afternoon, Croft Hotel. Oh, hello. That's the, the Croft Hotel, is it? It is, yes. Hello there. Um, it's a Mr. Craig David speaking. Uh, I wondered if you could fill me in. Yes, fine. I've been meaning to call you for about seven days. Um... Uh -huh. Now, I'm going to be up there in the area. I'm performing on Sunday, you see. Oh, yeah. Over at the um, Victoria Park. Yeah, across the road, yeah. That's right. And I just wondered if you could tell me while I'm over there, any nice places to visit, nice things to do. I wondered what you might suggest. Uh, well, well, well Leicester's the 10th largest city in England, so all the town's got a load of activity going on. Do you know if there's anywhere, you know, for boating or galleries, nice things like that? Well, well, we've got two or three museums. What have they got in there? Uh, well, the New War Museum, that's, uh, that's a big one. That's, that's got a load of different activities. Are they open Monday? Uh, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. It's not bank holiday, is it? Will they give you a drink on Tuesday? I'm not sure what you mean. Pubs. <laughs> I was in the pub by Wednesday. <laughs> uh, well, on yeah, Thursday, yeah, Friday and Saturday. Plenty of drinks in Leicester, I tell you. Oh, there's right. So many, too many, there's so many bars, you won't believe it. I know, especially, I mean, you know, it's just a shame I like to chill on Sunday, but I can't because I'm performing, you see. Uh -huh. And I'll just have to chill on Monday <laughs> this time. Have you got any vacancies at, at your place? Uh, when for? For on, uh, for on Saturday and Sunday. Going back to London on Monday. Yeah, yeah, can have some, yeah, I've got some vacancies at the moment. Going for oh, a drink on Tuesday. Uh-huh. Cinema on Wednesday. Sorry, I'm just making plans as I go along here. I'm thinking out loud. Because I'll tell you, I am walking away from the troubles in my life. I've well, no I'm, troubles in my life. Well, both selected to you. <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm right looking forward to, uh, to stopping with you. Yeah. Would you mind if I sang in the room? Uh, well, I don't mind if the guests don't mind. I don't live here, so I don't, I don't... You can do what you like. Did you ever purchase any of my hit records? No. Did you not? Oh, well, you know, I had a smashing time with the Artful Dodger. They did a lot for me. They really introduced it to me. Uh-huh. And, um, right. it was smashing singing with them lads. Rewind when the crowd say, Bo Selecta. 
Anyway, listen, <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to go in a minute. Have you met the Spice Girls? Right. I tell you what, I tell you what, if you ring back, can you ring back in an hour? And the lady in charge, she'll be here and she can sort you out. I met Thank her. You then. I met her in the yeah. subway. Must Don't have been about then. quarter past three. Yeah, that's fine. What a beautiful honey with a beautiful body she was. Okay then. I asked her for the time. Goodbye. Oh. Hello, Dunstable Saints, please, Michael speaking, how may I help? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Compensation, love. He wants compensation. Is he hear him? I can hear him, yeah. Yeah. Tell him I want compensation, love. Oh, Dave, what am I going to do? Just, just tell him. Put him on the phone to me, love. Yeah, put him on the phone. Just, yeah. Yeah, right. Who, who are you? Uh, this is John. Uh, who's John? Yeah, from next door, his son. Oh, yeah, you're his son, are you? Yeah, are you some sort of cowboy or something? Hey, who did f you know the thing you're talking to? Are you me? some sort of cowboy? Oh, that's okay, okay. It's not my fault if you're bleeding pastors loose, is it? I'm sick of the noise as well, Charlie, every, oh, every hey, night. What noise? The what noise? noise? You and your banging. How do you know I'm f***ing banging? Here, yeah, I want some compensation for this. How do you know I'm banging? You don't live there. Hey, keep this noise down now. I'm stop. telling you. Stop you shouting hey, at I'll me. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, right? Let, let me just tell you something now, right? You tell me something now. Right. You come round when I'm home, right? I certainly will. Yeah, you do that. Well, I hope you're not going to get too violent. Oh, oh. Because I've met uh, met people like you before. Have you? Know? you? Yes. Have you? Absolutely. No brains at all. It's all in your mouth. Is it? Is it? No it's brain. all in my mouth, is it? No brains. Your mouth, pal. Hey, don't you start with me. Oh, don't you start I'm with just, me what? I'm, you know, since, since we moved... You're f***ing great on a phone, aren't you? So can you keep the noise down, Charlie? You can f***ing off, pal. I'll tell you that. Now, cut out that language now. Oh, well, well, We could have a cross line. There could be people listening. I don't give a Who's listening? Now, I, th I should think we should talk about some sort of compensation because you've been so heavy handed. Oh, is that f***ing right? Like some moron. I'm a f***ing moron, am I? David is a moron. Ah, you're a f***ing f***head. Well, there's no need for language like that. Is there? Is there Christine? No, there isn't, Steve. No, there really isn't. I think you should tell him, Christine. It's Steve Pank on the radio, David, when you up. 
<laughs> oh, David, I've never heard language like it all my life. <laughs> David, I feared for my life again. Yeah, I was you come home, then. What a wind-up. Oh, oh, David, you well and truly bit there, didn't you? Yeah, I certainly did, yeah. Will it be safe for me to walk the streets now? Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be gunning for me anymore, No, no. Listen, no. thank you very much, Dave. Yeah, no, okay, then. Thanks, Christine. No, okay. Yes, hello. I was. I came down at the weekend, and I've lost my. Um... Your what? Sorry. I, I, I left it there at the weekend, and I wonder if you've seen it. What is it? The. Um... Hello. Hello. What was it you lost? Yes, I. I, I came down. Uh, I think it was on Saturday, and I left it in the. Um... What did you lose? If you can't tell me what you lost, I can't help you. I think it, I, I think it was Saturday. I was I was down about lunchtime. It, it, it's it's brown, and I uh, I, I put it down in the. Um... It, it was tiny. You put it down the what? Yes, yes. It, it, it's definitely brown, and it was with the towel. I'd rolled up the towel uh, and the swimming trunks, and I'd left it just by the reception in the. Um... Hello. It was about lunchtime that I came yeah, down. I, I know, but, it, and, but uh, you're not actually telling me what you lost. Well, I put it down there, and, and um, you know, just just by the just by the reception. <laughs> yeah, but what was it? Well, I, well, I've told you. It, it, was, <laughs> it was, and uh, it, I, I, I was, I came down with. Um... <laughs> yeah, but you, you haven't told me what you lost. If you can't tell me what you lost, I really can't help you. It must have been about half past one. And yeah, I, but you're and not I, telling me what you lost. If you tell me what you lost, I can look and see if it's there. Well, I put it down about half past one, just by the side of the, um... <laughs> and I've, I've rolled up the, um... Yeah, okay, but what is it you lost? Oh, how many more times? Yeah, but are you not telling me what you've lost? I, I, put, I put down the bag. Inside it was the, um... Right, you're looking for a bag, then I take it, yeah? Have you seen it? <laughs> well, no, it's just because I don't know what I'm looking for. Oh, I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> there was three of us that came down. Yeah. I put the bag down by the, um... Yeah. Have you seen it? No, I haven't seen it. I don't know what you're looking for because you actually haven't told me. You just told me you put something down. You actually haven't told me what it is. Has anybody handed it in? Handed what in? The, um... Good morning, Sky Television. It's service. Uh, yeah, hello there. Can I uh, speak to someone who makes, um, programmes and stuff? Because I've got an idea for you. Right, one moment, please. Thanks. Good morning, customer relations. Uh, hello there. I wanted to speak to someone who, you know, makes programmes and stuff, because I've got a bit of an idea for you. Well, they're outside companies that actually produce programmes on our behalf, like Action Time, London Weekend Television, sir. Right, so uh, I've got to give them a ring, never. You would have to contact them directly, yes. Right, well, I've just got this idea. Would you... Uh, it's, it's Noel Gallagher from Oasis. Who's that? It's uh, Mr. Littlejohn, the Customer Relations Department, sir. Listen, ca can I just, like, give my idea to you and, you know, you can tell me if it's any well, good or not? Well, normally any ideas of this nature, uh, Mr. Gallagher, are actually put in writing to the head of programming. And right. I can certainly give you the gentleman's name and the address. Hey, you're dead polite, you, aren't you? Sorry? Dead polite, you, aren't you? It's brilliant. Right, well, I'll get that off you and I'll send it off to him. But, you know, basically the idea is, like, you know, Noel's house party. Right. You know, me being like Noel Gallagher, it's kind of like appropriate and that. Yes. But, uh, you know, Noel's house party, and um, we want to do like a series of things on the show, you know what I mean? Yes. And like, what we'll do first is like, we get people who we don't like, or like, who people don't like, and we stick them in a tank, you know what I mean? Yes. And then we get our kid to smack them. Right. What do you reckon of that? That's right, it's the same, it's, it's your, your idea, Mr Gallagher. Yeah. Um, but as I say, you would have to put it in writing. Then the, the, the other thing, what we do, what do you think of it so far? Well, it's, it's good ideas. Hey, guys. Hey, thanks very much. I knew I was on your wavelength, mate. The other thing, we're going to do this thing called NTV, right? And that's where we have a, a secret camera put in someone's house when they don't know it. And uh, what we'd do every week, we'd stick it in our Liam's house and sort of watch him going around the house in his duds. 
Right. That'd be good, that, wouldn't it? Well, do you have a pen and paper and I'll give you the address to write to? You know, you could see him arguing with Patsy and everything, you know, it'd be top. Right, do you have a... It'd be bang up for that, wouldn't he? Do you have an address and I'll, I'll give you... Or a, a pen and paper and I'll do give I you the address? Do I have an address? Yeah, I've no, got no. a few of them, yeah. Uh, no, do, do you have a pen and paper and I'll give you the address to write to, Mr Gallagher? Yeah, all right, thanks very much, thanks yeah, very right. much. The, the gentleman to write to is... What's that other idea we had? Yeah, here's another one for you as well. You know, like, um, we thought about doing a sort of, uh, you know, winding people up and, like, you know, doing a sort of gotcha on them, you know what I mean? Like, uh, we get some celeb and we... Oh, it sounds very similar, like, to Noel's party on the BBC, sir. Noel's house party, yeah, well, you know, Noel Gallagher, that's, you know, where, where the idea of me doing the show come from. And, yeah, we'll get a gotcha and we get some, like, you know, celeb and that and, like, we'll play a trick on them and do a wind up on them and then, at the end of it, our Liam can come along and smack them. Right. Well, do you have their pen and paper there, Mr Gallagher, and I'll give you the address to write to. Hey, I've got an address for you to write to as well. Right. And that's Steve Pank at 95.8 Capital FM, London's number one hit music station chief. <laughs> and you are, Chief. What's your name? It's Andrew. It's a bit of a wind-up, Andrew. Yes, it is. <laughs> Andrew, thank you for being a good sport. OK. I love you, man. OK, bye. <laughs> Yes, hello? Yes? Listen, I'm calling you from the old Sharon. Sorry? Uh, Sharon Stone, I'm calling you from the mobile phone. Yes. How much is it to fly from Nice Airport to Monte Carlo? It's uh, 425 uh, francs now, for one person. Now, is there any chance you can sort out some food when we arrive? Some what? Sorry, I don't hear you. Some food, something to eat? At the airport. Is that possible? Yes. How about a Mona? Sorry? Mona Lisa, pizza. Pizza? Pizza. You want a pizza? Yes, can you sort that out? But we are a um, helicopter uh, company. Yes, I know, but uh, I thought you spoke English, love. Yes. Right. Now, what about uh, Giorgio Armani? Giorgio Armani? Yeah, a nice Sarni when I get there, you know, is, is that possible? I, I don't understand. Pizza, Mona Lisa... Uh... Yeah, well, I'm making it as clear as I can, love, you know. How Giorgio ma Armani... Yes, uh... a Sarni, a nice Sarni, you know, a nice uh, Giorgio Armani. Now, how will you get me from the heliport to the hotel? Yes, with a bus, with a shuttle bus. With what, sorry? With a shuttle bus. Oh, with a shuttle bus? Yes. Now, could you sort out a Camilla for me? Sorry? Camilla Parker Bowles, you know, a nice Rolls. A Rolls Rolls, yes. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, you're so helpful. Now, what about some Tom Cruise? Oh, well, you know, Tom Cruise, booze. Is it possible to get some booze? Sorry, but we are busy. Now, listen, I know you're busy, but this is important. I need to sort this out. No, I am sorry, mister, but we are we, we a uh, helicopter company. Yeah, no, I'm trying to sort this out, but, you know, we... we uh... And we don't understand what you mean. Speak French. Well, I'm trying to make it as clear as I can, you know. No, it's not, it's not clear. Now, what... We are a helicopter company. We do the, the traffic from Nice to Monaco. Yeah, right. Okay, now, and what... when you arrive, when you arrive, we, you are, we will have a bus to go to Monaco. Right, that's and great. You ask, well, and you ask to the driver yes. where you want to go in Monaco, okay? Yes, that's lovely. Now, what happens if the plane gets in Terry Waite? Alors, if the plane uh, is later... That's right, Terry, wait, late. He's, 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 you're At what time do you arrive? See, you're picking it up already, aren't you? At what time do you arrive? Well, I'm not quite sure, you see, but if we get in late, will you wait for us? Hello, you send, you send a, a fax, and yes. you ask everyone everything you want. Now, yes. You send a fax. That's right, yes. Okay. Now, now the thing I is, I've, I've flown with your company before, and you are absolutely lovely. Now, last yeah, time... Yeah, but uh, we don't understand what you what you want. What is it? Charleston, Tom Cruise, uh, Mona Lisa Pizza, and so... <laughs> And so on. We don't understand. Yes. Well, I'm calling from London, love. We all talk like this over here, you see. Tell me, when you, when you arrive in Nice, and yes. I reserve for you a helicopter from Nice to Monaco. Have you had a hard morning, love? For, for, it's for uh, tomorrow. Well, you seem to be getting a bit worked up, you know. Now, last time I flew with you lot, uh, yes. there was there was no delicate way of putting this uh, really gorgeous. Yes. But I don't know if somebody had been ill on board, but inside the helicopter there was such a Dame Judy. No, I don't understand. A da you know, a Dame Judy Dench, or a real stench, you know. Send me a fact. A horrible English. smell on board, and it won't happen again, will it? No. Oh, my God, I've said the wrong thing. Uh, thank you very much. QVC. Good morning, QVC. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Hello? Hello? Hello, can I help you? This is QVC. No, I'm, I'm fine, I'm just browsing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hi there, can I speak to somebody uh, out of Big Brother, please? Hey, you need to dial another number. Can I give that to you? Yeah, and this is like the show where you get a bunch of people and you stick them in a trailer park and see what happens. Yeah, this is the English version, version yeah. All right, and you, you did something with celebrities, didn't you? Kind of similar thing. We did, yeah. What's your name, please? Uh, it's Mr. Uh, Nicholson. I was just here with uh, a bunch of my buddies in the UK, and we all kind of wanted to uh, put our names into your head for the next celebrity big brother, if you do one. Well, I could give you another number of um, some people who are working on that team, because they're not in these offices. That's great. Just tell it to Frank. Hang on. Let me just okay. bring Frank over. Uh, you're right, hello. Sorry about, uh, you know, just to be, uh, you know, phoning you. You must get a lot of inquiries of this type every day, mustn't you? Yeah. Oh, no, people think I sound a bit like Dean. Dean? You know, the bloke who's in the house at the moment. Oh, right, yeah. I don't, I don't think I sound like him. I think Badil sounds more like Dean than I do. I what do you think? Uh, I think you sound like Frank. Oh, well, oh that's all right then. That's... <laughs> And you just sit on the sofa, do you, and just like, you know, just lounge about all day? Uh, yeah, that's probably, have you been watching it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, have a word, have a, just have a quick word with Richard here, he wants to do it as well. For goodness sake, I don't believe that if Narinda and Abba and that Stuart Hosking can take part in the programme, for goodness sake, surely I can. Well, you'd have to apply. Apply? How does one go about applying? Could you post a form to Margaret and then she could do it for me? I certainly could, yeah. Very good. I'll, I'll give you their address. Just a moment. Have a, just have a word with Mr. Peel before you go. Just a moment. Yes, hello. I'd love to take part in the uh, next Celebrity Big Brother that you do. Do you have any idea when uh, exactly that might be? Uh, the next Celebrity Big Brother we do? Yes. Um, no, who am I thinking to, sorry? Oh, it's, sorry, it's, it's John Peel from, uh, from the... Uh, yes, I was in Peel, I suppose, yes. It's either a very good impression. I'm terrified that I'm on the radio here. No, I no nothing like that at all. No, you, I, I, I assure you, you're, you're not. Not at all. <sighs> Hello there, listen, what's your name, what's your name? It's Brian from Big Brother House. Oh, that's good. I know, I've escaped, I've escaped, I've escaped. I found a little hole in the fence and I crept out and the secret guards, they didn't even see me. Now that I'm a celebrity, when you do the Celebrity Big Brother, can I come back? <laughs> of course you can come back. Well, you get Dale Winton and Julian Clary in the house and we can all have a big party and we can put quiches in the oven and we can knit and crochet and, and skip around and it'll be lovely. I will. I will do that just for you. Have you met the Spice Girls? Um, no, never. None of them. I have, and furthermore, I want to be in them. <laughs> um, have a word with Jack. Have a word with Mr. Nicholson, fellow American actor man. Do you reckon you can fit us all in the house there? <laughs> You're very good. Listen, um, if you have any doubts as to where to get hold of us all, just uh, you can speak to Jack Artists in Los Angeles. Thank you so much. Thank you, honey. Cheers, bye. Goodbye. Debenham. Hello there. Hello. And how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. And oh, you? Well, I just wish I could say the same, to oh. be honest with you. I really do. Oh, how can I help you? Oh, you sound so kind. You really are. <laughs> uh, I just had one of those weekends, you know, where uh, all the bills came in at oh, once. Um, I understand. Yeah, I mean, the telephone bill arrived yesterday. You'll never guess how much it was. No. Well, let's play the hot and cold game, you know, because it, it, was, it was staggering. It really was. Oh, dear. Uh, how much do you think it was? I haven't got a clue. Well, have a stab in the dark, you know. <laughs> you, you've played hot and cold. Before. 150 pounds. Cold. Oh dear, much hotter than that, was it? Might be. 200 pounds. You're getting slightly warm. Oh, no, oh, that is an expensive bill. Exactly, you know, <laughs> and the thing is, every time it comes in, I say, you know, to the kids, if you use the phone, they say, no, no, no it's, it's, not I know. it's not us, you know, it must be you. <laughs> I've got two just like that. Happens every time, it really does, <laughs> and it, it drives me insane, to be quite honest with you. So, uh, oh, you, you sound very kind, oh, very, very chatty, it's, it's nice to meet somebody, because you know what, these days, in this day and age, when you ask, uh, you know, uh, somebody how they are, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're, you're, you're really 
you're not interested, are you? That's right, yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, because everybody's busy, aren't they? They've oh, got their, their, own, their own lives to lead. What can I do for you? I'm sorry? Can, can I help you at all? Well, I just thought so we could, you know, we'd have a little chat. Oh. That's <laughs> all. Because <laughs> you know, I think in this day and age, people don't really have enough time for each other, do they? No, that's you know, right. We're always rushing around and trying to get everything, you know, so. That's, that's right, yeah. So, uh, how's the family then? She's got other calls waiting. I hope you don't mind. Oh, wow. Oh, you re- oh dear. Yeah. Right. So, uh, are you going away this year? <laughs> no, I'm not actually. Oh, Do you mind if I put you on hold for a moment? Oh, well, as long as you're quick, because I'm paying for this call, you know. Hello? Uh, hello? Debenhams. Oh, what's happened? You put me on hold there. Oh dear, yeah, sorry, I had to. Well, I've got other calls waiting. Well, I just, told, I just told you, didn't I? I got a massive telephone bill in. <laughs> yes. Put me on hold. So, uh, you were telling me then about the family, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I have to go. I've got other calls waiting. Oh, oh dear, yeah. Thank you very much, thank you. Candles. How's business then? Not too bad. Oh, great. And the kids? Who am I speaking to? I just wondered how the kids were. Everybody, everybody well? Family's well? Do you know who you were ringing? Well, I'm not an idiot, you know. I know where I'm calling. This is the candle shop. I'm sorry? This is the candle shop. How are you in yourself? Are you, are you well? Thank you. Bank of England, Paul Burress speaking. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Oh, it's a very bad line, this end. It's a, yes, hello? Hello, where am I calling? Bank of England. You couldn't lend me a fiver, could you? Thanks very much. <laughs> Steve Pay on 95.8 Capital FM. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello. Uh, mate, it's only me. You're not going to believe this, Dad. I've just been what? out in Shane Van this morning to uh, go to the butcher shop. And I've just been pulled up by the police, innit? And if I I'll give your name to the police... Be you better f- go and give them yours, mate. That's I'm not getting in trouble for you. No, but I you can do you, so, can't I you? I warned you about driving vans and cars, and now you've been pulled. I know, but you can... You... <laughs> No, but I can't believe it, Dad. You can, you can produce for me, though, can't you? You've got a licence. I can't produce anything. Cause yeah, I because Shane's got a, a trader's policy, so you if I, get, if it, I get done for fraud, it's me that gets sick in <laughs> months, not you. No, you won't, Dad, you won't, I promise you. You shouldn't, you, no, you, you can't promise me anything, Neil. No, you shouldn't no, have done it. You've got to produce it, but I put it in your name, Dad, so you can go to the police station. I don't know how many times I've warned you and warned you and warned you about driving cars and Bands and you just don't want to listen to me, dear. Now, come on, please just do it for it's a one off. It'll be the last time. Will you produce for us? No, you admit it in no. station. You can go three months, mate. <laughs> you get yourself in deep. Shit. You're not dropping me in this. All right, Dad, come on, mate. No, just for one off. You won't know, Dad. Dad. <laughs> God, he's put the phone down on you. <laughs> hey, listen, hey, listen, you were, you were starting to laugh, weren't you? I went through a good hour back. Hang on, you've got to keep a straight face. <laughs> terrible you are. All right, now, all right, now listen, listen, keep a, keep a straight face. We're going to call him back. Hang on a minute, hang on. All right. This is the Vodafone voicemail <laughs> service. <laughs> 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 He's not picking it up now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll try again, here we go. He's a bugger, it? He won't pick it up, will I? Hang on, when he picks up the phone, just say, Look, Dad, don't put the phone down, I mean, I need to sort this out. Yeah, I'll be able to, I'll go along with it again, yeah. Yeah, yeah and you just yeah, make it a bit of karma this time, here we go. I'll be able to, yeah. Is that answering on the phone? Here he comes. <laughs> Your call cannot be taken at the moment. Answer phone. It's 20 pages of answer phone. Oh, God, he's mad, my daddy left. Right, short, tempered <laughs> in Japan. <laughs> it's been an answering machine again. I can't believe it. Yeah, we can't get, we simply can't get back to him. <laughs> Hang on, we'll try one more time. Here we go. Uh, come on, Dad. What? Uh, hello, Dad. What? <laughs> Got someone here who wants to speak to you. Hello, Carl. Hello. You wouldn't send him to prison for three months, would you? Who's this? It's Steve Pankhall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> I get 
Ya ada bantuk, Mel. Biasa. Biasa baik kau pergi ke rumah orang. Dia paksa, Pak. Yeah, you your bags are packed, Neil. You're leaving home now. I'm leaving home now. <laughs> hey, listen, Carl, have you got anything you want to say to this son of yours? Not at all, Steve, yeah. Come on, go on. Come on, go on, move in with Lynch, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a nice to speak to you, Carl. Not, not nice to speak to you, Steve. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> So we called her. Mrs. Fullard, please. Speaking. Morning, Andrew. You came down to see the yeah, trial house. Yeah, that's right. On Saturday. Yeah, do you but remember now? My husband couldn't come because he got called away. He works for customs and excise, you see. Oh, I, I totally understand, love. It's just that, you know, obviously yeah. you're expressing the interest in the 64,000 uh, detached. That's right. Uh, lovely house, as you commented on the day. Yeah. But obviously I've taken the liberty because, you, you know, obviously you uh, you show great interest in yeah. reserving your plot. Yeah. And uh, I'd be grateful if you could bring in the £250 now for that. Because, like I say, you know, we could get you in very, very quickly, and uh, and obviously you did, uh, you know, show great interest with it. So, oh yeah, uh, I know I showed great interest, but my husband said no, 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 not at that price. Oh well, you know, you committed yourself on the day, love. I mean, I did that... not commit myself to anything. I'm sorry. I mean, what did I say? You said you oh, never. Oh, I'm sorry, but you must not ring me and tell me I committed myself. Well, to you anything. did. I mean, you did. Don't start going back on your word now. Uh, hello, are you are you there? Oh dear, should we, should we call her back? Uh, it seems she got cut off there. Hang on a minute, let's call her back then. Hello? Oh, we got cut off there, Mrs. Fullard. So, can you come down and see us no, then? No, I'm sorry, I definitely will not. How dare you ring me and tell me I committed myself? You don't need to get upset, love. I'm just trying to sort it out with you. I you mean, don't uh, need to sort it out with me at all, because I mean, if I had 64,000 cash now, after your attitude... Well, I'm not saying 64,000 cash. I mean, like I say, it's 250 to reserve a plot. Uh, have you gone again? Oh, dear. We're not getting very far today at all, are we? Hang on a moment. Mrs. Fullard. If you ring my telephone again, I am going to call the police. No, it's Mr. Jennings, the boss of the gentleman who called you before. Um, he's uh, one of our high-pressure salesmen. I'm led to believe that uh, he has high been... High-pressure salesman? I'm not being spoken to like that on the telephone. He has been giving you a uh, hard time, I'm to believe. Hard time isn't the word. Uh, can you tell me exactly what happened? Because we've had uh, a number of complaints this morning from uh, from a number of people. Uh, what exactly he's been doing? Right, now on Sunday, I, it may have been Saturday, I'm not sure. I came down to have a look at the houses down there, and I was looking at one, uh, uh, I forgot what it was called. Yes, it's the, it was the 64,000 detachment, That's wasn't right. it? Now, so he, he said it was £250 to reserve the plot, yeah. and he'd also throw in the carpets, is that right? Or well, something like that. And you could be in for February. Yeah. But right. I, I, I just asked him for some gen on it. Yes. And I said, you know, uh, it's a nice one, I'll show my husband, etc, etc. Right, okay. Right. Now, he's been caught, my husband works for Crossman's the next time, so he got called away, he had to go on a job, right? So, he said, anyway, he says, I'm not willing to go to that price for a house, which I tried to tell this chap, but he weren't having any. And well, he okay, demanded okay, okay Cinderella, I've heard the fairy story, now let's hear the truth. Sorry? Uh, sorry? No, I was just saying, is, is that exactly what happened? Because I really need to get to the bottom of this, you know, it's, it's quite important, because we've had a number of calls about this chap, you see, and he's, he's high pressure. He what do you mean? He, well, he works for me, you see. Uh, and he said that you really are a sad case. Uh, a sad case? What uh, do you mean? That's, right, that's how he did. Well, he says that you've been wasting his time. Coming down, obviously, just to waste, uh, you know, a Saturday afternoon, fill a bit of time, looking around the houses, because we get this all the time, you know. This is reserved for you. You do realise that, don't you? No. Uh, nobody's reserved anything uh, for me. Legally, uh, it's reserved no, for I'm you. No, I'm sorry, but legally, nothing's reserved. And if I have any more now, in fact, I am going to call the police now. Nobody's legally reserved anything for me. All I asked for was a brochure. You All I asked for was a brochure. That's all, and that's what I got. And I'm going to call the police, and I'm going to call them now. Well, steady and on. And how dare you ring up and speak to me in that manner? Well, steady on, Tiger. Steady on now. There's no need for that. Oh, listen, the well, I'm ringing the police well, now. How come I always have to deal with planks like you? Hello? Hello? Rosemary, your daughter's been on to us. Your daughter's written to me, Donna, to wind you up about this house. Pardon? Uh, it's not the guy from the building company. Your daughter, Donna, has written to us to wind you up. Who is this? Steve Pank from Key 103, Rosemary. I'll kill her. Morning. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, murder! Oh, we really got you going there, didn't we, Rose? You certainly did. I'm going to call the police about you, you know. Well, I just tried to call them, actually. Yeah, she's written us a letter. She says, give my marvellous mother a call and wind her up, Steve, on your show. And here you are, Rosemary. So was it you that rang in the first place? Of course it was, yeah. We really got you going, didn't we? You certainly did get me going. Have you got a message for this daughter of yours before we go? Yeah. That child that she's expecting <laughs> at the beginning of the December, I hope it's four. That'll give her some sleepless nights. Hey, Rosemary. What? It's been lovely talking to you. Thank you. You can go and calm down now. I will do. Thank you. <laughs> go, and <have> your, <laughs> go and have your Valium tablets. I will. I will. <laughs> Risponde l'Hotel Pantheon, l'operatore... Hotel Pantheon, buonasera. I need a woman! Pronto? Don't hang up for me, I can. I have plenty of energy to drive over there. You understand me? Uh, really bad, sir. If you... Yeah, what can I do for you, sir? Hello? I don't understand you! Eh, ma ragazzo, ci stanno... Allora... Ospedali psichiatrici, eh, eh, con calma, con molta calma, eh? No, you have one more Just one second, I'll let you speak with somebody here. Nazare, devi senti questo? Nazare, no. Vieni un attimo qua, devi senti questo che dice. I don't understand you. Ma io no, you know, if you don't speak, uh, we cannot understand each other, sir. Do you speak English or what are you speaking? Vieni senti questo, questo è pazzo. I left my life because we had no Signore, let us see you. Let us see you just one second in our life. Let us see you. You just showed me what you are. Senti, Gioia, are you Italian, English? Where are you calling from? I need a woman. Then it's uh, really a big problem. I'm sorry. If you talk, we can try to help you. Otherwise, sir, I'm sorry. We cannot uh, help you anymore. I don't understand you. Uh, So, who granted my judge your call? Hi, buddy. Reservations, please. Well, uh, please. Thank you. <laughs> the man of a thousand voices. <laughs> so, Grand Reservation, this is Rena. How may I help you? Rena, how are you? I am doing just good. How are you? Hey, this is Steve calling all the way from Manchester, England. Hi, Steve. A very happy Christmas! <laughs> Not yet, Steve, but we are getting ready for it. I know, well, I'm getting ready for it as well. Uh, I really am. I'm very excited. So, uh -huh. uh, how will you be spending Christmas, then? With my family. Oh, lovely. What do you normally do for, uh, for Christmas? Change presents. Yes. Have some good food. Yeah, we have some good food. What do you normally eat on Christmas Day? We make a lot of food. What about you? Yes, well, we eat a lot of food. Lots of uh, salty peanuts. <laughs> uh, for some reason, uh, there's a lot of uh, salty peanuts around the house. We have a lot of meat pies as well. That sounds good. Sausage rolls. Mm-hmm. Yes. Anyway, here we are, talking a lot of nonsense. Uh, how will you be, um, how will you be celebrating, uh, Christmas, y yourself? You know, will you be working or will you actually be at home with the family? Be home with the family. Oh, that's great. So, um, you've not drawn the short straw this year, then? No. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> uh, anyway, what's, uh, what's the weather like currently in New York? Right now, it's really bad. It's raining. Right, is it? Well, it's not uh, a bundle of laughs around here, to be honest with you. Uh, it's you one of the best weathers. Yes. Have you ever been to Manchester? No, but I have been to the UK. Oh, right. Where have you been in the UK? In the UK? London. People tend to, I don't know why, when they, they fly into the UK, they always go to London. Um, you know, because it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, I don't know why they it's do like that. It's like New York, isn't it? Like New York? Yes, well, I mean, you, you know, New York's full of, uh, mafia types, isn't it? Um, <laughs> you know, nobody really wants to go there. Uh, but no, you should, uh, you should really, uh, come to Manchester, because it's absolutely beautiful. And when you come to Manchester, you must come over and say hello to me. I will. You do that. <laughs> anyway, you have a, a lovely Christmas with, uh, you and your family. <laughs> Okay. Steve. And uh, just before we go, could you wish um, could you wish uh, me uh, yeah. a very happy Christmas? A very happy Christmas to you too, Steve. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and I'd like to wish I'd like to wish you a happy Christmas as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay then. Bye. Bye bye. Hello. 
Hello, good morning. Can I speak to Sam and Sam, please? Yes, just who's, who's calling, please? Thank you very much. It's Neil Davis. Yes, just hold the line. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good uh, morning. Can I speak to Simon, please? Yes, speaking. Uh, very good morning. It's Neil Davis. I'm a researcher on gladiators. Uh, we're based in Birmingham. Uh, your name's been put forward by, I think it's, uh, is it a friend of yours? Uh, somebody called Mr Prince? That's right, yeah. He said that you'd be very suitable for the programme. Well, we are recruiting for the new series now. Right. And uh, it's just a few questions. Uh -huh. uh, well, first of all, are, are you interested in, in being on the programme? Yes, yes, certainly. And uh, how fit are you? Um, quite fit, yeah. Right, and how tall are you? Um, five foot six. Right, how much, how much do you weigh? Um, I'm about 12 and a half stone. Right, now, a couple of things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, could you do some press-ups for me on the phone? Yes, yeah. Uh, if you just do ten press-ups for me now, uh, just so I can measure just basically, you know, how breathless you are at the end of that. Well, if you could just uh, hold the phone while you do the press-ups, that would be great. Just give me ten quick press-ups now if you can. Hang on a minute, I'm going to have to organise the Hold the phone here. All right. Hold it near me, sir. He wants me to do ten press-ups. You're doing them now, are you? Yep. Right. How many's that? Ten. You've done ten already? That's ten. Oh, that's very good. You don't sound breathless at all. No. Uh, now, could you just do some running on the spot for me? Just some running on the spot will be fine. Uh, just for, we'll give it 20 seconds worth of running on the spot. I mean, we have to do this because of the number of people that apply for it now. <laughs> right. Uh, just running on the spot if you can. Right, I'm running on the spot. A bit faster if you can. Yep. You know, you won't believe the number of people who've come down. It's obviously been a waste of time because they've clearly not been fit enough, you know. Right, well, I'm running on the spot now. Okay, a bit faster if you can. Yep. Okay, that's, uh, that sounds great. Uh, you don't sound too breathless to me. No. Could you grunt for us? Oh, what do you mean grunt? Say, I'm going to hurt you, bad wolf. Huh. Huh, I'm going to hurt you, bad wolf. No, he's, he's got to sound, he's got to sound more convincing right. than that, because obviously you've got to shout during it, you see, during the warm-ups as well. It's sort of, I'm going to hurt you, wolf. Huh. I'm going to hurt you, wolf. Huh. No, more aggression if you can in your voice, Simon. I'm going to hurt you, wolf. No, you huh. only forgot his name then, didn't you? I'm going to hurt you, wolf. Huh. Yeah, that's good. I mean, uh, did you reckon you can get down to Birmingham then? Yeah, no, not a problem, yeah. More aggression if you can, you know, I'm going to get you, Wolf, in a really aggressive voice, you know, if you can. Yeah. Really, really, really let yourself go, you know. Because right. obviously on the show, you know, you can't be too reserved. You've really got to, you know, give it everything you've got. I'm going to get you, Wolf. Huh. And if you had libs yourself, what sort of stuff, you know, could you see yourself saying in the show, you know? Because, I mean, you know, obviously you know some of the characters on the show. Uh... You know, again, with real aggression, if you can, Simon. Yeah. Really go for it, you know. Pretend you're on the show now. The next one, Wolf. I'm going to have you, Wolf, next one. Warrior. I'm going to take you out, Wolf. <laughs> Even more aggression than that, if you can, Simon. Uh, sorry, I've got my wife here. Oh, she's laughing at me. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> yeah. I mean, she must think it's some sort of joke. But, yeah. You know, I mean, give it as, as much aggression as you can, Simon. Yeah. I'm going to take you out, Wolf. <laughs> I can't, I can't get it right, actually, yeah. at the moment. And but. can you shout for us half a dozen times, I'm tough, I'm tough, I'm tough. Go on, when, when are you ready? Right, I'm going to take you out, Wolf. I'm tough, I'm tough, I'm tough. I'm hard as nails. <laughs> I'm hard as nails. <laughs> and just uh, a bit more running on the spot if you can. Yeah, no problem. So my wife's laughing her head off. <laughs> right, yes. Uh, that would be Jane, would it? That's right, yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm sure this is a wind-up. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I said, I said, I'm sure this is a wind-up. Nice. Are you running on the spot? Yes, yeah, I'm running, I'm you, running. You're still running on the spot, yeah, are you? Yeah, I'm running. Yeah, a bit faster if you can. I am. I'm going. Right. And while you're running, say, I'm going to hurt you, Wolf. I'm going to hurt you, Wolf. <laughs> is that you want it the end bit? No, <laughs> a bit more aggression if you can, Simon. I'm going to hurt you, Wolf. I'm going to take you out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, excellent, Matt. That, that really is fantastic. Just a bit more aggression, though, if you can. I mean, really, let, now you've warmed up and you're obviously into it, you realise that it's not a joke. Uh, you know, really... Oh, I don't know that, do I? I'm still uh, running on the spot here at the moment. You're still running on the spot, yeah. are you? That's, that's great. We'll keep running on the spot. Oh, and really go for it this time, Simon. Pretend I'm Wolf now. I'll well, have you, Wolf, when I come out to Birmingham. I'm going to take you out. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't forget the hurt. That's very important. <laughs> nice, lad. How are you doing, Simon? Yeah, all right, not too bad. All right, uh... Simon, this is Steve Penk from a radio station in Manchester, Key 103. Oh, sh I'm gonna have Kurt. I'm gonna have him, I tell you. I really am. <laughs> I'm gonna take him out. <laughs>
Good morning. Uh, hello, could I speak to somebody um, in authority, please? Um, as regarding what, sir? Well, I just wanted to um, arrange a visit today. It's not going to be possible for me to do this uh, via the uh, normal ticket office. Uh, I wanted um, some special uh, arrangements making for me, and I wanted to, to sort this out with you. I'm sorry, what... Um, you want to come to Wimbledon? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, and but you, you can't... You don't want to buy a ticket? No, I, I want to arrange a VIP visit with you. Right. Um, have you, did you explain this to the ticket office? Uh, yes, I did, and they said that um, in order to do what I wished, um, it would be good to speak to you and uh, arrange everything. Right, can I say who's calling, please? Uh, yes, it is Arnold. Arnold. Uh, Schwarzenegger. Um, Just a moment. Good morning. Yes, hello, good morning. I wanted to arrange a VIP uh, visit for myself today to Wimbledon. Right. Uh, who are you, please? Uh, it is uh, Arnold. Schwarzenegger. Oh, right. Good morning. <laughs> Hello. How, how is everybody today there? Well, we're just hoping that the weather's going to stay fine for us. Um, so do I. It it's has a little bit grey at the moment, but, um, uh, you know, and they do promise a bit of rain later on, but we're keeping our fingers crossed. Well, so, so am I, so am I. So someone will arrange for me to, uh, to get in later? Uh, well, um, if you hold on, I'll just have to see what arrangements can be made. Just oh, that's very kind of you. I'll, I'll bring my wife too. Tell me. Um, just before you go, do you have um, do you have any sort of uh, royal um, boxes, that kind of enclosure? Well, uh, I'll have to make inquiries for you. If you just hold on, uh, we might have to ring you back on this one. Uh, but actually, give me your number and we will ring you back. It'll be easier than you hanging on, I think. It will be quite okay for me to hold on. It, it, it's right, really no then. problem. I just need to arrange this now. Okay, hold on one second, please. Hello? Um, hello? Hello, I'm very sorry. Apparently there aren't any tickets available. All the tickets we have will be sold on the gate uh, today, I'm afraid. Oh, well, it's, it's very nice of you to, uh, to make the special arrangements for me. Um, I, will, I will take... Um, yes, you'll get, you'll get me into a royal box and then, I mean, that way the press will not be bothering me and um, all of that kind of thing and uh, we will get a good view of the game. And um, would it be okay to, um, once we've arranged everything, bring the children too along with me? Uh, well, as I say, there's nothing available today, I'm afraid, either in the Royal Box or uh, on the court itself. Only those tickets that are available on the gate are the ones that we have available, so I'm afraid that uh, we can't help you. Well, uh, I'm sure you will do it uh, very well to me, uh, for me, so uh, just have them ready by about uh, 2 o'clock and we will take it from there. Um, tell me, would it, be, um, would it be possible to have um, uh, a bit of a knock around with uh, one of the players on the practice courts before the game? I wouldn't have thought that was possible, no. But, um, you know, thank you for your call. Bye-bye. Oh, that would be... Uh, could one of the uh, children be ball boy for the day? <laughs> yeah, can I sit in the umpire's chair? Would that be possible as well? Will you dress up in a nice catwoman suit for me? And I would play tennis against you? Yeah, well. Maybe not. Merry Christmas! Good morning, how may I help you? Is that the food store? Yeah, this is Budgie's food store. Oh, I'm so happy that you took my call. I feel really good about that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm feeling good. No trace of sorrow. My sister Nana's coming by for tea tomorrow. I need some things. I wondered if you had them. Yeah, we open tomorrow. You have like a lot of stuff in there? Yeah, we do have. We do have the races. Oh, baby, that's so fun. Uh, listen, babe, do you sell, you know, those like tins of peas that you get? Peas, yeah. You have peas? Yeah, we do sell peas. Oh, that's great. That means I can have peas tonight. I like the mushroom ones, best peas tonight. Certainly you can. I like some peas. If they are my share. So if you'd like to pop into the store tomorrow, sir, we open from 12 to 6 p.m. So I, I, I was just so happy that you had peas, I just decided to sing. 
Also, um, I got some housework I got to do. You understand? Yes. Oh, it's so bad when you got to do the housework. But do you have um, any, like, bathroom flash? Yeah, we do. We have flash. We have dead holes. Bathroom flash. It cleans the kitchen as well. Yes, rid of stubborn stains. Yes, we do. And leaves a nice fresh smell. Yeah, we have flash. Oh, that's so fine. What's your name, babe? Yeah, it's my name. Do the shake hand back and put the freshness back. Peace tonight. Or maybe lemon chicken stir fry. Oh, my baby. Help me shop. One on eight. One on eight. How can I help you? Oh, you were quick there, weren't you, off the mark? Um, Tweety Bird, please. Thank you. Thank you. What type of business is this? A uh, bird. Could it be known under a different name? Uh, you could look under Sylvester. Thank you. What type of bird? Is it a yellow thing? <laughs> yes, I don't have anything, anything listed for Tweety Bird or Sylvester. No. Could it be known under a different name? Um, you could look under Tweety Pie. I'm sorry, but I don't have anything listed for Tweety Pie. Would you like me to find another business that is similar? Uh, no, you can look at the Teddy Rockspin. How oh, stunning it, please. Teddy. Teddy, T yes. Yes, T-E-D-D-Y. Uh, Rockspin. R-U-X-P-I-N. Thank you. I'm sorry, but there's still no listings for Teddy Rockspin. You know, Teddy Rockspin is a coat of brown. Quite the loveliest of Oldham Town. Is there anything else I can help you with? Porky Pig. I'm sorry, but there's still no listening for Porky Pig. Have you had a good look? What do you mean? Uh, have you looked for Porky Pig? I really do apologize, but let me just transfer it to my supervisor for further assistance. One moment, please. How can I help you? Supervisor, excellent. Um, Pokemon, please. <laughs> Uh, I don't have a listing for Pokemon. All right. Twenty-six point two of the Revolution. Oh, look who's here! Steve Pink. I heard about that guy. guy, 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 guy. Hey, bro. Is that Little China Girl? I'm sorry? Is that the car hire place? Yes. Oh, I'm under pressure. I can't seem to get a car sorted out. Can you help me, Chief? What do you need? Hey, what sort of cars have you got? Um, uh, <clears throat> I mean, I've got all types. The only thing I guess you have to be concerned about is Ray. Right, have you got any of those cars from the golden years? No. You know the type that young Americans used to drive in the 50s? No, I don't have any. Oh, we haven't got any of those. Uh, no, there's, there's a, a place on Melrose that rents them. Oh, right, there's a friend of mine used to drive on, uh, you know, he's a right rebel rebel in those days, though. Uh, it's the first time in America, so I want something with a better fashion, you know. <laughs> Convertible. Uh, yeah, something with a better sound and vision, you know. And nothing that exciting here. So how much will it be, then? For a small car? Or what? I mean, well, what? you know, a big car, really. Okay. Okay. I'm a big fella. When do you want to pick it up? I'll probably drive in Saturday, so I'll need it from then. Well, Saturday rates well, are going to be just much, 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 much better than today. I mean, the rates are yeah. going to be probably split in half. So, just to give you an idea... Do you mind animals in the cars? I don't think they care. Yeah, right. It's just I've got two diamond dogs, you see. Uh, what about insurance? Can you sort that out for me? We offer three types of insurance. Yeah. One is called the lost damage waiver, which covers the car for, for, any, dam for, for any damage to the vehicle, regardless of fault. What's that collision damage? Damage waiver thing. That's nine dollars per day. That's that's it. It, yeah. it covers it covers a car for any damage, regardless of your fault or someone else's. Then there's liability insurance. The liability insurance that um, yeah. that covers you up to one million dollars and up to a hundred thousand if someone tries to, someone that hits you and does not have right. any insurance or is underinsured. You see, this is not America, so I've not heard of this before. You see, is uh, is Blue Jean still working there? No, 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 actually, no, no, no. no. Oh, right, she's not there, right. Is it, uh, I mean, is it safe to drive in America? Because it'll be my first time. Well, sure, it's, I mean, it's just like any other, any other, any other large city. Yeah, I've, I've heard there's a few scary monsters and super creeps. Yeah, they're always out there, just, uh, 
drive with the pack. Yeah, it's a bit like life on Mars, I've heard. Uh, sometimes it could be, but as long as you drive, you know, the speed limit has increased here to 65. Right, anyway, I'm really looking forward to coming to America. I've sort of got a modern love for the place, I suppose, you know. So, <laughs> do you want the details then, love? Like I said, what type of car were you looking for? It's a large car, right? So we're talking maybe, uh... Like uh, Taurus, or are we talking something like uh, Crown, uh, Lincoln Town Car, uh, Grand Marquis, which is a really, I mean, they're both large cars. What are we talking? What do you like to drive? What are you driving home? Hello? Sorry, John, I'm only dancing. Sorry, what was that? Are we talking a large American car or what? Well, the bigger the better, you know, really. Uh, yeah, I mean, something really big I want. So let's just say, for argument's sake, uh, the Lincoln Town car for on a, on a weekend yeah. would be something like uh, 72 a day. That's not too bad, is it? No, actually, it's pretty good. That's good. Because great. Uh, today, if you were to come today and rent it, it'd be 120. Woof! Hey, you're ripping me off that, Chief. Uh, yeah, I know you don't want to buy the car, you just want to rent yeah, it, right? Absolutely, yeah, I don't want to buy the bloody thing. <laughs> Right, but anyway, if you call your worldwide reservations, do you have a pin handy? Anyway, the name is the Laughing Gnome. Okay. Ha ha ha! He he he! I'm. <coughs> right, should we leave it there then? When you need, when you need, Ty, can I help you? Uh, Eeyore, please. Eeyore. Eeyore. Thank you. In which town, please? Uh, the woods. At the woods. The woods, yes, yes, please, thank you. Which count is it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I just uh, know he's in the woods. <laughs> Nothing similar for you in the woods. Nothing? Nothing at all. Oh, dear. Well, thank you so much for trying. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's very nice. Thank you very much. Is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, yes, Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh? Please, yes. The most music in every hour. We get to leaky one of three. Hello, can we speak to Mrs. Smith, please? Mrs. Yeah, please, yes. Just a minute. Who is it? Uh, Paul Greenwood. Just a minute. Hello? Mrs. Smith? Yeah? Uh, I'm letting you believe there's one or two problems last week. Yeah, there was. Could you fill me in, please? You mean to do with me at all? Yes, uh, and, oh. uh, and obviously all the shouting at the workmen who've, you know, obviously reported this back to me. Uh, there's been problems about them digging up your garden or something, I'm led to believe. Who's shouting at the workmen? You yourself. Uh, they say that your language got rather colourful. I just wanted to get both sides of the story. Language? I haven't said any bad language to nobody. Right, so what exactly has been going on? I'm, I know that they're obviously renovating down that road. Have they finished the work now? No, they haven't. So what have they left? They've left half of the fencing up. I put my own flags down, bought my own flags and put them down. What do you mean, you're not supposed to do that? I don't care what I'm supposed to do. Well, you're not supposed to do that, love. You're not supposed to put your own flags down. I don't care. You know, I'm, I... not having no, I'm not having no f***ing middle of the garden full of leading plants when I don't want them to be. I can understand that, love. I can understand when it's a bit of a mess, you know, and it's, you know, it is your house and you live there, but you're not supposed to put your own flags down. Well, that's, that, that's the reason that the men are down there to do it for you. The men are down here to do it for me, are they? That's right, yes. Oh, they are, are they? Well, well, that... well where are they now? Where have they been for the past three f***ing week? I beg your pardon? Well, where have they been for the past three weeks? Well, they are busy, love. You know, they don't just concentrate oh, on your house busy, all the time. Oh, so am I. Hey? I'm busy as well. Right, well, I mean, I'm, that's why the reason I'm calling you, to try and get this sorted out for you. I can understand that you're upset. Understandable. Uh, but what's this about breaking your toe? I'll tell you what I brought my bloody toe on. The kitchen. The kitchen cupboard, what's been there a fortnight. Well, you should watch where you're going then, shouldn't you? Oh, well, I should, should I? Well, of course you well, should. should. Well, I'll leave it there then, should they? But can't you see where you're going? Of course I can. I have my glasses on at the time. Well, I mean, you know, we can't be answerable for everything that goes wrong, you know. Uh, you know, you won't believe the number of calls I have to deal with every day from balloons like yourself, you know, tripping over things, you know, watching where you're going. Who are you? Paul who? So, what time would you like the men to be down no, tomorrow? Don't, don't try and change the bloody subject. I'm not trying to change the subject. Paul who? Paul Greenwood, did you say? That's right. Right, well, I'll tell you what, you get it sorted out by the end of the week, otherwise I'm going to see my solicitor. Don't start threatening me, love. Uh, well, don't you, you sh don't start threatening me, then. You know, since I picked up this phone, your language has been appalling. My language is nothing compared to what I can come out I with. I beg your pardon? So I shut your f***ing mouth before you open it. Well, you're not... Because uh, I'll drop you where you stand. I beg your pardon? You heard what I said. You're not getting violent, are you? I am getting violent. Now, listen, I'm telling you, you better cut out this language when you're talking to my men. Well, send them round then, and I'll drop them where they stand. So I'm not hard, but I'll knock them down a f***ing peg or two, and I'll stop them from f***ing mouthing off as well. Do you have to keep talking like yeah, this? Yeah, I do, yeah, I do. 
Anyway, we're not getting any further, are we? No, we're not. Sorting out your problem. Well, just a suggest. You write, you write to me. You get it sorted out. You write to me. Well, I'm ringing you now to sort it out. You no, good. It's not. Don't you in daft bat me. I'm trying to sort it out, and I'm trying well, to be not, patient. Well, you're not. You're not making a bloody very good job of it. Now, what are we going to do to sort out your problem? What are you going to do? Don't tell me what I'm going to do. What are you going to do? Well, I suggest you stop tripping over things, you blind bat. Me, my husband's on the phone now. I suggest you talk to him. I don't want to speak to him. What do I want to speak to him for? Because you're coming out with a load of crap. That's what you're coming out with. Why would I want to possibly speak to him? Because Can't... you're coming out with a load of Can't you fight your own battles? Well, if you, if you, if you, I'll tell you what, you come round to my house now, and I'll sort you out. I told you, I'll drop you where you stand. You come round. You'll come round now. You'll drop me where I stand? Yeah, I will. Come round. Come round now. No, I think I'll send uh, Sue, uh, Sue Tilsey round instead. Sue, well, what's Sue Tilsey got to do with it? Well, she's written to me to wind you up. You joke. This is, is, it's not Steve Pank, is this it? This is Steve Pank. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you swine. Wait, what's see her after? I hope she's, if you're listening, Sue, you're going to get it later. What do you mean? You'll drop me where I stand? I what will, are you talking about? I will, I will. I tell you, if you'd have been him and you'd have come round, I'd have dropped you where you stand. Oh, you <laughs> Anyway, oh, you're off again, aren't you, with your language? Listen, <laughs> do you want to make say anything to Sue then before we go? Yeah, I'll be round after for a cup of tea. Make sure it's strong. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Thank you, Kat. Right, thanks a lot. Candles. How's business then? Not too bad. Oh, great. And the kids? <laughs> Who am I speaking to? I just wondered how the kids were. Have you, everybody well? Family's well? Do you know who you were ringing? Well, I'm not an idiot, you know. I know where I'm calling. This is the candle shop. I'm sorry? This is the candle shop. How are you in yourself? Are you, are you well? Thank you. Good morning, the Dorchester. Oh, hello. Who am I speaking to, please? This is Shelley. Oh, Shelley. Hello, Shelley. Uh, I wonder if you could uh, do me a favour at all. Yes, certainly. Oh, that's very kind. Uh, it's a bit of a, of a delicate situation, really, Shelley. And um, I, the situation is, I was supposed to be staying there uh, last Wednesday. Right. Uh, didn't manage to get there as such. Uh, and without really going into all the details, um, I told the wife I was there. Are you with me so far? Oh, right, yes. Yes. So, if she rings because she's become a little bit suspicious, could you say that I was there? You were staying here? Yes, if that's possible. Because she may not speak to me, you see. Right. Well, I, I, well what I'm going to do, if it's all right with you, Shelley, is I'll ask her to ask for you because she's becoming really suspicious. Um, uh, yeah, it would just be a little white lie if you could just say to her that I was there. Okay, then. Would that be possible? Um, I don't know if it's... If oh, if you could, Shelley, you'd save my life, really. I mean, just, you know, all you need to, you don't have to go into any details, just, if she rings and says, was uh, Mr. David Robertson there last Wednesday, just say, yes, he was. Could okay, you, then. Could you do that? I can see if I can do that, but I'll, I'll oh, probably will. Oh, that's, old oh, Shelley, you're such a, uh, what's your second name? Lawrence. Shelley Lawrence? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Shelley, well, she'll probably call you back sometime in the next sort of 20 minutes or so. Uh, so if she does, if you could just say that I'm there, that'd be great. All right, then. Oh, Shelley, you're a wonderful girl. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Shelley. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good morning to Dorchester. Oh, hello. I wondered if I could speak to Shelley, please. Um, Shelley speaking. Now, listen. My husband's telling me that last Wednesday he was out staying at your hotel... And when I had another, well, you know, I just don't know whether to believe him anymore. I think he was out with that Maybold from the places where you know, he normally goes to play bingo. I just wondered, could you, could you have a look? Because he's telling me he was staying with you, but I don't believe him. Right, we're not actually allowed to give that information out. Was he there? He's telling me last Wednesday he was there. Well, I may, I may have spoken to him, but um, we're not actually allowed to give that information out, unfortunately. Oh, I know, but I, I've been doing my head in worrying about this, love. You know, I've had 60 fags and a pot of tea for my breakfast today. I've been so worried. Oh. Was he there? I haven't actually got information on my screen. I've only got future bookings, unfortunately. Last Wednesday, I was there. Yeah. No, you weren't. You were out with that May from Bingo, and you know it. You ask her. <laughs> I'm, she's, I am asking her. Ask her now. I think she's being polite on your behalf, I do. Just ask her if I was there. Was he there? I, 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 this, I think you should probably actually go and confront 
Do you know the actual lady? Well, yes, I do. You, I think you should probably go and confront her if I was you. Oh, I wouldn't speak to her. I wouldn't speak to her. I most certainly would not. Especially not when it, she's been going off with my husband. I'm sure they were away last Wednesday, but he told me that he was staying there at your place on business. Was he there, love? I, I, would, I would if I could, because us women have to stick together, but... Um, I can't give the information out. She's not going to lie for me, is she? Well, I think she's showing herself to be the wonderful professional she is. She's not going to lie for me, is she? Shelly? Hello? Shelly Lawrence? Yes? Shelly, it's Steve Payne from 95.8. Have a look there. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we were going to see if we could get you to lie, but we could not get you to lie. There is no way that Shelly Lawrence will lie for anybody. <laughs> Shelly, you are the best. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Can so, I have a tape? Sorry? Can I have, have a tape? A tape of this? Yes. Well, I'll tell you, we can send you something even better. We can send you a Liar Liar goodie bag. Because you know Liar Liar, the movie with Jim Carrey, you can now buy it on video. Oh, yeah. Well, we're now going to send you a, a Liar Liar goodie bag. And as well as that, Shelley, you're in a draw later this week <laughs> where we could be flying you to Hollywood. Oh, that would be nice. That would be rather <laughs> nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> Shelley Lawrence, you are the best. We've got to go. Okay, then thank you. Dress, Brian. Uh, hello? Uh, who's this? Hello? A nice flowery dress, that'd be lovely. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Is this a setup? Brian? <laughs> yes. This is Steve Pank from Key 103, and you're live on the air at the moment, Brian. Oh, morning, Steve. <laughs> I'm glad it's a wind up, and so that means I don't have to wear this dress. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about that, Steve. He gets me wearing everything for, uh, for these kids. <laughs> Brian, have you got anything you want to say to Frank that's clean? Um, have I got to keep it clean? Well, <laughs> no. You can say whatever you like. No, I'll be seeing Frank soon. 
Thanks, Frank, for everything that you've done anyway with the Brian Robson Scanner Appeal. Well, <laughs> we've, we've reached 1.1 million now, Brian. I think you, with that frock on, if it come true, would get 6.5 million. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, we should get 6 million for that. Uh, <laughs> all right, Brian. Happy Christmas, Brian. Yeah, all the best, Have all a good day on training. Cheers. All right, bye. bye. Dad? Yeah, mate. I'm in some really bad trouble. Why? What have you done, pal? I've been arrested this morning. What for? Breaking my ass, pal. Breaking your ass, pal? Yeah. Well, when have you broke your ass, pal? So a couple of nights ago when I was taking telly home. Yeah. I stopped and I was talk talking to all my mates and they said, and the lad that I've battered to get it offered me for a fight and I battered him again, but one of the glasses has seen me. Goofy. Seriously? No, goofer, you mean? Oh, yeah, goof. So where are you now then? At the police station. Which one? This is my one phone call. Right, alright, I understand. Which police station are you at, Gather? Olden. Olden police station? Yeah. Right, so what happens now? I thought Olden would send me down for breach of Asbo. Right, so can I come up and see you then, or could I come up and speak to them? I don't know. Right, alright then. Well, leave it with. Uh, all we can do now. Um, I can come up to see him to try and find out what's going on and, and where we go from here then, can't we? Yeah, but they're going mad saying it's your and mum's fault. Why? Because you shouldn't have let me out, they were saying. Well, we can sort that out when I come up there, can't I, today? Right. I right, so, and you're at Oldham Police Station? Yeah. Right, alright then, mate. So, he shouldn't have let you out, mate. What? Have you told him he shouldn't have let you out? Can I, oh. can I, can I speak to him? Yeah. Right, well, let me speak to him. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah. Uh, can I come up and speak? To, can I come up into the police station? And uh, see no, him? I'm afraid you can't. No. Um, you shouldn't have let him out. You are aware of that. Well, he's 20 years old, isn't he? Well, he, you know, he's got the ASBO, and uh, you know, you were told at the time that you shouldn't let him out. You know, you could be arrested as well, sir. Yeah. What? Whatever. You are aware of that, aren't you? That I could be arrested. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see you come and try, cop. I'm. I'm sorry, sir. I said I'd like to see you come and try. Uh, and what do you mean by that? Come and come round and you'll find out, won't you? I hope you're not getting aggressive, sir. Right, what police station are you at? Uh, I'm at Key 103, sir. Key 103? Yes. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> that's pinky, innit? <laughs> Get off, you little s. <laughs> <laughs> you little s. <laughs> <laughs> when have you set this up, you little s? <laughs> All the time you've got me back. Dad, I've got you now. Come on, you mag muffin. I've got you. Dad, you asshole. What? You f***ing asshole. <laughs> I told you I'd get you back. Morning, Stevie. Morning, mate. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, we had to bleep a few words there, Stevie boy. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Oh, I don't believe you got me. Well, actually, yeah, well, it's your son that got you, Steve. I think it was payback yeah. time. <laughs> payback time! All right, have you got any words, well, any, any loving words to this son of yours before we go, Steve? Yeah, just let him know that um, uh, he's not welcome at home anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All hey, right. thank you, listen. Hey, fantastic show, mate. That's very nice of you, Steve. Thank you very much. All no right. Props, well, well, listen, Bye, have, a, have a nice day, Steve, and nice to speak to you. Thanks a lot. All right, good to speak to you, Gaz. Cheers, mate. See you, matey. See ya. Hello. Uh, Mr. Ramsey, please. Speaking. Uh, it's Colin. Which Colin is that? All cars. All cars. Colin Allcars from um, Environmental Health. Mm. We've had a, a phone call today from the lady who loves above uh, the foxes. Which? The old lady complaining about the noise of the music again. I've been playing music there. Well, she says that you have. Doesn't sound like me at all. Well, that's what she says. She says that she has spoken to you and you appear to have ignored her request. Really? Strange, that's what she said. I mean, I mean, she said, and I'm, what you mean? No, well, maybe I'm going uh, crazy. I haven't spoken. Well, that's, her, that's what she said. She says that she. What she thinks I'm going crazy? Well, she says going... you're a crazy Turk, you know. Yeah. Now, I mean, I, I'm quoting from what she said. She said, uh, mm. you know, you Turks are all the same. I mean, she's that's... a hundred percent right. That's what she said. Well, uh, she's right, yeah. This is a fruitcake, all of you. That is exactly right. She said, and, and I'm quoting really from what she said to us, she said... What, she'd is like this to... like 
quote, yeah? Yeah, she said she'd like to kick you in the nuts and slam your head against the door, is uh, is what she said. Yes, well, I wouldn't have a problem with that. In fact, I'll tell you what, she did come down last night. She was complaining about the noise coming out the radio. Did she? Yeah. My God, that's a terrible thing. Yeah, she said, she said that you should be in the balloon business with Richard Branson. What do you mean? Well, because of the hot air. Oh, I see, right. You uh, should be going around the world. Right. I think he's been drinking everybody. <laughs> no, in all honesty, I really did think she was dead. Uh, I hadn't heard from her for so long, but I thought maybe... Well, you've heard from her now. I mean, you know, she's, well, apparently, she's she's, it. Uh, apparently she's absolutely sick to death of it. Uh, she says, that, you know... Sick to death, yeah? She so she has copped it. What? what what's sick it? to dying or sick to death. Right, what's he talking about? <laughs> uh, you've been drinking that wine again, have you? No, I've been on the uh, Raki, you know, the Turkish stuff. Yeah, well, you start early, you people, like, don't you? Like Uzo, you know? Yeah, drinking all day. So who's put you up to this, then? Uh, Renzi. <laughs> Remzy. Yeah, is that your brother? Yeah. Yeah, well, he's written to us. He's written to you? Yeah, this is Steve Pank from 95.8 Capital FM. Is it? Yeah, well, he's just... he standing here next to me. Yeah, he says, call that brother of mine and... He's uh, a right piss taker, isn't he? Is he right? <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, children. Don't be influenced by this language. He's a foreigner. <laughs> <laughs> They're all the same. They come over here and swear oh, non-stop. They take over the country, don't they? Yeah, they do. Get all the girls. So, uh, this... Oh, you get all the girls, do you? Yeah, of course we do. So you're the rich, good-looking one. You're... What is it? Olgan? That's the one, yeah. Olgan Remzi. That's me. Right. So, anyway, let me get this right. So your brother is called Remzi Remzi. Yeah, actually, it was a mishap, really. No, no, seriously, is he called Remzi Remzi? He is, poor thing, yeah. No, he's not. He is, yeah. It's like, you can call Steve Steve. Yeah. Was it a moment of madness that your parents called him Remzi Remzi? No, you know, like, um, you know, you know, like the Indians, you know, running bull and sitting duck, yeah? Yeah. I think when he was conceived. Yeah, if this is going to get rude, Olga, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> There's children listening, for God's sake. You've already let me down once. So, actually, you know, your voice is very distinct, you know. I, easy to recognise what it is. Oh, is that what gave it away? Oh, yeah, right. I mean, so, I don't understand why people could fall for it, knowing, knowing your voice the way they do. I, I mean, all this fame you have, you're not only national, probably international. Yeah, international? Television, oh, radio. God. I can't believe he's actually gone to the trouble to do this, quite honestly. Yeah, well, he has, I can assure you. <laughs> <laughs> he sticks you up like a kipper gov. I was just sitting here, and all of a sudden... We were just sitting there drinking and... The thought, what, did he know it was going to be today? What? Did he know that it was going to be today? No, he had no idea at all. Well, he has only just walked in, just rang the doorbell, and I went and opened it, and he just walked in. Well, would you believe that? And the phone was ringing as he walked in. All right, Olgan, we'll get back to your wine, and, uh... <laughs> no, no, Racky, Racky. Oh, Racky. Yeah. Right, and, uh, and good luck with the business. Yeah, lovely. Thanks for calling. Oh, is that the florist? Yes, this is the florist. Oh, can I order some flowers, please? Sure. Um, were you have, thinking of picking them up or having them delivered Oh, somewhere? if I could have them delivered, that would be lovely. Uh, is there any chance you could do it today? Yes, we can. Right. Shall I get my credit card? Um, okay. Well, let me just get the other information first and then we'll go with that. Certainly. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, fine, because I've not got the credit card with me now. I'll have to go and get it. Okay. Well, why don't you give me the other information first, then? It'll be going to, uh, to Martin Collins. Martin Collins? Martin Collins, yes. No, I need the address. Those details are downstairs with the credit card, you see. Oh, I see. Okay, would you like to go and get them? I'll just go and get them. I won't be a second. Okay. Hello? Yes? All oh, right. I've got the I've got the credit card. Okay. Well, why don't you give me the person's address first? Ah, uh, I've got the credit card, but I've, I've, I'm sorry, I've left the, the address downstairs. Um, can I just go and get it? Sure, go ahead. Okay, won't be a second. Okay. you 
now with the information ready, okay? Hello? Yes? Right, I've got the information now. Okay. Uh, right, okay, what do you need? Person's address? It's Martin Collins. Yes? And that's Leicester Square. I need a complete street address. Oh, uh, it's uh, capital FM. Uh-huh. Leicester Square. Capital SN Leicester Square. London. You Okay. You didn't, you're not saying Los Angeles, you want it delivered to London. Oh, well, of course, yes, that's where he works. Because you had told me it was going to downtown Los Angeles. I never did, I never did anything, no, I didn't. You said downtown? Yes, that's right, downtown London, yes. Uh, if that's possible, and you can send those tomorrow, can you? Well, no, now that it's going to England, we're going to need about three to four days in advance. Oh, my God. I, mean, I misunderstood you, I thought you said downtown London. Right, Angeles. well, I mean, uh, you know, it, it can't be that difficult to get a few flowers together. Because it's going out of the country? We need more time to process the order. The flowers won't be dead by the time we get there, will they? No, they will not. They don't send them from here. What we do is we'll get a florist in London that will deliver the flowers to the person. Oh, you're, oh, you're very but kind. But because the order is, is out of the country, it would take about three to four days to process the order, and it would be the flowers plus a $20 wire charge. Well, I better go and check uh, to see if that's okay. Can you just hold on a moment? Uh, well, hello? What be a second. Why don't you, I have a customer here. Why don't you go ahead and call me back? Hello? Hello? Right. What do you need from me now? Okay, I need the complete address of where it's going. S.N. Lester Square. Uh, that's right. Okay, but that's not going to help me. I need to know, like, the, if there's a zip code of some sort or... Right, well, I'll just go and get it then. I've got a moment. Right, I've got all the details now. Okay, Craig, I just wanted to let you know that it's going to take about three to four days to be delivered. Why, why, isn't the service that good at that shop? I'm sorry? I'm sorry? No, we don't send the flowers directly from here. Oh, I see, right. Oh, I we see. We couldn't do that it's otherwise. Like, like, like a middleman is there. Uh, right, correct. Oh, I never, I never knew it was so complicated to send some flowers. I really didn't. And then I would need a telephone number of the person. Oh, right, okay, well, I'll just go and get you. Hang on a moment. Um, you know what? Um... Right. What do you need? I need the telephone number. 0171. Uh-huh. Oh, this is the wrong one. I'm sorry? I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is the wrong one. I, I've got the wrong one. I'll just go and get the other one. I'm sorry about this. I'm okay, really sorry. Okay, you know what? I can't even send the order out today, so it would probably be better for you to call back tomorrow. Hello? Right. Hello? You know what? I won't even be able to send the order out today. Well, it's it would right. probably be better if you called back tomorrow and don't, place the order there. Don't then. worry about it. You know, um, you're very okay, you know what? I, I cannot help you right now. I have patient. some customers coming in. Really I, have to, I need to take your telephone number. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. I need your telephone number. Well, I'm, I'm staying at a friend's, you see, so I'm not quite sure what it is. I'll just go down and get it. I won't be a second. Uh, I'm going to have to hang up. <laughs> Thank you. If you look at me like that one more time, I'll shove a frankfurter up your ass. Say what? Hello? Hello? Yes, hello. Is, is that Germany? 
Yes, sir. Were you talking to me? No, no, well, of course not. I was talking to somebody over here. Goodness gracious. Causing <laughs> me all sorts of problems, they are. Well, can I help you? And and you're in Frankfurt, are you? Yes, sir, at the mm. airport. Oh, that's lovely. That's that's lovely indeed. Um, oh, could you just bear with me a moment? Yes, sir. I'll just put you on hold. There won't be a moment. Okay. Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, can I help you? <laughs> Thank you, Germany. Sono un plazzo da San Pietro, buonasera, sono Giorgia. Arrivederci. Hello. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. May I help you? Thank you. Uh, there's lots of music there. Yes. Uh, is somebody playing the piano? At the moment, yes. Lovely. Now, I'm hoping to come over. Um, could you tell me what time, uh, what time is breakfast? Breakfast is from 6 o'clock till 11. Lovely. Now, um, where exactly is the hotel? We are in Via Aurelia Antica, number 415, just behind the park Villa Panfili, not far from St. Peter's Square. Oh, I was hoping you were. That's lovely. It sounds delightful. And what time did you say breakfast was? Six o'clock. Lovely. Now, um, is it near the beach, the hotel? <laughs> no, sir. It's not near the beach. It's not near the beach? No, 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 no. <laughs> How long will it take me to get there? Uh, the closest beach. The closest beach to the, to the hotel? Yes. Uh, it's a lot. It's a more than half an hour. Right. And um, will I be able to have breakfast before I go down there? Sorry, you? Yes, will I be able to have breakfast before we go down to the beach? Uh, you would like to go to breakfast before the, to, to go to the beach? Yes. Uh, ma'am, <laughs> sorry, do you belong which which group uh, do you belong to? Uh, the, uh, the Penquettes. Sorry, this is Crown Plaza. Did you dial the right, the, the right number? Well, of course I did. Yes, I'm not a fool. Uh, what time is breakfast? <laughs> from six. It's from six o'clock. To eleven. Right, okay. So there should be enough time to have breakfast and get down to the beach. That, that would be lovely. And do you, do you do, uh, do you do coach tours from the hotel? Coach? Uh, yes, do you do tours? Uh, no. You know, sightseeing tours? Uh, ah, yes, not sightseeing. Uh, I mean, we have, yes, a touristic bus that can uh, help you to see the city, but not the sea. Right. You, you would like to see, the, to see I well, think. Yes, that would be lovely. And uh, what I know, but they don't go on to the sea. Oh, I see. And what time did you say breakfast was? Sorry? Did I ask you what time breakfast was? Uh, from six o'clock to eleven o'clock. That's sir. lovely. That's lovely. <laughs> and um, and w what sort of food do they serve? American buffet, sir. American buffet. It means you know bacon, croissant, uh, jam. Um, let me see, biscuits. Oh, um, biscuits. Yes, that. I uh, do they do chocolate biscuits? <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't think so, sir. I they're don't my favourite. But you can ask for a chocolate biscuits if you want. Yes, they're, you can well, try they're, to they're my yeah. favourites. Yeah, chocolates and uh, and ginger biscuits. I uh, I love those. I really do. Uh, which time you going to arrive at Travel Hotel, um, Jean Plaza? Did I ask what time you serve breakfast? Yes, yes. You just ask what time is the breakfast. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Yes, I just make a note of that. Right. Well, <laughs> I think that's just about it. Um, um, did I ask what time you serve breakfast? Oh my god, sir, I just uh, uh, said to you four times, uh, from six o'clock until eleven o'clock. Uh, how many times have you told me? Sorry? How many times have you told me? Uh, four times, I told Oh, really? You. Oh my god, I, 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 how quickly I forget. <laughs> right, well listen, your, your name is? Geneva. Geneva. And uh, just before I go... Uh-huh. Yeah, what time is breakfast? Oh my god. <laughs> It's five times I told to you. Five, from six o'clock until eleven o'clock is American buffet, sir. Okay. Bye bye. Bye, sir. Hello. Mrs. Granger, please. Who's that? Uh, Chris Humpage. From. Uh, environmental health. Speaking. Uh, Mrs. Hazel Granger. Yes. We've had a complaint about you playing your TV too loud. Really. Yes. Okay. Bye bye. Hello? Mrs. Granger? Should we call her back? Hang on a moment. 
hello. Uh, Mrs Granger? I just want to let you know that this phone call is connected to the police. I'm just trying to sort it out, that's all. Hello? Hello, Mrs... Mrs Granger? Hello? Mrs Granger? Hello? Hello? Uh, Mrs Granger, please. No, this is Mr. Granger. Oh, Mrs. Granger. Yes, as I was trying to explain to her, but she's uh, she's a right touchy old sod, isn't she? Yeah, well, so, so would you be if... Uh, who, who are you? Could you uh, tell me? Yes, the name is uh, Chris Humpage. Yeah, uh, Chris Humpage, yes. From Environmental Health. Yes, yes. OK. And, uh, and I'd be, you know, I would be obliged if you wouldn't slam the phone down. I'm trying to sort it out for you. Yeah, you know? OK. Well, uh, what's, the, what's the problem? Well, we've had a complaint about you playing the TV too loud. Yeah, who's complained? Uh, well, I'm not going to go into that right now, but I just wanted to know... Obviously I want to get both sides of the story about whether or not you have been playing it very loud. Look, why don't you just go and jump in the lake, whoever you are, Mr. Humpage, Shumpage, or what, all right? Uh, Mr. Humpage, actually. Yeah, OK, Mr. Humpage. Uh, oh, yeah, well, uh, you know, as I say, I'm, I'm just trying to get both sides of the yeah. story yeah, before... Yeah, uh, well, don't, don't even phone here anymore, because, as I say, it's directed to the police. And oh, your dear. Are you trying to scare me? Uh, no, no. Are you withholding your number? Not at all, no. You're, you're, are you sure? Why the hell would I do a thing like right, that? Right, then, give me your number. Well, uh, what I suggest you do... If First of all, is you have a word with uh, with Jordan and Edward Granger. Yes. Because they're the ones that have suggested that we give you a call and wind you up. OK, Jordan and Edward Granger, thank you. Yes. You tell Jordan and Edward Granger that when I do, I'm going to give them a punch <laughs> on the nose. Who is that? Who is that? This is Steve Pink from 95.8 Capital FM. You're joking. And they've written to us to wind you up. To wind you up. They certainly... <laughs> the Capital <laughs> FM, you have certainly wound us up. You see that? Is hate... Yeah, hold on, hold on. She's here, the mouth's here. Hold on. Get the mouth on a stick. Hello? Is that the mouth on a stick? Who's that? Is that Hazel? Oh, shut up. I don't believe it. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> Hazel, listen, Jordan and Edward have written to me. This is Steve Pank from 95.8 <laughs> Capital FM. And they said, give that Hazel a call. I hope this is not on the radio. <laughs> it's on the radio right now, Hazel. You're joking. You're broadcasting live to London, Hazel. Oh, I don't believe this. It says, dear Steve Pank, please could you wind up, Hazel? She's crazy and swears <laughs> every other word. <laughs> Do you know what the worst thing was is when you started saying this is connected to the police, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we're monitoring this call, you know, Mr. Payne. Oh my god. They'll be around with the handcuffs later. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> We've gotta go. I can't believe this. One well, next time, I know. How can I help you? Uh, Captain Hook, please. In which town, please? Uh, Neverland. I'm sorry? Uh, Neverland. Searching for you. Thank you. What type of business, please? Uh, no, it's a private number. Private number, thank you. Same as Hook. Uh, Captain Hook, yes. Thank you. On which word, please? I'm sorry? On which word, please? I I'm not sure. Um. I'll tell you who would have his number, uh, if you've got... Have you got Tinkerbell's number? Well, please. And this will be in which town, please? Uh, this is all in Neverland, yes. Very snow is in for Tinkerbell or Captain Hook in Neverland. <laughs> I'm sorry? There is no listing, I said, for Tinkerbell or Captain Hook. Thank you very much indeed. Is there anything else I can help with? No, have a very good day. Thank you, you too. Bye bye. Steve Hello? Yeah, tipper driver's job. Tipper driver's job? Yeah. I've seen the advert in the paper. Yeah. So is it still available? Just bear with me one minute. Thank you very much. Hello? Yeah, the tipper driver's job. That's right. Yeah, is it still available? It is. Right. So, uh, what th sort of things will I be doing then? Driving a wagon. Yep. Yeah. Right, it's a, it's a live-in position then, is it? It's a what, sorry? It's a live-in position, is it? Because I'm looking for accommodation as well, you see. You are? Yeah. What, you want to sleep in the wagon? Yes, if that's possible. Mm -hmm. well, when can you start then? Well, almost immediately. Can I take your name and number? Yeah, I won't be working late at night, will I? You'd be working, uh 
No, it won't be too late. No, it'll be too about half five. All right, because I don't like to work till too late. No, no. Right, because uh, I've had a few jobs where it's, it's caused a few problems, you see, but I can't see it causing problems with this job. No. Because I've only got one leg, you see. <laughs> Sorry? You've only got one leg. <laughs> Hello? Sorry? Is that Steve Payne? <laughs> what makes you say that? <laughs> what is your name? Mr. Pitt? Mr. Pitt? Yeah, Stu. First name's Stu. Stu Pitt? <laughs> I think you've sussed me out, really, haven't you? I have. <laughs> I did from the start, to be honest. And your name would be? Paul O'Gara. How are you doing, Paul? Not too bad, thank you. So you are looking for a wagon driver, then? I am, really, yeah. Well, one, one with two legs. <laughs> well, listen, if you get a bit stuck, you know where I am. OK. Thanks, Paul. See you now. One one eight, one one eight. How can I help you? Cousin It, please. It's Cousin It, IT. In which town, please? The Spooky Mansion. Oh, the spooky mansion. Yes, thank you. What type of business is this, please? Uh, well, he's a strange fella, to be honest with you. Um, if you... <laughs> he's covered in hair. Hello? Yes, hello? Um, yes, what type of business is this, please? Um, I don't know what he does, to be honest with you. He's a strange old thing. Um... If you can't find it under Cousin It, um, could you look for uh, Uncle Fester? Uncle? Uncle Fester. I have Uncle Fester's Cafe on Barton Road in Stratford in Manchester. Oh, no, he won't be hit. No, he, no, they all live together in a big house. <laughs> <laughs> is that the one? No, I don't think it is. Um... <laughs> I'm afraid that's the only listing I have for Uncle Custis. You could try for thing. How do you spell that, please? T H I N G. The thing. Thing, yes. What type of business is this? <laughs> well, it's just, it's just a hand. Just a... Is this a private number? It's just a hand that goes across the floor. One moment, please, while I try and spare for further assistance. <laughs> May I help you? Supervisor, lovely. Uh, Lurch, please. Lurch? Yes, please. Do you have an address? Uh, Spooky Lane. Spooky Lane, the moment. Spooky Lane, thank you. I do apologise. I'm afraid there's no listing for Lurch. Could this be under a different surname? Uh, you Hello? Could, uh, well, you, sorry, you could try for Gomez Adams. Go, Miss Adams. Same address? Spooky Lane, yes. Thank you. There's nothing listed as well. Anything else? So, there's absolutely nothing listed? No, there's nothing listed on Spooky Lane. So, you have nothing for Gomez Adams? No. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Anything else I can help you with? Uh. Dora the Explorer? <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, sir. Eli, how can I help Hello, you? Hello, me little China. Is that the restaurant? Yes. Now, what time is the restaurant open till tomorrow? Okay, it opens until uh, 11. Okay, now, like I say, we're coming in from London for a few days. Will I be able to park the old jam jar when I get there? Or the what? The jam jar, the car. Will I be able to park the car when I get there? Yes, you will. Right, now I've just got my yellow pages, you know my wages, so I thought we'd come over and have a nice meal, because okay. I hear that your restaurant is very good. Yeah, we have a very nice restaurant. That's lovely. Now the kids want to know, do you sell Jockey Whips? Jockey Whips? Chips. Do you sell chips? Chips? Yes. Uh-huh. What about Lillian Gish? What is that? Uh, fish. Do you sell, do you sell fish? Uh, at the restaurant? Yes. Yes, they do. Oh, that's great. You are so helpful. I'm... Okay, thank now, you. Now, will it be okay to bring the cricket back with us? Bring what back with you? Will it be all right to bring the cat with us, because it's not been very well? The cat? Yes, because no. the, kid, the kids get a bit upset no. when we have to leave it behind, no, you know. sir, we have no animals here. Oh, right. Now, what's yeah. the average price per head? Is it going to cost me a pony, or is it going to cost me a monkey? 
I don't know, sir, but it's different prices. Now, my mince pies aren't as good as they used to be, so is that going to cause me a problem? Excuse me? The tables aren't too close together, are they? I won't be banging into things. No, sir. Yeah. You know. Now, this is very important. Will I be able to get a virulin when I get there? Uh, what is that? Uh, you know, a gin. Will I be able to... I'm, I'm sorry, love, we, we, we all talk like this over here. Have you got uh, a gin? You know, do you sell... Gin? Gin, gin you know, gin. A drink? A drink, yes. When, what time are you getting here? Now, the, the food is, is very good, isn't it? Uh, we think so. Right, it's not going to give me the sailor's knots, is it? I don't think so. That's, that's, that's good to hear. And, uh, and where will the Auntie Mabel be? Where will what be? Uh, the, the, the table, you know, the Auntie Mabel. It won't be near a draft, will it? Because I've got terrible problems with no, my back. No, sir. Now, do you have a yellow belly? What is a yellow belly? Uh, a telly. Have you got a telly in the restaurant? A cab? No, a TV, a TV, a yellow belly, a telly. Because my favourite program's on tomorrow night, I don't want to miss it. Okay, you know what? What? You could call back tomorrow when when um, they are open, the California restaurant, and they could tell you everything. Well, you just give me, you know, you give me a lot of help now. Now, you will take very good care of me rowing boat when I get there, I won't you? They take very good care of you. Yes. Well, that's, that's I am the operator, but they could tell you exactly what's in the restaurant. and. Well, that's very, very good. I'm very pleased to hear that. Because the restaurant's closed at the moment, is it? Yes, it is. Because it's very late. Uh-huh. So, uh, yeah, so will you take care of me rowing boat when I get down? They'll take care of you. Very yes. Uh, you know, me rowing boat, me coat. Because the last place I went to, they lost it, you know. If you lose your code, we have a lost and found, and we will hold it for you. I'm sorry? Right, we'll leave it there, then. Thanks very much. 118, how can I help you? Sportacus, please. Can you spell the name of the business, please? So, no, no, it's not business, it's private number. Which town, please? Uh, Lazy Town. Lazy Town. Can I have the name of the road? Uh, oh, I don't know. I've not got those details. I just know that uh, he lives in Lazy Town. Can you spell the name of the town, please? Uh, lazy, as in lazy, and uh, L A Z Y. Yes, and town, as in town, uh, Lazy Town. Which county is this under? I don't know. Um, I, I don't know where it is. I just know it's sports. I do apologise. I'm not showing up with Lazy Town as the name of a town. Hmm. Uh, but have you got Sportacus's number? There is no listing under Sportacus. No. Um, is there anything else I can help you with? Um, have you got Deputy Dog's number? And what type of business is this? Uh, he's a sheriff. I'm sorry, a sheriff. Sheriff, yes. Thank you. I do apologize, there is nothing for Deputy Dog. Okay. There's no listing. Thank you. Well, thank you for trying. That's, that's very kind. Uh, but Is no. there anything else I can help you with? Uh, you could try for Pinocchio. Let me transfer you to my supervisor for further assistance. Thank you. Can I help you? Oh, supervisor, great. Um, uh, Pinocchio, please. I'm sorry, you're looking for Pinocchio? Please. In what town? Uh, I have no idea. Sorry, but we need to have an approximate location for Pinocchio. Uh, you could try Oldham. In Oldham? Yes. I do apologise for the wait. One room, please. No problem. I'm all find a listing here for Pinocchio in Oldham. I'm sorry? There isn't any number for Pinocchio. No, he's not coming up. No, thing with that name. Okay, well, thank you for looking anyway. Anything else I can help you with? Um... You have not Uncle Bulgaria's number, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Wimbledon Common, Uncle Bulgaria. Nothing for not either. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> Mrs. Moorhead, please. Yeah. Good morning, Tony Critchley, Nosley Council. Yeah. Uh, we've uh, we've been looking at this claim you put in, love, for the damage. Oh yeah. And uh, I'm afraid that there's, re there's really nothing we can do at this stage. This is the council. Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, I'm afraid there's nothing we can do at this stage. We've been down, and uh, you know these are just one of the things that happen when you have to repair things. You know, I mean, you can't put things back perfectly. I'm sure you can understand that. Oh uh, well, I fixed it up myself anyway, because I mean, I waited long enough, so we've done it ourselves anyway. Why were you writing to us wasting our time then? No, yeah, we've done it over the weekend. I mean, I didn't even write yet. You're talking about the, where we they fixed the pipes at the bottom of the garden. Yeah, well, you know, it's where you, you, you're obviously complaining about the mud all over the place. Oh, it was a disgrace. 
I did go over and complain it wasn't asking her to scrape. Yeah, well, what do you expect? I mean, you know, it can't be perfect when you've got a major job like that to do, my love. Hey, excuse me, um, could you have a better tone? You've just phoned me off. To, uh, your tone is disgraceful. What do you Can mean? I have your name, please? Well, I did tell you at the start of the conversation, Marlon. Well, I, I missed it. Could you have your name, please? Uh, it's Tony Critchley is my name. Tony Critchley. We've there, there, there will be a complaint going in now about your attitude. What? Your attitude is absolutely disgusting. What attitude? I'm trying to sort it out for you, daft bat. I'm telling you, you cheeky. Who are you calling it? And all oh, you're this not down for you now, me. All I've had is uh, lip since the minute I picked up the phone. I'm lip? trying. You know, you've been lippy since the minute you picked up that phone. I've been trying to sort this out oh, for have you. Have you got out of bed the wrong way this morning? Well, I haven't, I haven't had a bad morning this morning, to be honest with you. Well, don't take it out on me. You're not the first one that I've, uh, you know, I've had complaining and shouting down the phone at me. I've got Excuse a... me, you just found me. I've got a headache this morning, you know. The you la... just found me. Oh, I didn't even know what you were talking about at first. I was confused. Well, I think you were confused when you came in, weren't you, love? You know, complaining like that. Okay, uh, okay what am I supposed to say? Well, you know, you were complaining about the mud all over the place. I mean, you know, we had a major job to do. We can't put it back neat and tidy, you know. We've got lots of jobs to do. We're under pressure all the what time. Why you complained? It was my next door neighbours. Idiots like you all the time complaining. Idiot. Oh, excuse me. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you talking to? Well, I'm talking to you, of course. I, I can't believe this phone call. What do you mean you can't believe it? I'm trying to sort it are out. Are you for real? Are you for real? No, I'm telling you, you're wasting your time trying to get some compensation out I of this. I I don't even know what you're talking about. Smarty pants. Right. You want to hear the way this from the council's talking to me, can I? I beg your pardon? I'm just telling my daughter about your attitude. Well, your attitude stinks, to be honest uh, with you, uh, love. But nothing but lips since the minute you picked up the phone. Excuse me? I'll tell you something else as well. Tony Myra won't be impressed at all uh, by this. Oh, you... I'm gonna kill... Oh, do you know what I knew that wasn't? <laughs> <laughs> Capital FM. London hits. <laughs> Elizabeth, you were going for it there, though, weren't you? Yeah, I was. Don't be off throat, Wally. Liz, have you got a message for Tony? Because we're going now. I I'm going to kill him. When I get my hands on him, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, oh. What were you like? What were you like? Not a child for him. Elizabeth, thank you very much. Okay. One minute, one minute. How can I help you? Uh, Emperor Hirohito, please. I'm sorry? Emperor Hirohito. Hirohito. Thank you. H I R O H I T O. Yes. Emperor Hirohito. <laughs> I do apologise. I don't have any listing for the surname Hirohito. Oh dear. Is there anything else I can help you with? Have you got Pythagoras's number, please? Pythagoras. Yes, it's on the uh, Greek Scientist Road. No, I do apologise. Also, don't have any listing for the surname. Oh dear me. Is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, William the Conqueror. William the Conqueror. Please, thank you. I do apologise. I don't have a listening for William the Conqueror. Okay, thank you so much for looking for me. Thank you. Thank you. One one eight, one one eight. How can I help you? Uh, Roadrunner, please. Roadrunner, in which county? Uh, desert. Desert in Leicester. No, no, no. It's the Roadrunner in the desert. I'm looking for. Let me transfer you to my supervisor for further assistance. Well, are you not? Uh, can't you find it? it? It couldn't be any more simple. One moment, please. Oh goodness gracious! What a performance! How can I help you? Oh, supervisor, excellent. Um, Roadrunner uh, in the desert, please. Roadrunner in which town again, please? Uh, desert. Me, me. Do you have a postcode, please? Sorry. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't have a postcode. I'm sorry. One moment, please. Thank you. Hello? Hello? Uh, I'm sorry, that's a bad line, sorry. I'm still trying to sit for red runner. One moment, please. Don't worry. What type of business, please? Well, it's, it's not a business, no, it's a, it's a private number. Uh, he's I'm a sorry, do you have the uh, address, please? Uh, well, he's somewhere in the desert. He, he kind of dashes all over the place. Me, me. Hello? Hello? Hello, I'm hearing some interference, I'm sorry. Um, me, me. Do you have the road address? Well, he is the road runner, so he's kind <laughs> He's kind of, Sorry. He's kind of all over the place. Hello? hello? Yes, hello. Stop pretending you can't hear me. Um, I'll tell you who might have his number. 
I can hardly hear you now. There's some interference coming up. Mimi. Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Hello? Mimi. Um, yes, I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you who might have his number. <laughs> Hello? Can you still hear me? Hello? Mimi. I'm not able to hear you. Of course Please I can. call again for better connection. Of course Thank I can you. hear Hello? Christ. No, I was just going to say, I think the coyote might have the number. Can I speak to Mrs. Daly, please? This is Mrs. Daly speaking. Ian Slater, Family Housing. Oh, hello. Yeah, we called you yesterday, but you weren't in. Yeah. Uh, will you be in on Wednesday? What's it for, Pet? It's to bring these brown cupboards down to fit them. Sorry, darling, I've, I've already made it plain that I'm having my own cupboards put on. Well, you can't, you can't do office. that. Hey? You can't do that. I can't. Uh, we've got to supply the cupboards, you see. No, excuse me, I've sorted this out with Ed Office. Well, I, well, no, I mean, I am calling from Ed Office. Well, why can't I have the old cupboards on? I mean, I called you yesterday, but uh, but you weren't in, you see. Um, it's well, I've already had them fitted, darling. Well, I'm not, not ripping them off. Well, you have to take them down, then. You're joking. No, seriously. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's just one of the rules that we have. You know, we have to supply the cupboards. So you have to take them down. Uh, Wednesday will be down to fit them. Will you be in on Wednesday? Uh, no, I'm going out Wednesday. I, I, I tell her, Kane, can I just explain something, love? Yeah, we'll get on with it, then. Uh, can you just bear with me? Yeah, right. The three came, and uh, one who, of the last came? office to inspect it, right? Yeah, who, yeah it's, it's a bad line. Can you shout a bit? Yes. Yeah, right. She said, yeah, she, the three came and a lad with her with a, yeah, right. I don't know his name. Could you bang the phone a bit? I'm sorry, it's a terrible line, this end. Just give it a bang. I can't bang it, love. Oh, just, just blow down it, then. That normally clears it. <laughs> can you hear me? Just a bit more, if you can. It's just clearing it a bit, little bit now. Is right. that better? That's a lot better. Thank you, love. Right. Right. Yeah, you were saying? I explained to him that... I'd already paid somebody to have cupboards on because they said there was no way I could have a kitchen right. till next May. So I made arrangements myself. Well, why have you done that? Without because she... she's... If you just listen to this, sweetheart, I'm why quite you not, why not, you not, But why have you not checked told, this with us first? I was told on no uncertain terms that I couldn't have a kitchen off you till next year. And my units are falling apart. And there's no way I was having that. Well, we, I explained all this to your head office and I got told... No way could I have a kitchen, because I wasn't down for over a year. Well, we bent over backwards to try and get these for you, know, brown, the lovely brown cupboards as well, they're brand new. Yeah, do you want to come down and see me? Because I'm not ripping off hundred pounds of cupboards. Well, we'll rip them down for you then. You better not. Oh, oh you better not. Let me tell you something, love. Yeah. I've waited over three years for a new kitchen off you. Oh. I've had inspectors out. I've had everything well, else. Now, I know I've got rights as a tenant. But it's so not my fault. I've been say I haven't. Well, I've been trying to find them for you. I've been trying to sort it out for you. Yeah, but let me tell you, love, I appreciate the trouble you've taken, and I'm not mm. knocking you for that. Right, All right. I'm trying to tell you is, your chap came in here, and I've got witnesses, the neighbours <sighs> were in, mm. and said in no uncertain terms could I have a kitchen off you, and my kitchen's been falling apart for over a year, and I've been trying to get her down mm. and I've been trying to get someone else down Ooh. and I went down to the even went down to the office Ooh, you go and on. she wasn't in then I rang your right office out of desperation and well, I've, had a letter, I've had a letter here you know from Bonnie Hughes and Jackie Jones what for me, for me? yes about you what about me because this isn't Ian Slater from the family housing who is it this is Steve Pank from Piccadilly Key 103 oh I'll kill you <laughs> Piccadilly 103. And you are live on the show at the moment, Monica. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bonnie and Jackie have set you up, Monica. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I'll kill us. I will kill us. Go you, dead. You know, they said that these cupboards were very dear to your heart, and I can see that they are. <laughs> for that one, thank you. Uh, you fell for it, didn't you, Monica? I did, my love, I did. And, uh, <laughs> and you are live on Key 103, and I'm sure that Bonnie and Jackie are listening right now. Is there anything you want to say to them? Just tell them I'll ring the next. <laughs> <laughs> You're oh, going to ring the next? I'll ring the next, okay? <laughs> Bye, love. Hello. Oh, I've had a letter this morning what? Um, from Mr. Atkinson at Flight Control. 
you will never believe it. No. no, it was said the other day, everything has been going smooth. Mm. Mm. Why have you got a letter when it's me who's sending it? Well, I don't know. Have you not got one at all? No. Well, what it is, we're going to have to fly out on different days. Who? Well, well, what they've said, they put you out as normal on the Monday, huh? your normal flight, and I'll have to fly out uh, on Wednesday at 20 past No f- chance. can do that. Well, listen, I put, um, they've, they've put me on to the manager and he said it's out of their hands. Tough, no, I'm not going anywhere then. Well, we'll have to. I'm not f- doing that. Well, when I spoke to Sam, uh, that manager, he said... He said it's in Mr. Atkinson's hand that he's the head of flight control. But, like, he said, I said, well, he said there's nothing they can do. I'll have to speak to him on Monday. And I'll, oh, well, we'll have to do it. You'll have to go on Monday. I'll have to see you there on 20 past uh, nine on Wednesday. Ian said sometimes they do that because his nephew, Darren, he, he did it when he went to Greece. No, I'm not going anywhere. Why? Because I'm not. Well, we'll still have an holiday. I'm not bothered, no. Well, I'm still coming back on the Wednesday because I'm having my full two weeks. Because you'll, you'll have to come back, I'll, I'll see you at the airport. No, and we can cancel that on holiday because I'm not going anywhere like that. Why? Because I said I'm not. Why? Because I'm not. Well, I'll have to, I'm not cancelling it. Why, well, you'll have to come over, I'll go anywhere and come home on my own. Well, I've been looking forward to this holiday. Yeah, and you think you're coming home at a different time than me? Oh, I'm not going anywhere, we can either have something soft there, we'll go have our money back because I'm not going anywhere well, like that. We'll lose all our money. And I've worked damn hard for this holiday and I'm not giving it up. We've been booked. Well, it's first time I'll get on the phone now. Well, I've got to speak to Mr. Atkinson. At, uh, he's a flight control manager. Well, we can't do nothing. We did f- didn't it? Well, I can't do nothing. What are you going mad at me for? Well, why has it suddenly gone to party? Can you separate two people? I don't know. There's been some mix up on the flight. Well, that's what we're going to have to do. I'll have to see you there Wednesday. I'll see you. I'll, I'll travel to the airport with you. No, you won't, because you're going to sort it out and they're going to make us go at the same time. Well, I'll travel to the airport and I'll see you on the plane. I'll, I'll see you there on Wednesday. <laughs> same Are you listening to me? I said I'm not going anywhere without you. Well, we'll have to. So I'll meet you at the airport, Paula. Who's that? What? Who's that? Who's what? I'll sit on the plane with you, Paula. Who's that? Paula? Who's that talking? Paula, this is Steve Pink. Oh! <laughs> James has got you, Paula. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> he's got you, hasn't he, Paula? I was just about to hang the phone up then. I can't believe this. Yes, he's got. I'm only sh- listening to you this morning. I was laughing my head off, and I thought it's not even hands to me. Oh my God! Paula, have you got a message for James? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to Pontins at Safeport tomorrow. You're going to Pontins instead? Safeport, and he can go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> you <He's>, pig! <laughs> is that a one-way ticket to hell? Oh, I can burn him, I don't care. They can do what, incinerate, just tears rolling down my face. I can't believe this. I'm on, I'm on, oh God, I'm not on the radio, am I? You are, Paula. Oh. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Paula. Oh, God. Thank you, <laughs> Embassy, good afternoon. Guten Morgen. Good Nachmittag. Is that the German Embassy? Yes. Are you German? Yes. Have you seen this report today in the newspaper? Report for what? Well, it sounds a bit cliché to me, and I want you to prove this wrong. It says Germans really don't have a sense of humour and don't laugh as much as the rest of Europe. Uh Uh-huh. Now, that to me sounds like one, uh, one hell of a sweeping statement, and I want to prove it wrong. How do you? So you're German then, are you? Mm, yes. Okay, so let's see if you've got a sense of humour. So this friend of mine is so ugly, every time she goes to the zoo, she has to buy two tickets, one to get in and one to get out. Very good. Well, do you want to speak to somebody else? So the wife wanted to see the world, so, uh, so I bought her an atlas. Our family is so ugly, we keep the negatives in the family album. Hello? Hello? I once sang for the King of Siam. Are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. At least he told me he was. He said, if you're a singer, I'm the King of Siam. Yeah, I, I know the British humour is very good. But, I mean, the Brit- Germans are different, aren't they? I think you're proving the point there. <laughs> what comes after six? Seven. The Milkman. KFC on the road, how may I help? Yeah, is that KFC? Yes. Yeah, what time do you close? 11.30. 11.30? Right. And um, where exactly are you? London Road, um, opposite Summerfield. Uh, and you close at what time? 11.30. When I come down, will I be able to park outside the shop? Um, not really. I need to sort of wait in the car while somebody nips in, you see, gets the well, food. if you're waiting in the car, then, yeah. Right, there's not yellow lines there, then? Is there yellow lines outside our shop? 
Yeah, there is. And you close at what time? 11.30. Have you got any special bargains on at the moment? Uh, yeah, we've got a mega bucket, which is 10 pieces chicken and four regular fries, and you get a free two-litre bottle of drink. Oh, great, excellent. And you, and you close at what time? Half past 11. Half past 11, right, OK then. Do you get a free drink with that? Yeah, you get the two-litre bottle of Coke. Uh, and you close at what time? Half 11. Have you got any discounts if, if you're getting, like, a big party order? How big the order is? Uh, well, there's, there's going to be quite a few of us because we're having a party tonight, you see. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I get some discount. It really depends on how much you spend. I can't say that. And you close at what time? Half past eleven. If I get down there just a, a little bit later, uh, would you be able to stay open for me? No. Oh, right. Okay, then. I'd suggest you get down uh, down here by, like, before eleven because otherwise there won't be probably the amount of chicken you want left. You close at what time? Half past eleven. Half past eleven, right. Okay, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it down. I might be able to get there for about twenty-five past. All right, well, see you later then. I think that's just about it. Did I ask what time you close? Half past eleven. Half past eleven, right, okay then. Thanks very much. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. can I help you? Hello, is that Manchester, New Hampshire? Yes, sir. Ah, and a very good morning to you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, uh, this is uh, Manchester, England speaking. Uh-huh. Uh, how are you this fine day? Very fine, sir. Very fine indeed. Uh, right, I just wonder what it's like in, in Manchester, New Hampshire. Yeah. What's it like? It likes like, well, it's a big town. It's a big city. I'm sorry, have you got marbles in your mouth? Huh? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't understand anything you're saying. I say that it is a big city. It's a big city? Yeah. Yes? And then what do you want to know? Well, is it, um, is, is it nice for tourists? Yeah, it's a good place for tourists, yeah. Yes. Uh, take those marbles out of your mouth, will you? Huh? I'm sorry? What do you say? I said, we've got Salford Precinct. What have you got? Fishing. Fishing, right. Uh, 15 all. Uh, we've got the Pyramid of Stockport. What have you got? I don't know, sir, so much. I'm a new man. You're a new man? Yeah, I'm so sorry. Uh, no, 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 no need to apologise. Uh, that's 3015 to me. Uh, we've got the City of Manchester Stadium. What have you got? I don't know, sir. I'm sorry? I don't know. Ooh, 4015 to me. Uh, we've got the Trafford Centre. What have you got in Manchester, New Hampshire? Where do you want to go? Uh, could you say that again? I don't... I can't understand. What do you say? What do you ask me? Uh, what... what touristy things have you got? What? Come to? Oh, Jesus. I can't understand, sir. Game! Oh, there we are! Yeah! <laughs> Game set and match to the pank! So, Manchester, England wins then! Yes, well done, Manchester, yeah. England. What's he going to do? That's a paint sprayer. I told you. I just have to, yeah, I'm not having it. Well, what's he going to do? He's ordered it. I'm sorry, I just have to take it back. I don't bloody want it. Well, he's paid the money now. What's he going to do? Just put John on. It's... I'm getting annoyed now. 
What? Janet? Yes? Happy birthday. Who's that? This is Steve Pink from Q103, oh, Janet. Oh, bloody Nora! <laughs> Happy birthday, oh, love. Believe it. <gasps> no, I'm... Well, I get the impression you don't like three-wheelers, no, then, Janet. No, I don't. <laughs> Oh, that is awful, that. Janet, you're live on Key103 at the moment. Oh, dear. Oh, I just don't believe it. A couple of bleeps in there, Janet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. What do you want to say to this husband of yours? Wait till he gets home. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Have a lovely birthday, Janet. Thanks very much. <laughs> Um, hello there. Is that Keith Harris, the ventriloquist man? Yeah, it certainly is. Who's that? Um, I'm telling ya, Mr. Harris, this is Shaggy. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, Shaggy. Mm. How you doing? Mm, very well, Miss Doloba Loba. <laughs> what are you phoning me for? Though? Now, Mr. Harris, I wanted to ask you, are you the owner of the beautiful Orville the Green Duck with the orange beak? That's certainly right, yeah, he's here. Hello, Shaggy. What are you doing? <laughs> um, it wasn't me. <laughs> it, it wasn't me. Mm. Are you sure it wasn't you? No, it wasn't me. Um, <laughs> mm, well, what, mm. what, what, what do you want to talk to me about then? I wanted to tell you, did you know that me, Shaggy, my real name is Orville? No. That is my real name. Give away, Orville. Mm, that is Please. my name. My real name is Orville, and I wanted to just pass this on to you. I <laughs> thought it would be a really good idea to have Orville rapping with Orville Shaggy. Mm, 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 mm. What do you think, Orville? I think, hey, that would be great, yeah. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Yeah, I can, I can, I can do it. I can do it. Mm, you're starting to frighten me now. Tell you what <laughs> I do. Tell you what I do. I do the bits and you fill in when I stop. Yeah. Is that cool? Okay, I, I don't know what I'll say, but you know, it'll be cool. I wish I could fly right up to this guy, but I can't. Hey, you can, man, you can, man, you can. I wish I could fly right up to the sky, but I can't. Hey, yes, you can, of course you can. Um, <laughs> now, Bill, who is your very best friend? You are. I'm going to help you mend your broken heart. Hey, quite right. <laughs> um, thank you for your help, Miss the Lover Lover. No problem at all. I hey, like him, he's good, isn't he? I think he's very good. I think that might be a hit. Well, I've taken all I can take. All right, Shaggy. Well, thanks for phoning. Yeah, and bye, Orville. This is Orville saying bye-bye to Orville. Hehe. <laughs> it wasn't him. It wasn't him. Cheerio! Judge's kind of speaking. Which name, please? Uh, the name's Sylvester. Uh, what's your name? Pardon? I'm Epic Borden. Can't hear you very well. It's just very friendly of you to, uh, you know, to introduce yourself that way. Uh, my name is, uh, Sylvester. Oh, hello. Yeah. Yeah, whose number do you want? Uh, I wanted the, uh, number of, uh, somebody who uh, might, uh, just be able to, uh, give someone like, uh, execution, um, someone like that. Did you have anybody like that? Sorry, who? What are they called? It's, uh, nine by weight, capital, um, yum. I can't understand what you're saying. What are they called? I tell you again, they're nine five point eight Cam uh, FM, and they're like really famous place. I mean, uh, you know, you really should have heard that, but they got to be there somewhere. Yeah, but I can't understand what you're saying. They're uh, uh, sort of over in uh, they're in London. What's the name of them? Hey man, come on, clear your ears out here. You know what's going on. I can't help it if I can't understand what you're saying. Can you say it again? Nine five point eight Cam FM. Just hold on. Hello? Yeah, hello there. Yeah, hello, can I help? Yeah, I was uh, just trying to find out the number of uh, 9518 Cabinet Bam, and uh, she wouldn't tell me. Right, you're looking for the number of who? 9518 uh, Cabinet Bam, and uh, she wouldn't tell me before. I was trying lots of times, you know, I'm just trying to phone up and find something out here. Right, is, is this a business you're looking for, residential? Because I can't quite catch the name you're giving either. Well, it's a kind of real famous place, you know. I... Where, whereabouts <sighs> is the famous place? Right here in London. It's in London. Right, right here in London. Say the name slower, please. The uh, nine five uh, point eight. Nine, just a minute. Nine five one eight. Gabriel, um, the film and uh, London uh, number one uh, uh, kind of musician. Right. I would say. I would say. Right, you gave me nine five one eight. What is that the number? 
No, no, it's not. 9518. No, no, what? no. Hold on a minute. What sort of an establishment is it? Well, this is just, you know, this is the place, you know, uh, right, London's... Yeah, uh, what sort of a place is it? And uh, well, the number one, uh, the humiliation, and, uh, you know, you got it. You just got to have it. You got to have it. Yeah, we probably have it, but we can't get it up on the screen until you give us the name, either spell the name out to us or say it a little bit slower. Hey, babe, you know, I'm being as clear as I can well, right I here. I understand that, sir, but your accent's a lot different to mine we, we don't come across um, accents like this every day like we do with English accents oh is that right do you have like problems with the no hearing problem. or something no, no problem with the hearing either it's just that we can't quite catch what you're saying there's two of us listening into the call no come on here trying to get a number you say you can't understand me can we just start again from the beginning I'll tell you one more time I want you to give me the name it's uh, 95.8 9518 is that what you're yep, saying yep uh, 95.8 what is 9518 this is uh, London number one, uh, hymn music station, and, uh, you know, they would call it 95.8. 9518. Point. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying one. I'm saying point. 95.8. 95.8. 95.8. Right. Hey, now we're getting someplace. Right, 95.8. Capital FM. Capital FM, Capital right. FM. Right, I've got that for you now. Just a moment. Right, Capital FM. Hey, you've been so good. What's your name? My name's Jill. Hey, Jill, thank you very much. You sound real nice. <laughs> right, thank you. 0171. <laughs> I don't want them one. Seven double six. Seven double six. Six thousand. Six thousand. Six hey. thousand, that's right. Hey, why didn't you say? I did, I've just said it. Why didn't you say that at the start? Because I couldn't find it. All I could hear you saying was 95.8. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very All much. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, goodbye. See you, fruitcake. <laughs> 118, 118, how can I help you? Uh, bootstrap Bill Turner, please. In which town, please? The Sea. In which town, please? Uh, uh The Sea. S E A as in the C. Yes, uh, well, T T H E S E A. It's all one word, the C. There is no town like that, T H E S E A. Well, there is, because Bootstrap Bill Turner lives. <laughs> uh, let me just transfer you to my supervisor. One moment, please. Tell me, I help you. Oh, supervisor, lovely. Um, Cutler Beckett, please. Wait, would you repeat that? Uh, Cutler Beckett. In which town? At uh, the sea. Pardon? At uh, the sea. The computer isn't recognising the sea. Right. Um, you don't know where it's near to? Yes, all I've got is near the beach. Never beach? Is yeah. that a house name, That's you right. think? I think it probably is, yes. And you don't know which county? Um, I, uh, ocean, I think. I'm not seeing an ocean county. How are you spelling ocean? Uh, O-C-E-A-N. All I've got is an ocean village, Southampton. You could try there. That might bring up Cutler Beckett. Beckett. B-E-C-K is the spelling? Uh, B-E-C-K-E-T-T, -T, yes. Mm -hmm. Not in the... no, not in Ocean Village itself. Do we have any other surname or anything else I could help you with? Have you searched under the full name? What was the first part of the their name? Uh, Cutler. Cutler Beckett. Yes. That's right, it was just a cutler. Still nothing. They're now completely blank screen. Right. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you've been, you've been delightful. You've been so helpful. <laughs> um, okay, well, listen, thank you very much for your time. Anything, nothing else I could help you with, though? Uh, you could try for Chicken Little. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then, thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> Oh, great. Is that the breakdown place? Yes. We've broken down and I wonder if you can help us. Well, what do you need? Tell me, I don't understand you. We've broken down and I wonder if you can help us. I know you're coming down, but what can I help you with? The thing is, my dad's currently trying to fix it and quite honestly hasn't got a clue what he's doing. We've been here for hours and I'm freezing. I don't, I don't, my garage is not open. The thing is... My dad's quite a proud man. He thinks he can fix it, but he hasn't got a clue. I don't have any tools or nothing, ma'am. He doesn't even know I'm calling you. I don't understand where you're at. I don't know what's going on or what. Personally, I think it's a starter motor. What do you think? 
Possibility, yes. Where are you at? Do you think the spark plugs might need cleaning? Hey, ma'am, I can't help you, I'm sorry. Look, I thought you were the expert. Really, I've asked you six times. I can't help you. If you're advertising the yellow pages, you must know what you're doing. Oh, somebody else. Now, look, I need this sorting out. Lady, I can't help you. Get somebody to explain to me where you're at and what's going on. I can't understand a word you're saying. I can't help you. I'll I don't work it on as cars. Slow as I, can. I just got to explain it to you. I don't work on cars. Have you been drinking? Goodbye, lady. I'm a dad. I don't drink. <laughs> Get off the phone, kid. How can I help you? Um, hello, Brian Sewell here, art critic and journalist for the Evening Standard. Mm -hmm. Um, Could you remind me, which one of the lines is uh, the pink one? Oh, pink one's called the Hammersmith and City. Ah, yes, mm. right, right. Um, I have quite an unusual request. Mm. Um, a very good friend of mine, um, the artist Stefano Pinkino, uh, wishes to paint an artistic study mm. in one of those stations on the pink line. Right. Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you the customer services number for Thank that you. line. If I was to ask them um, whether or not, um, um, as with the, um, uh, for uh, Blue Kira, do you think that they would be able to provide that? Uh, for what? Sorry? Would, could they provide what? If I was to ask them that I, my belief uh, these um, Antoine uh, notes that the uh, finest of the uh, present um, for Blue Peter, would they be able to provide that information? I don't know. I, I, I... I know that um, my artist friend uh, Stefano Pinkino wishes to capture that feeling of unabating commuter activity which exists on the stations. Um, mm. Do you think that um, things could be arranged so that people don't get in his way? Well, I don't know about that. I think that's something you're going to have to speak to them about directly and whether perhaps you could use the station at, at, at the weekend or something like that. But I really couldn't comment on that. I think this is very, very accommodating of you. Some people you speak to can be so rude. <laughs> and I think it's refreshing that you're being so pleasant. Good. and helpful and accommodating. Okay. Well, when I speak to the number that you provided, <laughs> uh, do you think that they might agree um, that the beneficiary um, petition was uh, very much renaissance and many of the art ages? Uh, I don't know. It depends who you speak to, I would imagine. Who really? answers the phone? <laughs> because I do think that many of the beneficiaries of Great Work Petition were their art uh, artistic influences, uh, which was quite big in its philosophy here. Do you agree? No. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it would be very pleasant if my artist, once everything is arranged, and he begins his artistic study, if perhaps we could arrange some time off for you, so that you may come down and perhaps you could pose. We could paint you as well. <laughs> okay, I'll leave that with you. Thanks very we much. We could paint you as well. Okay. Would you be willing to sit on the station on a dick trial with an out on? Bye-bye. So we could paint you as well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Now we. Hello, how are you? Fine, how are you? I am super. It's good to speak to you. <laughs> uh, you sound like you're having a party. Oh, yes, of course, we're always having a party. Great. Uh, right, are you English? No. Oh, right, you sounded, you sounded English then. <laughs> you sound English. Uh, that's because I am. <laughs> <laughs> what a coincidence. What a coincidence, yeah. So that means you must be American then. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> what a coincidence. Right. Bloody right. well. Now, there so, you yeah, go. Yeah, show your face. <laughs> yeah. Right, is this, uh, is this hellhole? Yes. Excellent. Well, what a place. Could you uh, describe it to me? Sure, it's a little bit of a hole in the wall, it's got red lighting, it's quite smoky, there's not a whole lot of people, unfortunately not a whole lot of girls. Nice, lovely. Uh, and what's what's the town like? Because we're, we're hoping to come over for a little visit to Hell Hole. Where are you at now? Uh, well, I'm in Manchester, England. Right. Well, the town? You mean Hell Hole? Yeah. Well, the town's great. It's a, it's a beach town, There's uh, it's a college town, there's lots of drinkers, there's, uh, I don't know, I mean... It's a lovely place though, is it? Yeah. Oh, great. Well, you know, I mean, talking about coincidence, uh, we've got our very own hell hole in England, you know. Have you, um, uh, have you heard of Birmingham? Yes. Well, that, that really is a hell hole. It, it, <laughs> it really is. All right. Where are you, for real? Uh, for real? 
Yeah. Uh, I'm in Manchester, England. I don't believe you. Is there anything I can do to prove it to you? I don't think so. Thank you. Well, well, we've got somebody here from, from Manchester, England who wants to say hello to you. All right. Hello. Hello. Why are you guys calling from Manchester? Because we're mad for it. Because you're mad for it. Mad for it, that's right. That's right. <laughs> right, so I sounded Scottish then, did you know? <laughs> <laughs> man of a thousand voices. Yeah, man of a thousand voices, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, we didn't catch your name. Your name is? Knocker. Knockers? Knocker. Knocker. Without the S. Right. Yeah. Oh, there you are. Right, okay, well, listen, I must be going. Okay. See you, Knockers. Okay, bye. Set up. Thank you for calling, Graceland. Howdy doody. Hi. Hi, how are you? Fine. Oh, great. Is that uh, where Elvis Presley used to live? It is. How can I help oh, you? Oh, great. Uh, can you tell me how to get there? One moment. Thank you. Thank you for calling guest service. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Hey, I'm rootin' tootin' great. You're good. Hey, listen, how, is that where Elvis Presley used to live? Yes, it is. Oh, great. Well, how do we get there? Where are you at now? Well, we're, we're, we're from England, from London, England. Uh-huh. And uh, we're really excited because we've never been there before, so Good. We're, we're raring to go. Good. How do we get to where you are? Okay, are you driving? I will be driving, yeah. You will be driving? Yes. And, uh, okay, let me tell you this before I tell you how to get here, in yeah. case you want to go this route. Right. There is a shuttle. It's a free bus that'll bring you to Graceland. A shuttle bus? Uh huh. Right. It's called Sun Studios. What is? The bus. It's a black bus. Right. It'll pick you up at Elvis Presley's Memphis. Right. Okay then. And it'll bring you right straight to Graceland. I'm so excited. I really am. Uh, I've never been before. Oh, good. <laughs> hey. You can also catch it back downtown. What was that? Back town. Back downtown, where you're at now. Oh, back downtown. Uh huh. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. Fine. Oh, it takes me. I'm. I'm getting used to this accent. I, can't, I really am. Oh, really. Okay. So I go back downtown. Yeah. And I get on the shuttle bus. Uh, yeah. Well, you do on Bill Street. Where are you located downtown right well, now? Well, I'm in Walton on Thames at the moment, and uh, I just wonder how long it's going to take me to get there. About fifteen minutes. Really. My God, that's one hell of a shuttle bus you got there. <laughs> really? Well, it only takes you about 15 minutes to drive it. So if I get on the M25... Where? M25, near Heathrow Airport. You're near the airport now? I am indeed, yes. Oh, okay. So I get on the M25 at Weybridge, and, uh, and where do I go from there? The M25? What? Yeah, yeah you, know, you know, obviously you know it, then I can tell by your voice. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a bad road. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it in 15 minutes. Winchester West will run into Elvis Presley Boulevard, and we're just about two minutes from where you'll hit Elvis Presley Boulevard. So let me get this right. I get on the M25, I go down Charing Cross Road onto Winchester West, uh, across Leicester Square, and then to Elvis Presley Boulevard. I'm not sure what crossroads you're talking about. Uh, well, Charing Cross Road. I go down there... Get on the tube and get off at Waterloo. Waterloo? I don't know where you're at. <laughs> if I come out of the back of the building of, of Capitol... You're in England? Yes, I am. Oh! I wonder what the hell you were talking about. Well, I didn't know what you were talking about. Well, you completely lost me there. <laughs> Going at about Winchester Way and all that. I don't know what okay, you mean. Okay, you told me you were at the airport. No, I didn't. When you get here, will you be flying in? Oh, we're at cross purposes here, aren't we? <laughs> Thank you very much. 96.2 The Revolution Thank you for calling Ticket Master for O2. This is Tom speaking. Which event and date would you like to book for? And a very good day to you, young man. <laughs> Thank you. Good day to you as well. Uh, to whom am I speaking? This is Tom. Hey, well, Tom, my name is Stefano Penchino, uh, the amazing man. I'm sure you've heard of me. Oh, unfortunately, I haven't, no. I'm sorry. Oh, maybe you should slip your mind, then. <laughs> uh, some people do get very nervous when they're around me, you know. Now, I appreciate... Did you say your name was Tom? Yeah. I appreciate it's a delicate time, Tom, but I, I've always been one to, uh, ignore that and seize an opportunity. Um, I know you've got 50 dates to fill. Uh, I'm offering my services. 
Right, okay. This is just the booking line, I'm afraid. All right, Tom, but you can put a word in for me. Uh, Fifty Nights of Summer Sounds with Stefano. I'm sure you'll agree. Amazing. Uh, yeah. I know Mick Okay. Ja I know Mick Jagger showed me once, and uh, he was quite speechless after watching the act. Uh, what I do, Tom, is, um, I sing the greatest hits of the Doolies whilst gaffer taped to the top of a 60-foot ladder. I'm sure you'll agree. Amazing. Uh, yeah. That's uh, pretty funny, actually. Uh, are you part of a musical dynasty, Tom? Uh, no, I'm afraid I'm not. Uh, well, neither am I. Uh, but it's not until you become part of a musical dynasty, Tom, that you can fully appreciate the joy of my talent. Now, uh, yeah, yeah, obviously you have 750,000 tickets. Uh, you know, I, I'm your man, you know, for 50 nights. Right, okay. I mean, I, you know, I don't wish to patronise you, Tom, but some people have either got it or they haven't. And uh, I've certainly and got it. And you've got it, it yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, absolutely, Tom. Uh, I sh I'm sure you're getting the drift. Uh, the strictly factor, I think they call it. That's, that's awesome then. Uh, what you'll need to do is you'll need to get in touch with the, the O2 directly then. Well, uh, Tom, because you're there, you know, can't you, uh, can't you just mention my name around the corridors of power? Um, I'll see what I can do for you. Right. Okay. Uh, have you got, like, your dress details and stuff? Just make a note of the name, Tom. Stefano Penchino. That's right. Okay, and you want to fill the 50 dates for Michael Jackson? That's right. I, I understand, Tom, it's a delicate time right now. Uh, you know, they've just buried the old fella, but, uh, you know, but uh, obviously, you know, I don't want people to be disappointed. Uh, no, obviously not, no. If they've got tickets for the night, you know. No, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, just, just mention it's Stefano Pinkino, uh, the world's most amazing man, and uh, I am available for the 50 nights. I'll do that for you, then. In fact, I'm available for more if they want me, you know. Well, it all depends on supply and demand, doesn't it? That's right. All right, Tom, well, it's been a pleasure to talk to me, and, um, I'll, uh, I'll leave that with you. Okay, no problem. Okay, well, I'm glad of being able to and thank you for calling Ticketmaster for the O2. Right, just get the little plug in there at the end, Tom, that's lovely. Yes. All, right, all right, have a lovely day, Tom. You too. Bye-bye now. Yes, bye. Bye-bye. <sighs> Amazing. Well, nice. well, nice. How can I help you? Uh, Grand Old Duke of York, please. Which town? York. It's the Grand Opera House of York, sorry. Uh, no, the Grand Old Duke of York. What kind of business is this? Soldier. I know he's got 10,000 men working for him, so, um... I have a Grand Old Duke of York. It's in Ipswich. Oh, no, it's definitely in York. I have no other listing. Is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, Old King Cole. Sorry, Old King... Old King Cole. Cole. That's right. Nothing else to said as well. He's not listed either. Well, he's a very old so I thought you might have been able to find him. Could it be under another name? Uh, you could try, um, Dr. Foster. I have a Dr. Foster in York, um, Dalton oh, Terrace. No, this is Dr. Foster. I went to Gloucester. Anything else I can help you with? Um, <sighs> Georgie Porgy. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, hello there. Um, is that the, um, is that the nudist, uh, colony? Yes, it is. Uh, right, right. Um, I was, uh, just interested in, in joining you, and, uh, just after some information. Um, how would this be possible to, to join you in? What you do, you just come along. Just, just like that? Yeah, you just come along. Simple as that? Yes. Do you do, you know, um, you know, massages for, yep. you know, yep. that sort of, uh, oh, you do, that's good. Um, and you just come along? Yeah. Tell me, um, do you need to be, you know, um, in inspected or anything, you know, just to check that you look all right, or does it not uh, matter? No, no, doesn't matter at all. All right, well, um, anyway, I'm, I'm sure you uh, won't be uh, disappointed, you know. Um, could I ask, um, you do uh, assure discretion? Yes. How would you guarantee that? Well, basically, just a naturist club. So, I mean, you just come in and you're in here with a load of other naturists. I mean, no one actually knows you're here. I mean, if we have any phone calls for you or whatever else, it'd only be through the fact that you've said, oh, I'm expecting a phone call. Um, well, they, they would know that I was there. Um, they wouldn't. Believe me. If you said you're not here, you're not here. I, I could be, you know, in danger of being, you know, sort of like a uh, quick call to the papers or something, and that's that. And, you know, this is what I want to, you know, avoid happening. So, you know, th there'll be none of that going on, would there? No, definitely not. So what do you offer then? 
we've got three jacuzzis, two steam rooms, two saunas, plunge pool, swimming pool and a mini gym. Is it all, you know, sort of, you know, kinky? No, 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 it's not kinky. And you won't tell anyone? No. Do you have any, you know, sort of like, you know, snooker tables where, no, you know, young not. ladies play snooker? No, And they not. sort of like bend over the table or something trying to get an awkward... No, we don't. And you definitely won't tell anyone? No, definitely not. Do you want to take our names now? All right, then. Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Blair. Mr. and Mrs. Blair, Prime Minister, um, in brackets. All right. And we can just uh, come on down then, can we? Yes, you can. Come on, Barbie, let's go party. Mm-hmm. Right, well, if, if all that's in place then, perhaps you could, um, you know, send the bill to uh, Minister Steve Pank at 95.8 Capital FM. Because, you know, he does his programme sat there with nothing on as well. Hello? Um, Hello? Hello? Hello, who's this? This is Young Dougie. Who? Young Dougie. Young Dougie? Yeah. Is old Dougie there? No, there's only Young Dougie. Young Dougie, this is Steve Pank. <laughs> From 95.8, capital FM. And um, we just thought we'd give you a call, young Dougie. Oh, that's very nice of you. Yeah, we thought we'd put you on the map. Oh, right. So fame and fortune at long last, young Dougie. Right. Right. Uh, I think the police are coming to get you, young Dougie. Yeah, they did. They just come past. Yeah, yeah they're knocking on the door now. <laughs> What radio are you on? This is Capital FM. Oh, Capital FM. I, I, I listen to you sometimes. All right, well, I, I, I when hope I'm you're... not working. Well, I hope you're going to listen all the time, not just sometimes. I oh, know, we've got it on, we have it on on the radio quite a bit here. Yeah, well, let's get it super glued to 95.8 Capital FM. All right, super glued. All right, mate. All right, then. We love you. Thank you. See ya. Yeah. Bye. Hello? Hello, can I speak to Mrs. Ridings, please? Yes, this is Mrs. Ridings. Uh, John Wilson from the council. Yes. I don't know how you're going to take this news, Mrs. Ridings, but we're planning to put a bus stop outside your house. Uh, what, outside our house? Yes, here? we are. The reason that I'm calling you, really, is to, is to let you know, we will be putting it in writing to you in the next couple of days. But, you know, we do always like to make contact with the household, first of all, to let them know that it's about to happen. So if you do see men outside your house today, strange men measuring up, that's that. How is it they're putting a bus stop? Sorry? How is it they're putting a bus stop? What sort of a bus? Is it a double-decker or a single-decker? Well, uh, we'll be using various buses on the route, obviously. But it's, it was just so that, you know, you weren't alarmed if you saw some strange men outside your house measuring up this morning. So, you know, you, you can't really see a problem with that, can you? Well, I don't know. I've not seen my husband yet, you know. I mean, it, how far is it going to be right outside as well? Yeah, it's going to be right outside, yes. But we've had complaints in the past from neighbours about the number of cars you've got parked outside your house. Because yeah. you've got your file here, you see. Yeah. So obviously they won't be there. You know, you'll have to move those. Oh, they go around the side then. Yeah. But we are anticipating, you know, that we're going to have a lot of traffic down there. Why have you picked our house out of all the row? Is it because we have cars parked outside? Yes, probably. It was a way of shifting those, you know, because they were getting on everybody's nerves. And we were getting quite, you know, sick of the complaints, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. So we thought, well, this is the way to sort it out. Obviously, put a bus stop outside well, the house. they complained when they was round the corner. Oh, did they? Oh, you've got funny neighbours, have you? Yes, they complained when they was round the corner. Yeah. And that's what, what the reason we said, well, we'll put one round the corner and we'll have the two round the front. Well, there's only need to have four cars parked outside your house. Pardon? I yes. said, there is? Yes, John's got one on the drive. Does he? So it's not got a drive to it, you see, really. It's Ooh. just sort of a, a, a thing at the front. Well, all I can say is I'm glad I'm not, I'm not uh, living next door to you. Yeah. With that many cars parked outside your house. Well, I've got one, my husband's got one, and my two daughters have, you see. Yeah, I think it'd drive me crazy, to be honest mm. with you. I'm not the only one. Other people have theirs parked outside. Do they? Wait till they, uh, wait till they have children that grow up and they've got their cars and they don't mm. know where to park them all. You'll soon see. If you've had children at home and you haven't got to drive to your house and your children want a car, mm. they've got to park it somewhere. Yeah. I mean, how would you feel if you didn't have a, a drive to your house? Well, we haven't, you know. I mean, That's you... right, and you've got four children, uh, three children. Well, there's two of ours. Well, do they have to drive. have cars? Of course they do. They've got to get to work, my daughter. Can't get to work without a car. She's in a place where it's down a country lane. There's well, no bus to it. Well, can't she go on a bike? Can she heck? It's too far. Can't... Don't come back with me. Well, can't she get a lift off somebody? Can she heck? Nobody lives around here. Well, you sound like you're being a bit awkward to me. You are. You wait till you've got children, you've got no bloody drive to your house. You're probably telling me that. You probably have got a bloody big drive to your house, no new council workers. Oh, I beg your pardon, madam. Oh, yes. Well, can't you have uh, just one car and then get and, and all of you Don't use it? Don't be bloody stupid. 
No way when they want their own transport, they want their own independence. Do they? Of course they do. Oh, they're terrible these days, these, uh, these teenagers, they, they aren't are, they? They are, yes, they are. You're telling me they yeah, are. Heavens above, they want their own cars these days, don't they? Do. they? You do. I bet you've got a bloody car. You do without your car. Well, what's that got to do with it? Yeah, well, what's it got to do with you, what my children have got? Go on, what's the same thing as you sent to me? What's it got to do with you? Well, we've had so many complaints about you. And oh, I well, it's too bad. We pay road tax. Well, I can understand we're not, it. We're not blocking anyone's drive off. Right. right? We're not blocking anybody's drive off. Yeah, but, you, you know, do you have this attitude with all your neighbours, do you? Oh, no, we get on very well. We're actually speaking to It's not at all. We're not speaking. Hmm? We're on very good speaking terms with our neighbours. Well, I'm just glad I don't live next door, so oh, that's well, all I can say. Oh, well, to you, you awkward bugger. So, sorry? I beg your pardon? <laughs> Hotel Milano Corso Genova, buongiorno, sono Sabrina. Happy Christmas! Merry Christmas to you! How are you? Are you Santa Claus? Uh, yes, well, I do sound like him, don't I? Can I f- uh, make a request for Christmas? You certainly can. What's your name, first of all, little girl? <laughs> Sabrina. Sabrina, right. Yes. <laughs> well, you tell what you'd like, Sabrina, for Christmas. <laughs> I'm joking, sir. <laughs> no, no, please tell me, Sabrina. You've got a lovely voice. <laughs> I'd love to have a Barbie. <laughs> You'd like to have a Barbie? A Barbie with Ken, of course. With Ken, lovely. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll be your Ken and you can be my Barbie. No. <laughs> you, sound like, you sound like my kind of girl, you really do. <laughs> so how will you be celebrating Christmas then? At home. I'm uh, coming back uh, home for Christmas. Oh, lovely. We'll go to Sardinia. Oh, excellent, yes. Yeah, do you know Sardinia? I do, it's a lovely place. Oh, okay, yeah, yes. yeah. Yes, excellent. Uh, and what do you normally do on Christmas Day? Do you, um, do you eat lots and play games? I don't think so. Oh, right. Um, so, <laughs> what, um, <laughs> I hope you have a lovely Christmas. Thank you, you too, sir. And before we go, could you do me a yes. little favour? Yeah. Could you wish everybody in Manchester, yeah. England, uh, in Italian, a very yeah. happy Christmas? Okay, sir. Buon Natale. And a happy new year. E buon anno. Bananas. Buon Natale e buon anno. Buon Charlie and bananas. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, you have a lovely Christmas. You too, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Do you have a favourite Christmas song? <laughs> We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good times okay? we bring to you and your King. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Merry Christmas, sir. Hello. Oh, it's Arthur there, please. I am. Um... Arthur, it's hello. Is that Arthur? Yes. Arthur, c- can you hear me, Arthur? Yes. Can you speak up a bit, please? Yes. Right. Is that uh, is that Arthur Low? Arthur Low. Arthur Little. Yes. Will you stop shouting at me? Now I'm calling from BMSS, uh, Arthur. Uh, you know we delivered this panel fee yesterday. Yes. Twelve quid, love. Yes, got it. Could you nip round with it today? I gave you the money yesterday. Shut. Hey. Hello? Are you, are you still there, uh, Arthur? <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, is Arthur there? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what happened there, we got cut off. He just wants to speak to you. He just wants to speak to him, that's all. He said he can't hear me. Now let's keep it pleasant. Hey. Uh, I said let's keep it pleasant, you drunken bum. Now then... Let's hear you, b- don't you... Talk to me like that. Stop. No, listen, I'm just. Hey, has he gone again? Right. Thanks very much then. Right, I said. Hello. Hello, is that Mrs. Little? Yes. Yes, is Arthur there? I don't know what happened I there. Am not a bum. I thought you called him a drunken bum before. I never called him. No, su- no such thing. Go on, love. Yeah, yeah, I know. He must be terrible living with him. Oh, she's gone again. Hello. Hello, Arthur. Yeah. Aye, right, listen, you know the bloke who called you before? Well, I'd like to know who he is, because he gets a smack right in the gob. Right, well, listen, we've had a letter from uh, Chris Jones, works down at BMSS, and he's written to us to wind you up. It's Steve Pank. Well, who is he? He says to give you a call and wind you up, get you going. He says you've got a sense of humour, Arthur. I've got a sense of humour. Now, who? Oh, it's Chris. 
Chris Jones. You mean the one with the thin touch? I don't know. I don't know what they look like. They've asked me to give you a call, wine job. Well, who is this, eh? You're... What's on the radio? You are. You're on the radio station being wound up. Nobody wakes me up and winds me up without they get a smack in the gum. <laughs> as small as I am. I'm Believe going... me, I deliver a good <laughs> punch. I'm going, Arthur. I'm going. Eh? I'm going. Going? Yeah, better be going. Because I'm on my bloody way down there. <laughs> See you, Arthur. Hello? And a very good morning to you. Who's this? I'm sorry. Hello? 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 And what's your name? Who the hell is this? Uh, my name is Steve. I wonder if you can help me. <laughs> Obviously not. Hello? Hello, it's part of that, please. Okay. It's Lee. Alright, one minute. Hello? Hello, is that Paula? Yeah. Alright, Paula, sorry to bother you. Hello. I've had the guy from the yeah. on. Yeah. This morning, I've not even got to work yet because I've been arguing with him. Yeah. So I had put the blame on us for, said he fiddled the gas meter. Yeah. And it is. He says, well, if you're denying it, who else has been in the house over the last two years? I said, well, Paula comes round a lot, you know, would you? She's a close friend, so she won't do out like that. Basically, he's trying to blame you anyway. He's trying to blame me? He's trying to blame you. We denied it, said, so who else would have been in the house a lot? So I said, I'll tell you what, mate, because we've been arguing for my mind. I said, I'll get you through soon myself. Yeah. And I'll put you down soon now. No, put him off. All right. Hello, mate. Hi, love. Oh, hello, mate. Yeah. yeah. Is that Paul? Paula. Paul, yeah, right. Um, Lee was saying that you come round to the house a lot. Yeah. And you've been fiddling with the gas, apparently. I have. Uh, apparently so, yes. Is that right? No, I forget. The thing is, are you aware that they've been getting free gas for uh, for a number, of a number of years? No. Well, th well, they have been, and, um, um, and we feel that it might be you because you go round to the house a lot. That, that's ridiculous, that. I'm sorry to, to uh, accuse you of this, but there appears to be nobody else, uh, uh, you know, who, who could possibly have, uh, have bypassed the system. Well, it's nothing to do with me. How often do you go around? Uh, every second day. Every second day. So, so you know, th there is every chance then that you could have touched something without realising what you've done? No. I don't, I don't touch the gas. I've not messed with the gas. Well, it's, def it's you know, it's definitely been tampered with. There's, there's no question about that. Right. So, you know, if it isn't Lee, uh, then it's, it's got to be you. No, I, I don't even live there and I don't know how you can put the blame on me when I don't even live there. I'll just hand you back to Lee. Hang on a minute. Right. All right, Paula. There's no way I have your gas. Well, it's, it's, it's on about getting the police involved, you know, and it's a we've not done it. So it's basically trying to blame you. Well, we can off. Not putting the blame on me. I have not touched the gas. I don't even live there. No, no. Do you want me to, go, to come round to the house? Is it there now? Tell us, yeah, some, tell yeah. us somebody's got to pay for it. Says someone's got to pay for it. Well, tell him to off and it's not me. Put him on. I'll put him back on now. Right. Hello, Paul. It is Paula. I I'm sorry? It's Paula, not Paul. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. You sound like a man, that's all. Uh, don't. Do I? Well, you sound like a woman then. Oh, Listen, right. I'm coming round to the house. Well, there's no need to get personal, my darling. I'll just hand you back to Lee. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Who does he think he is, Lee? Well, what's he said? He said they sound like a man. We do. <laughs> oh, thanks very much. I'm <laughs> coming round to the house, Lee. Give me half an hour while I get dressed. Hello? 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 Uh, hello? 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 Is that Paul? It's Paula, I said. All oh, right. Um, obviously I want to get to the bottom of this, my, my darling, because, um, you know, as I say, somebody's been stealing gas and, uh, uh you know, the finger of, uh, suspicion... Well, listen, love, I don't know it, where you get this idea where I'm going to come round to someone's house do you play and rugby? steal gas. What's that got to do with it? Oh, no, you just sound like, like a big butch woman, you know. Hey, I'd say this, right, I'd say something, I'm getting a bit fed up with you and your insults. Right, have you got tattoos and stuff, have you, love, if you don't mind me asking? Eh... Right, uh, you just stay there. What's your name? Uh, my name is Steve Pank. No way. And Lee's got you at it. <laughs> Tell him I'm going to kill him. <laughs> How are you, Paula? <laughs> I'm all right. Oh. You're all right now. <laughs> I'm going to kill him. 
You're not still using that ball worker, are you? <laughs> I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him. Kill him stone dead, that's the way. <laughs> anyway, let's listen, Lee, have you got anything you want to say to Paula? No. <laughs> Yeah, she's gonna kill you, yeah, she is actually gonna kill you. Uh, anyway, Paula, listen, nice to speak to you. Okay. Have a lovely day, Paula. Thank you, love. Uh, thanks for speaking to us. Okay, uh, nice to speak to you, Lee. Alright, All right, bye. Mate. Have, a, have a good day. Bye. See ya. <laughs> with the insurance company. Yeah. And um, saying that the bloke's managed to, well, he's won the claim yeah. because the accident form's not been filled in. Sam, I've been telling you to do it. I've well, told you. You've not, you've not reminded me enough, have you? Uh, excuse me? How many times do you need reminding and then you turn around and say, well, I'm sorry, I've gone out or I'm going out? Well, just can't be nice doing it. Well. How, how many times have you told me now? Loads, Sam. Are you right? I'm not even having this conversation with you, mate. Why? Because I asked you last night to do it and you said, no, I'm going out to the, the, the cruise. It's like the number of times I've said to you. Well, what can I do? Take things more seriously. You just have to, to ring her up and say, that's not fair. And she's saying about the MOC certificate as well. We're saying about what? Well, it's not been handed in and it needs to be done. I did ask you to do that as well. Right, I, I sent that to her, Sam. Well, she I said she's not got it. No. Well, it's not, not fair, this one. Uh, excuse me, Sam. You should have sorted this out a week ago instead of just ignoring. You didn't even tell anybody the letter had come. Yeah. You told the daft bag to fill the form in? I did, yeah. Yeah, put on the phone to me. Hello, love. My name's uh, Tony Wilson. Down, down, right. down at the insurance uh, firm. He's just come down here now. Right. And uh, he, he should have filled it in. I, d I honestly don't know what to say other than it was, we'd, we were in the process of doing it, but I needed to go out to look at the scene to do, um, you know, a... I'll just send you back yeah. to your son, hang, hang, hang on a moment. Hello? Sam, where's he from? From the insurance company. Right, Is he, are you at their office now? Yeah. Put her back on the line, uh, son. Uh, hold on a sec, hold on. Hello, oh, love. Hiya. Yeah. Right, I, I, I honestly don't see that that should make a difference because there was no time stipulated um, on when that form should be returned. Now, the other thing is... Well, it's your responsibility as his mother that you should have, you should have filled this in. It's my responsibility as his mother? Yes, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, he, he said that he'd asked you to fill it in and, and you've not filled it in, so the responsibility lies with you, I'm afraid. Well, I would disagree with you there, but what's this thing over the, um, the MOT not being sent to the other lady? I'll just hand you back to your son. Hang on a moment. Where are you now? I'm at the office. Tell her she sounds hopeless to me, son. Did you? Yeah, tell him to f off. Uh, no, no, Sam, who is he and where is he? He's in the office now. Tell her she's wasting my time. She sounds like she doesn't know what she's doing. Shall I speak to him? <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, is that you, old tart? Yeah. You should have filled this form in weeks ago. And if you, you see, if you'd filled it in weeks ago, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very ladylike, Diane, is it? <laughs> it's a buff. Oh. Hey? What? <laughs> I'll do it tonight. <laughs> you are so <laughs> dead. Such naughty language. And you, you know, you sound quite posh as well, Diane. <laughs> oh, you're not supposed to still be there. Well, I am. I'm still here. <laughs> After all these years. <laughs> Annoying the life out of people. <laughs> you know the guy yesterday said I shouldn't still be here. <laughs> I'm starting to get a complex. I just, I might have said nasty things about you. Well, you just did. <laughs> just did. I took a bleak machine out there. <laughs> this is Diane Shaughnessy, everybody, and uh, son Sam has got her at it. So, uh, <laughs> anything you want to say to your mum, Sam? Um. Yeah, take allocution lessons. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've got to say, he doesn't sound like your son at all. How is it, how is it you sound posh and he sounds as rough as... Uh... There's off. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the phrase you're looking for. Is that the phrase I'm looking for? <laughs> right. Yeah. Explain that one to me then. How is he so rough? Yeah, and you're so posh. It's the company he keeps. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay then. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so Diane, uh, we'll leave the parting words then with your uh, your good self. Anything you want to say to Sam? Um, he is so grounded. <laughs> so <laughs> grounded. Yeah, how old are you now, Sam? Seventeen. Seventeen, yeah, you're so grounded. Yeah, seventeen <laughs> and six foot six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Diane, well, listen, nice to speak to you. I'd like to say it was a pleasure. Have a lovely day, Diane. Thank you. See you, Sam. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Building. Hello, is that the Empire State Building? Yes, it is. I wondered if you're open today? Yes, we are. We're open until midnight. Right, we're over from London for a few days, mate, and uh, we fancy a look around the Empire State. I'm sorry? Uh, we're over from London for a few days. Mm hmm I'm doing a bit of Captain Kirk over here, you know, Captain Kirk work. So what time are you open till? Midnight. Well, listen, I'm, uh, I'm a bit, uh, current cakey. <laughs> I'm Hello? sorry? Hello? Yes? Listen, I'm a bit uh, current cakey this morning, a bit shaky, you know, cos uh, me and the girlfriend got cash and carried yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got married, you know. Oh, OK. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. So, have you got any brass tacks you can send me about the Empire State? You want some information in about the Empire State building? Brass tacks, facts, you know. I'm, I'm from London, love, you see. We all talk like this over here. Facts? We don't send facts. I can send you out a package, an information package. Right, OK. <laughs> Will it be all right if I bring... <laughs> If I bring the pie and liquor with me? How do you mean? The pie and liquor, the vicar. How do you mean, vicar? Uh, well, we got married yesterday, you see, me and the wife. Will it be okay to bring him? I'm sorry, can you please hold? Yeah. <laughs> Hello? I'm sorry for holding you. Do you get many Queen's Park Rangers there? I can send you out an information package if you wish. Queen's you Park can... Rangers, strangers, do you get many strangers there? Strangers? Yes. So where exactly are you, my old lemon squeezer? 355th Avenue, 34th Street, okay? And will it be all right to bring the dustbin lid? I'm not sure. Dustbin lid, bring the kid! Oh, okay. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it okay to bring children? Yes, that's what the observatory is for, is for oh, adults and for children. You are so kind. And is it very high, the Empire State Building? 102 stories high. Is it windy? Well, it pretends on what day you come. Oh, it won't affect me PG tips, will it? I'm sorry? PG tips, lips, me lips. He won't give me chap lips, will it? No, it shouldn't. Right. And um, what about the Irish jig? I will. I won't lose that, will I? No, you shouldn't lose it. You know, Irish jig wig. I won't lose. I won't lose my wig. Okay. Where are you calling from? I'm, I'm calling from London. The information package. You can give me your name and address. And oh, well, that would be address. very kind of you. You haven't got a strict dress code, have you? I don't understand you, sir. Yeah, will I be able to wear me Lionel Blairs? I don't understand you, sir. You know, Lionel Blairs. You know, me flares. Listen, if you give me your name and address. So, how much is it to get in me, old China? It's six dollars for adults and three for children under the age of twelve. You don't get many bulldozers down there, do you? I'm sorry? Bulldozers, posers. I don't understand you. I told you, sir, yes. and the best that I can help you is to send you out an information package if you give me your name and address. Can I have a drink when I get there? Sure you can. That's the observatory. There's a bar up right. in the observatory. Right. Do you sell, uh, laugh and titter? Whatever. You sell bitter, do you? What about Andy Pandy? Candy. No, no, Shandy. Do you sell Shandy? All righty. Rosie Lee? That's right. Are you Scotch Miss, mate? Yes, I am. Right. Okay, sir, you have a good day. Bye bye. I'll have to go, mate. I've got the Earth of Kits. <laughs> What say you? Hello? Hello? Uh, dost that thou knowest at the time? Yes, is that Tosser? Yeah. Are you a Tosser? Si. Yes. Thou art very handsome. Please? Yes. I have been admiring thee. Myling. Yes. Uh, come hither. Do as thou wilt. Perchance we will meet then. <laughs> I don't understand. What say you? Uh, I understand. No, it is most splendid. Now, is this, uh, Tosser I'm calling? See, si, see, si, uh, yeah. parlez français. Yeah, Tosser, and whereabout is, uh, Tosser? parlez français. Yes, whereabouts? Uh, parlez français, s'il vous plaît. No, England, England, or English, English. Uh, I understand. He hath a lot of money. Yes, okay. What say you? Okay, uh, what do you want? Come hither, come hither. Thy breeches are purple. Uh, ye are quite handsome. Hello? Yes, hello? Yeah, what do you want? Yes, I'm just saying, is that Tosser? See, si, he is Tosser. Tosser, you're a Tosser. Are you a Tosser? 
Uh, yes, sir. Yes, that's right. Well, it sounds like you got the right number. Thou art very pretty. Dost thou know us the time? Uh, here, all is full, yeah? Mayhap I will fetch the ale. No, all is full. Good den, my lord. Good den. Okay. Yes. Wherefore needest it thou? Uh. Verily, it is so. Thank you, Tosser. Hello? Hello? Hello. Hello. Uh, is that Germany? This is Germany. Yes, lovely. Uh, you never guess. Uh, what's your name? Thomas. Thomas? Yes. Hello, Thomas. Uh, my name is Steve Penk, and I'm calling from Manchester, England. How are you today? Uh, Steve, what, what do you want? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm in a meeting. What do you want? Right, I don't okay. know you. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll make it quick, Thomas. I can see that I'm irritating you. What's the most stupid question, Thomas, you've ever been asked? I don't know. Maybe, maybe the, your question. I don't know. Uh, maybe my question. Uh, yes. Right. Uh, anything? Anything else that springs to mind? Any other stupid questions you may have been asked? No. 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 Are, are you always this irritable, uh, Thomas? Sorry. Uh, do you always get uh, you know this this worked up? Steve, uh, I uh, I don't know. I don't. I have no time. I I, I have to. I'm in a meeting. I'm sorry. I have to. Uh, I have to break up. Hello. Hello, can we speak to Mrs. Smith, please? Mrs. Yeah, please, yes. Just a minute. Who is it? Uh, Paul Greenwood. Just a minute. Hello? Mrs. Smith? Yeah? Uh, I'm led to believe there's one or two problems last week. Yeah, there was. Could you fill me in, please? You mean to do with me at all? Yes, uh, oh. and, uh, and obviously all the shouting at the workmen who've, you know, obviously reported this back to me. Uh, there's been problems about them digging up your garden or something, I'm led to believe. Who's shouting at the workmen? You yourself. Uh, they say that your language got rather colourful. I just want to get both sides of the story. Language? I haven't said any bad language to nobody. Right, what exactly has been going on? I'm, I know that they're obviously renovating down that road. Have they finished the work now? No, they haven't. So what have they left? They've left half of a fencing up. I put my own flags down, bought my own flags and put them down. What do you mean you're not supposed to do that? I don't care what I'm supposed to do. Well, you're not supposed to do that, love. You're not supposed to put your own flags down. I don't care. You know, I'm, I'm, not having no, I'm not having no f***ing middle of the garden full of leading plants when I don't want them to be. I can understand that, love. I can understand why it's a bit of a mess, you know, and it's, you know, it is your house and you live there, but you're not supposed to put your own flags down. Well, that's, that, that's the reason that the men are down there to do it for you. The men are down here to do it for me, are they? That's right, yes. Oh, they are, are they? Well, well, well where are they now? Where have they been for the past three f***ing week? I beg your pardon? Where have they been for the past three weeks? Well, they are busy, love, you know, they don't just concentrate oh, on your house all the time. Oh, they're busy, so am I. Hey? I'm busy as well. Right, well, I mean, I'm, that's the reason I'm calling you, to try and get this sorted out for you. I can understand that you're upset. Understandable. Uh, but what's this about breaking your toe? I'll tell you what I brought my bloody toe on. The kitchen. The kitchen cupboard, what's been there a fortnight. Well, you should watch where you're going then, shouldn't you? Oh, I should, should I? Well, of course you well, should. Well, you should well leave it there then, should they? But can't you see where you're going? Of course I can. I have my glasses on at the time. Well, I mean, you know, we can't be answerable for everything that goes wrong, you know. And, uh, you know, you won't believe the number of calls I have to deal with every day from balloons like yourself, you know, tripping over things, you know, watching where you're going. Who are you? Paul who? So, what time would you like the men to be no, down tomorrow? No, don't, don't try and change the bloody subject. I'm not so trying to you? change the subject. Paul who? Paul Greenwood, did you say? That's right. Right, well, I'll tell you what, you get it sorted out by the end of the week, otherwise I'm going to see my solicitor. Don't start threatening me, love. Uh, well, don't you, you sh don't start threatening me, then. You know, since I picked up this phone, your language it's been a poor My language is nothing to compare to what I can come out I with. I beg your pardon? So I'll shut your f***ing mouth before you open it. Well, you're not... Because I'll drop you where you stand. I beg your pardon? You heard what I said. You're not getting violent, are you? I am getting violent. Now, listen, I'm telling you, you better cut out this language when you're talking to my men. Well, send them round, then, and I'll drop them where they stand. So I'm not hard, but I'll knock them down a f***ing peg or two, and I'll stop them from f***ing mouthing off as well. Do you have to keep talking like yeah, this? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Anyway, we're not getting any further, are we? No, we're not. sorting out your problem. Well, just, I suggest, you write, you write to me, you get it sorted out, you write to me. Well, I'm ringing you now to sort it out, no, you daft bat. No, it's not. Don't you f***ing daft bat me. I'm trying to sort it out and I'm trying well, to not, be patient. Well, you're not making a bloody very good job of it. Now, what are we going to do to sort out your problem? What are you going to do? Don't tell me what I'm going to do. What are you going to do? Well, I suggest you stop tripping over things, you blind bat. Me, my husband's on the phone now. I suggest you talk to him. I don't want to speak to him. What do I want to speak to him for? Because you're coming out with a load of crap. That's what you're coming out with. Why would I want to possibly speak to him? Because Can't you're coming out with a lord of Can't you fight your own battles? Well, if you, if you so I'll tell you what, you come round to my house now, and I'll sort you out. I've told you, I'll drop you where you stand. You come round. You'll come round now. You'll drop me where I stand? Yeah, I will. Come round. Come round now. No, I think I'll send uh, Sue, uh, Sue Tilsey round instead. Sue, well, what's Sue Tilsey got to do with it? Well, she's written to me to wind you up. 
Steve Bank, is, is it? Is Steve Bank? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you swine. Wait, what's the year after? I watch this, if you're listening, so you're going to get it later. What do you mean? You'll drop me where I stand. What are you talking about? I will. I will. I tell you, if you'd have been him and you'd have come round, I'd have dropped you where you are supposed Oh, you... Anyway, oh, you're forgetting, aren't you, with your language? Listen, do you want to make say anything to Sue then before we go? Yeah, I'll be round after for a cup of tea, make sure it's strong. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Kat. Yeah, thanks a lot. Hotel. My name is Andre. How may I help you? I'm sorry, Andrea? Andrea, yes. Andre. Uh, is Murphy there? With whom would you like to speak? Uh, Mr. Murphy. Mr. Murphy, are you living in the hotel? Yes, please. Let me just see. Yes, I will connect you. Lovely. Hey, we've got a Murphy as well. <laughs> Unbelievable. Steve, I think we might have got a guest, so be polite. Oh, I wouldn't be anything but... He's at work, isn't he? He is. At this time. But ain't that great about a Murphy? Proving the point. Proving the point. Most popular name in Ireland. One minute, one minute. How can I help you? Uh, Mufasa, please. Sorry? Uh, Mufasa? Uh, in which town is this, please? Uh, the jungle. The jungle. Is it the? The Yes. Oh, well, very much the jungle, yes. The jungle. J-U-N-G-L-E. That's it. The jungle, yes. The jungle. The jungle. That's why we're listening for the jungle. Nothing for Mufasa in the jungle. How do you spell that? Not sure. If you can't find Mufasa, have a look under Simba. Timber. Thank you. Thank you. Do you know what type of business? Uh, I think it's a family business. Is it not coming up? Oh, uh, we're checking. It's a big place of the jungle, isn't it? The jungle. That's why we're listening for the jungle. I have the jungle in. Ivor, in Cleethorpes. Oh, no, no, it's not in Cleethorpes. Uh, so nothing for Simba, Mufasa, or Scar? Scar. S-C-A-R? Yes. Scar. Okay. Thank you. 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 I don't know. You've asked me that several times now. <laughs> yes, I have several listings so, for Scar. I have Scar Audio. No, no. I have Bridge. Guest house. No, no, he doesn't sell Scar that. Holiday, uh, no, no. From Holiday Park. Scar Lane Testing Center. No, I think Scar they eat, Garage. I think they eat people. Sorry? Anyway, listen, you've been, you've been absolutely delightful. It's been nice to speak to you, and, I, and I'm sorry you couldn't help me on this occasion. Is there anything else I can help you with? Well, no, no, because you've taken forever for, to, to do this. I'm a busy man. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Help you. Um, hello there. My name is uh, Jerry Springer. Is there anything that um, you'd like to say to me at this time? Um, not myself, no. Right, right. Um, ba basically, I w wanted to um, book a flight um, from L.A. to London. Can you arrange that for me? Is that too outrageous for you to handle? No, I'd be able to do that for you. That's very good. Um, it would be for me. I'm Jerry Springer. Okay, what date did you want to travel? And as well as myself, I wondered if you had space for um, the man Dino Blitzer, uh, who is married to three exotic dancers. Have you heard of Dino Blitzer? I haven't, no. When he comes along to the flight, we can bring him out here. Maybe <laughs> we can have you meet him. I wondered as well, um, could you check availability for a seat uh, for Amber uh, from New York and uh, Lula, who has stolen her man? <laughs> Just a moment, please. Thank you very much. I think, Steve, perhaps um, we are on hold right now. What, what do you think about that? <laughs> Why don't we have a fight? Shall I throw this chair? Yeah, I'll give you a good old slap right now. Come here. <laughs> oh. Easy, Springer. Hello. Um, hello. Hello. I understand you want to go to L.A. in about two weeks' time. That That's correct? fantastic. Um, and we've been just going through some of the people and the choices that they have to make in their yeah. lives right now mm -hmm. as they prepare uh, to come on this flight. Um, mm -hmm. We also have with us uh, Larry 
from Chicago who uh, has married a horse. Larry is married to a horse. Right. Can you fit him in? No, we don't carry horses, I'm afraid. You don't allow horses on your flight? No, we don't. We don't carry any animals at all, I'm afraid. That's uh, a bit of a shame, but um, might you have space for Mr. Dicko Nico, whose pet goat is a stripper? No, I'm sorry, we can't do that either, I'm afraid. Really? If, he, if he's really devoted to his pet goat that is a stripper, then obviously um, he'll have to stay at home with his goat. Tell me, you're, you're very charming right here. What, what, what might your name be? My name is Tina. Tina, okay, this is... What about um, room for Tina, the amazing Harry lady? <laughs> so who's that on w the line? Will you have room for her? Who's, who's that on the line now, please? We'd like to book the whole flight so uh, all the weirdos in the world can fly at the same time. Is that, is that possible? No, I'm sorry, we can't actually accommodate that. Oh, no, and you can't get Steve Penk on either from 95.8 Capital FM? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, we can do that either. We definitely can't get him on, right. There's no chance of that at all. No, I'm sorry. Right, is he banned forevermore from all Virgin Atlantic flights? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> you see the true professional right to the end. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Thank you. Bye. And my final thought is, Tina was very nice right there. And the Steve Pank Show at 95.8 Capital FM is fantastic. And my program has lots of weirdos who fight each other. And it makes lots of cash for me. Until next time, take care of yourself and beat the hell out of each other. What's it like to Hello? Hi. Have you got a sandwich in your mouth? Sorry? No, you sounded like you were eating at the time. Uh, no, I'm not. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry about mm. that. You just sounded like you, uh, yes. Now, uh, <laughs> am, I, uh, mm. am I calling Greenland? Yes, you are. You're calling uh, Hotel Iceberg and you're in Greenland. Oh, great. That's, that's, that's the place that I want. Ex could you just hold on a moment? Yes, of course. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right. Now... Uh, I'm hoping to uh, <laughs> to uh, arrive at your lovely establishment uh, tomorrow, and I I need really I need to know how to get there. Where are you arriving at? Well, I'm I'm coming from Manchester, so if you could give me directions uh, from there, that will, <laughs> that will help. Talk to you later. Bye. What? <laughs> Twins with eight, twins with eight. How can I help you? Men with the moustaches, please. Sorry, men? With the moustaches. Hang about in shorts. That's <laughs> a lot. Hello? In which town, please? Well, they're kind of uh, running all over the place, uh, to be honest with you. I don't have a lot of things showing up at men with the moustaches. Right. Okay. Is well, there anything else I can help you with? Well, I'm quite surprised that it's not listed. To be honest with you. So, you, all right, you can't find it then. Nothing listed at all. I'm doing a national search right now in the whole UK, but nothing listed for men with a moustache. Is there anything else I can help you with? Um, you could try Little Miss Muffet. Oh, there she goes. Yes, hello? Yes? Listen, I'm calling you from the old Sharon. Sorry? Uh, Sharon Stone, I'm calling you from the mobile phone. Yes. How much is it to fly from Nice Airport to Monte Carlo? It's uh, 425 francs now, for one person. Now, is there any chance you can sort out some food when we arrive? Some what? Sorry, I don't hear you. Some food, something to eat? At the airport. Is that possible? Yes. How about a Mona? Sorry? Mona Lisa, pizza. Pizza? Pizza. You want a pizza? Yes, can you sort that out? But we are a um, helicopter uh, company. Yes, I know, but I, I thought you spoke English, love. Yes. Right. Now, what about uh, Giorgio Armani? Giorgio Armani? Yeah, a nice Sarni when I get there, you know, is, is that possible? I, I don't understand. Pizza, Mona Lisa... Uh... Yeah, well, I'm making it as clear as I can, love, you know. How Giorgio Armani... Uh... Yes, a Sarni, a nice Sarni, you know, a nice uh, Giorgio Armani. Now, how will you get me from the heliport to the hotel? Yes, with a bus, with a shuttle bus. With what, sorry? With a shuttle bus. Oh, with a shuttle bus? Yes. Now, could you sort out a Camilla for me? Sorry? Camilla Parker Bowles, you know, a nice Rolls. A Rolls, yes. Oh, that's lovely, oh, you're so helpful. Now, what about some Tom Cruise? 
Oh, well, you know, Tom Cruise, booze. Is it possible to get some booze? Sorry, but we are busy. Now, listen, I know you're busy, but this is important. I need to sort this out. No, I am sorry, mister, but we are, we, we have a, a helicopter company. Yeah, no, I'm trying to sort this out, but, you know, we, we... And uh... we don't understand what you mean. Speak French. Well, I'm trying to make it as clear as I can, you know. No, it's not, it's not clear. Now, what... We are helicopter company. We do the, the traffic from Nice to Monaco. Yeah, right. Okay. Now, and what... when you arrive, when you arrive, we, you are, you have a bus to go to Monaco. Right, that's and great. You ask wha- and you ask to the driver yes. where you want to Ooh. go in Monaco, okay? Yes, that's lovely. Now, what happens if the plane gets in Terry Waite? Hello, if the plane uh, is later... That's right, Terry, wait, late. He's, you see, you're picking, At what time do you see, arrive? You're picking it up already, aren't you? At what time do you arrive? Well, I'm not quite we... sure, you see, but if we get in late, will you wait for us? Hello, you send, you send a, a fax, and yeah. you ask everyone, everything you want. Now, yes. You send a fax. That's right, yes. Okay. Now, now the I, thing I was... is, I've, I've flown with your company before, and you right. are absolutely lovely. Now, last yes, time... Yes, but uh, we don't understand what you, what you want. What is it? Charleston, Tom Cruise, uh, Mona Lisa Pizza, and so... <laughs> and so on. We don't understand. Yes. Well, I'm calling from London, love. We all talk like this over here, you see. Tell me, when you, c- when you arrive in Nice, and yes. I reserve for you a helicopter from Nice to Monaco. Have you had a hard morning, love? For, for, it's for uh, tomorrow? Well, you seem to be getting a bit worked up, you know. Now, last time I flew with you lot, uh, yes. and there, was, there was no delicate way of putting this uh, really gorgeous. Yes. But I don't know if somebody had been ill on board, but inside the helicopter there was such a Dame Judy. No. I don't understand. A Dame, you know, a Dame Judy Dench, or a real stench, you know. Send me a fact. A horrible English. smell on board, and it won't happen again, will it? <coughs> oh, my God, I've said the wrong thing. Uh, thank you very much indeed, thank you. Jollyville Station 2. Hey! Is that Jollyville? Yes. <laughs> How are you? Good. Hey, great. And your name is? Uh, who is this? This is Steve calling from Great Britain. Okay. Yes. What's your name? Paula. <laughs> How are you, Paula? I'm fine. Great. I'm so pleased you put me on the speakerphone. That's great. So, what's it like living in Jollyville, then? <laughs> Sounds like a great place. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> it would really help if you picked up the phone because I can't hear a goddamn word you're saying, woman. Oh, hello, hello, um, hello. Yes. Can you, can you, um, can you, can you, can you hear me? Yes. I'm, um, I'm calling from, um, I'm calling, um... Who would you like to speak to, sir? Well, I was, um, I, when I was, uh, when I, when I was, when I was, um, you know, I, I think, um, I, I think I've, I've, um, have you, have you, have, have you seen it then? Huh? Have you, have, have, have you, have you seen it, uh... What are you, um, what are you, what are you calling for? Well, w- w- when I was, um, when I was, when I was in, you see, um, I mean, all I did was park in the, um, you know, in the, in the wrong, um, when I was, hello? What do you, what type of information are you calling for? Well, if I wondered... calling for any information? I wondered if you'd seen, um, if at all, uh, in, um, you know, one of the, um, if you'd seen what, uh, because I left... I left, um, I, I left, uh, I, I think I've, um, I, I left it there when, when I was in because I, I, I can't, you know, find it, uh, so I, I, have you seen it then? No. Is that it, sir? Um, well, I, you fr- are you from America? It's a long way away, isn't it? Is that San Quentin? <laughs> Not Chris Quentin, because he was in Coronation Street, wasn't he? Yes, yes, <laughs> That's yes. quite enough of that, sir. Thank you very much yes. indeed. And next time you're over, sir, just step into this electric chair. Thank you. 118, 118, how can I help you? Mike Wazowski, please. In which town, please? Uh, Monsters. You have the street address? Uh, I don't, I'm afraid, no. I do apologise. I need a specific street address to be able to complete a residential search. Oh, dear. Well, I don't know the name of the street. Uh, they just seem to live together yes, in some big way. And a mouse, could he be listed on a, under a different surname? You could try uh, James P. Sullivan. Which town? Uh, Monsters. 
Nothing listed, I'm afraid. Oh. Is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, have you looked under Sully? Good morning, Clark Plumbing Heating and Air. Mm, we got a real problem here. Uh oh. What is it? I've got a leak. You've got a leak? Where is it? In the kitchen. Okay, is it under the sink or? There's water everywhere. Okay. Can you be a little more specific? There's about a foot of water now. Oh, okay. Uh, what city are you calling from? My mum and dad left me home alone and it's just everywhere. What city are you calling from? Downtown. Okay, hold on a minute. Are you there? Where have you been? Oh, <laughs> I'm trying to check with dispatch and see when I can get somebody down there, but he's on the phone. No, I need a plumber. Mm -hmm. um, don't worry about the money because I know where my dad's wallet is. Okay, well... <laughs> There's water everywhere. Yeah, I'm sure there is. I'm in deep trouble now. Okay, I'm going to give you a phone number to uh, plum uh, Clark Plumbing that's probably very close to you. Can you do it for me? No, I can't. How long does it take to dry carpets? I don't know, ma'am, but here's the phone number if you want to take it real quick. But what should I do? I need to stop the water now. Um, <laughs> here, let me give you this number. Are you ready? You're a grown-up, aren't you? I can't tell you what to do because I'm not a technician, but if you want to take this phone number and call, I'm sure they'll be more than happy to help you. How old are you, anyway? Yeah, you're not a technician, but you're a grown-up. Okay, are you going to take the phone number or not? So what do you think I should do? Yeah, what the hell? Drown, kid! Hello? Hello, can I speak to Mr. Higginson, please? Speaking. Very good morning to you. Steve Barnes, the Housing Association. Oh, yeah. We've had uh, a number of letters, uh, Mrs. Higginson, about this satellite television. What do you mean? Who's that? Steve Barnes? Steve Barnes, yes. We've had a number of complaints about, you know, the fact that it reduces the tone of the area. You're joking. No, seriously. Which is the reason that I'm contacting one or two residents around there to see what their opinion is, obviously, of the satellite dishes. Uh, and I see from the file that you actually wanted one, didn't you? You were one of the people that actually pushed it through. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, I've got one now. Well, I'm afraid you have to take it down. Why? Because of the number of complaints we've had. We've had about five complaints now. About the what? The fifth one came in this morning. About what? Well, about the fact that it really does lower the tone of the area with all these satellite dishes everywhere. You're joking, at You can't sell a satellite dish. Well, I'm just going off the fact that we've had five complaints. I and mean, if it was just one, we probably would have dismissed it. Uh, even two. We've had five now. Not from our residents, you mean? I beg your pardon? Is it from the area around it? It is, yes. Well, all I can say is that, like I say, we would have dismissed it with one or two because, you know, obviously you can upset one or two people. But when, you get, there, yeah. when you get five complaints, you know, obviously we've got to take it a bit further. Well, why? Uh, did, why wh have you not been an adult then? Well, what do you mean? What's that got to do with it? The fact is we've had five complaints. It you can't it, see it, so can they be complaining? Well, it doesn't matter what my opinion is. Oh, all right then, all right. Well, I, uh, I'm sure you can understand that. You know, we've had five complaints. I mean, they're a bit fussy around there, are they? You're not joking. You mean they've got money, that's what it means. What do you mean they've got money? I don't understand. Well, we're in a very well-off area. But you're in a very posh area, yeah. aren't you? And they, they, what, they obviously don't like it. we're not it. posh. I mean, I, I can't understand some people, the way they complain. That's what I don't understand. I mean, this has just been passed through from my boss, you see, who said to sort it out. Uh, and in the time being, you're going to have to take it down, I'm afraid, while we sort it out. Well, it, it was your specification, Mr Barnes, and it was all passed by you. Yeah, I understand that, love, but, I mean, you know, you're going to have to take it down with five complaints, don't you? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Of course I'm listening to what you're saying, but I had it all passed by your house association. Well, of course you did, but the fact is that we've now had objections. I mean, did you check to see if anybody would object? Mrs Jackson did all this. Well, the fact is, is that, you know, we've had these complaints now, there's nothing I can do, you're going to have to take it down. Well, so... James, look at you. why can't you see into it? Why can't you check it out? Well, we will be checking out, but in the meantime, you have to take it down. Because oh, well, well, do you want me to get on the roof and take it down? Well, not you personally, no. You can ring up and get somebody to take it down for you, can't you? Listen, I've just paid nearly £300. I'm not going to get somebody to take it down until you've checked this out and seen to it. Well, we are going to check it out, but I don't like your manner on the phone. You know, you're getting you a bit... You don't like my manner? You just ring me up out the blood. I don't know who you're talking about, and, and... Who's that shouting in the background there? Can you tell him to be quiet? We're trying to sort this out. This is private business. Look, I'll have to speak to Mrs Jackson about this. I don't like your attitude, neither. Well, what do you mean? I'm trying to sort it out for you to save any nasties. You're trying to sort it out. You're telling me to take the dish down. That's right. Out of the blue. That's right. You check nothing out. You don't give a damn about us. 
Well, I, 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 feelings. I do care a lot about your, your feelings, love. I mean, I really do. But, uh, you it know. It doesn't sound like well, it. Well, listen, when you're dealing all day with people who are complaining all the time, you know, it starts to rub off a little bit after a while. Oh, I'm very sorry about that. Well, and so you should be as well. I've had a hard day so far. It's not right. being helped by you. Oh, listen, so are you from head office, are you? Uh, head office, that's right, right yeah. So I listen, know. get it down. Right. I don't want to hear any more lip from you. <gasps> Hello? Are you still there? Right, thanks for your time. <laughs> Hello? Dorothy, do you know the bloke who rang you before who said he was from the council? Yeah. Well, it's not. Who is it? I've got a letter from your mates. Is it Irene and Steve? Yeah. <laughs> who you work with? <laughs> this is Steve Pang from Key 103, Dorothy. <gasps> oh, you're joking. He said, give her a call, get her going, the daft bat. How are you, Dorothy? I'm not very well now, thank you. <laughs> I've got palpitations, I've got a sweat on. Hey, pal- anybody talking to me like that, you know? Do you know I get palpitations myself, you know what I think? <laughs> They'll cop it. Thank you, Dorothy. <laughs> Bye-bye. You can go and calm down now. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, is that you, baby love? I beg your pardon? Hello? Hello? Listen, I heard it through the grapevine that you found my car. I've lost my car. You heard it through the grapevine that we found your car. It's a red one. A red one? Yes. So, uh, let's get it on. Have you seen it, then? Uh, no, sir. Uh, you need to talk to auto staff and they give you... When did you report your car stolen? Well, it must have been uh, about a couple of hours ago now. Uh, I mean, this old heart of mine can't believe the car's gone, you know. I mean, I come over here for a holiday and it's gone. Okay, hold on. Ah, that's great, oh, that's great. Sorry, may I help you? Hello, is that you, baby love? I beg your pardon? I've lost my car, Cheeky Chops. Uh, it's a red one. Okay, you have a rented car? Uh, it was a rented one, yes. Uh, it's a red one. Where are you now? Reach what? out, I'll be there. Sir? Eh? I said just reach out, it's I'll be there. It's a rental car? It's a rent one, it's a rental one, yes, it is. Okay, uh, that's no re- problem. Right, because you, okay. ca- you have to be careful with cars, though, you know, especially mine. You have to treat her like a lady. Okay, it's a rental car. Now, when you say you've lost it, do, do you have you misplaced it or has it been stolen? Well, I, I don't know to be honest, because uh, like I say, I just I went and do a bit of shopping. Because you have to talk to it, you know. Because uh, I kiss the handbrake every morning and whisper to the dashboard, "You are everything." Uh, I mean, I'm sorry about this. I can't help myself, you know. I just thought I had to call to try and sort it out. Uh, do you think you can find it then? I don't know. That depends. What kind of a car is it? You're the sunshine of my life, if you can. I tell you. What kind of a car is it? Well, it's a red one. Well, what? Okay, what kind? Please, Mr. Postman, can you find it? Well, not unless you tell me what kind of a car it well, is. Well, no, I don't know. You know, it's just a red one. It's a uh, sort of red one. That's it. Because uh, I'm not very good on cars, you know. Automatic. Does that help? Do you have any paperwork on the vehicle? Uh, well, I do, yes. Uh, but it's in the car, obviously. Uh, so, do you think you can find it for me, then? No, not unless we know what kind of a car it is. And what's your name? My name is Officer Bishop. Officer Bishop? It's me, Steve Pink. Remember me? Steve Pink? Where did our love go? Do you remember me? <laughs> Who is this? Stop! In the name of love! Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, there ain't no mountain high enough. I wouldn't go for you, Officer Bishop. I'll tell you now. Oh, really? you got to give me time. I'll be there. you got to be there, huh? Oh, of course. Do you remember me, though? No, I don't remember. Is there any chance you could touch me in the morning? Oh, yeah. I'll call you in the morning. Right. Well, listen, if you could find the car, that'd be great. Just give me a call. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye. Winbinate, Winbinate, how can I help you? Fred Flintstone, <laughs> please. Hello? Hello? Yes? Um, I'm sorry, do excuse me. Um, Fred Flintstone. Fred Flintstone. In which town, please? Uh, Bedrock. Bedrock. I do apologize. In which town? Bedrock. Uh, Bedrock, yes, please. Thank you. In which county? Uh, Bedrock. <laughs> I do apologize. I don't have a time coming up with bedrock. Oh, nothing. Um, oh. Have you tried Barney Rubble? Barney Rubble. Uh, Barney Rubble. Barney Rubble. Is it the name of the town? Uh, Barney. Yes, Barney. Barney Rubble. The listing I have for Barney is in Norfolk. Could it be the one? No, he doesn't live in Norfolk. <laughs> it's, def- it's definitely bedrock. Oh, dear. Obviously couldn't find it. Do you want to try uh, Betty then? 
Good morning. Yes, a very good morning to you. Uh, this is Stefano Penchino, the amazing man. I'm sure you've heard of me. Yes. What I do is I do amazing things. That's why I'm called the amazing yes. man. What I'm hoping to do is do my next amazing act at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Well, you need to ring back a bit later. You need to speak to somebody in entertainment. If that's possible. And there's nobody in entertainment. There may not be anybody in this morning. Well, I mean, what I'm hoping to do, perhaps you could tell me if it's all, is, you know, it's, it's, it's possible at all. What I'm hoping to do is strap myself uh, naked to the roller coaster. Just a moment. And, uh, sorry. Come on, can you Just I'm putting you through to somebody else. Oh, Just thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, can I help you? Uh, hopefully you can, I very much hope so. Uh, this is Stefano Penchino, the amazing man. I'm sure you've heard of me. I haven't actually, no. All oh, right. What I'm hoping to do is, uh, is, is you know, because I do amazing things, that's why I'm called the amazing man, you see. I'm hoping to do my next amazing act at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, if that's possible. And what I'm hoping to do is strap myself to the roller coaster and at the same time, whilst blindfolded, paint a picture of a lovely bunch of flowers. I'm sure you'll agree. Amazing. <laughs> it is. I mean, lots of people do find it hard to believe at first, but uh, I've been doing this for, for a number of years. Uh, do you think there'll be enough room for me paint while we're going round? Um, well, I wouldn't really like to say. I mean, obviously we will be filming this for a television spectacular featuring me, that's uh, Stefano, of course. Right. Uh, but you can just call me Mr. Penkino if you like. Uh, I mean, will you be available yourself to help me out? I don't think so, no. It doesn't but, sound like my type of thing. Well, because I always do have a glamorous assistant on each of my amazing acts. Would, would you think you'll be available? I, don't, I doubt that very much. Why? Are you ugly or something? <laughs> No, it just doesn't sound my type of thing. Right, understandable, because it does take nerves of steel and a certain amount of stupidity to do what I do. I can imagine. Does the fact that I'll be naked disturb you in any way? Hello? Hello. Oh, does it take sight you at all? <laughs> Not exactly, no. All oh, right. Uh, obviously, there will be enormous crowds then once uh, the news gets out that Stefano Penchino, the amazing man, is going to be there. So that should bring in a f bit more business for you, shouldn't it? Uh, it certainly probably would. So, shall we split the money, say, 50-50? Oh, definitely. That seems fair to me. So can I leave it up to you to sort it out for me then, big girl? Well, actually, it's our entertainment department you actually need to speak to. Yes, but obviously you're in. You've got your foot in the door, haven't you? You can put a word in for me. Well, not exactly in the entertainment department. No, I just take the bookings. So I've obviously got to prepare myself for it, you know, psych myself up for it. And your name is, young lady? My name's Karen. Right, Karen. So, are you sure you wouldn't like to help me out? No, I don't think so. Because, you know, you sound as if you'd be very, very helpful. Uh, you could hold me. You could hold the easel for me. That would uh, keep it steady, you know. Oh, I, I can imagine, yeah. While we're going round, you know, because it can get a bit dangerous. I can imagine. Once well, you don't get things trapped. <laughs> So, uh, well, thank you very much for your time. OK. And if you could just mention to, to, you know, to the big cheese down there that Stefano Pinkino has been on and I'll be down next weekend. I, I will mention that. That's very kind of you. OK, thank you. God bless now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello, is that Wembley Stadium? Yes. Hi, it's me. Who's me? <laughs> I don't believe it. Hey, it's Sasha. Sasha who? Oh, <laughs> I cannot believe you, you little tease that you are. Uh, Sasha Distel, of course. Oh, hello. The yes, drops keep falling in my head. Yeah, but do, I mean, do you know somebody particularly here? Because I don't know you. Uh, uh, do you, do uh, you know uh, somebody uh, actually here? Because I literally don't know who you are. I'd like to book this stadium, please. Hold on a moment, I'll put you on to my supervisor. One moment. I want to, are you there? Can I help you? Hello, it's me, Sasha. Right. Can you leave me a telephone number, please? Yes, I can. Are, are you are you a fan of mine? Do you I like my songs? Really no. Well, I want to uh, I want to book Webley Stadium. I want to book it. I want to put a concert on there, just to show, just to prove to everybody that I've still got it. Right. I've well, still can you give me your telephone number? Raindrops are falling in my head. I'll get somebody to come back to you on it. I can do it if the Spice Girls can do it too. Can you give me your telephone number? Feelings. 
Nothing more than feelings. Can you leave me your number? Do you know, I know exactly what I'm going to wear. I'm going to wear some very tight white trousers that I wore in 1973. Will you be there to watch me? No. When I say I will, I'm going to sell the place out. You're going to sell the place out. This is a beautiful opportunity for me because when I appeared on 321 with Ted Rogers, you know, I, I wanted to follow that up into Wembley Stadium then, but I did not for some reason or another. So it's going to be wonderful to do it now. It would, yes. My old man is a dustman. What's this? Any old Diane, any old Diane, any, any, any old Diane. Can I have your address for your fan club? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, Leicester Square, London. Leicester Square, London. Not and, the uh, radio. What, what, what is your name? I would like. Can I sing a love song for you? A love song? Yes, can I do it for you? <laughs> Can I sing a love song sing for it, you? Sing it with feelings, Sasha, because I know she's she's hot now. Feelings. feelings. You are awful. <laughs> Nothing more than feelings. <laughs> when you're on the Steve Pank show. My name's Jackie. Jackie, yes, this is Jackie on the Steve Pank show, 95.8 Capital FM. Tell me that's not going out now. I'm afraid it's going out right now, Jackie. Oh. Yes, this is Jackie, a star of London, you've right now. To my supervisor, you've got through to me. So can you book the stadium for Sasha then? No problem. <laughs> Only if I can come on stage with him. Well, of course you can. The three of us together. It'll be lovely. Hey, Jackie, what's your second name? Malloy. This is Jackie Malloy, everybody. <laughs> hey, Jackie, we love you. We love you too, Steve. We've got to go. Bye. Hello, Visa. Good afternoon. Hello. My secretary's just quit. She caught me kissing the wife. So? What can I do for you? This is the German embassy. Yes, I can see that. Uh, what comes after six? What do you mean, what comes after six? Are you joking or something? Uh, well, you'd never know, would you? Well, I mean, what do you want to know? I mean, do you, do you, are you making a joke or something? Because I'm going to hang up here. Hello? Hello? Yeah, hello, I'm calling out the snake you've got for sale. Oh, yeah, I've still got it, yeah. Yeah, can you tell me a bit about it? Uh... What type is it? Uh, the Ghana red tails. Uh, the male's five and a half foot, female four and a half foot. Is it poisonous? No, not at all. Uh, have you not kept snakes before? Well, I've never had a snake before, you know, but I've always fancied one. You know, the wife doesn't know yet, but uh, it'd, be, oh. it'd be a bit of a surprise for her. Uh, I think they... it might be a bit too much of a surprise. Do they come to you when you call them? No. <laughs> no, I mean, can you give them names, you know, do they understand what you're saying? Well, not really. Right. So where do they sleep then? Where do they sleep now? You, you know, if I was to buy it, where was it sleep? In, In your bed? house somewhere if you've got a cage for it. Oh, you've got to buy a cage, have you? Yeah. And you have to get a snake licence? No. No. Not for these. And can you get such a thing as a snake lead, you know, you take it out for a walk? No. <laughs> no? I don't think that would really be uh, suitable for you. You can't really handle them. So right. They'll what, bite you. What, will they crush you as well, will they? Yeah. Well, well, they can do. I mean, I'm not saying that they will. Oh, well, I'll give it to the wife then for Christmas. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to leave the heating on all the time, do you? Yeah, they've got to be uh, kept about eighty, eighty-three. What well, they like? Like 80, well, they like it warm then, do they? Yeah. yeah. Well, like the tropical snake. I mean, I don't really think they'd be suitable for you. Well, how much a is it? Beginning snake. Yeah. Well, how much is it? I do the pair. Well, like, it's really a pair that I'd want to get rid of. Yeah. Right. Like, Two hundred and fifty pounds. Like that. So what do you do when you go away then? Is you know, is there a snake home you can take it to or something? No, they don't need much looking after. Really, you just leave them. Well, yeah. you just let it out in the garden, do you? They... No. <laughs> so uh, they don't chew the carpet, do they? No. It's just that I had a puppy once. You know, it yeah. did that. The wife went mad. Mm. So, uh, so can I think about it then? Okay. And um, what what sort of snake is it? Uh, Garn and red tail. Right then. And how long is it? Uh, five and a half foot and four and a half foot. Right then. Okay, well, I'll certainly think about it. Anyway. All right, then. All right. Okay, and, uh, bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Hello, Danny and Pendle. Hello, I was on the, um, the, the bus at the weekend and I lost my, um... Hello? Yes. Has, yes. has, has anybody handed it in? What was it that you lost? Well, I lost it at, at um... Yes, but what was it, sorry? Uh, well, it was about, it, I can't remember what time it was, it was kind of late afternoon, uh, and, and I left it on the, um, coming back from... Yes, but what was it that you left? What, what did you lose on the bus? Uh, the brown thing. Brown what? Um... Yes. Uh, I just wondered if anybody's handed it in, yes, because I... Yes, brown I, what, sorry? Well, I was, I was just coming back from, um, 
You know, we've been to sea. What, sorry? What is it that you actually lost? Well, I, I left it on there, and, um, I just wondered if anybody had, had handed it in. Yeah, but if you tell me what it is that you've lost, I'll be able to loot for you. Well, we're coming back from Auntie Pat's, I think it was, and, um, I was on the, um... <laughs> Can I help you? Uh, yes, I'm looking for uh, for a name, please. Uh, in Oldham. Can I have the surname, yeah? Yes, can I spell the name for you? It's an unusual name. Okay, can I have the surname? Can you spell that? Please? Yes, I'll yeah. spell the name for you. Yes, it's T E double S. Yes. T I C K L E. Can you have the town name, please? Uh, yes, Oldham. Yes, I do apologise. I have no listing for Tastico in Oldham. Right. Nothing under that surname. Is there anything else I can help you with? <laughs> um, yeah, hello? Yes, nothing for that surname. Nothing at all? There's none. Right, okay. Anything else I can help you with? Uh, yes, you can look for, uh, Jack Spratt. Jack? Jack Spratt. Can you spell the surname again? I Please? can. S for... <laughs> Sausage. Yeah. Uh, P for... Papa. Papa. Yeah. R for... Ra Ra. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> A for... Mm -hmm. Auntie Pat. Mm -hmm. uh, T for... The tango. Tango. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> T for... Elephant. What? T for T elephant? For echo. What are you talking about? T. T, T for, for... Tango. T for tango and T for tango. Yeah. I only have one listing for Spratt in Oldham. No, no, have... no, Jack, Jack Spratt. Jack Spratt. The surname is, is the surname Spratt? It is, yes. He's okay. the fellow that could eat no fat, and his wife could eat no lean. There's only one listing I have here for Spratt in Oldham, which is not X directory. Uh, but is it in Jack Oldham. Spratt? It's not. Oh, dear Lord. Okay, well, listen, thank you so much for trying. Is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, you could try, uh, Little Jack Horner. Corner. Is it H-O-R-N-E-R? -E it is, yes. He's in the corner. Corner. C-O-R. Uh, On yeah, little Jack, town. little Jack Horner's in the corner. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Can I have the same name again? Is it, is it Corner? C-O-R-N-E-R. Uh, -E uh, no, it's, <laughs> it's not Corner, it's Horner. <laughs> H-O-R-N-E-R. In which town again, right. please? Uh, uh, corner. It's uh, Jack Horner, <laughs> but he, he sits in the corner. In which town? Corner. Is it Corner Row in Lancashire? Uh, it might be, yes. Okay, they do apologise to have no listing for Corner in Corner Row. Oh, dear Lord. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for looking anyway. Anything else? I can help. Um, Wee Willy Winky. <laughs> Hello? 
ahí del tamaño tropical unos días la tienda de baile que puede ayudarme. Hello, sir. Hello. Um, could you... Oh, could you just hold on a moment? Sorry? It's <laughs> better. Um, who am I talking to, please? My name is Byron. Uh, uh Brian? Byron, yeah. Uh, Brian, right. <laughs> right, Brian. Uh... Now, uh, hello? Hello. Yes, uh, is this Brian? No, he's not there for the moment. Can I help you? Oh, right. He didn't stick, <laughs> stick around long, did he? Um, so your name is? Charlotte. Charlotte. Lovely. Now, Charlotte, let's hope we can get somewhere. Could you, um, describe the balcony at, uh, at the, at the hotel? Well, if you look it through internet, you will see them, sir. Right. Well, I've been on the internet and it's not working today. It's frozen. The screen's frozen. So, so I need to... where, where have you been in internet? Uh, sorry, on, I, the, on the website from High Hotels. I, I have, yes, and uh, I was just... Well, if you put in goggles, if you put some in you well, will find all the pictures. Well, sir. there's no point in wearing goggles because uh, <laughs> the, uh, the screen is frozen and, uh, you know, even wearing goggles is not going to show me the balcony. So I need to know what the balcony is like. How much room is actually on the balcony? How much what? How much room? Uh, d how much space? Is there much space on the balcony? So for this you have to contact High Hotels, they have the description of the hotel, sir. Right. Well, I just th thought with you working there, Charlotte, that, um, you would, uh, you would know. Now, the thing is, I like to, uh, practice the whistling. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to know what, uh, what the balcony's like. So if you want, call the company of High Hotel and they will give you all the description, sir. Right, you're not very patient at all, are you? No, I'm not. But I... what you want, I don't have it here, sir. You have to call the, the company of the hotel and they will give you the description of the hotel. Oh, right, okay. Well, I'm sorry to be so irritating to you. Um, now, could you tell me what the, um, what the hotel is like? It's an apart hotel, sorry. Yes. I don't know how... G y the much better things that you can do is... To internet, that's why we, we have this website. Well, I've told like you. This, the uh, people well, I've told you once, and I'll tell you for the fourteenth time, uh, that my screen is frozen. I've uh, tried wearing goggles, but it doesn't appear to, to so help. You have me. a problem with your computer. Right. Well, that's not helping me now, is it? I've done. I've gone to the truck. Yes, the but I can do nothing, sir. If you don't have any computers, I cannot send you pictures. I can. Uh, well, I don't I want pictures. As I say, I, you know, I've gone to the trouble of looking up your number. Uh, ringing International Director Inquiries, picking up the phone, ringing you, speaking to some funny fellow who just picked up the phone and got bored after thir 30 seconds, and now I've got you, who's clearly irritated because somebody's taking the time and the trouble to call you. Well, we are quite angry because we have a lot of people waiting to make the chicken now. You've got people waiting to make chicken? <coughs> you, hello? <laughs> Merry Christmas! Yeah, Merry Christmas, yeah. Merry Christmas, yeah. What's your name? <laughs> My name is Ratka. Ratka? <laughs> yeah. That's lovely. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much. Well, listen, listen. I'm, my name is Steve, and I'm calling from Manchester, England. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I'm just calling you, uh, Ratka, to, uh, to wish you a Merry Christmas. Yes, a Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not today. <laughs> lovely. Yeah, I know it's not today, uh, you silly woman. Uh, I know it's, uh, it's next week, but I just wanted to wish you, to wish you uh, a very Merry Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, you too. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Now, what will you personally be doing for Christmas? Me, actually, no, I'll be working. Oh, you'll be working? Yeah, I'll be here in the hotel. So. Oh, that's <laughs> terrible, isn't it? Oh. It's, you know, it's quite complicated here this oh, year. Oh, is so. it? Well, has he left you, has he? Mm -hmm. Oh, right. <laughs> so, uh, well, listen, this is the 12 calls of Christmas, yep. and uh, <laughs> we're just calling around the world to wish people a very Merry Christmas at this season. Oh, of, yeah, it's very nice of, of you, yeah. yeah <laughs> that's right. So, listen, in your native tongue in Tarnos, could you, um, could you wish everybody a Merry Christmas? Yeah, I will, yeah, I will, yeah, I will uh, tell happy them. Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas from you. <laughs> yes, yeah. Could you say for me, uh, in Czechoslovakian, to all, everybody listening in Manchester, England, could you wish everybody a very Merry Christmas? In my language, huh? Please. Veselé Vánoce všem, všem v Anglii, všem v Manchesteru. Yay! <laughs> That's lovely. Well, listen, you have a lovely Christmas. Yeah, you too. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Yes, bye bye. I hope you and your husband <laughs> get back together soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hello. 
Shane, it's me. Hello, boy. Hello, how are you, hello, are you all right, mate? Oh, I love this. I've got to tell you, it's a brilliant film last night. Did you? Air Force One. Oh, was it good? Oh, that's oh, Harrison Ford, isn't it? Harrison Ford and Gay Album. Excellent. Oh, that was brilliant. Anyway, listen, I've got a t- uh, uh, there's a, oh, it's, it's all happened here, mate. Are you at the house? Yeah, I'm at the house, yeah, you know, it's just, the, the builders are here, but I mean, I've come, i come out of the loo and uh, I can't believe it, there's, you know you're landing. The gallery? The, yeah, yeah, well it's, are you supposed to be having it all down or what? No. Well, I can't believe it, mate. There's dust everywhere. You know your stereo was in the corner. Well, that's that's got the old things come down. This all it is is the stairs there. I can't. What you're supposed to do is just reinforce the gallery. Well, no, the whole thing's down. I can't believe there's a massive great big crash about five minutes ago. It's and it was... the f- thing down. No, it's come down. It's fallen down. It's gone on all, all onto on the floor. The floor's gone on it, and the settee at the back. It's just all, it's, I can't tell you how much right, dust. Right, and tell him to get out of the house. Well, the builders are there. They're just sort of standing around doing nothing. But it's not... It's it the stereo. It's the dust is everywhere. You're joking. No, I, I can't... Honestly, mate, I can't believe it. It's just like... Just everywhere. It's come through into the kitchen. You know where the little stairs are down? It's just... It's just gone everywhere. Oh. Okay, you know, it's... it's <sighs> Which ones of them do I know? Well, I only recognise one of them. The other one... There's, one of them's got a kid with him. Oh, I don't believe it. Well, God, just tell them. It's, it's, what can I... Do? I mean... I'm in the right panic stations here because I don't know what to say. Tell them to get out of the house. Well, and it's your telly as well. You know, near the house, huh? You well, no, it's your telly as well, mate. The dust is... I can't tell you, it's like... Well, they not cover any of this? Well, yeah, well, they covered the thing, but not the telly. Where it's come down, it's just blown the thing off. It's just... It's... Oh, it's just a mess everywhere. And your stained glass window's got dust all the way up it. It's just... So, did they not put any stuff under the gallery? No, they so didn't. They didn't, like, prop it up or anything? No, 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 no. Well, they put these poles there, but the poles went, and there was just this massive crash. I'll come running out, and it's like, oh, I just, it's just amazing. It's just... Phone Simon, or even phone Stan, and get somebody there to get them out of the house. Well, I... To get out of the house, and get Simon, someone round, or even get Danny. Is Danny about? No, I haven't seen Danny. Get some of the lads... There's nothing we can do with this, mate. There's nothing we can do with it. Well, they're off again, mate. It's one of the builders. It's it's just... It's just... God, put the... Builder on. Uh, yeah, oh, oh, hello, mate. Oi, let yeah. me tell you something. You what? get the f- out of the house now. Goss is going to ring Simon. Well, it's not my problem, mate. It's not my problem. It's just collapsed. It's just, uh, you know, it's flattened everything. That's the problem. <laughs> and the chief's here. Steve Penk's here right now. <laughs> you. <laughs> you. Mr. Penk, I swear I'm going to kill you, Penk. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm swearing at everything. Hook, line, and sinker. Oh, that's it. That this is the, this is the third time, Peggy, you have got me. If I never do anything ever again, it's to get you back. Do you realise we've been plotting this for over a week now? Because you are dead now, boy. I am gonna get you. Yeah, it's just a mass of rubble, mate. No point coming home. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's, well, that's it now. You stay in Florida, mate. <laughs> I don't believe it. Hey, Shane! Oh, shut up, Steve! I got. I love you, man! Oh, well, I, oh, that's it. If I don't do nothing else, Panky, I'm gonna do ya. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you back. If it takes six years, I will do something. Shane! What? Enjoy your holiday. See you later, mate. <laughs> oh, oh, no, my house. Wonder nights, wonder nights, I can all help you. Soup Dragon, please. Which town, please? Uh, Clanger Planet. Is it in Southern Ireland? No, it's not. No, it's in Clanger. Clanger. Indeed. Let me do a general search. Excellent. I'm thanks. doing a general search in the UK. I'm showing the Super Dragon only in Leeds. I'm sorry, you, you're showing, showing what? I'm showing the Super Dragon in Leeds uh, only. No, do, 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 do. It's not Super Dragon, it's the Soup. Dragon. The soup, S O U P. Sorry. Yes, that's why you can't find it. <laughs> it's here, Lord. I'm checking in a UK for you. I'm trying to soup a dragon in London, N A. No, it's definitely the Clanger Planet. What is the error code, or what is the postcode for Clanger Planet? What is the postcode? Yes. How the hell do I know? Uh, but, but would you like to try the listing I have? Maybe they can help you. It's oh. the same business that you're looking for. Is it on the Clanger Planet, though? No, but well, it's then the it same business. The right number. Well, it won't be the right number, then, will it? If it's another Clanger Planet. I'm sorry, there's no listing. Is there anything else I can help you with? I don't want to be wasting Thank people's you. time. Hello? Thank you very much.
very much. Good afternoon, General Adventures. Crystal speaking. Hello there. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Well, it's lovely to speak to you. Really? Am I calling Christmas? Yes. Oh! Uh, sir, can I help you? Well, it's only four months to go till Christmas Day! Are you excited? Sir. Yes! Huh? Exactly four months today, Christmas Day! Now listen, I'm calling all the way from Great Britain and we're very excited because exactly four months today, Christmas Day! Dreaming of a Christmas. Are you excited? No, I'm not. Oh, why? What's happened? Who is this? Well, my name is Steve Pink, and I'm calling all the way from Great Britain, and we're very excited because today, of course, is August the 25th, and exactly four months today, Christmas Day! You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not cry, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town! Are you excited? No, I'm not. Well, good God, woman, you live in Christmas, Florida, and you're not excited? No. <laughs> Why, have you had a bad day? No, not really. Oh, <laughs> right. Well, this is Christmas Florida I'm calling, isn't it? Yes. Oh! Every day is Christmas in Florida. I suppose you get a bit fed up with it after a while, do you? Yeah, I just... I was only trying to cheer you up, you know. <laughs> Thanks. Sound a bit cheesed off, don't you? What's, what's wrong with you? Nothing. Well, as I said, four months today, Christmas Day! Oh, I can hardly wait to tell you. <laughs> and what do you hope Santa's going to bring you this year? I have no idea. A personality, perhaps? Sir. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm just worried about you. Wow, really? And you don't even know me? It's Christmas Florida, everyone! I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Well, I must be moving on. I'll, uh, I'll speak to you again. Okay. Bye bye! Bye. Bye! Say that, may I help you? Hello, is that Ding Dong? Yes, it is. Lovely. Uh, and and to who am I speaking? Joey. Uh, Joey? Yes, what can I do for you? Yes, I I'm calling from Manchester, England. Uh, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, could, you, do you need to get someone here? Uh, no, no, I just, I just need to speak to somebody at Ding Dong, if that's, uh, if that's possible. And, uh, and, and thank you Well, I'm sorry, you have the wrong number. Hello? One minute, one minute. How can I help you? Uh, Homer Simpson, please. Homer Centre. In uh, which town, please? Uh, Springfield. Springfield in County Fermanagh? No, I don't, County? I don't think it is. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where Springfield is, to be honest with you. I've just got... Uh, uh, Springfield is, uh, this many, uh, towns named Springfield. I'm, uh, so, one in I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't catch any of that then. It was, uh, it was gibberish. There's a lot of towns named, um, named Springfield. Do you happen to know which county? Uh, no, I've just got... Do you know what type of business is this? Um, I think he works, uh, let me just check, hang on a moment. Yes, I'm told he works at a nuclear power plant. Nuclear power plant? Um, mm, apparently so. Are you looking for Homer Simpson specifically? <laughs> um, Bart, you, you could try Bart. For your queries, uh, you need to call our international director inquiries. Maybe they can help you. Oh, Thank right. you. Okay, okay then. Oh, God. Rather impatient, Monty. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.
Hello. Oh, is that Mr. Davis? Yes. Oh, yeah, hello, Mr. Davis. Uh, this is Simon Cole from Wimbledon Council. Right. Uh, in circumstances like this, Mr. Davis, we have to investigate once we get a complaint. Complaint about what? Well, we've got a complaint from one of your neighbours about excessive noise, Mr. Davis, and in particular the revving of cars and loud music late at night. Oh, I'm sorry? Now, where are you getting these complaints from? So what exactly has been going on then, Mr. Davis? Let's try and establish that before we go any further. I've, I've been fixing my own car on my own drive. Yeah, have you got no consideration for anybody apart from yourself, Mr. Davis? I'm just... Don't you speak to me like that. What are you shouting for? Anybody. What are you shouting for? Because I'm trying to tell you. I'm now, it might not seem loud to you, Turkey Neck, but your neighbours think it's loud. No, you come on here giving me all this stuff about complaints when I haven't done a... Thing. So just how often do you go out fixing your car then, Mr. Davis? Let's try and establish that. Look, over the last three days, I've had my car on the driveway. I've been doing some general jobs. I've not been getting in anybody's way. Yeah, how are you, I'm, not saying that you, I'm, I'm not saying you get in people's way, but how would you like it if somebody was disturbing you at night? Uh, you won't be too happy, would you think? I'll be, I'll pack in at half past eight every night. Yeah, but it's the noise, it's, you know, consistently night after night. I've not been doing any noise. All I, I've been fixing the car, the radio has been on. Ah, ah, you see, there we have it, you see. So how long have you been fixing cars on your drive then, Fartface? I've been... What did you say? Uh, nothing. You do realise, don't you, though, Thicko, that uh, disturbing the peace like this, if found guilty, you could be fined £3,000. Look, where's these complaints been coming from? Well, I've told you, from your neighbours. Who's I'm, been I'm, giving you this money? They don't need to tell me where these complaints is coming from, because I know. You know, I meet too many people like you in my game. Aggressive, thoughtless, scary morons. What did you say? Nothing. What uh, did you all say? All I can say is, thank God I don't live next door to you. That's all I can say. Anyway, Camel Breath, uh, try and have some consideration Look, for the people, will uh, you? listen, I'm getting pretty sick of this. I don't care what council you're from, you don't come on here and talk to me like that. There again, you know, you car mechanics are all the same, aren't you? Brainless. You do. If you don't mind me saying so. You, you know, come on down here. You know the thing is, don't you, Mr. Davis? If you're playing loud music on the drive, if you chose to play the Steve Pank show on 95.8 Capital FM, I'm sure everything would be fine. <laughs> How well do you get on with your sister, Alison Richard? <laughs> oh. I will kill that guy. My God, don't you go very quickly. I will kill that guy. <laughs> the original Mr. Angry. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Yeah, your sister oh. Alison has told us to give you a ring, Richard. Apparently you uh, you like fixing and tinkling with your cars on the drive. And there's nothing wrong with a bit of tinkling on the drive, that's what I always oh, say. Oh, dear, oh, dear. She's always... I'm always winding her up, I've got to say. <laughs> that's and what she, she said. said. She said for a long time that, you know, she would get me back. But Listen, Richard, have you got a message for Alison before we go? So we've got to go now. Just to say... You're in trouble, love. I'll have you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've been... I was, I was slagging off the old girl from two doors up. I was uh, thinking that she'd complain, but... Uh... Easy now, Richard, easy now. <sighs> Cheers, Richard. Oh, you git. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, how may I help you? Lovely! Uh, your name is? My name is Sarah. Sarah, how are you? Fine. Great! Now, Sarah, uh, uh, my name is Steve Pank, and I'm calling from Manchester, uh, in England. Yes. And uh, we're calling you as part of our 12 calls of Christmas to wish you a Merry Christmas! <laughs> oh, has she gone? She's gone. She's on it. She's gone. Well, for the season cheer, they're only the sweets. Tis the season to be jolly. Hello, Brian. It's Lisa. Well, hello. Hi, are you alright? Yes, love. It's Kappa, I was like. Yeah. Can't have a word. Hi, Hi, Kath, love. You all right? Yeah, fine. Listen, I've got a real problem there. I've got the bailiffs at my door. Well, what? But, because Brian took out a loan for £2,000 and they want stuff out of my house. And he's, he's only going to use you as guarantor. Did you know all about this? We don't know. Well, they're, they're, they reckon that they're going to send bailiffs round, round for, for payment from you. He's not paid anything for three, three months. You're joking. I'm not joking. Oh, for f sake. I don't know what we're going to do, Cass. They, they want to send the firm round. That the, I'm not letting them have anything out of my house. Well, they can't, I've not signed for nothing. You can't use me and Madam Shaw because I've not signed for nothing. I know, that's why I thought you knew about it. No, I've not signed for nothing, Lisa. Well, it, it, they, 
they're, they're saying that they've got your name. I've not given them your name. They've got your name. Uh, your guarantor on a loan for £2,000 that Brian Healy's took out. Um, and if, if, if he hasn't got the payment, then because you're, he's put you down as guarantor, it, the, the payments fall to you now. And he's phoned you Brian. Head. He's not answering his mobile. He left the, he left the sandbatch at, at half eight and must still be on his way there because he's not answering his mobile. I don't believe this. Oh, it's all a need. I was talking to him last night as well on the phone. He's never said anything to me about this. But well, what's he got two grand for, Lisa? I, 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 I don't know. You tell me. I've got no idea. I thought that you'd have known about this because you have to say, you have to... I am signed, for... Lisa, I have signed for nothing. No way have I signed for anything. It's just not mentioned out to you, as you know. No. No, I know nothing about this, Lisa, not a thing. What are you going to do? Well, there's no I can do it at the minute. What is this? Sending bailiffs. They're sending bailiffs here, and I have time for nothing, eh? Well, I don't know whether they'll have paperwork or something. But if they've got paperwork, it's not my signature on it. Tell her we want the telly, love. What was that? Tell her we want the telly. Uh, <laughs> the telly and the three-piece suite. Here, do you have a word with him? Now I've got them here now. Do you want on the phone now, Lee? Right. Yeah. Hello, love. Hello. Uh, uh, yeah, hello. Who am I speaking to? Uh, my name is Mr. Healy. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the father. Right, so you're uh, you're the con artist then, are you? That's uh, in all this money? Well, yeah. I beg your pardon? I, I said you're, you're, the, you're the fellow that owes all this money, are you? I owe nothing. I don't know nothing about anything. Well, it's two and a half grand we've got here, Chief. I have no idea what, anything about what's happening at all. Anyway, we've got we've got your address in real. We'll be down uh, about lunchtime. I've, and, uh, oh, I've signed for nothing, so I'm going to get my solicitor now. Here at the house, right? Uh, you know, uh, y your son owes us, so... Uh, you know. but I've signed for nothing. If I've signed for something, I'll pay it, but I've signed for nothing. So unless you've got my signature on that to back it up, sorry, mate. Can you tell her to shut her face? Uh, excuse me. I'm not, I'm not talking to her, I'm talking to you. Right, well, there's only to be abusive. I'm not talking to the monkey, I'm talking to the organ grinder. Excuse uh, me. I'm sorry. Well, what, there's no need for any of that, so. I'll just hand you back to your, uh, your daughter-in-law, hang on a minute. Hello? Hello, Lisa. Hiya. Uh, what was he saying, man? What were you saying? He's, been, he's been a bit, um, bit of a... Oh, oh, I heard, oh, I heard what he said. What did you say to him? Just said that. She's not, she's not signed for nothing. I don't know. I don't know how this is going to go away, you know. I don't know how we're going to sort this out. I don't know myself yet. Just tell him, love, we don't need a signature. We can say what we like. We'll break the door down. <laughs> Did you hear what he said? I heard that, yeah. The best thing you can do, Lisa, is uh, for the time being, uh, we had the police. I, I've had no letters, I've no warnings or nothing about them coming. <laughs> I've not had anything. Is Mrs. Healy there? I need to speak to Mrs. Healy. Yeah, just a moment. Kathleen, he wants to talk to you now. Hello? Mrs. Healy? Yes? Yeah, so you can pick up the phone, please. I've got the phone. No, can you pick up the phone? I I'm on speakerphone. I can hardly hear you. I'm on speakerphone as well. No, 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 no. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Can you pick up your phone? Because I can't hear you very well. Right, go on. Oh, gee, what a performance this is. It is, yes. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, um, we don't need a signature, love. We can come down and get and uh, and get your furniture, you know. Can you really? So, uh, what time are you going to be in later this afternoon? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm just going to get on to the police first. Well, I mean, uh, believe yeah, me... Uh, then I'm going to get my solicitor here at the house, now. I mean, the police have got no power over this, I can assure you. They're laughing here. <laughs> They're having a joke. <laughs> you know, I don't f*** <laughs> these things. Are we too They're laughing. Hello? Kath, speak to me, Kath. Who's hey. that? Kath! Who is it? It's Steve Pank. You are joking! <laughs> oh, I don't believe <laughs> You've been set up by Lisa, Kath. Oh, I tell you, she's had it here, she's in bed, I'll get her back to that. <laughs> oh, you rat, Lisa. I love you, Kath. Oh, Lisa, what you do that to me, God? I've just gone to the... Oh, God almighty. <laughs> we have an heart attack, love. A oh, heart attack wasn't in it. <laughs> oh, please. What you do that for your girls, you knew? <laughs> Now listen here, oh, no. now listen here, Kath. We need this money, so is there any chance you can sell your body? <laughs> Leave, tell you at the minute. My heart's going to the dozen. I don't know what I'm going to sell. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyway, nice to speak to you, Kath. And you too, Steve. Have a lovely day. See well, you too, thank Kath. you now. Okay, see you, Lisa. Thanks a lot, Steve. Bye, darling. Bye.
Uh, Shrek, please. Shrek. Yes. Which town, please? Uh, the swamp. The swamp. Please. Thank you very much indeed. I have no much for the swamp. It's the upper name of the neighbouring town. Uh, you got nothing for Shrek in the swamp. Which county, please? Uh, I really don't know. That's a very good question. I just know that uh, he lives in the swamp. Could it be listed in a different area? Do you know, maybe it could be. You're right. Uh, you could try the smelly swamp. What type of business, please? Uh, ogre. An ogre? Yes. Is it a private number? It is a private number. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. In the swamp? In the swamp, yes. One moment, please, while I transfer you to my supervisor for further assistance. All oh, right, Thank supervisor. You. I always like talking to the supervisors. It's great. Excellent. I can help you. Oh, lovely supervisor. Um, Shrek, please. It, uh, did, did I hear it right? Is it Shrek? Uh, yes, that's near enough. Uh, in the swamp. Thank you. Are you looking for Shrek, did you say? That's right. Shrek in the swamp. I don't want you to put this note listing of a town called Swamp. There isn't. No. Uh, I tell you who might have his number. Yeah. A donkey. <phone rings> oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, Graffin speaking. How will you? Ah, uh, is that the place known as Quick Fit? That's us. Ah, that is you. Well, the fitters cannot be better. Is this true? That's true. Very good. I need an exhaust system for my vehicle, my good man. What make and model car is it, please? Well, I was wondering what was the most advanced type of exhaust system that you could provide for this vehicle. Can I take your surname, please? Kenobi. Kenobi. Would that be Obi-Wan Kenobi? The force is strong with you. It is. What sort of system can you provide for my vehicle? Oh, it's this new space, space age stuff. It lasts forever. Gives you like 100 miles to the gallon. 100 miles to the gallon? Cheap as well, yeah. It's only £5 per part and usually the source comes with like three parts. I did not know that things were so quite advanced on your planet. Oh, yeah. Horrendous. Can you fit an exhaust system for a vehicle that does not run on your petroleum earth fuel? Oh, these exhausts work on no matter what you put it on. That's the magic. Because my particular X-Wing fighter, upon sudden acceleration, the lights at the back are not glowing as pink as they normally do. There is something deeply wrong. Oh, this will make them glow white orange. Even if it is powered by superlucent antimatter with cross-dimensional warp drive. That's the stuff. How much would it be to put on some replacement energy stores to power the laser cannons? No. Uh, Darth Vader didn't give us the actual ingredients for those ones. That is a shame. He is ruling Southport now. What was that sound? That sound? Someone firing laser cannon. Was that a droid? <laughs> Tell him not to laugh in the presence of a Jedi. Don't laugh in the presence of a Jedi. Don't oh. everyone can over this. Do I bring the X-Wing fighter to you or can you come to me? Well, I don't think the X-Wing fighter will fit in the depot. <laughs> So you can come to me, can you not, and fix the X-Wing in the heart of the Dagobah system? You can? Uh, no, we can't, no. Ah, well, I thought that you can't get better than a quick fit fitter, because you're the boys to trust. the Los Angeles Times. If you are calling from a touch-tone telephone and know the extension of the party you wish to reach, you may enter that number at any time during this recording. Hey! To subscribe to the Los Angeles Times, yes. and for all subscriber services, enter 1. If you need assistance, please wait, and an operator will be with you shortly. LA Times, this is Nava, how can I help you? Hi, is that the Los Angeles Times news desk? Well, this is the LA Times, that oh. main switchboard. Have you got the news desk there? Yeah, we do. Are you looking for information or giving a story? I'm giving a story if that's possible. Big story. Hang on, sir. Thanks. LA Times. Oh, is that the LA Times news desk? Yes. Yeah. Got a story for your chief. Thought you might be interested in. 
For what section? Uh, well, just uh, general, a big story. Uh, do you pay anything for stories? No, it can't be general. It has to be a department. We have metro, we got sports, we got national, we got foreign. Well, if I give you the story, you, maybe you can judge for yourself what okay. do you think. Well, it concerns, uh, it's a local man. Uh, Mr. Porgy, I think he's called. Local man from here in L.A.? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Mr. Porgy. Now, he runs, um, it's a, it's a pudding and pie business that he runs. He's making pies? Uh, well, he has been for a number of years, yeah. Now, as far as I know, uh, he's run this business for years. Putting, like, cocaine in the pies? I'm sorry? Is he putting something illegal in the pies? Well, he's been kissing girls and making them cry. There's nothing wrong with that? Well, no, but the really interesting bit is uh, when the boys come out to play... Uh, this Georgie Porgy ran away. What's well, life? I'm there's sorry? Not much, there's not much you can do about that. Yeah, but they've not seen him since. So, um, you know, I mean, a great story, obviously, you know. That's a missing person I would call the police. So is, is it something that, uh, that the LA Times could run? Not really, no. I never thought somebody kissing and somebody disappearing. That's... So who should I call with this, then? I'd call the, the LA police. Right. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, will they, will they pay for a story like this? They might. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bless you. Okay. Hello, Adrian, may I help you? Hi, uh, newsroom, please. Hello, news desk. Good evening. This afternoon, but go on. Well, I was just calling with a quick idea for Christmas Eve. Mm hmm Don't you think it would be very nice if, just to make a change, I was to read those bulletins on Christmas Eve <laughs> dressed in a Santa suit? <laughs> Absolutely excellent. Wouldn't that be very marvellous indeed? That'd be marvellous. Do you think that that's an approvable idea? <laughs> I must say, I'm very pleased with your enthusiasm. How about uh, I could also wear a red nose? A red nose that would flash on every bong. Do you think they'll go for that? Let me just put you on to my colleague Andy here. Bear with me one second. Very well. Hello? I was just explaining to your colleague there that on Christmas Eve, maybe I should read the main bulletin dressed in a Santa suit. Do you think that would be greeted with some enthusiasm? Uh, yes. That's very good. I'm rather glad about that. We were also thinking of wearing a red nose that would flash on every bong. What do you think of that? Don't you think that that would be also a good idea? Yes. Are you a bit slow? Uh, yes. Really? Are you getting a bit thick in your old age? Very. Well, I just thought all of us could lighten up as it's Christmas. <laughs> very good. <laughs> and who is this? Who are you? Hello? And here's a good one for you. Maybe I could sing the main news theme. Hello, good evening, viewers. Welcome here to News at 10. Starting off with the headlines. Finish with the main points again. Maybe I could get a snog with Julia Somerville. No, make that Carol Barn. Hello. Hello, good morning. Can I speak to Mrs. Gurney, please? Mrs. Gunnery. Uh, Mrs. Gunnery, yes. Well, she's not there at the moment. Uh, Who are you speaking, please? Are you Mr. Gunnery? I'm Mr. Gunnery. This is Mark Walls, Liverpool and District Planning Department. Liverpool District and what department? Uh, planning Department. Oh, planning Department. Yes, uh, we're likely to believe you're putting up a conservatory, Mr. Walls. We certainly are. But according to our records, you've not, uh, you don't appear to have applied for planning permission. We certainly have. Not that I've seen. Well, we certainly have. Uh, matter of fact, we saw them in December. Right. And we've got the copies of all the correspondence of it. Well, we've had a, a complaint from one of the neighbours about the noise right. being caused because of the work and right. the amount of concrete being used, claiming that it's damaged their property. The next door neighbour, is it? Uh, well, I don't want to start ma naming names at this okay. stage. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you understand that. Yeah. So, what's been going on then? Well, we applied for permission. So we've what, sorry? We've applied for, for permission. Right, yes. Right. And we've got all, and he said he didn't need one. Didn't need what? Didn't need permission. Well, you do. Well, we got told, we, the people we got in, involved with said we didn't need permission. Who have you dealt with exactly? Well, uh, what I'll have to do for you is, um, I'll have to get back to you, get all the... If you can give me your phone number, and I'll get back to you on this. And right. I'll, I'll, I'll look for all the things that we've got on it. Right. And I'll get back to you on it. Oh, that's very good of you, but the, the thing that's obviously concerning us, and more to the point uh, concerning one of your neighbours, is the amount of concrete being used, and, uh, and the fact that it's, you know, it's damaged part of their property. I can't see what I was... 
country should devastate property. Well, it's, it's sort of run, you know, it's run onto their property uh, and dried. And they're a bit concerned about that, obviously. I mean, that's understandable. Well, I, you see, they haven't complained to us at, when it happened. I don't know what they mean, you know. That's what she always does. Well, they say here that you've got a bit of a wicked temper on you. Uh, I mean, they do actually mention the husband. He's got a bit of a wicked temper. They've dealt with him in the past. Uh, presumably, that's you. Uh, well, well, I can't see that. I haven't said nothing to them, actually. Right. Uh, is, is this a, a letter from a person? Well, yes, it is. Yes, yeah. it is. It's, it's been sent into us. And I'm sure you understand, Mr. Gunnery, that once we get a complaint, we do have to follow it through, you yeah. know. You haven't, this is the first time I've heard about it. Mm, you're bound to say that really, aren't you? No, honestly. I, I, honestly, I mean, I just, I just can't. This is just how to remove this. We're, we're uh, erecting the Conservative at the moment. We send for plan for permission. We son dumped out with this. He's a, a designer lives in Well, uh, well, you see, yeah, you see, if you son dealt with it, you see. There's no guarantee that it's actually gone through well, to that department. Through. It's, it's actually on going through, so we've got a letter back. Right. And we've got <laughs> evidence to show you that. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, doing this job that I do, you know, you wouldn't believe the amount of Charlies that I have to deal with every day, you know, think that they're doing it right, but they're clearly doing it wrong. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, this is a case in point. You know, I mean, obviously, you don't know what you're doing, do you? No. Uh, it's, it's been sent to the wrong department, clearly. Well, I mean, he, as far as he was concerned, he, he dealt with, he knows all the t people to deal with, so, because he, he's a designer, and he... Well, clearly he doesn't know the right people to well, deal he, with. He, he, he actually, well, okay then. He's I'll, not come through to me, and my name's Mark Walsh, he's not come through to me. Uh, uh, you're Mark Walsh? That's right, Mark Walsh, at your service, yes. Mark So Walsh. who did you deal with then, Dog Breath? Pardon? Who did you deal with? I'll get back to you on that, I've got all the things, we the wall, I'll, I'll, I'll just have to get back to Mark Walsh. Yeah, that's right, and uh, how high is is it thick scouser type person? Um, it's from the uh, B B TPC, you know, the damn caution. Yeah. It's right. nine foot. Is it what, Chief? Nine foot from the damn caution. Uh -huh. Nine foot high. Can you speak English, love? Pardon? Can you speak English? I can't hear you very well. It's nine foot high. Can you shout a bit louder? I'm sorry, there's a bad connection this end. Nine foot high it is. Nineteen foot high. Nine, nine foot high. Well, no wonder you've not got planning permission at nineteen foot high. Nine, nine, nine foot. Nine, nine. You're not German, are you? I think I'll have to get back to you on this. So it's nineteen foot nine high. Nine foot high. This is, this is the reason why we've got nine, problems not, from, nine from, nine from next door neighbour. It's because, not nine foot. Because you're building it nineteen foot foot high. It isn't nine, 19 foot, it's nine. Well, because what's happening, you see, is they've actually mentioned that it's blocking out light it from their property. Well, hang on a minute, hang on. So, hang on. 19 foot high, then, and you're damaging their property with concrete. I mean, and you ask me, you ask me what the problem is. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute, what? Nine foot. Oh, you're changing your story now. It isn't, though. It's nine foot. No, you know, you started off by saying it was 19 no, foot, nine didn't foot. you? You thick scouser. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon? Well, are you getting personal now? I'm not going to get personal at all, no, no. You need to get personal, I'm not, I'm not getting personal, Chief. I'm not. Well, hang on a minute. You just give me your phone number. I've just given it, you haven't, sir. No, you give me your name, my, Mark Walsh. 19 foot high, then. Nine foot high. Right, when did all this start, then? Um, we started doing this last Saturday. Right. I suppose, really, I mean, to, having talked to you for the last couple of minutes, I mean, you clearly haven't got a clue what's going on, have you? Yeah. You've yeah. left it to your son, because thick old dad really hasn't got a clue what's going on. Can you give me your number, your phone number? I'll give it you once. You yeah, haven't. You give me Mark, Mark Walsh. Right, two, three, six. Two, three, six. Oh, one, three. What was that one? Hey. What was the next one? Oh, one, three. I can't hear that one. Oh, three. Have you got it now? No, what? Say it again. Oh, God. Oh, wall of three. Oh, wall of three. Hey? Are you taking the mickey out of me, son? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Mrs. Graff, please. Yes? Uh, good morning to you. It's Fat Boy Slim. Sorry? Hello there. Hello? Rose Graff. Yes? Uh, calling from Chelsea. From Chelsea. The Chelsea Football Club. Oh, right. We've had um, a, a phone call this morning from somebody saying you've been playing your music too loud. I'm not. I've only just got out. Oh, right. But, but you have been playing it loud in the past, though, haven't you? From, I'm not quite with you. You're from the Chelsea Football Club. That's right, yes. But uh, the thing is, you've been playing it loud. It's, it's been putting the players off. I don't understand you. How could I be? I'm in St. Oswald Stone Mansions. Uh, right, but the thing is, is that, you, you know, you keep playing it, and I know that Dennis Wise uh, has been in to see me to say that, uh, you know... Well, who's Dennis Wise? Well, he plays for Chelsea, 
Uh, and Dennis has been saying that when he's on the field, he can hear this horrible jazz music and it's putting him off, you see. I just haven't got a clue what you're talking about. What about when they're playing... Well, that's just it. You know, when they're playing, you're playing the music too loud uh, and it's putting them off. Uh, I mean, Dennis, the, the other day, came very close to scoring a goal, but he could hear this horrible jazz music, you know, that uh, apparently was coming from your place. Well, I haven't got a clue what you're talking about. You mean to tell me all those thousands there that are cheering and going on, you, you can't even hear you, yourself talk? But, no, but you can hear but, your horrible jazz music. That's what I mean, it's cutting through you. How could you hear a, 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 a small tape... I couldn't even stick it myself if it was loud. Yeah, but, but, but I mean, I, I, apparently you have been playing it very loud, though. I, is that not right? Listen, I'll tell you something. If I was playing it loud, I'd have people complaining, wouldn't I, next door to me? Well, I, I, you know, I mean, that could have been where the phone call originally came from. I mean, it's not for me to say at this stage. You're, you're, you're saying you're, you're phoning me from the Chelsea football ground. I am indeed. That's where I'm calling you from right now. In fact, um, Mr Bates was sat uh, next to me only a matter of minutes ago. Well, I'd like to see this, Mr Bates, because I tell him he should be doing something about how windows cleaning them. Well, the what, what, what do you mean? He's, he's got a football club to run. He can't be cleaning windows. Yeah, well, he should be doing something about... Well, you can't have Mr Bates doing a window cleaning round, can you? No, when he's got no, a football club to run. No, but he should give, mean, like, something in to say, say, once... Once a month or once... Well, you can't be coming round once a month to do your windows. Not him. Heaven not say. him. I mean, it's £7 a week to clean your windows. And you get all the filth from Chelsea. You get all the noise from Chelsea. You get all that that's going on. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'll do something about this. I go to my MP because... I've only just got up. How can I do? How can I pay Jeff? I mean, maybe I could, um, maybe I could send Viali round and, uh, and, he, and he could do your windows. No, I, it's not the case of that. It's the case of, you know, sort of getting a little bit of compensation. But how on earth, I mean, you, I mean, surely you've got a, a, a wireless or a tape that you play. Now, the, the, uh, it's quite away from here, the buildings, to the Chelsea football ground. I, I just, can't well, I can't. He must, be, he must be playing it mighty loud, then. That's all I well, can I'm, say. I couldn't stick it. Uh, I well, have that's just it. I mean, you know, he can't stick it. I mean, horrible, well, horrible well, jazz music, you know. Well, I have... Drives you nuts, though, doesn't it? Really, some of it. Well, I've got a chap who lives over me, like Colonel Chinstrap, very <laughs> pound now brown cow. Uh, and, I mean, he what plays... What are you talking about? He, I don't know his name. And he lives above me. But, I mean, he's, he's kicking off his shoes in the middle of the night. And he's playing <laughs> his music. He is deaf. Now, I don't, I can't even hear my telly, and I'm, I can't bear noise. Right. And I have mine down low. But, you know, sometimes I just turn my telly and go to bed, mm. because I can't... Well, that's sit. a good idea, it really is, especially when Steve Pank's on. But, I, but uh, you know, the thing is, so let me get this right then, you want Ken Bates to come and clean your windows, oh, no. you've got a guy above you kicking off your shoes in the middle of the night, and uh, and you're as daft as a brush, is that about right? On, well, I, I just don't know, I just don't know why this conversation's about. No. <laughs> I've lost, I lost the will to live about two minutes ago. But, um, Rose, how well do you get on with Steve Davis? What do you... T you don't mean my Steve Davis. Yeah, I do mean your Steve Davis, yes. Well, then... Well, because he's written to me, you see, Rose. He's written to me to, uh, to give you a call and wind you up. Oh, I'll, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll go for... Oh, when I see him, I'll give him a good hiding, as oh, old as he is. Oh, blimey. Oh. Oh. Oh, I can't... Oh, I can't, oh, 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 oh. I just don't know what to say. I'm, I'm gobsmacked, honestly. Yes. Now, come on, start from the beginning and tell me what's what. Right. Well, this is uh, this is Steve Pank from 95.8 Capital FM, Rose, and you're live on the show right now. Oh, honestly. Oh, this is a wind-up. It's got to be in it. Oh. oh, so uh, you know, yes, you that's know. right. So you're live on the radio right now, Rose, to the whole of London. Oh, so don't, don't. Oh, do oh, oh. No, listen, listen. Hang on, hang on. We got Frankie Howard on the line. Listen, Rose, do you want, do you want to say anything to Steve before we go? My Stephen, put him on. No, he's not here. I'm just saying. Is there anything you want to say to him right now? Because he's probably listening. Yes, you can tell him I kick both his shins when I see him. Well, I'll get Steve to clean you windows next time as well. <laughs> I really was taken in by you, wasn't I? Oh, I was getting all wound up. I thought it was a four. It's a good job I was already up and... Oh, I don't know. Well, so don't you should know. be at this time. Rose, I've got to go. <laughs> You've got me all worked up. I, I, I don't know what... I'm, well, honestly, I just don't know what to say. Oh, she's in a world of her own. I, I am, indeed, yeah. Right, okay. Bye. Alright, who's the wind up? The Steve Pink Wind Up Show. Wind Up Show. He's a little bit 
crazy. What's he doing here? Steve Pink. The Steve Pink Wind Up Show. 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 Hello there. Hello. Hello, how are you? Fine, and you? How may I help you? Oh, great. Um, is that San Jose, Costa Rica? Yes, sir. Oh, excellent. I've got a call for you from San Jose, California. For me? Yes. Or for whom? Uh, can I just put it through? Hang on a moment. It'll just take me a second. Just bear with me. Sure. Thanks for calling the Holiday Inn Express. How may I help you? I don't know. Somebody call here at Costa Rica Holiday Inn. Sorry? A man call here to Costa Rica Holiday Inn. Hello, is that San Jose, California? Yes. Now, this is San Jose, Costa Rica. That's right. Well, we've got here San Jose, Costa Rica and San Jose, California. Huh? This is United Paint Nations and we're bringing you closer together. Okay. What do you need then? So, San Jose, Costa Rica. Say hello to San Jose, California. Hello? Yes. San Jose, California. Say hello to San Jose, Costa Rica. Hello. Hello, how are you? Fine. Isn't this exciting? Hi. Hey? <laughs> Hey! Well, listen, let me explain what this is. Uh, this is Steve Penk calling from England. And, hello? Who's, uh -huh. who's I'm got... hearing you. Hang on. Uh, uh, hello, California? Yeah, he's buggered off, hasn't he? Well, we're just left with San Jose, Costa Rica, which is nice. Uh, you sound very nice indeed. And uh, Thank you. What we're doing is we're trying to bring uh, the world closer together, make the world a happier place uh, with United Pink Nations. Now, obviously, you're delightful. You're a very nice lady. That bloke in California was a right miserable sod, but uh, we'll let that go by. It was nice to speak to you in San Jose, Costa Rica. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say to the people of the United Kingdom? Well, many blessings, and I'm glad to... Many blessings? Uh-huh. Well, that's very, very nice. That's, that's a lovely and thing to say. And it's very nice from you. Oh, I mean, really nice to speak to you. Should we try and call that bloke back again in California? Well, if you want to. Oh, hang on a minute. All right. Okay. Well, yes, we'll call him back because, uh, you know, he was a bit miserable, wasn't he? Hang on a minute. Here we go. The holiday birth, may I help you? Yes. He, here is a uh, holiday in, in San Jose, Costa Rica. How are you? Good. How are yourself? Fine. Huh? I guess then. Hang on, I'm not being funny, California, but uh, you sound a bit miserable. What's up with you? Oh, hold on one second, okay? Oh, yeah, hurry up then. Hello? Yes. Is that San Jose, California? I don't know. I guess he thinks it's a joke. Well, how could he possibly think that? For having to say, this is a very serious matter. So there we are once again, another successful United Pink Nations. This evening bringing together San Jose, Costa Rica with San Jose, California. Marvellous. Hello, Hill speaking. Hey, Cop. Hello. You all right? Yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> you sound better than you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got a bit of a problem. What? Uh, you know, uh, the rings... Yeah. I went to get them engraved. Um, I've lost them. Yo, you're kidding me, Matt. Hayley, I've lost them, Cut, honestly, I have. Oh, Matt, don't do this to no, me. Hayley, honestly, Cut, if I, honest, if, I, if I could try and change things, I would. But I've, honestly, I don't know what to do. I don't understand you, Matt. That's why, I, that's, why, that's why I'm not said to you, get the rings at all. Because they've, they've been in the shop, I picked them up, and they've gone with. Oh, Matt, don't do this. Hayley, we, we, oh, God. I'm sorry, darling, I am. I'm really, really sorry. Are you, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. What's wrong? What do you think? What's wrong? Oh, hey, hey, we can sort of... We, we can get another ring, can't we? Um, Thursday night. No, we can't, Mark. We, we can. We can. How long did it take us to get them? You have to I, send I, them I know. For us. I know. I'm really no one's more sorry than I am, sweetheart, honestly. I am really, really sorry. I don't know what I can do, but Where's you're trying to think. Where's your husband, Matt? I, early, if I knew that call, I would have lost, would No, when did you pick them up? Talk to me, please, Matt. When did you pick them up? Um, yesterday afternoon. I've what? got no idea where they are. I've looked in the car, I've traced everywhere. I went back to the shop. That's why I didn't phone you until late yesterday. Well, where did you pick them up from? At the, at the Arndale. When? At your dinner? Yeah. Well, where did you put them when you picked them up? I put them in, in, in my jacket, then I put them in the glove pocket in the, in the car. I checked the car and all sorts, honestly, I have. Have you looked under the seat? I mean, I've checked everywhere. I've had a flaming car up and down. 
Well, Matt, you can't shout at me after goal. I'll tell you what you could use, Hayley. You could use those ring pulls of a can of Coke. I'm gonna kill you. Or a couple of, a couple of washers <laughs> you could use, maybe. I'll tell you what's very good, polo mints. Uh, polo mints are very, very good. You Matt, can use those. You're dead meat. Uh, and a, a pinch, maybe, hula hoops. Who's that? Don't bother coming home tonight, Matt. Oh, you're dead <laughs> Do you, you, know, do, me, don't you? do you know something, do you know something, Hayley? Yeah. We were sat here and we could feel that pain in your voice. I thought, we can't make her suffer anymore. <laughs> it's a few days before a <laughs> wedding, for heaven's sake. It's the blue death thing you're doing all of us. He's a terrible man, isn't he? Terrible. <laughs> don't bother coming on tonight, Matt. <laughs> you get painted after this, aren't right? <laughs> Yeah, you're sleeping at my house tonight. <laughs> this is, uh, this is Hayley West, everybody. And Hayley, we hope you have a lovely day at weekend. Thank you. Um, He'll have a few bruises, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a few, a few black eyes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you think right. you're joking, don't you? He'll pay for it. Now, now listen, don't forget, if between now and weekend he does lose them, uh, as I say, hula hoops are great. <laughs> okay. Use hula hoops. Thank you. <laughs> have a lovely day, Hayley. Thanks a lot. Bye, Hayley. Bye, Bye Matty. See you, mate. See you, matey. Bye. Ta-da now. Oh, hello there. Bye, Joe. What a quick uh, start that was. Answering the phone very quickly there. So, I uh, wonder if that's going to be uh, a good sign. Now, um, yes, uh, train times. Um, going to uh, Glasgow Central. From where? Which is uh, Glasgow Central in Scotland, of course. No, where from? Uh, well, yes, Euston Station. That's where I'm going to be going from. London to Glasgow, what day would you like to go? Euston, of course, with the uh, the very big uh, concourse there, which was uh, tiled back in 1968. I think Her Majesty the Queen opened that one, didn't she? What day would you like to go? Which day? Now, ooh, that's a good question, that one. Um, ooh. On a weekday, because on weekdays all the trains are at the same time. Yes, yes. Oh, now that's a good idea. Tomorrow, let's say tomorrow. What time? Morning, afternoon, evening? Ah, uh, yes. If it's going to be early, then morning might just be the one there. So, here she goes now. Just... Right, there's a train at 10 o'clock from King's Cross. Oh, 10 o'clock, yes. That was a very good find there, the way you looked that up. From King's Cross, okay? Right. Yeah, she's there at 15, 14. What's your name, by the way? You're being very helpful. Naya. Okay, Mayor there, here Naya. she goes. Naya. Naya, N-A-Y-Y-A-R. Naya being very helpful there. Really knows her stuff, and here she goes, taking a second look for another train time. Yeah, 11 o'clock from King's Cross. Oh, and that one to secure the birdie. Yeah, get to 11 o'clock. Get to there, 16.42. What a marvellous location of a train time that was. That really was very, very good. Now, Nea, all these train times that you're remembering, uh, I mean, how do you do? You must have an astonishing memory to just recall all of these things like this. No, it's very easy. You just need to type in where you're going from. Right. Where you're going to, uh -huh. and then um, press enter, and then it all brings it up, and then just gives you the time from what time you want to go, that's all. I see, so you're using a computer, are you? Yeah, well, you thought I was looking for a book. Ooh, <laughs> that, oh, oh. <laughs> well, you didn't know I was on the computer? <laughs> Well, yes, computers don't really understand those a bit thick when it comes to uh, computers. Yeah, they're a bit faster than that. Right, now, uh, will I be able to uh, go on the train and take my golf clubs on yes. uh, with me? Yes. And uh, you don't object to uh, to silly trousers, do you? What do you mean? Uh, well, I will be wanting to wear some silly trousers, lots of bright turquoise, black and white, pink colours, all in a sort of check pattern. I don't mind. Do you know the price thing. or do you want to know how much it costs? How much it costs now? That's a very good question and a very uh, perceptive one for you to bring up there and uh, yeah. very clever of you indeed. The last person I spoke to was uh, a right miserable sod, quite frankly. <laughs> very much below par. But well, not you... the case with you. You're a right little tiger woods this morning, my darling. Oh, yeah. yes, you are. Right. What day are you going? Um, is there, could you book in advance? I can give it cheaper one if you go in um, about a week's time. Now, you... can I do a little bit of putting practice with my golf clubs along the aisles in between the passengers as they sit down. Yes, if they don't mind, yes, you can. I say, that'll be fun. I'll get a little plastic cut from the buffet bar. That can be my little uh, golf hole and I'll try and knock yes. it in there. Right. Would you like to buy it at the station or would you like to book in advance? What if I get the three iron and try to, what you know... Yeah, that should be all right, yes. I'll tell you who runs a fantastic transportation service, you know. 
Mm-hmm. What about that? Yes, it's the wonderful Steve Pankert, 95.8, capital FM. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Now you're joking. Yeah, this is Naya on the Steve Pank Show, 95.8, capital FM. And Naya, you are absolutely wonderful. Oh, my God. <laughs> bit nervous here. You're a bit nervous? Yeah. Oh, don't be nervous, Naya. You're amongst friends. Listen, Naya, thanks for being a great sport. That's all right. We love you, man. OK, thanks for calling. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Wasn't she great? Oh, what a marvellously good-spirited, helpful young woman she was. Sounded pretty tasty, actually. <laughs> Morning, community. Is that Ken Howard? It is. Uh, Ken, it's Mark Fletcher from Cavan Park. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, did the office go on to you earlier this morning? No. Uh, all right. Um, we've had problems with your caravan, I'm afraid. It's been vandalised overnight. Oh, you're joking. Yeah, all the, they've smashed all the windows and they've, they've let the tyres down and stuff. Oh, no. Uh, did the office not get on to you this morning? No, no. Uh, to be honest with you, they've made a right mess of it. They've got inside as well and... and sp- oh, bloody hell. Yeah, they spray canned all the inside. Oh, uh, good God. I thought the office had called you this morning, but obviously not. No. How soon do you reckon you could get down to us? Get down this afternoon. Oh, too, bloody hell. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, we've really, I mean, honestly, we've made a right mess of it. I mean, one of the blokes uh, heard the noise of and out with the security guys, and by the time he got, I mean, they started a fire inside it, you see. Bloody hell. Uh, I mean, he managed to, to sort of get it out, but I mean, honestly, it's such a mess. I mean, it is insured, obviously, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, I mean, these, you know, the It's supposed to be going away, isn't it, on Friday? You're supposed to be going away with it on Friday? Well, we come from. Well, I mean, it's obviously not the news you wanted to hear this near to your holiday, is it? Bloody hell, no. Uh, right. Uh, I'm sorry to, I mean, I thought the office had called you early this morning. No. But, I mean, they've, they've had so many calls to make, you know. Right, so you can get down and see us this afternoon, then. Well, um, are you on the phone now? Yeah, I'm on the phone now, but I mean, it's honestly, it's such a state, though. I mean, I couldn't believe it myself when I got here this morning. Well, I'll, I'll have to phone the wife and see if we sort something out and see my boss, you see. Have, have you had many problems with it before? No, no, not a, not a thing. Right, so, I mean, they've left it in such a state, you know. Well, what are you going to do for your holiday now? I'm good if I know, I'll have to phone oh, all, all the bloody lots inside it and all. What's inside it? Oh, there's my awning, sleeping bags. I only took them down last Saturday when I oh, took it. Oh, yeah, shocking news, isn't it? I mean, I've got a tent you could lend if you like. No, uh, she wouldn't wear that. Sorry? She wouldn't, she would, the wife wouldn't go in a tent. I no. mean, well, I wouldn't charge you for no, it. No, I know that. I, I know mean, that. you know, you can have it with all the goodwill yeah. in the world, you know, but uh, I wouldn't like you to see your, you know, your holiday ruined, obviously. Oh, bloody hell, I don't believe this. Uh, it's a bit of a shock, isn't it? I don't believe it. Oh. Well, you won't believe it in a minute when I tell you that uh, I've had a letter from Bernice. MacDonald? Yeah. The little swine, I'll kill her. <laughs> I'll kill you! <laughs> Who's that? Who is it? This is Steve Pank. Bloody hell, you... I'll kill her. I beg your pardon? I'll kill her. <laughs> you little... Oof. You know, he said here, Ken, he says he's always winding us up in the office. Oh, bloody hell. You're, you're right, I know. And he said it's only right that you should get him back. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I could have used some bad language, you know, couldn't I? I think you did, actually, Ken. Did I? Oh. <laughs> That's right. Hey, but, Ken, what, yeah. about, what about the relief, though, that it's not right? Oh, I know. God. <laughs> oh, oh, I'll kill her. I'll kill her when I get hold of her. Ken, have you got a message for her before we go? Yeah, tell her I love her, just the same. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. OK, Steve. Thanks a lot. Bye. <laughs> Come to court. Uh, hello, is that the old Bailey? Yes. Yes, can I speak to Paul, please? Paul who? I'm sorry? Paul who? Paul up a chair and I'll tell you. He <laughs> said Paul up a chair and I'll tell you. I don't know, would it be CPS that you want? I don't recognise either of the names. Uh, well, is Ewan there? Ewan who? You and me, you should get it together. <laughs> she said we don't know you. <laughs> oh, you kill me, Panky. Hello. Hello, is Mrs. Gaffery there, please? Yes. Is that you? Yes. A uh, very good morning, Shum. I'm so pleased I've got hold of you. It's Andrew Lynch from the council, Mrs. Gaffery. Oh, yes. A uh, very good morning, Shum. There's been a number of problems with parking cars down your road, isn't that right? That's right, yes. Yes. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce, and I'm, I'm calling all the local residents uh, just to let them know, we're going to introduce a pay and display system. Yes. And basically, it's going to cost you £10 a month. 
to park your car. That's, that's in Hill Rise Road. That's right, and that includes even the residents. That means you'll have to pay £10 a month, and that should stop, you know, all the problems with people parking there that shouldn't. And, and what about Watersfield Road? Well, yes, well, the same thing will happen there as well, yes. Oh, I see, uh, yeah. But I'm sure you can understand, because it must be a nightmare for you, basically, people parking there that shouldn't. That's right, yes. And how yes. long has this been going on, then? Oh, um, quite a while. I mean, there's been, um... Cars there, somebody's had their car parked out there and repairing it, it's been up on... Oh, it's not been up on bricks and stuff, has it? Yes, it has. Oh, it must drive you crazy, Mrs. Yeah, Gaffari, it yeah. really must. Yeah. So, um, you know, where do you park your car then? Well, uh, I don't think I'm going to have my car much longer because I can't afford it. Oh, that's a terrible thing, isn't it? Yeah. So what, you'll be using public transport, uh, will you? Yeah, I will. Yes, and annoying people to um, death. Will right. it? But even if you haven't got a car, you're still going to have to pay the £10 a week, you see. Oh, I see. So, yes, exactly, that's the reason for the phone call, you see. Oh. Uh, it's, to, the, yes, it's to stop people once and for all, so it's going to basically cost you £40 a month, Mrs. Gafori. £40 a month? Yes, I know. It's, I mean, that's to, to stop all these, you know, these people at parking there that shouldn't. So, we're going to be introducing that at the end of this week. That's steep, isn't it? I'm sorry? That's steep. Well, it is, obviously. That's more than the rent. I'm, I'm sorry? That's more than the rent. I mean, couldn't you lend some money off your son or something? You know, couldn't he help you out or, you know... No, you must be joking. He's married. He's got his own place. To keep. We think, you know, £40 a week is obviously going to sort it out, you know. Well, it's going to skin everybody. I don't know how long I'm going to fold that. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, yeah, obviously, if you're parked in one of those NCP car parks, it costs you a great deal more. But, you know, we don't think £40 a week is an awful lot of money, really, is it? £40 a week has gone up now. It was, it was £40 a month. No, it was £40 a week when I started. People who haven't got a car are going to be penalised as well. That's right, yes, they are, right. yes. People that haven't got a, a, got, got a their relatives, they haven't got a car and they're yeah, relatives. But, yeah, 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 but that's what you're saying. I'm sure people must come round and see that I've got cars. I've only got my son and daughter here in London yeah. to come up and see, well, come up now. Well, there we are, I'm yeah. Well, go down to them. Well, there we are then, you see. They come round in the car, don't they? No, they haven't got a they car. They come round in the car and park the car outside your house. Well, that's the reason it's going to be £40 a week. No, they haven't got a car. You see, that will sort it out once and for all, you see, all these people, you know, coming around and parking cars that shouldn't. And if you're paying your £40 a week, when they come around and see in the car, you're already paid up, aren't you? Look, my son and my daughter have not got a car. Yeah, that's what you're telling I me, know you know. I know, go down to them. Yeah, you see, but if they come round in the car, you see... So it actually... Look, if they haven't got a car, you won't be able to find it, it actually, it actually works out cheaper, doesn't it? What sort of car do they drive, then? He hasn't got a car. Right. I'm the only one... Oh, I see, he's got a company car. Car, I understand. No, he hasn't got a company he uses car. Uses a company car. I understand now, Mrs. Gafori. He has not got a car at all. I understand that she, you know, he doesn't own a car, but obviously when he uses the company car, he still he hasn't got a company car. He's still using the car when he comes round. No, he's not he? using a car at all. And then he parks it at the front of your no, house. No, he goes to work bad bad. That causes a problem. He ah. goes to work bad bad. Oh, he, and he leaves the car at home. No, I he hasn't got a car. Right. And so he leaves the car at home no, during he the week. No, he's got a car. Takes the bus to work. Listen to me. And then comes listen. round to see you in the. Car at the weekend. Listen to what I say. My so, that's son it. So, has leave. not got a car. The My he... son has not and never has had a car. Right, that he uses for work. So he leaves it at home. No, he has not got a car. And takes the bus oh. to work. And, or the train. Does he take the train sometimes? Hello? Hello, Mrs. Gafori? <laughs> Hello? Should we call her back? Hang on a moment, let's call her back. Yes. What happened there? I was simply prepared to get cut off and I'm trying to sort it out for you. I don't want you to sort it out for me. Right, well, I'm trying... I, I, I don't... I'm telling you, my son has not got a car, my daughter hasn't got a car, I'm not going to have a car, so why should I pay £10 a week to the council... No, no, it's to 40, £40 a week. spot that nobody uses. Well, what about Kim Moore when she comes round to see you? Who are you? Well, this is Steve Pank from 95.8 Capital FM, Stella. And your daughter's written to me to wind you up. I'm going to give her a bloody mouthful when I see her. <laughs> I'm going to... I, I am. I'm going to give her a good eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a to-do, eh? I, I, you really got me worked up there. I put the phone down on you. <laughs> Can I help you? Hello, can I book a room, please, mate? One moment, please. Thank you. Reservations, Amy speaking. How can I help you? Yes, can I book a room, please, mate? Okay, for when? Uh, so where exactly is the hotel? Because I haven't got a Scooby-Doo. Okay, uh, we're located at 55 Church Street in downtown Manhattan. Right. the street from the World Trade Center. Well, listen, I'm a bit, uh, a bit Tom and Dick, so I'll need the room very quiet. Is that okay? 
Oh, that's fine. A bit Tom and Dick sick, you know. So, will you get the pigs in when I get down? Excuse me? The pigs' ears, the beers. Will there be beer in the room? Yes, there, there is a mini bar in the room. It has um, alcohol and also beer. Oh, I'm from London, love. We all talk like this over here, you see. <laughs> well, listen, I'm wearing uh, my new whistling flute when I arrive, and I've also just bought some new rhythm and blues. I have no idea what you're talking about, sir. Well, I'll be wearing my new shoes, obviously. Uh, I'm in a right to an H today, I really am. So, where's the nearest rubber dub dub to the hotel then? Um, ah, uh, what is a rubber dub dub? A pub, obviously. Silly woman. Because I do like to get down to the old battle cruiser, you know, when I can. Hold it one second. Sorry? Hold it one second, please. Certainly. <laughs> I'm the reservation. Sorry, how can I help? Oh, hello. Is this somebody else? Do you allow Claire Rainers in the restaurant? I'm sorry. I guess I'm, I, I'm not understanding. You know, Claire Rainers, trainers. Ah, uh, yes, we do. Oh, that's great. Then. So, what sort of food do you serve in the restaurant? Because I'm a bit funny about my food, you know. Oh. Do you serve Lee Van Cleef? American continental cuisine. Yes, what sir. about John Cleese? Not familiar, sir. Peas. You know, do you serve peas. Peas. Yes, yes. We do serve. Yes, we do serve peas. Steve McQueen's. Beans, you know. Yeah. Yes, sir. So how much do you charge per night then, Charlie? For what date, sir? Uh, will you be arriving? Probably next Wednesday, Thursday. I'm not quite decided yet. Also, will it be possible to get me Dickie Dirt clean every night? You have a cleaner that'll pick your clothes up, clean them for you, bring them back in the morning. Oh, that's great. Dickie Dirt shirt. You know, I'll do my shirt for me. Are you having a Steffi at me? Pardon me, sir? A Steffi graph, a laugh. Are you laughing at me? Ah, uh, no, sir. Oh, right, I should think not. Well, look, I'm calling you from Leicester Square, London, and it's costing me a fortune this, so can you uh, call me back on the dog and bone? Obviously not, then. Thank you. Danker. Hi, is there Neil Simpson there, please? He is, Jack. Can I be calling? This is Sean. OK, no problem, thanks. Hello? Hi, Dad. Hi. You alright? Yeah. Um, I've had a bit of a problem. What? Um, right, Mal gave me some money uh, last week for one of the houses. Yeah. And, I, and I've gone and gambled it. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe, what do you want me to? I'm getting it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in this. How much? Two grand. You are f joking. I'm not. Joe, this time you're on your own, pal. I haven't got any f money, I'm. Oh, you are f What have you done that for? Oh, I don't know, I don't know what I've done. You've just yeah. f ruined your life. Oh, yeah, but I don't know what to do. Well, what can I do? I'm very, I can't go anywhere. I'm shaking. Oh, Joe! I know. My heart's, my heart's going like mad, Dad. Joe, don't you don't know what you've just done, though, Joe. Oh, f Joe, yeah. you, you've, you, you've not only done that, you've, I thought, I thought, you've, oh, ru oh. you've ruined me as well, pal. Oh, f oh. Joe. Yeah, oh, oh, I need to come and speak to you. I need to come to the office. Well, I've got to go out, Joe. Can you not, uh, just... Well, where's Mal now? He, well, he just asked me and I said, right, I'll go and get it. Joe. What? Is there no chance you can do anything now? I haven't got any money, Joe. I've yeah. got any money. Yeah. Joe, I told you, I keep telling you, I need your money. Oh, no. I said I won't gamble as well, didn't I? What did you gamble it on? I went to the casino, didn't I? Oh, you, 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 Joe, Joe, you, you're in, this is a jail turn, this. It's not a jail turn, don't be ridiculous. I blame the father, me, you know. <laughs> what, you Is that Neil? Who's that? Neil, it's Steve Pank. You are joking. <laughs> Joe, I cannot believe you. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, me. don't come home tonight. <laughs> do you love me? Yeah, do you love him, Neil? Do I love him? I'll, I'll tell you what, Steve, I'll believe him, kill him when I get hold of him. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, Dad, I can't, I couldn't, I couldn't go through with it. <laughs> I thought, Dad, I'm going to give you a heart attack. Sorry. Yeah, we, yeah we, could, we could hear the drama unfolding. We thought, yeah, Neil's going to have a heart in a minute. I cannot believe he's done that to me. I'm, well, sorry. I'm so sorry, Dad. Yeah, there we are. Hook, line and sinker. Steve, you don't know what you, who you're talking to here. He's a... He's a <laughs> <laughs> he, I tell you what, he is the biggest <laughs> honestly. Is he really? I, can, I tell you, 
I cannot believe Stevie's done that. Are there, si are there times that you, you'd like to disown him, like now? Ju yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's asking me for money, and I'm brassic at this moment in time. Right. And he's... I'll tell you, that was the last thing I needed to learn. <laughs> Neil, have a lovely day. Lovely day. I tell you, I'm going to the doctors now. <laughs> well done, Joe. All right, mate. See ya. See you later. This is the Steve Pink Wind Up Show. Ninety six point two, the revolution. 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 Kevin. Hello there. Hello. And how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. And you? Well, I just wish I could say the same, to oh. be honest with you. I really do. Oh, how can I help you? Oh, you sound so kind. You <laughs> really are. Uh, I just had one of those weekends, you know, where uh, all the bills came in at oh, once. Um, I understand. Yeah, I mean, the telephone bill arrived yesterday. You'll never guess how much it was. No. Well, let's play the hot and cold game, you know, because it, it, was, it was staggering. It really was. Oh, dear. Uh, how much do you think it was? I haven't got a clue. Well, have a stab in the dark, you know. <laughs> you, you've played hot and cold before. <laughs> £150. Cold. Oh dear, much hotter than that, was it? Might be. £200. You're getting slightly warm. Oh, no, oh, that is an expensive bill. Exactly, you know, <laughs> and the thing is, every time it comes in, I say, you know, to the kids, have you used the phone? They say, no, no, no it's, it's, not a, it's not us, you know, it must be you. <laughs> I've got two just like that. Happens every time, it really does, <laughs> and it, it drives me insane, to be quite honest with you. So, uh, oh, you, you sound very kind, oh, very, very chatty, it's, it's nice to meet somebody, because you know what these days, in this day and age, when you ask, uh, you know, uh, somebody how they are, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're, you're, you're really not interested, are you? That's right, yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, because everybody's busy, aren't they? They've oh, their, their, own, their own lives to lead. What can I do for you? I'm sorry? Can, can I help you at all? Well, I just thought, so we could, you know, we'd have a little chat. Oh. That's all. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think in this day and age, people don't really have enough time for each other, do they? No, that's you know, right. We're always rushing around and trying to get everything, you know, so. That's, that's right, yeah. So, uh, how's the family then? You've got other calls waiting. I hope you don't mind. Oh, wow, have you really? Oh, dear. Yeah. Right, so, uh, are you going away this year? <laughs> no, I'm not, actually. Oh, Do you mind if I put you on hold for a moment? Oh, well, as long as you're quick, because I'm paying for this call, you know. Uh, hello? Uh, hello? Debenhams. Oh, what's happened? You put me on hold then. Oh, dear, yeah, sorry, I had to. Well, I've got other calls waiting, well, I just actually. told I just told you, didn't you? I had a massive telephone bill. <laughs> yes. Put me on hold. So, uh, you were telling me then about the family, aren't yeah, they? Yes, I have to go. I've got other calls waiting. Oh, do you? Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to Filmline, providing information and ticket booking for all Odeon cinemas. Please say the name of the cinema or the town that you're calling for now. Cornwall. Did you say Port Solent? No, I said Cornwall. Please say yes or no. No. Did you? Okay. I need to know which Odeon, UCI or Filmworks cinema you're calling for. Please say the name of the town. Melville. <laughs> Please repeat the name of the cinema or town you now. Macklebill. Did you say Blackpool? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, if you know the name of the cinema or town, please say it now. Devon. Did you say Brighton? <laughs> no, I said Devon. Please say yes or no. No. Did you say Brighton? Okay, I need to know which Odeon, UCI or Filmworks cinema you're calling for. Please say the name of the town. Salford. Did you mean Salisbury? <laughs> <laughs> no! Please say yes or no. Did you mean Salisbury? No! Okay. Please repeat the name of the cinema or town now. Stockport. I'm not sure if you mean Odeon Newcastle, Gateshead or Silverlink. Did you mean Odeon Newcastle? No. You've not made a selection. In yes, case you yes. accidentally left your telephone off the hook, I'm going to disconnect you. Please call again soon. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. 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 Hello, how can I help you? Hello, how can I help you? Hello? Hello? Hi. Is that the hotel? Yes. Mm. Hang on a minute. 
<laughs> have you, um, have you got any rooms for next week? I'll connect you through to reservation. They can assist you, thank you. Thanks a lot. Reservation is still on. Speaking, can I help you? Anyway. <laughs> have you, um, have you got any rooms for next week? What day next week do you require, sir? Mm, next, uh, oh. Hang on a minute. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, <coughs> well, I'm going to How about next Wednesday? Next Wednesday? Mm. Anything oh. for next Wednesday? I'll take for you, sir. Mm. Mm. What's your charge? Would that be a private or a company booking, sir? Uh, private, it'll be. Yeah. Private? Yeah. I have a king bedded room available for that time, and I can do that for you at the rate of £310. Mm. Per room, per night, excluding fat and breakfast. Yeah. Right, you know, all day I'm starving. <laughs> really am. <laughs> Excuse me a second, hang on a minute. Would you like one? Would I like what? Hang on a minute. Mm. Would you like a bite? Would I like a bite of what? Put me teeth. Uh, right, so uh, you can do me next Wednesday then? Yeah, I can do you next Wednesday. I'm sorry? No, that wasn't me. Are you coming on to me now? No, I'm not coming on to you. Oh, right. Okay, then. <laughs> God, what was that? You're not Steve Pink, are you? Nothing to do with that, Charlie. No, definitely not. You're definitely not Steve Pink from Capital Radio. Nothing to do with him. Are you sure you're not Steve Pink? <laughs> I'm sure you're Steve Pink. You're winding me up. What the hell's that? It's Steve Pink. I'm being wound up. Who's setting me up? Nobody's set you up. Who are you? It's Steve Payne. It's nothing to do with that, Charlie. Nothing to do with that, Charlie? Oh, no, it's nothing to do with him. I can I can pass on your regards, though, when I see him. Oh, you will, will you? Yeah, who are you? I'm Joanne. Joanne who? I'm not saying my surname. Oh, God, what am I doing? Oh, do I get a T-shirt for this or something? No, you get subtle. I get subtle? <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is... Oh, look, I've, have I been... Who set me up? No, I've got to go. Got this apple to eat. Got to go. See ya. See ya, bye. <laughs> one minute, one minute. How can I help you? Hello. Uh, Woody Woodpecker, please. Woody Woodpecker, which stands? In the tree. Let me just transfer it to my supervisor. All oh, right, okay, supervisor. <laughs> supervisor. How can I help you? Oh, supervisor, lovely. Um, Woody Woodpecker, please. In which town, please? In the tree. Chapel and the Freeze. Uh, no, in the tree, not Chapel and the Freeze. Shall I spell it for you? Yes, please. I N T H E. T R double E, all one word in the three. What's your nearby town? Nearby town, uh, Oldham. Thank you. Thank you. Your surname is Woodpecker. Woodpecker, yes. Do you have an address? Uh, in the free. Is this in Southern Ireland? Uh, well, I don't, I don't know. He probably gets all over the place. You could try there. We don't have numbers in Southern Ireland. Oh, you don't? Well, why did you ask me then? I'm not spinning a match under Woody Woodpecker. Okay. Well, you've been very helpful and, uh, and uh, d delightful, so thank you very much indeed. Sorry, is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, you could try for Danger Mouse. The surname is Danger Mouse. Danger Mouse, yes. In which town? Uh, in the post box. One moment. I'll transfer you to a supervisor for further assistance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I help you? Supervisor, lovely. Um, uh, Danger Mouse, please. Which town, please? Uh, in the post box.
Where's that? Uh, in the post box. Hello. Hello. Yes. I thought you're a supervisor. Yes, I am. Right. Well, you're not doing a good job so far, are you? Um, no, sorry. Right. Well, pull your finger out. Uh, Danger Mouse in the post box. Hello? Have you found it, Supervisor? No. Right. Hello, Supervisor? Yes. Have you found it? No. Right. Hello, Supervisor? Yes. Have you found- have you found it? No. Right. Hello, Supervisor? Yes. Have you found it? No, no. What the hell are you doing, man? Is there anything else I can help you with? Well, you've helped me with this, have you? That's great. Right, okay then. Well, thanks for keeping me on the line for two minutes and wasting my time. I'll, um, thank I'll, uh, thank you, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Good morning, the Lowry Hotel. How may I direct your call? Is that you, Sweet Cheeks? Good morning, Miss Hepsi Carey speaking. Hello, baby doll. Hello. <laughs> Who's that? Is that you, honeysuckle? <laughs> it depends who you're who it is. <laughs> How you doing, sugar? Hotel Avenida Palas, buenos días. Hello, sweetie pie. Sorry? Is that you, baby? Me? How you doing, sweetheart? Thank you. Good morning. Um, hello, where's that I've called? Sony Music. Oh, so Sony Music, oh good. Um, I wanted to be a pop star. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if you might be able to advise me, you know, how I might be able to go about it become a pop singer. Well, you need to send in a demo tape, actually, to some DNA and r Is there any provision that perhaps I could audition over the phone for you and you could give me a record deal there and then? Well, I wish I was capable of doing that, but it's not fair to me. Thank you for being very helpful. Okay. You're very lovely. You know, you'd be very good in the cabinet if this doesn't work <laughs> out. Let me see. I mean, I, I've been working on a bit of material, if I could maybe, you know, give you some of it. Well, I really haven't got the time, actually. As I walk it's through the shadows to... in the valley of death, I take a look at my life and me advise the none left. I mean, you know, what do you think? Well, no, that's not bad, actually. I think you ought to get a demo tape sent in to somebody here. I'm 23 now. Will I get to 24 the way things are going? I don't know. I think you ought to send a demo tape in. I think you could have a bit of potential there. Do you think so? Yeah. Because, you know, I, I do get tired from my current job from time to time. Will I get on top of the pops? Oh, would you get on top of the pops? Yes, yes. Oh, you're as good as anybody else. Keep spending most of my life living in a gangster's paradise. <laughs> Keep spending most of my life living in a gangster's paradise. That's very good. Very, very good. You know, I'm, I'm really starting to jam now. Well, I'm afraid I can't stand here and listen to you, actually. I've got to go and do some work. So, you send a little demo tape and you see what they can do for you. Move it, groove it, punch it, hoob it, who do you think you are? <laughs> Okay. Um, you know, do you think that I will get on the Steve Pank show at 95.8 Capital FM? You possibly could. Am I good enough to hack it on there? Give Steve a ring and go for it. That's just the way that things go down, down, down. Get in if... touch with him and see what he can do for you. I know, I know. I'll be the pop star, right? We'll get William Hague as well. Yes. Uh, and he can be the other half of the act. You know, we can be like, you know, Go West or Wham or something. Oh, right. You know, the two of us. Okay, then. Um, you know, I'll be the heartthrob. He can be the, you know, the songwriter. Yes. And, and, and you can be, you know, our groupie who comes to our concerts. <laughs> and you, you could, you know, throw your underpants at us <laughs> when we were performing. What's your name? Elaine. Elaine, you are the best. 
<laughs> Elaine, we love you. So, Steve, thanks. <laughs> well, you know, of course it is. Yes. <laughs> Elaine, what's your second name? Aldridge. This is Elaine Aldridge, everybody. Elaine, what do you think of Tony Blair singing then? Wonderful. Would you hire him? Certainly would. Yo, MTV Raps. That's where I'm going. <laughs> Very good. We've got to go, Elaine. We love you. Okay, bye. Hello? Yes. Hello, are you French? Yes, right. All right. How many people have you annoyed today? I beg your pardon? I said, have you annoyed anybody today? Why, sir? Well, the French are very good at, at, at annoying people, aren't they? Don't you agree? I'm not angry. I'm sick, sir. Sorry? I am sick. Uh, well, I wouldn't go as far as that. That's a bit rude. I wouldn't say you're sick, but... Uh, yes, you know. but uh, I'm trying to talk, sir. Uh, That's you, all. You are annoying, uh, though, aren't you? I'm uh, not I'm not at all, sir. Oh, you seem to have a chip on your shoulder, most of you, though, don't you? If you don't mind me saying so. Okay, so what can I do for you, sir? You know, my favourite is the way you pretend you can't speak English, although you can, just to annoy English tourists. <laughs> oh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Army Queer's office, Star Clark, how can I help? Mm, hello? Hello? Now, is this where I call to join the army? Who's speaking? Lovely. First name? Hello? Hello? Goldie? Your first name's Goldie? Yes. Now, will I get to wear one of those nice uniforms? Well, what's your surname first? I hope so. Yeah, you will. But what, what's your name? Uh, Goldie. Goldie what? That's what they call me, Goldie. Right. Okay. And how old are you? Now, what colour is it? Excuse me? Your uniform? Yes. Well, green and brown. Mixture. Anything in peach? Would you like to book an interview? What sort of things will I be doing? Well, it depends what job you go for. Will I get to roll around in mud with other soldiers? Yeah, are you serious about wanting to join the army? Well, of course I am, yes. Right, would you like to book an interview? That's what we do over the phone. I'd love to. Right. But, um, I mean, I mean, you didn't answer my question about other soldiers. That's what the um, reception interview's for. We, we come out with all the information... As you, as you know, we're a busy office. Yes, I know that. So if I can yes. just book your name, if I can get your full name and I'll book you in for an interview yes. nearest day and then you can come in and we can tell you all about the army. Oh, that'll be lovely. Right, what's your full name? Uh, Martin Collins. Martin. Collins. Collins. Mm. Right. What's the accommodation like? Well, it depends. It varies from place to place. Uh, how old are you, Martin? No cheap soap. How old are you? Uh, oh, do I have to say that? Yeah, you do, I'm afraid. Well, I'm sort of in 30s. 30s? Yes. Now, right, um, any honest... Before, no, hold on, before we go any further, I'm afraid um, you're looking a bit too old to join the regular well, you're army. being a bit ageist, aren't you, really, these days? A bit ageist? Yes. Any ensuite facilities? Well, I'm afraid there's no point in going on uh, with your application. Well, you you're... must have something down there for me, surely. Right, hold on, I'll just put my office manager on. Yes. Oh, what's a performance? I can't believe it. Someone called Martin Collins, his name is Goldie. Sonic, thank you, too old. Hello, it's office manager. Now, what I've got to do, I've got to pick up the dry cleaning, and then I've got to nip into Boots. I could be with you about 4.30 this afternoon. 4.30 is fine, yeah. And what's your name? I'm just the office manager. Well, you sound lovely, you really do. I am. Have you got anyone down there who looks like anyone from 911? 911? What's 911? They're a lovely band, all of them. I haven't got a clue. Do you look like Ricky Martin? Who's Ricky Martin? Oh, he's a dish. Uh, a dish? I'm sorry? You said he was a dish. I did indeed. <laughs> Who's winning this conversation now? I think you are. <laughs> <laughs> what time is best for you, honey? <laughs> Any time, as long as it's before half past four. <gasps> <laughs> so I'll see you about 4.30 then, Cheeky. Oh, uh, absolutely. All oh, right, and who should I ask for? The office manager. I'll see you later. Mm. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> You're a cheeky boy, aren't you? San Quentin State Prison. Hello? 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 Sergeant McCoy, let me help you. Hello, is that the prison? Yes, the jail. Oh, I've been trying all night long to get through to you. Can you help me? Certainly. Yeah, the name is Bruiser Pink, and it's a bit of a strange request, but I wonder if I could, uh, if you could put me up for the night. I'm sorry? I said it would truly help me out if you could, uh, because the last place he'd look for me would be in there. Who's that? Kneecaps Norman, he's after me. 
What's his name again? Uh, you see, what's happened is me and Penny Lover let him down on a job, and now he's after me, and I'm frightened to death. Penny Lover, huh? I just wondered if you could hide me in one of your cells for a few days until the heat dies down. Can't be done. Oh, dear. I, I mean, it used to be an endless love between Penny and Kneecaps, and then I fell for her, and he, he's after me now. Well, okay. I mean, honestly, I fear for my life. I really do. Uh, I mean, he doesn't like blokes messing with his women, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. I mean, she's something. She's once, twice. No, come to think of it, she's three times a lady. Uh, but I can't sail on like this, though. I've got to get, uh, I've got to get away somewhere. Could you just sort of hide me away for a few days? Of course. Uh, and what's your name? This is Sergeant McCarthy. I mean, I know it's strictly against the rules, but surely you could, uh, you could get me in, couldn't you? I don't know. Is this Mark Johnson? No, it's not. I don't know who Mark Johnson is. Why? To whom am I speaking? Is he a friend of kneecaps? Kneecaps. Is he a friend of his? Uh, I mean, I'm, I've been I've been dancing on the ceiling. To be honest, I'm terrified. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The uh, girlfriend keeps telling me love will conquer all, but there's no comfort to me right now. I'm a nervous wreck. So, what do you think the chances are? Well, what do you say your name was, McCarthy? Uh huh. Yeah. What's your first name? Uh, Sergeant. Oh right, yes, right, Sergeant, right. Is there a, is there a number I can call you back at? Well, there isn't at the moment because uh, you know, obviously, I'm I'm lying pretty low. So, what should I do then? I don't know what to suggest. I mean, you, might be, try, you might try the sheriff's. I mean, I'll be no trouble. I'll just stay in my cell and cause no, you know, no trouble, boss. Honestly, uh, try try the sheriff's. Yeah, yeah, but, but I mean, you know, obviously, I'm I'm very concerned because he's after me. And what city do you live in? Hey, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm local, obviously. I don't want to give away too much because he's looking for me. Oi, Pen! Oh, no, he's, he's here. He's Oi, here. you! What? I'm after you! No, no! Oh, no! No! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Hello? 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 He's got me! He got you? He's you got, got yourself, what? He's got me! Thanks for your concern. In Halifax Property Services, how can I help you? Oh, hello, is that Kim Rabe? Uh, no, Kim's actually on the other line at the moment, can I... Oh, can I just hold? I was told to give her a call, you see, it's just about some property. Oh, right, okay, who's calling? Uh, Malcolm Jones. Okay, I'll put you on hold for a second. Thank you very much for your time. Hello, Mr. Jones. Uh, yes, hello there. Hi. Uh, I was just looking for some property in the area, about £50,000. Who is it, Malcolm Jones? Yes, if you've got anything. Malcolm Jones. About £50,000. Are you looking for flats or masonettes? Uh, well, anything, really. Yeah, we just I, I'm not familiar with the area, you see, so flats or anything would do. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, oh, um, yes, what, what have you got, then? Uh, well, we've got a property in... Um, Bexie Hayes. Right. It's a flat. It's a one. Well, no, it's a, it's a masonette. One bedroom, first floor. <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry about that. I was just out late last night. Um, yes. So what have you got? Um, was it this flat? It's a one. It's a one bedroom, first floor masonette. Has he got a nice view? Sorry? Has he got a view? Um, I haven't actually seen this, oh. this property, but yes. um, by all accounts, it is, it's a very good buy. Yes. Um, sh shall I run through? <laughs> Um, Thank you for your patience. That's okay. It's, uh, it's 59995. Oh, that's an awful lot, isn't it? Is it a nice area? It is, it is. Yeah, I think all areas of Bexley Heath are quite nice, actually. Right. There aren't really any areas of Bexley Heath that are... But there's no kids nearby, are there? Because I can't stand all that screaming and shouting, you know. You, you don't like children? Well, I, I do like children, but I don't like them living near me, you know. This, this, this one is a first-floor masonette, so you're actually upstairs. I just wondered if it's a big children area, you know, if there's lots of children around. Well, yeah, it is quite a built-up... Are you OK? Sorry about that. OK. <sighs> um, oh. I mean, it is a built-up area. As you say, better out than in. That's right. <laughs> right. Uh, well, if you could send us some details around, then that'd be lovely, if, that's, if that's possible. It's Mr Jones. That's right. right. And your initials, Malcolm please. Malcolm Jones is the name, yes. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Oof, where did that one come from? Is this a wind-up? I'm sorry, it certainly is not. No, I've got lots of things to do with Miss Simon oh, oh, doing, doing that. Um, right, Oof. can I take your address, please? Now, could you explain it to me what it's like? Well, the details I've got down here. It's gas up until heating. Yes. It's a white bathroom suite. Yes. Um, there's a lounge... <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Uh, it, there, there's a lounge... <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> um... The lounge has got a feature arch window to the front. Yes. And there's parking and garden to the rear. 
uh, with a bedroom with built-in wardrobe. So that's all the details I've got on here at the moment. So you just come out um, this week. Yes. Details. So, I mean, shall I pop it into the post? Yes. <laughs> Dear me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? I am. It's uh, nice of you to be concerned. Um, if you could pop it in the post, I yeah. will do. Um, what else has it got? Well, that's all the details I've got on that one at the moment. Um, right. Do you want me to give you details of other ones we've well, got? Well, I'll tell you, if I could just go downstairs, uh, I'm just on the mobile, if I just go downstairs uh, and I can take some details down of exactly where you are, I could nip in and, and, uh, and see you. Okay. Uh, so I'll just, I'll just nip downstairs, I'll be all a right. second. Okay. Right from the top I went. Right from the top to the bottom, yeah. What, you fell downstairs? Oh, I did. <laughs> yeah, me. Are you okay? Well, I've had better days, <laughs> to be honest with you. Is this a wind-up? Oh. <laughs> well, it took you long enough, Kim. Who is this? It took you long enough to figure it out, Kim. What are you doing? It sounds very much to me like someone called Mr. Pank. Sarah Burgess has dropped me a line, Kim. Has she? I will absolutely murder that girl. Says you must give my sister a call, <laughs> Steve. Get her going on your show. I will absolutely kill her later <laughs> when I see her. It took you long enough, Kim. I love those burps. They're brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Brilliant. <laughs> That's brilliant. I love your show. It's That's excellent. very nice of you. <laughs> Listen, have you got a message for that sister of yours before we go? Tell us to stay well hidden for a couple of days. Are you, are you listening, Sarah? Lie low for at least a few weeks. <laughs> Hey, listen, Kim, thanks for being a great sport. Oh, lovely. Thanks a lot, then. And I'll just All go right. off and just wrap myself in some bandages. <laughs> I think I've taken the skin off me, like... <laughs> Good morning, uh. Morning. Morning. How's it looking for the Easter weekend? Elementary. Thank you. Good morning, uh. Hello? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's it looking for the Easter weekend? Oh, fine. You're not going to be coming out on strike, huh, are you? <laughs> what did you say? I said, you're not going to be coming out on strike, are you? Because we're hoping to fly over there next weekend. So, what do you want? I'm just wondering if you're going to be coming out on strike, because you always do, don't you, bank holidays and cause chaos. On strike? What do you normally do? No, we are not. You're not coming out on strike? We are not on strike, no. Which company did you want? No, I just wonder if there are any rumours of any strikes or anything at uh, bank holiday weekend. Any rumours? Any rumours? Silly woman. Oh. Uh, who's the big troubleshooter around there, then? Who's the one who calls the strikes? So I can repeat, please. Yeah, who's the one that calls the strikes at the airport? The strike? Yes. Is, is there going to be an airstrike? No. Oh, right. Because there normally is, isn't there? Every bank holiday, normally. Yes, no problem. Uh, yes, I mean, not normally you French always come out, don't you, bank holidays? Of course, chaos, you know, ruin everybody's holidays. Oh, you speak very quickly. I don't understand what you say. So oh, right, well, I'll, I'll talk very slowly because you're a bit thick, please. aren't you? Yeah, because uh, you don't find our lot at Manchester Airport coming out on strike every five minutes. I'm a bit touchy, you lot, aren't you? Which strike number? Hey? Which strike number? No, I just wondered if you're going to come out on oh, strike no. next weekend. Sorry, because I don't understand all you say. Well, I'm talking English, for heaven's sake. Yes, but speak slowly. Oh, right. What do you want me to do now? What do, what do you want exactly? I was just saying you're a bit touchy, you lot, aren't you? What? I said you're a bit touchy, aren't you, you lot? Always coming out on strike every five minutes. So I just wondered if there is going to be an air, you know, air traffic strike here next weekend. You lot going to come out? Under. Hello? Hello, can I help you? Yes, I was just... Uh, hello, good morning. Eh? Good morning. Good morning. How's it looking for the Easter weekend? Uh, the fees. Eh? Really? With, uh, I don't have the fees here, this uh, telephone number. No, no, I'm just trying to say, you're not going to be coming out on strike, are you? No, no, why did you think so? Well, it's just that uh, you lot are a bit touchy, aren't you? And as soon as it comes up to the bank holiday, you try and ruin everybody's holiday by going out on strike. No, no, no. Not uh, for the moment. Oh, that's no, great. It's normally in September. Oh, no. <laughs> September. <laughs> <laughs> right then. So, uh, who's the big troubleshooter around there then? Who's the one that normally calls the strikes? Like driver. Who? 
<laughs> well, actually, uh, you should call uh, this number that you just dialed. Yeah, well, that's what I've done. That's what I've got through to you, yes. you gorgeous creature. Normally, normally we know it, yes, but only a few days in advance. So where are you going next weekend for your break? Well, uh, I'm not leaving at all. I have to work. Oh, you have to work. <laughs> oh, the slave drivers as well over there, aren't they? Yes. You should come and work at Manchester Airport. It's far better there, you know. Is it? Oh, yes, they look oh. after you there. Far nicer people. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, the French are the funny, aren't they? Yes, they are. Ooh, oh, they, I tell you, they are. They're not very polite. Very rude people, they yeah. really are. <laughs> so, there's no rumours then of them coming out on strike? No, not for the moment. Not that you've heard? No, no, no. And who are you? Are you uh, chief troubleshooter around there? No, I'm not a chief, but uh, almost. Well, I think you should be. I think you've uh, handled yourself very well, if you don't mind me saying so. No, I don't mind. And uh, your name is? Uh, what is your name? My name's Steve Pink. <laughs> uh, well, actually, uh... What's funny about that? It's my name, for heaven's sake. <laughs> no, it's not funny. Your name is not funny, but uh, it's funny that you ask me my name. <laughs> well, what is your name? <laughs> my name is, uh, Balding. Balding? Yes. That was an unfortunate <laughs> name. But not, I'm not English. <laughs> uh, what's your name for a lady? So are you balding then? Yes, I am. Oh, that's great. <laughs> you get some cream for that, you know, love. <laughs> well, have to go then. Okay. And uh, make sure you don't come out on strike, otherwise I'll be calling you back. Okay. All right, there's, there's a lot of people looking forward to the holidays next weekend. Yes, well, it should be okay. I don't want people stuck in the airport for hours. No, no, no. All it right, should then. be okay. Because I'll otherwise be blaming it on you, balding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. See you, love. See you. What? Yes, calling about the job. All right, one moment, please. Excellent. Hello, good morning. I'm um, calling about the advert. Yes. The job. Oh, yes, yes. Is, is it still available? Yes, it is. All oh, right, that's very good then, that's very good. Uh, it's, it's a living position, is it? Yeah, be, before you carry on, can I just state your name? Yeah, it's Mr. Woodchef. Mr. Woodchef. Woodchef. Yeah, and that's Ken. Right. So will there be enough room for me budgies then? What? It's a living position, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, will there be enough room for me budgies? Because I, I breed budgies, you see, and it's, it's a hobby of mine. Are you winding me up? What? Because I've only got about three or four hundred of them, you see, and they don't make too much noise. I think you're wasting my time, pal. No, it's just like I'd like to check these things out, you see, because it's a hobby of mine. Budgies? It's a hotel! Anyway, I'm sure we can sort that out. That's, that's only a little problem, isn't it? So what exactly will I be doing, then? You can b***h off. I, w I won't be working weekends, will I? You won't be working at all. I've had a few first prizes over the years, you know. For what? Be budgies. Oh, f***ed off. You do like budgies, don't you? I think budgies are very nice, but I don't like 400 of them in my hotel. Will I get a TV and a video in the room, will I? Are you stupid, man? I don't want a manager of a hotel bringing 400 budgies with him. It's a VHS machine I get in the room, is it? F***ed off. Hello? What? Good morning, the Clarence Clinton speaking. How may I assist you? Would I be calling Islands, can you, sir? Uh, sorry, ma'am? I said, would I be calling Ireland? This is Ireland, correct. How can I help, ma'am? Well, I just wanted to call, find out exactly where you are, can you, sir? Oh, no problem at all. I'll just put you through to my colleagues in the reservations office. One moment. Oh, thank you very much. You're a lovely man. No problem. Good morning, sir. The current Scottam speaking. How may I help you? Hello, can sir. How are you this fine day? I'm very well. How are you? Well, I'm very well. I'm calling from Memphis, Tennessee. Excellent. And I just wondered, uh, where exactly are you? Uh, we're located in Dublin City Centre uh, on the River Liffey. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, the, the, the city centre, love? Yes, that's correct. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, just talking to my husband. The city, your city centre is where they are. Well, he's absolutely delighted there. And how would you be spending Christmas, Cancer? 
Oh, well, the hotel actually closes for Christmas. So. Oh, well, it's a bit of a bugger, isn't it? Oh, not at all. I get to go home to my family. Oh, do you? <laughs> oh, that's, and uh, yourself? That's great. Well, you know, me, uh, me and uh, Pappy will be going down by the river, Mississippi Ripper, and uh, we'll be having a lovely time. Excellent. And uh, we're hoping to come over to Ireland real soon. I just wondered how you folks celebrate Christmas over there. Uh, with turkey. <laughs> With uh, with Chucky, Turkey. Oh, Turkey! Yeah, I just wonder who Chucky was. <laughs> Sounds like a nice bar. So, and what sort of stuff do you normally do over there in their island? Oh, uh, lots of different things. I'm sure it's quite similar to what you do yourself as well. Yeah, we do a lot of yeah. rock throwing on, on mm -hmm. uh, Christmas Day. Yes. Do you do that as well? Loads of us. Yes. Yeah, lo us. lots of rock throwing we do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, roll the cheese down the hill and mm -hmm. throw a few rocks. Uh, have a great, a real great time. We really do. Uh, anyway, I just want to wish you and all your folks a very happy Christmas. Thank you, and the same to you and many of them. And uh, God bless you, sir. Okay, thank you. Nice to speak to you. You too. Thank Merry you. Christmas to you. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, sir. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Bye bye. Merry Christmas. Help you. Is that the Science Museum? Yes, yeah, speaking. Hi there. Is Howie there? Howie? Howie who? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? No. Thank you. Palace. Hello there. Is Huey there? Huey who? Who am I? Who are you? Oh, thank you. Bob Computer. Good afternoon. Is that the Royal Shakespeare Company? Excellent. Uh, is Franz there? Is. Franz there? Franz whom? Franz, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. Oh, golly gosh, that's a nice one. We're so patient in England, aren't we? Bank of England. Hello, is that the Bank of England? Yes. Can I speak to Jimmy, please? Jimmy who? Jimmy, all your money. <laughs> Radio Cafe Finchley Road, can I help you? Hello, is that the Radio Cafe Finchley Road? It is. Hi, is Hugh there? Hugh who? Hugh wouldn't believe it, even if I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pink. <laughs> what? Mr. Pink. No, Good afternoon. surely not. Yeah, surely. Good afternoon to you. Not that lunatic. Yes, that lunatic. Who, who are you? I'm Steve. Steve, nice to speak to you. And you. Steve who? Uh, Steve Caddish. So if anybody comes down to Finchley Road, they ask for Steve Caddish. Yeah, unfortunately, yes. He's the main man. I'm the man that gets it, if it's uh, all wrong, yeah. Steve, we love you. Thank you. See you, man. Have a good one. Uh, good and nicked. Sorry? Hello? Hello. Hello. Um, is this the hotel? Yeah. Oh, good. And uh, where am I calling? Where? Uh, front, front desk. Oh, lovely. I, I just want to know the uh, the actual location of the hotel, because I'm not sure, you see. Well, it's, it's the city centre of Oslo, um, right between the two main train stations. Uh, National Theatre in Oslo. Would you like the street address? Or? Oh, that, no, that's absolutely perfect. That's where, where it's exactly where I was hoping it was going to be. Now, I've never stayed at the hotel before. Could you tell me a little bit about it? Uh, well, it's, um, it's a beautiful hotel. It's uh, quite old. It's. Um, do you have a health club? Uh, we do. Oh, uh, great. It's, uh, it's not the biggest one, but it, it works. <laughs> uh, well, size doesn't matter sometimes, does it? And, uh, have you, you know, like swimming in a, a gymnasium, you've got all that, have you? Uh, no swimming pool, no, I'm sorry. Oh dear, right. Uh, you got a gymnasium? Yes, uh, with some uh, some uh, machine. Oh, that's lovely. Yes. Well, you know, I like to put frozen peas between my toes uh, at the end of the day, you know. Yes, excellent. Excellent, that's, that's lovely. Now, are there, uh, are there a lot of leaves around at the moment? Uh, well, for the moment, um, not downtown really, but uh, there are parks uh, not far away that are... Um, Beautiful colours. Oh, lovely. I like the colours. And uh, so leaves and... There's a lot of conkers around, are there? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Um, see, there's one part of Oslo that's uh, famous for its... Um it's a lay of chestnut trees. Oh, that's lovely. Well, because I, I, I tell you what, the squirrels have been at me nuts again, our kid. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure about that. Yes, <laughs> yeah, they, they really have. Uh, it's, it's extraordinary. Uh, right, okay, so um, how much is it for a room for the night? The price. 
Yes. The rack rate for a single room is uh, 1,730, while the double room is um, 2,030. 2,030 a night? Yes. Great. That's the rack rate. Yes. Oh, well, I wouldn't expect anything else, to be honest with you. <laughs> and, uh, and your name is? I'm Lena. Lena. Oh, that's lovely. Well, you've been very helpful, Lena. Oh, uh, it's, been, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Absolutely delightful. Just before I go, have you still got that bucket of frogs in reception? Yes, we do. How many frogs are in that bucket? How many frogs? Yes. Um... A perfectly reasonable question, for heaven's <laughs> sake. What's, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Well, I, I, well, what can I say? You've been uh, you've been most helpful. You really have. Uh, and next time you you know you think of coming to Manchester, yeah. uh, then you give me a call. I'll do that. Okay then. Okay, I'll see you then. Bye bye. Bye bye. Watch out for those. Hello. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Just launched into a mosquito there. Who's this, please? Knows the safari park. Oh, right. And I was saying there to, uh, to the young lady, who was very, very helpful, that what I do is I do animal noises. And I was wondering if you had any work for the summer so I could entertain the kiddies. Who's calling, please? Uh, sorry? Who's calling? Johnny Sparkle. Johnny Sparkle? Yeah, and he's animal pantomime. I'm sure you've heard of me. No. Oh. Uh, oh, shut me down. Tell me arse out, why don't you? Um, what's, uh, what, <laughs> what do you think? I shouldn't think so. Uh, sorry? I don't think so. Right. Have you been working there long? Long enough. Right. Obviously didn't get the job on personality, did you? What about uh, a lion roar? Hang on a minute. Oh, that one hurts, I tell you. Uh, what do you think? No. What about this one? That's even worse. That's a tiger. I could jump out. Scare the sods to death, I could. No, thank you. What? Thank you. Hello, thanks for calling Fox. This is Chris. Hello? Yes. May I help you? Can you hear me? Yes. Are you there? I can hear you just barely. I'm hard of hearing, so I can't hear very well. You'll have to speak up. Can you hear me now? Hello? Can you hear me? Good. How long will it be? How long will what be? I need to book a cab, please, if that's possible. I, I, I don't think I can get you a car in... The, in for, it'll take me over an hour. That's right. It would take me over an hour to get you a car. Sorry? It would take over an hour. Now, when the limousine turns up, could you tell him not to toot his car horn because I won't be able to hear it? I'll be outside waiting for him. Okay, sir, I don't think I can help you. Yes, I think so. I do not think I can help you. How long will it be because I need to get to the station? Sir, That's I would advise you to call Yellow Cab Company. That's very kind of you. Sir, I can't help you. Could you speak up? I can not help you. Yes, please. Hello? Yes, I cannot help you. I do not have a car available. How much will it be? I Nothing. I have no car available. That's very kind of you. In about ten minutes, if that's possible. No, it is not possible. Yes, please. No, sir. I cannot do it. Is that you? I, I cannot help you. That's right. <laughs> oh, hello. Very good afternoon to you. Uh, I'm calling you from my mobile phone. Which uh, is where? Uh, well, we're downtown. Uh, me and my mates have come into a building downtown to do a bit of pipe work, and it's worse than we thought. Are you through? Uh, well, yeah, I've just got through now. Uh, this place is falling to bits, basically. It's actually due to be demolished later this week, and we've come in yeah. to move some uh, some piping. And right. it's basically falling in around our heads. Basically, is it falling out into the street as well? Well, no, not into the street, just uh, just in the building. What are we going to do? Right, what's your telephone number you're on? Well, it's actually, it's a strange as it may sound, it's nicely my mobile, uh, and uh, we we're trying to find the... Have you got the worksheet there? I think it's on the bricks on the rear somewhere. Details of where we are. Um, oh, OK. I mean, there's, what's there's, the name of the building? There's a bit somewhere. See, this bit here is, seems pretty safe, but it actually isn't. You know, I mean, this bit... Right, just tell me the name of the building you're in. Yeah, I mean, this bit's falling onto us all over the 
place. What? Yeah, well, tell what? me the name of the school you're in. Watch yourself there. Have you got your hard hat on? Yeah, I'm just making sure that the men are all right. You know, I'm sure you can understand that. Yes. Yeah. I don't understand why they've sent us here, we, you know, when it's so bad. But how about you tell me where you are? Watch that girder there. Watch, watch yourself there. Just, just watch yourself. Have you found that worksheet there? I'm still looking for it. How's that bit there? What street are you in? How's that bit there? That's it, yeah. It's, what? Is, is it going? Is it going? Careful! Ah! Good morning, Tab London. Just putting you through. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, Hansel Court Palace. Yeah, hi, this is Tower London. It's Hansel Court Palace. Oh, someone just phoned and asked me to hold and put me through to you. Oh, right. <laughs> what was it regarding? That's strange, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> You didn't even tell her, no? Somebody just phoned you up and... Oh. Yeah, and he said, hold on a minute, I'm just putting you through. Oh. Oh, gosh. So you didn't phone anybody? No. You didn't need any information or anything for the tower or... Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know what's happened there. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Thank you. Hello? Little stick of black pool rock. Hello, can I speak to Roy Jason Bold, please? I'm sorry, he's at college this morning. Oh, is he? Yes. Right, I'll try and get hold of him some other time then. Yeah, he should be back about five o'clock. Right, are you his mother? Yes. Right, I'm just calling about the brass band, you see. Oh, yes. I'm interested uh, in, you know, in playing for the band. Oh, yeah, uh, he'll probably in be about, um... Half past four or five o'clock. Right, I mean, could you give me some details about it? You know, with me little stick of black pool. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just that's a play the ukulele, you see, I have for a number of years now, and I'm wondering if I could join his band, because I saw his advert. Yeah, uh, well, as soon as you speak to Mr. Novery, Tony, I'm just the uh, outsider sort of thing. Right, like, yeah. it's turned out nice again. All right. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, like I said, I've been playing the ukulele for a number of years now, because uh, I modelled myself on George Formby, you know. Yeah. And I saw the advert, and uh, I've been wanting to join a band for a number of years now and uh, where did he normally play could you tell me uh, it's the Latchford Community Centre right and where exactly is that if you don't mind me asking uh, do you know Victoria Park uh, I don't actually know no um, uh, do you know Bridgefoot no I know Piccadilly Gardens is anywhere near there <laughs> no right because uh, I'm not very well up on this area you see well uh, i tell you what I think the best thing is turn out nice again <laughs> yeah uh, my son comes in do you want him to phone you? Well, or? if he could, yes, that would be great, because, like I said, I've been playing the ukulele for a number of years, you know. And Do you remember George Formby? Oh, I, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a great fan. I've got most of his records, you know, I've been playing all those songs. Do you remember, I'm leaning on the lamppost oh, at the corner of the street. I do that one. And, because uh, I've done a number of concerts, but I've never played with a band, you know, with a full backing band. Yes. Yeah. Uh, turned out nice again. That was one of his sayings, you know. Oh, I, yeah. Uh, yeah, I used to say that all the time. I have no... <laughs> Uh, what instrument do you play besides the ukulele? Well, it's just the ukulele. We mean yeah. little ukulele. <laughs> uh, do you play any other? I beg your pardon? Do you play any of the brass well, bands? Well, not really, no. But, um, but you know, I've, uh, I've, it's covered in brass, you see, because it's, it's quite valuable to me. Yeah. Uh, i got somebody to make one out of brass one. Uh, well, it's actually brass players is actually looking for. Right. You know, uh, cornet players yeah. and... Turned out nice again. Cornet players and, um, you know, trombone players and... Right. Okay. That. Well, shall I come down with my little ukulele in my hand? Uh, I don't think so, because, you know, it's, you know, just the brass players they're after. Right. You know, the wind instruments, really. With me little stick of black pool rock. Do you remember that one? Oh, I, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, right. So, uh, shall I come down and see him, then? Uh, i tell you what, I'll uh, give him your number. That's very kind of you. You're very yeah. kind. I'm sorry to uh, to disturb your day, you know, it's but right, I'm then. quite eager to get a backing band, you know. Yeah. Turn you out nice again. Um, <laughs> what's your number, then, please? Uh, that's right. Hello? Sorry? What's your number? Oh, sorry. It's uh, 061. Yes. Okay. Oh, do you want the rest of it? Yes. Uh, 236. 236. 0103. 0103. And you, mu you must be Mrs. Bold. That's are right, you? yes. Right, Mrs. Bold. Could well, you tell me whereabouts uh, you've seen the advert? Well, please? it was sent in to me, you see, by uh, some lady called Suzanne. Would that be uh, your, uh, your son's girlfriend? Yes. 
it must be, yeah. Yes, right. Yeah. I just wondered how far the field they'd gone. That don't, was don't, like... you know, don't you know who we see in these days? <laughs> oh, ah, yeah, but uh, right. I don't know how far the field, you know, the leaflets have gone out. Right. So don't you take an interest in his love life, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, definitely. Oh, <laughs> With me little stick, I'm off again, um, aren't you? What's right. your name, then, please? Uh, well, my name is Steve Pink from Piccadilly Key 103. You're joking. You're having me on. No. You're on Key 103 at the moment. What's your first name? Janice. I'll go and kill Sue. <laughs> well, listen, she's dropped us a line to get Roy. And, yeah. And, uh, but instead we've got you, and you are far more entertaining. So, can I thank you for your time, Janice? Right, thank you. And remember, it's turned out nice again. Yeah. Do you want to join in a quick song before I go? No, thank you. Thanks very much, Janice. It's all right. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! And how are you? Fine, thanks, and how are you? I'm very well. I'm better for speaking to you, you lovely lady. Uh, what's your name? My name is Anna. Anna! Well, uh, my name is uh, Stephen. Yes. How are you going to be celebrating uh, the lovely Christmas, Anna? Oh my God, with my family. Lovely. What will you be doing? Eating a lot. Right. What, what's, a, what's a traditional uh, Christmas lunch in Lapland? Uh, well, I think it, there's ham and some casseroles and everything. Lovely. Do you have mm. a Bakewell tart afterwards? Well, maybe yes. A little bit. Oh, a beautiful bit of custard. Mm. Yes, nice. Excellent. And will you be playing any party games? On Christmas? Yes. Mm, no, actually. Because what we tend to do over here is we tend to turn the telly off and play games. Mm. Do you do that? Yes, we do. When we have received all the presents, then we do that. That's right. We'll get your priorities yeah. right. Absolutely right. So mm. what games do you play? Mm, I don't know. Maybe like Trivial Pursuit or something like that. Yes, a good game. That's absolutely yeah. very, very good. Well, I'm very bad. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> do you ever play the Minister's Cat? Sorry, played what? Uh, the Minister's Cat. No, I don't know what It's a very, very good game. Um, what you do is, um, and you're able to play this with your family on Christmas Day. Okay. You, uh, you have to think of uh, a word, first of all, beginning with the letter A. Mm. So I say, for example, the minister's cat is an angry cat. And then mm. you say the minister's cat is another word beginning with A. Okay. It's all right. So you go around the room until somebody uh, can't think of a word, and then you go to the letter B. Are you with me? Okay. Excellent. So let's play it now, just the two of us. Um, <laughs> do you think I have time to do that? Of course I do. Show your face. Uh, the minister's cat is an angry cat. Your turn. <laughs> My turn. With A. Yes, a word beginning with A. You've got Kuba, you Yes. Um, right, so you can think of a word now. Yeah, we are thinking, we are all thinking who are working here. Well, it's not difficult, is it? <laughs> it's, a word, it's a word beginning with A. <laughs> A is a difficult letter. <laughs> right, well, you'd be hopeless at this game, wouldn't you? Yeah. And you're sober, I know. all right. <laughs> anyway, could you do I that? I lost already. Yes, you lost already. You, yeah. were, you were absolutely rubbish. <laughs> now, could you uh, wish everybody in Manchester, England, in um, Laplandish, um, <laughs> a very happy Christmas? Okay, I'll do that. Hyvää joulua. Is that it? Please. Happy what? Christmas. Hyvää joulua. Oh, nice. Lovely. That's yeah. Nice. That's excellent. Well, listen, you have a, a, a lovely Christmas. Mm. Uh, don't you too. Don't play the Minister's Cat game. Because, uh, I won't play any. No, no, because you'll, you'll lose. <laughs> and, yeah. and we'll play you a nice Christmas song right now. Okay. Okay, Merry Christmas! Zoo. Oh, is that the zoo? Yeah. All oh, right. Can you tell me, have you got orangutans and monkeys? Sorry? Have you got orangutans and monkeys? I have, yes. Yeah. Right. And can you watch them being fed? Um, yes, you can. Oh, I think those shampoos and conditioners in one are a rip-off, don't you? I'm sorry? Sorry? I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Right, I just said, what time are you open till? 10 till 5.30. And can you feed the animals yourself? No, it's the keepers that feed them. What was the girl called with the glasses in Scooby-Doo? Sorry? Do you have a reptile house? Yes. Yeah. And can you get quite close to the snakes and the lizards and things? Yes, you can. Uh, and, and you can you can take pictures, can you? Yes, you can. Right. If I had 137 to get on a dartboard, what would I need to score with three darts? My arms 
Ask who's calling, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Irrelevant. Mr. Irrelevant? Yes. Oh, well, this is totally irrelevant, isn't it? Oh, right, OK, we'll leave it there. Hello? Hello, is that Harrow School? Yes. Can I speak to Mavis, please? Ah, um, Mavis who? I'm sorry? Mavis who? Mavis, be the best day of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Mavis, be the best day of your life. That's right. <laughs> now, you've got on the Harrow School tours. Oh, have I really? But not Harrow School. Goodness gracious. <laughs> well, is Walter there? No, you, there's no one here. Um, you want the school office, I think. Do I? Yes. Uh, what about Walter? <laughs> Walter who? I'm sorry? Walter who? Walter, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> now, would you like to have a school number? Uh, not really. You would But it's been a delight to talk to you. All right. Okay, then. Goodbye. Have a lovely day. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Good morning, the London Television Centre. Hello? Good morning, the London Television Centre. Hello? The London Television Centre. Sorry, this is the Information Centre, but I haven't actually called anybody or... Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Morning, International. Good morning, Mayor Grove. May I help you? Yes, you just rang me, sir. No, you rang me. No, our operator said, would you hold the line? She's trying to connect me. This is the Mirror Group Newspapers. Good evening, Radisson Hotel, Santa Barbara. This is Dave. Can I help you? Uh, Santa, please. I'm sorry? Uh, I'm after Santa. You're off to, um, wh- who is it you're trying to uh, reach? I, I want to speak to Santa, please. S- what's the last name, sir? Uh, Santa. Uh, is that that's the last name? It is, yes. Okay. Uh, how do you spell that, sir? S A N T T A. You're trying to find him. Santa. I, I I don't think we have anybody by here by that name. No, he's not there at the moment. Then. Okay. Right. Yeah. Where, where exactly am I calling? Uh, you're calling uh, the Santa Barbara Radisson Hotel. Right, and Santa's not there. No, I don't. Right. Okay, well, okay. Thank, you for, thank you very much indeed. Okay. Thank you, bye-bye. Slightly disappointing, so no Santa in Santa Barbara, so uh, any more joy by finding Santa in, um, hang on, Santa Monica. Let's see if we can find Santa in Santa Monica. <laughs> Good morning, Rashid. I'll check the car. Santa, please. Who? Uh, can I speak to Santa? Who? Santa. The last name? Santa. Can you spell it? S-A-N-T-A. What's the first name? Uh, uh well, the first name's Santa. Where are you, exactly? We're the last of the in Santa Monica. In where, sorry? We're in the city of uh, Santa Monica. Oh, Santa Monica. Well, exactly. So I'm looking for Santa in Santa Monica. Uh, is he there? I don't have that name in the computer, sir. You know, the name's not in the computer. No, sir. Right, okay. And your name is? Uh, Johnny. Johnny? Right. All right, Johnny, thanks a lot. Oh. Thanks a lot, mate. So, no Santa in Santa Barbara. Uh, no Santa in Santa Monica. Uh, perhaps we can find Santa in uh, Santa Lucia. Grande da Santa Lucia, buongiorno. Santa, please. Yes. Uh, can I be, uh, speak to Santa, please? Speak with... Uh, Santa, please? No, just mom. Thank you. Oh, he's there. He must be there. <laughs> hey, we found him. Hello. Santa, how are you? How are you? Yeah, great. Well, this is fantastic. And, uh, and how are you? Fine, thank you. You want to talk y- to someone? Uh, yes, uh, you, Santa. That's, that's great. And, uh, looking forward to the big day? Okay, um, um, a moment, please. I connect you, uh, with Barbara. Oh, right. Is he, okay. one of, he one of the fairies, is he? That's great. Moment. Thank you. Santa Lucia, buongiorno. Great. Are you one of the elves? No, just moment. He just moment. He's busy now. Just moment. Right. You see, he's busy. It's that, it's that time of year, you see. They're busy. They're all busy. <laughs> Making Make, toys. Making <laughs> toys. That's right. <laughs> Hello? 
Has he gone? He's obviously <laughs> very, he's obviously <laughs> very busy, isn't he, Mr. Santa? Far too busy. And he's elves. Right, well, uh, that didn't take long to find Santa then, did it? Good morning, Trafford Centre. Good morning, Trafford Centre. Hello. 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 What can I do for you? What can I do for you? <laughs> you don't want to know. You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Is there someone you want to speak to? Is there someone you want to speak to? Ross, is that you? Ross, is that you? Hello? 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 Hi, can I help? Hi, can I help? Hello? Hello? Would you like to speak to someone? Would you like to speak to someone? Yeah, pool attendant. Yes. Calling about the job. Yes, just a minute. Right. Right. Because uh, I'm very uh, good, you know. You're very good, yeah, are you'd you? You're very impressed. Oh, go on then. <laughs> well, would you like me to start then? Well, wh what experience have you had with? Uh, well, I've got a pair of trunks. <laughs> no, with this job that you. Uh, well, what experience have you had in? being a pool attendant? Well, I've, uh, you know, I've been swimming a few times and uh, I'm sure I can handle it. Where are you employed at the moment? Well, I'm not as such, really. Oh, where have you been employed? Well, uh, you know, in a, f in a few uh, few pools uh, here and there. Yeah, well, where was your last one? It was down south. Down south? Yeah. And what was the job? Just pool attendant? Just, just pool attendant, yeah, pool attendant. Yeah. So I'll, um... I'd, How I'd... many years, then, have you been doing this job? Yeah, so I can start next Monday, then. Well, I'll have to have your details first. Yeah, name's Mr. Koholik. Mr. Koholik. And your home telephone number? Yeah, well, I'm not actually in a place at the moment, because I've only just uh, sort of moved up, you know. Yeah. So, what, what about... Well, have you, you, you've not got to... Well, where can we contact you, then? Have you got a home address? What about days off, then? Because I like to play golf, you see. It, would, would there be a problem with that? I think... Uh, I don't really think you want to give me all these details, do you? <laughs> Well, I'm raring to go, you know, but I'd just like to, to, to sort out the finer details before I commit myself. Because you'll certainly be impressed with me, because I'm one of the best. All right, well, who am I talking to? Well, I've told you, Mr. Koholik. So what's, uh, what's the money like, then? I don't have no idea on that, and I'm not joking. I don't have anything to do with the wages. All I'm doing is taking details. Right, OK. You sound a bit cheesed off. You had a bad day? No, well, it's only early day, isn't it? Th the holidays are good, then, are they? I don't know what the holidays are. I've... All right. So I'll come down on Monday, then. So you don't want to give me any details? Well, I've given... How, how many more details do you want? Well, I want to know more than the fact you've got swimming trunks. Well, what else do you want to know? Well, I've asked you your home telephone number. I've asked you your address. Have you? Yes. Well, I've told you, I've just moved up. Well, what, what qualifications have you got in pool testing and maintaining in the pools? Well, I've done a few lengths here and there. You know, I'm very good. I'm very good at swimming. Well, you know what I suggest you do? Just write all your details down and then you'll find it easier to give them to me over the phone. Right, because, yeah, right then. Well, you've been, you've been very helpful. Well, you've not been very helpful with me. What do you mean? There's no need to well, be Well, I mean, rude. I've got a blank sheet here with Mr. Koholik on it. Well, first name is Al, anyway. <laughs> Sorry, have you got a problem with that? Yeah, I do just think you find it amusing. Well, that's my name. You could change it, actually, by deep poll if you wanted. I don't think you're taking me very seriously, I'm are you? I'm not really taking you serious, no, because you're not giving me the information that I want. I mean, I've got three other calls hanging on to give me details here. Well, uh, you're wasting your time with them because I'm the best. You're the best, are you? Yeah. Oh. Right, so I'm talking to, what's your name? Gertrude. 
Gertrude. Mm. That's a terrible name, isn't it? Mm, it is. I mean, my mother called it me. I couldn't have it. I didn't have anything to do with that. Right then. Well, Gertrude. A bit better than alcoholic, though, isn't it? Hello. Reception, Tracy speaking. How can I help? Hi, hi, hi hello there, Tracy. Uh, is that Lancaster, England? Yes, it is. Oh, great. Uh, we have a call for you from Lancaster, California. Okay. Can I just put them through? Certainly can. Uh, just bear with me a few seconds. It'll take me a few seconds to put the call through. No problem. Okay, hang on a second. Thank you. Hello? Yes, we'll be a second. All right, okay. Good afternoon, Park Plaza, Lancaster, Palmdale. Yes, hello, this is the Holiday Inn at Lancaster here. How can I help? Um, no, I, uh, you called me. No, I'm afraid I didn't. I got a gentleman saying that, um, you needed, somebody needed to come through to the Holiday Inn at Lancaster. Oh, okay. You, you obviously don't require it. Is that uh, Lancaster, California? Yes. And is that Lancaster, England? Yes. Well, isn't this fabulous? Hey! <laughs> We're bringing you together this evening. Okay. Well, you sound very underwhelmed. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is uh, a thing called United Pink Nations, and what we're trying to do is make the world a smaller place and a happier place by bringing places together. <laughs> so, uh, Lancaster, England, hello. Hello. And Lancaster, California, hello. Hello. Excellent. <laughs> well, say hello to each other. Uh, hello there. Hello. <laughs> My name is Tracy, by the way. Well, that's very nice, Tracy. Uh, sorry, sorry, the fella in, uh, the funny fella in California, what's your name? Brian. Brian, nice to speak to you, Brian. Uh, well, tell us a bit about Lancaster, California, if you've got a few seconds. Uh, well, uh, let's see here. Right now, we're about 70 miles um, northeast of Los Angeles. Um, right now, you're calling an actual hotel. Lovely. And, uh, well, let's see here. Most of the time, it's sunny, it's dry, and it's actually kind of boring. Kind of boring? Well, be a minute, Mr. Middleton. Well, you also could go and live in Lancaster, England, where it's, uh, pissing it down all the time. Anyway, Lancaster, England. Uh, what's it, uh, what's it like in Lancaster, England? Uh, well, we're, we're night time, and it's very cold and very miserable. <laughs> and you're calling a hotel as well, so I'm working in a hotel at the moment. Isn't that, isn't that lovely? Isn't this a lovely special moment? Uh, yes, it's different. Uh, I, I bet Lancaster, England, you didn't even know Lancaster, California existed, did you? I certainly did, yes, because we have a lot of guests who come from that part of the... Oh, you United really? States, well, that yeah. slapped me down, hasn't it? Yes, certainly uh, has. <laughs> right, but, uh, but obviously in, in Lancaster, California, you know, the uh, the sky doesn't come down as low as it does in, in Lancaster, England. <laughs> you know, <laughs> permanently in cloud. Oh. Anyway, listen, it's been lovely to have you both on the show. Oh, thank right. you very much. Uh, nice to speak to you, Brian. Thanks. Nice to speak to you. All right, thank then. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. There we are. Wasn't that a lovely special moment? There we are. United Paint Nations this evening bringing together the lovely people of Lancaster, California with the lovely people of Lancaster, England. Magnificent. Oh, sorry, hello? Hello? Hello, is that, uh, is that the, the DIY place? Yeah. Uh, hello, can I have customer services, please? Speaking. Uh, all right, just uh, hold it there, Carl. Yeah, listen, I bought um, a greenhouse from you uh, yesterday, one of these self-assembly things. Yeah. Uh, we're just in the garden now. You better watch that, Carl. We're just putting it together now in the garden, and I think there's one or two screws missing because it, it's, it's not very steady at all. We're worried that the thing is going to collapse now because we don't know how to get this thing down. The only thing you can do is if you come back... Right, well, that's the, that's the thing, you see. That's why I'm calling you from the mobile now, because uh, my mate's actually holding it together, because we're fit, you know, we've got this fear that the actual panels are going to collapse and the glass is going to go, you see. And I just wondered if, you know, if you could advise us really on what to do, because I think there's one or two screws... Mi we're careful with it now. I think it's going there. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, what, what do you think we should do, really? Because I, I can't leave it, you see. If you actually take the glass out... Yeah, yeah, and I am calm about it. Yeah, I am worrying up. Yeah, sorry, what did you say? Sorry, love. You need to take the glass out. Right, I'm sorry to sound a bit panicky, but we're just a little bit worried, you know, that the glass Hurry is going to... Sorry? Hurry up! Yeah, OK, I'm going as fast as I can. Yeah, because, uh, you know, it's the glass, you know, that I'm worried about. What take you the glass out, otherwise you could get hurt if it yeah, goes. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I'm worried about, you know, that it's going to... It's going It's going <laughs> The whole green 
Ian has to just crash while I've been on the phone to him. With them in it. Are you all right? Can you hear me? Oh my god! Can you hear me? Did you hear that? Yeah, are you all right? We're fine, but the bloody greenhouse is gone. It's your fault this, you know. What's your name? Hello? Sorry, love, I couldn't hear you. We're clearing up the glass. Can you give me your name? Yeah, Steve Pink. Steve. Are you going to pay for a new one of these, then, or what? We'll be out to assess it in a minute. If you bear with me... Well, hurry up! Can you bear with me? No, I can't. I'm in a right state now. Well, until I know the address or anything like that, we can't do anything, can I? Can't believe this. Just can't believe it. What do you think, Carl? Uh, uh, uh. Oh, Carl's in a right mess over there. <coughs> right, we'll leave it there, then. London Palladium. Um, hello, would it be possible to have a quick word with Mr Forsyth, please? Um, oh, well, I'm reluctant to disturb him this near to the show. Um, do you want to leave a message? Um, well, it's just Paul Masters at Downing Street. I actually have a call uh, for Mr Forsyth from the Prime Minister. I know he just wanted to catch him before he goes on, if possible. Um, I'll see if he's available. One moment. Hello, who is it? Uh, hello there, uh, Tony Blair, unmistakable uh, voice oh, well, there. Oh, this is a Bruce Forsyth sound-alike. Very nice to speak to you, it's do you appreciate really it. You're Tony Blair, I'm, I'm Bruce Forsyth, the look-alike. So we'll go on from there, but I don't really talk like that, do I? Did, 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 did. I, know, I know, you know, people sort of, you know, pick up on, you know... Some it's of... a very good impression, I will tell you that, it's very good. Do you finish on a song? Well, you know, I mean, you know, ever since, you know, came into government, you know, people have, you know, impersonated me... I suppose it'd be me difficult and... for you to sing a song without smiling. Well, I, you know, I suppose so. I, I remember, you know, the marvellous spitting image puppet where they did me a smile which was about, you know, two foot wide. Oh, yes. But, um, if you, did you ever see my spitting image? Uh, I, I, I sued ITV for what they did to me. They were the most vicious of all. They really were. When I think of the lovely Muppets and what the spitting image did. But anyway, Tony, you're having a, a nice evening? Well, I am. You know, I, I often do quite a lot of work at this time because, you know, it's, it's quieter, you can, you know, concentrate more. I, I'm very glad that I've caught you because um, I can follow things up tomorrow now. But, you know, we thought as a fitting tribute to you and also to mark your birthday and it would brighten things up so much, you know, in the House of Commons, we wanted to invite you to, you know, sit in for Betty Boothroyd and, and be Mr Speaker for the day. I'd love to do that. Believe me, what a, what a job that must be. I mean, she's absolutely marvellous. You do know that she was an ex-Tiller girl. Oh, yes. Did you know yes. that? Yes, I did, yes. You did. She can't half kick her legs up. Yes, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure she wants to do that, you know, many times in the house. But, you know, it would be marvellous if you would, you know, fill in for her. You know, well, the... any time, Tony, for you, any time at all, I'm in charge. You see, I wouldn't say order, order. I'd say I'm in charge, which was my first catchphrase. That would be, you know, I mean, it would be so good if you, could, you know, could, you know, humiliate well, some don't, MPs. Don't ever with... do it, Tony. I said I'll do it. I mean, keep on asking because I'll do it. Well, that is, you know, so marvellous. And in view of this, what we can do now is, uh, you know, cross live to Peter O'Sullivan in the commentary box for some of your top catchphrases. Oh, yes. lovely. And you join us here and coming in at the start, we have nice to see you, to see you nice. Let's have a look at the old scoreboard. Didn't they do well? Nice audience, so much better than last week. Nothing for a pound, not in this game. Don't touch the pack, we'll be right back. Oh, marvellous, I'm so sorry, I really am. What's on the board, Miss Ford? There they are, they're so appealing. Come on, dollies, do your dealing. Higher, higher, lower, lower. No, I don't speak like that. Nice to see you, to see you nice. Know what I mean, Harry. That one shouldn't have been there. That was wonderful. That was really very, very funny. You hey, made me laugh, Tony. Hey, Brucey, happy birthday. Uh, thank you very much, all of you. That was really masterful. You are the best, Brucey. Oh, uh, well, I don't know. That was pretty good. I'll tell you that. I enjoyed it. Listen, Bruce, it's Steve Pink from 95.8 Capital FM, and good luck with the ITV special at weekend. Thank you very much indeed. God bless you. Thank you, Bye-bye. Bruce. Bye-bye. <laughs> Dorothy. Hello there. Yes. Hello. Uh, well, I certainly hope you can help me. Uh, I think the battery may have gone on the food mixer. What? Hello. What do you want? Yes. Um, I thought the. Uh, are you people? Yes. Uh, I'm calling about the battery. The battery? Yes. This is Richard. I can help you. Oh, hello there. It's, yes, I, the thing is, I've got a, a food mixer and I think one of the switches is broke. I just wonder if you give me some advice. Okay, well. Yeah, I, I mean, I just wondered, you know, I just wondered if, if you could figure out, you know, basically what it is I need to buy. If it's a, a connector or a battery or... 
Maltesers or opal fruits or what it is, you know. Oh, well, what's wrong with it? Tell me what's wrong with it. Well, I mean, I, I've, 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 I mean, I've got it in bits now, really, and and there's, you know, there's all sorts of bits hanging everywhere, you know, as uh, wires and fuses and curly whirlies and twicks and all sorts. And uh -huh. I, I just wondered, you know, what what you think it is in, you know, because. Uh, you... Okay, uh, is the fuse blown up? Well, I'm not exactly sure, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I, as I say, a friend of mine recommended you. He said that you know, you, you you people are the best. You know, you're very very good. He's been down to your place a number of times, uh -huh. uh, and I just wondered what. What you think it is, you know, what 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 you think I could uh, I could do to get it going, you know? Should I buy some pick and mix? Well, what happened to it? It's not out. It's not working at all. No, I mean, uh, I mean, what I did is I've connected the Maltesers uh, to the Opal fruits and the uh, and the battery, and it doesn't appear to be going at the moment. So I just I just wondered what you know what you think I should do really. Oh, it's all it's a battery powered. It's not one of those uh, plug-in types. The thing is, is that I really am hopeless with electronic stuff, and, I, and <laughs> you know, I, it's. Uh, I just wondered really what to do because I need to, to get it going. I mean, I've got the wires here, and you know, I really don't know which one to, uh, you know, which one to connect up. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. I see what you're saying. Well, you know what? You could take it to. Uh, there's a company here down the street from us. You could take it there, and they could try to figure it out for you. Right, I mean, what do you? I mean, what do you think it is? You know, with your years. Uh, well, I don't experience. know what's wrong with it. Well, it's not going. No, that's what's what's wrong with it. You know. When you plug it in, it's not going, even well, though you switch I mean, it on. I'll, I'll, hang on. I'll plug it in now. Yeah, it's in now. And uh, hang on, I'll just try this switch. So I've got my screwdriver inside. If I just reach down and get it now, just that. <laughs> Jesus, I got my fingers stuck in it. No, oh my God. Oh, don't put your fingers in there. Don't put your fingers in there. Don't put your fingers in there? Well, yeah. obviously not. Oh, my gosh, you got to be careful. I mean, what what is this uh, that you're trying to fix? Is it a garbage disposal or is it a foot processor? Well, it's your foot. You said plug it in. So why don't you take it to ITC Electronics? Well, what will they do? Will they, will they sew my fingers back on? <laughs> Oh my god, his bottle's gone and so are my fingers. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh Hey, darling, you alright? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, well, uh, got, uh, not really, no. I've got to cancel here. And, uh, they put the CPO down on me today. And they, they're saying that I've got to move out within three weeks. You can't make you move out within three weeks. Oh, that's what they're doing. They've done it. They've done it now. They've put the CPO down, and uh, they've had this interview with Mr. Granger and stuff, and uh, they sorted things out, and they say that they want to give me forty-five. They can't do that. They they wouldn't push you out at all. They can't just give you three weeks notice. They've already got me a house ready. Yeah. They, they want to start on this block in, in, in next month or so. Who's, who's told you that? The council. Who's from the council? It's called Adam. Adam what? I don't know his second name. He's here, he's, down, he's downstairs here. Well, tell him I want to speak to him, please. What, what are you going to do? You can't do nothing, can you? They can't give you three bloody weeks notice to move, that's for sure. Yeah, but you, you'll just make it all worse. I bloody won't make it, mate, it worse. I'll put a bloody stick up the backside and sort them out. They're not giving you three weeks notice to move. Is she there? You give more than that when you're leaving the job. Do you want him? Is she there? Do you want him? Yeah, put her on, put her on. There you go. Hello, darling. Hello, who's this? Yeah, it's Adam. Adam who? Uh, yeah, Adam, Adam Robertson. Adam Robertson? From where? Whereabouts are you from? Which part of the council are you from, well, mate? Well, the, the point is, uh, me old love, uh, we need him out of here in three weeks. You've so. no chance to give more than that for a b job's worth. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, three weeks, uh, you know, they've had enough uh, notice and I, I really don't like your attitude on the phone, so... I don't like your Attitude. Either where are you? I'm coming to see you. You get your voice down for a start. Let's have a civilised conversation. Who do you think you are, you old bag? What do you mean, you old bag? Who do you think you are, you trumped up little fat? Don't talk to me like that. I'll just hand you some back. Hang on a moment. Hello? Hello? Who do you think he is, a jumped up little trollop? Well, seems all right with me. He's not all right with me at all, I'll tell you what. Uh, whereabouts is he? I'll tell you what, is he at your house? Yeah. Right, well, I'm getting in the taxi and I'm coming up now. Oh, right. Put her on again, put her on again. Yeah, I put her on. Oh, you've got a problem, you haven't you? I've got a problem with you, lot. You're putting people out on the street left, right and centre. You go and give him three weeks' notice to move out. You're only giving him 41 grand for his house. Oh, you're, you're giving him peanuts for their houses and asking him to move out. What do you think's going on? Oh, you're full of winds, you, aren't you? 
You're full winged. What are you like? Anyway, they can move in with you, can't they? They can move in with me any time, my family, but if you think you're giving them 45 grand and three, uh, three weeks' notice, I'll... I'll sort you out, mate. Right, well, I'll do, uh, well I'm, you know, I, I, to be honest with you, I'm now going to reduce it to two weeks because I, I don't like the way yeah. you're talking. I don't like the way you're talking to me. It's two weeks now. And who gives you the authority to do that, mate? I'll just hand you back to your son. Hang on a moment. Hello? Where's he from? From the council. From what I'm, part of the council? The, the one in Durka. The one in my house. Well, from the housing market renewal. Yeah. Right, well, I'll tell you what. Give me ten minutes. I'll get sorted out and I'll be up there because he's oh. got a serious problem. Well, go in a and who's he think he's talking to me? Calling me an old windbag. Has she got a face like a bag of spanners? <laughs> you know what? I'll tell you what, what. Put him back on. Yeah. Hello. Hello, you. Who do you think I am with a better face like a bag of Spanish. I never said that. What are you talking about? I heard you in the background. I bet your face looks like you're a bulldog chewing a wasp, don't you, I never said that at all, are you? I heard you. Hang, hang on, hang on. I'm reducing it to a week now. They've got to be out in a week. You've got to be having a laugh. I'll just hang you back to your Get son. On your hang, on a, hang on a minute. On your bike. See, I told you. I'm not having it. Yeah, he's not having it. I'm coming up there and I'll tell you what. She's with a woman. I'll tell you what. I'll go to the paper. They're not having this. In fact, I want you out today. Out. Get him out. To put it back on. Put it back on. Oh, What's about today? You can off. Well, there's no need for language like that. Who do you think you are? I want your name. I'm sorry? I want your name. What's your name? What, you want my name? Yes, I do. What, my name? Yeah, what you called, Adam Robinson. No, no, my name isn't Adam Robinson. Well, that's who he said you was before. Yes, well, I was lying to you. Well, who the are you? It's Steve Pank. You're a joke. <laughs> Did you like that one, Gene? Oh, dear. I don't believe it. <laughs> I really don't believe it. Got you there, didn't we? You got me. I'll tell you what, I'm going to kill you. I'm absolutely going to kill you. Gene, Gene. <laughs> Hello. Have you got a face like a bag of Spanish? No, I have not. <laughs> No, I have not. Hey, I hope you're not going to put this on the radio. Well, you're on the radio right now, Jean. Oh, bloody no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for swearing. Oh, Jean, Jean. Oh, hey. You're such a lady as well. Yeah, I am such a lady, but the cameras have ran me up for some tune, I'll tell you. Anyway, I want them out in the next 30 minutes. I'll have 30 minutes. I'll be up to your office in 30 minutes and sort you out. All right, Jean. Have a lovely day, Jean. Thank you very much. Nice to speak to you. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. I'll just speak to you, Gavin. See you later. Bye-bye. Hello, Ben, the Children's Library. Hello, I came in yesterday, and I, um, I, I came in to get the, uh, the, um, and I left it j just, just by the, uh, the checkout counter. Can you just repeat that, sorry? Yes. Uh, I came in yesterday with the children, and we, uh, we put it just by the, uh, by, you know, by, uh, by the photocopier. And I wonder if if uh, if if you've managed to uh, to see it. But what by the photocopier, sorry? Uh, the book. The books. You left yeah. some books by the photocopier downstairs. That, that, yes, and uh, we 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 brought them in, and. Hello, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay. Have you got the library card with you? The, the books were on. Uh, the library card? Yes. Yes, I have got the library card, yes. Okay, could it, can you read that, that number for me that starts 20118, please? All oh, right, well, I haven't got it with me. It's, it's, uh, it's by the, um... Okay, what's the name of the card? What, what's the name of the person whose card it is? It's a friend of mine. It's, um... Sorry, what's the name? Yes. Uh, David. David what, sorry? David, that's right. And um, has, has anybody, have, have you, uh, have you by any chance? <laughs> I'll just put you through to the lending department. Uh, the lending department, right. Do you know if, um... Hello? Have you got a copy of, um... Have a tinsel, please. Uh, speaking. Yeah, it's Fatboy Slim here. Oh, the garage. Yes, that's right. Oh, how are you? Yes, what's what's going on? What's going on? Yes. Well, I haven't heard nothing from the insurance yet. I'm sorry? 
I didn't hear nothing from the insurance yet. Right, you've heard nothing from the insurance yet? No, not yet. Right. No. The only thing we know, apparently, is uh, it's been written off. You told me that. We've had a phone call from the insurance company. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they said that, uh, that you know, that they're not prepared to write it off and you're going to have to pay for it. They're not prepared to write it off and I have to pay for it. You'll have to pay for it, yes. No, that, that's not so, because I, uh... Well, you know, I, you're not listening to me, that's, that's what I said, you know, they said that uh, you're going to have to pay for it. What do you mean I'm not listening to you? Now, the thing is, the problem is, is that they said that they're not prepared to pay for it because you own a fig tree and you're Italian. <laughs> I also own a mimosa tree as well. Uh, what was that, Chief? Mimosa. I can't understand a word you're saying. I can't understand every word you say. Yeah, but I'm English. Uh, you're a foreigner, aren't you? <coughs> but, uh, oh, yeah. What are you, through. Yeah, what were you saying now? What were you, what were you mumbling then? Hey, I'll pass you over to my son. Maybe he knows a little bit more about it. I want to speak to him. Hello, mate. What's the matter? Yeah, I want to speak to uh, Vincenzo. Yeah, he's speaking to his son. Yeah, well, I don't want to speak to you, Charlie. Get him back on. Don't call me Charlie, mate. What? You heard me. You've been a bit touchy, aren't you? I'm just saying. Oh, you're a bit touchy, mate. Who no, are you calling Charlie? I'm just saying that. Who are you calling Charlie? Are you? Don't call me Charlie, mate. What's up with you? What's up with you? Uh, but anyway, uh, you get off the line and get uh, get the old man back on. No, mate. Uh, He's I, busy. But well, we don't want to speak to you. You have, have to deal with me now. Are you another Italian as well? That's right. My God, you're taking over, you people. That's right, mate. We've got the power. <laughs> Got the power? Right, what does mate. that mean? Sorry, mate. We stop calling me mate. No, we've got the power. You ain't got no power. Oh god, he's talking nonsense. This guy. Right, get uh, get Vincenzo back on. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. My god, he's having a heart attack. What's up with you? <laughs> are you losing your breath? Are you having problems breathing? <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, I am. I don't be feeling very well. Oh my God, he's a mumbling, a mumbling fool. Okay, well, listen, you're making absolutely no sense at all. I can't understand a word you're saying, but um, but you, uh, well, you gotta, you gotta come around and give me a hand. Are you going to give me a hand? You are, where you are, you're fantastic. Vincenzo. I'm here, carry yeah. on. Listen, it's Steve Pank from 95.8, Capital FM. Oh, my God. i got a bloody headache, sore throat, and i got to talk to you. You've got a headache yeah. and a sore throat? Yeah. And, and, and you're talking to me. Anyway, it's all right, listeners, I'm just uh, translating what he's talking about. Fantastic. Thank you very much for calling. I appreciate it very, very much. No, no. <laughs> we, oh, he's gone again, hang on. <laughs> Nutty, how's a fruit cake? <laughs> oh my god. Oh dear dear. Oh, Vincenzo, you, we're you, going. You just saved your neck there. He was coming around to beat you up. What your son was? Yeah, all of us. Here. It's about four of us here. Yeah, the whole family we could answer to. Yeah, oh, of course. God. I got my other godson there. He's getting the violin case ready. <laughs> Oh, put it down, put it away, boy. It's only yeah. a joke. Put, oh, put the violin case away right uh. now. <laughs> Vincenzo, you're a lovely man. Oh, you made my day, I must admit. Uh, that, then, uh, then the fig tree, give, give, give it all away. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, what's he saying? <laughs> well, right, Vincenzo, we got to go. Fantastic. Bye-bye. Good luck. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, can I speak to uh, Mr. Michael Lewina, please? Uh, hello, I'm very glad I caught you. I'm, uh, this is Eric Cantona. Eric, how are you, my dear? I'm very, very well, uh, very, very well, and uh, I thought I would phone you just uh, because I wanted uh, a little advice. Oh, shoot away, far away, Eric. Well, uh, I wanted to uh, try to be um, an actor, because uh, I believe I'd be very good. Um, would you be able to suggest anything uh, to me? Do you want to stay living in England and, and, and make your acting career, please God, in England? Well, I've uh, worked here for many t a long time, and uh, I would love to. I would love to do that. Well, I think we have to try and get you a good agent. So when that agent says he has taken you on, the industry thinks, well, if he's taken Eric Cantona on as an actor, uh, it must be serious. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, I know that. Um, tell me, did you see my uh, beautiful commercials for Urostar? Yes. I did, and they were excellent. But it's not quite the same as acting the part of somebody else and interacting with other people. Well, it would be just the same acting, only a bit longer instead well, of because one advert. Bit, Eric, dear, with respect, it would be a bit longer and a bit different. Yes, I see. Could you, um, could you get, for instance, uh, Charles Bronson to to act with me? I think we would uh, play well against <laughs> each other. <laughs> Eric, Charles Bronson is seventy-seven years old. He's retired in Beverly Hills and Malibu. Would it be uh, easier for me to uh, have it? try at uh, a sitcom on ITV before I go on to the movies. Well, Eric, my dear, have they offered you a sitcom? 
Well, no, perhaps I should uh, ask them because um, I'm sure they would take me at this time. Well, I think you might get a few guest appearances, but even then you need an agent yes. to put you forward, do you not? Would you, uh, would you be able to uh, pull a few strings uh, for me, well, of Michael? Of course I can, of course I can, Eric, and oh, I will, because I'm a great uh, fan of yours. I think you were appallingly treated two or three years ago. Well, I'm very grateful uh, for this, I mean, this goes without uh, now, saying. Eric, uh, I, of course I can get you an agent, I, or I hope I can. Shall I do, uh, do you think, uh, shall I do uh, some panto? an interesting question. Panto, of course, you could get. Um, Eric, I, I'm quite certain you should have an agent. Well, this is uh, very kind of you to uh, I'm give me... I'm uh... also certain that you should have a tape, which I'm prepared to direct for you and get the other actors in. I will do that, of course, without charge. He is behind you. Who's behind me? He's behind you. This is uh, what I would do in, in Panto, just to show that, um, give you more faith that I can, um, I can do it. Yes, I, I don't object to that, but you... <laughs> Eric, it's very important to have an agent who represents fine actors and then you win by association. You understand? Yes, this is, um, you know, this advice is a very wonderful, um, uh, 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 lovey, I, I think they say. Um, this, uh, there is one artist whom I have admired for, um, for many, many years, and uh, this is uh, Monsieur Steve Pink. Uh, do, do you know of uh, Steve Pink? Well, I'm not sure I do. I, I apologize. Who is Steve Pink? Uh, Steve Pink. Steve Pink is uh, the greatest pillar of our time. Uh, I would recommend you listen to him on uh, 95.8 Capital FM. Oh, he's on Capital, I see. I... Michael, this is Steve Pank from 95.8 Capital FM. Uh, really? And it really wasn't Eric Cantona, it was us from 95.8 Capital oh, FM. It's a jolly good gag, Steve, it's a good gag. A jolly good gag, Steve. <laughs> hey, Michael, thank you for, uh, for giving us your time, and you are the best. Steve, thank you, dear. Cheers, Michael. Good luck. I'm going to information. Good morning. Yes, hello. Uh, this is Stefano Penchino, the amazing man. I'm sure you've heard of me. I'm afraid I haven't, no. Oh, right. Well, what I do is I do amazing things, you know, like amazing circus things. That's why I'm called the amazing man. Uh, you may have seen me on TV the other night. I not. Oh, maybe it's just slipped your memory then. I bet you can't believe it's me, really, can you? No, no. Anyway, what I'm hoping to do is, uh, and I know you might think I'm some sort of crank, but it's the sort of work that I do, you know. I'm hoping to borrow one of your tanks for my next amazing act. Uh, hey, what I haven't got any. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I know you haven't personally got one, but, uh, you know, the army's got one, surely. Uh, what I'm hoping to do is uh, put a plank... Uh, I mean, it might sound a bit strange to you, but this is the sort of work that I do. I'd always think that I'm some sort of crank, you know. What I'm hoping to do is put a plank of wood on my chest, and then with my amazing concentration, and some would say a great deal of stupidity, uh, get one of your blokes to drive the tank over the top of me. I'm sure you'll agree. Amazing. Well, indeed. Um, well, what you'll need to do yes. uh, is to speak to the, the Deputy Director of Public Relations right. for the Army. Oh, yes, lovely. I mean, just how heavy uh, are these tanks? Some, some large weight of tonnage. They, they fall into the tons. I mean, I know it might sound incredible to you, son, but uh, if anybody is capable of doing it, I certainly am. Well, I mean, I've been, I've been training for a good few years now, you know. I mean, in fact, I had uh, Mr Perkins, who lives next door, jumping up and down on my chest yesterday to strengthen my muscles, obviously. Uh, well, unless Mr Perkins weighs some tonnage, I... Well, he's not that heavy, he's about nine stone, you know, but I'm as stiff as a board today. I can hardly move, to be honest with you. As I say, that's for the request that the Army's Public Relations Director may be able to help you mm. with. But I'm ready for it, you know, I'm all psyched up. What exactly do you do there, son? Because you don't seem that experienced to me, if you don't mind me saying so. Yes, yeah, so as I say to you, if you ring the Army's Directorate of Public yes. Relations, they may be able to help Because, you. you know, obviously after advice, really, I'm hoping to be guided in the right way. I mean, I'm not some sort of crank, you know, I've been training for this for months. I mean, they don't call me the amazing man for nothing. Right, I'm sure, I'm, fact, sure, I'm sure they don't. In fact, Mary Chipperfield, when she saw the act, said uh, in all her life she'd never seen that like mine. <laughs> Uh, she was quite speechless, yeah. in fact. Indeed. Anyway, I'm a busy man, so uh, how soon do you think we can get this sorted out? Uh, as I say to you, you need to speak to the Army's Director for Public Relations. Yes. Do you think there'll be a charge for the tank? Uh, I don't know whether it's indeed possible or not. Mm, I mean, in your expert opinion, uh, and don't feel intimidated by me, obviously, do you think it's possible, or am I just a maniac? I really don't know, I'm afraid. Yes. All right. Well, don't commit yourself, will you? I certainly won't. Where's the best place to do this, then, do you think? Soft ground? I think, uh, 
that I really can't help you anymore, actually. Yes, well, you're not helping me at all. I mean, let's be honest. And uh, you'll sort out the insurance for me, will you? As a fact, I think I have another call to go to. Oh, now, I Mr. thought you Bixby. might. Yes. yes okay, thank anyway, you. Anyway, it's been nice talking to you, young man. Has he gone? Thank you very much indeed. Hello? Hello? Oh, good morning. Can I speak to uh, Mary Morley, please? Yes, yeah, speaking. Oh, very good morning. We tried to call yesterday, Mrs Morley, but we couldn't get hold of you. We've had a complaint about your burglar alarm going off at all times of day and night. Um, what can I do about it? I've got three kids. Right, uh, okay. I mean, could you explain to me exactly what's been going on? I mean, is there a fault with it? Have you had it checked? No, no, there's not a fault with it. What happens is, the kids... When they're saying all hours in the morning... Right. They mean round about seven o'clock. Well, the early hours of the morning, I mean, uh, one gentleman who's written here uh, says it's been going off at 5 a.m. in the morning. 5 a.m. in the morning? That's right, yes. And how many times has it done that? Well, he doesn't actually specify how many times. He no, just says I can assure you. I mean, there are people trying to sleep, you know, that's the problem. I understand that. Oh, hey, by the way, I've had alarms going off and I've not complained. We've right. not had the alarm in long. Well, I'm, I've I'm, got three kids. Right, I must, I must say, you know, people are funny though, aren't they? And yeah, I understand that. But, uh, I've said it to the kids when... But they're waking up. So, I mean, obviously, when we get a complaint, you see, we have to follow yeah, it through. I'm sure I understand, understand that. that. And I understand what you're saying. I understand people have got to sleep. It's, it's not nice. Yeah. I've had it. Right. So why does it keep going off, then? I mean, Because who's... the kids... I've not, that's what I'm trying to tell you. We've not had it long. We've only had it about three months. Well, have, yeah. you, not, have, you, have you not taught them how to use it? Yes, they know how to use it, but they're forgetting to put the number in. Well, you're disturbing people, are you? You're trying to sleep. Yeah, well, I'm trying to tell you. Don't start shouting. Well, I'm just trying to explain Look, to you. Look, you're shouting. Well, I'll just try and keep yes. the noise down, you know, because yeah, otherwise... Yeah, well, don't you shout at me. Well, don't shout at me either. I'm you, just... you lose your voice first. I'm just saying Right, that, well, uh... I'm trying to explain to you. I've got three children. Well, One of them's then... seven. If he wakes up and he goes downstairs... Well, can't you teach him not to go downstairs? I'm trying to teach him! Well, you better sort it out pretty quick, then, aren't no, you? Well, I'll sort it out! Otherwise, there's going no, to be... No, what's your name? You do realise... Who am I speaking to? I mean, you do... Sorry. You do realise there's no, going to be... No, what was the name, mate? I said, you do understand there's going to be a £200 fine right. if this what's continues. What's second name? You have a word with it. Hello? Who's this now? This is Mr. Morley. Right, I was just saying there to, uh, to, you know, she was quite cheeky, wasn't she, that woman who was on the phone? No, not really, no. I was just saying to her to keep the noise down, son, because uh, we've had a, we've had a complaint. Can you tell her to be quiet, please? I'm trying to speak. Yeah, go on. I was just saying, we've got a number of complaints about your alarm going off. Yeah, I was just trying to explain to you. Right. We've got three kids. Well, can't you tell them not to come downstairs when the alarm's switched on? Pardon? I said, can't you teach them not to come downstairs when the alarm's on, Thicko? Yes, we do teach them not to go downstairs when the alarm is on. As a wife's just explained Well, that's, that's you it. You know, some people are trying to sleep and your alarm keeps going off at all times of day and night. Well, wait, uh, listen, in, in the same respect, you know, we've had this before, you know, you know in the clothes, that alarms are going off. And sometimes, you know, the, like, the alarm system can be faulty. I understand that. Oh, she lets you fly off the handle, your missus. I mean, I, I was only trying to, you know, get to the bottom of it and she's... Yeah, you know what it is? What it is, is uh, everybody else, as alarm goes off, but no, no, like, we don't complain. Well, why didn't you explain it to your kids, then, exactly what's going on? Pardon? I said, are they pretty thick, your kids? Don't they understand? Hey, don't wait a minute. What? No, they're not thick. You know, take after the father, obviously. Pardon? Uh, not, uh, nothing? Just saying, you know. Can't what's you your name, mate? Sorry. Uh, can't you explain to them how to use an alarm? Sorry, what's your name? Who is it I'm speaking to? Well, the name's Steve Pink. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, get Mary back on the phone for us. Yeah, quick. she'll come on now. All right, get her on. <laughs> Hello? How are you doing, Mary? I'm all right. I've had a, I've had a letter from your Leona. Oh. She says, call me Auntie and wind her up on your show. Oh, I don't believe that. Hey. I kill her. Ooh. I swear to God, I'll kill her. Mary, you're going there, weren't you, Mary? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. Oh, I'll kill her. You had no, no idea at all, did you, Mary? I didn't. I, I tell you, I, I had a bad time. <laughs> I'm shouting them on my own as well. Oh, Listen, I don't do believe say, it. Do you want to say anything to Leona? Well, apart from I'm going to kill you, because that's what everybody says, have you got anything you want to say to Leona before we go? I tell her she's got me. She's got you? She's got me. Good she's got me in good style. Good and proper. She has. Listen, Mary, it's been lovely talking to you. Right, thanks so much. And say hello to Jim for us as well. I will do. Thanks, thanks a lot. lot. Bye. Hello? Ma'am? What? I, uh, I've been thinking, like, this morning I got my diary out right and that, and you know all the money that, that I was owed in that? Hmm. Yeah. Well, when I give you that money back, I didn't owe you that much. When you give me what? That money back, that £300, I didn't owe you that. You did? Mama didn't at all. 
<laughs> you owed me you owed me more to tell you the truth. No, did, when I think about it, right, I've sorted it all out now, right? I sat here this morning because I've got to pay my car insurance this afternoon, right? You owe me that money for the telly, no matter what. You lying no, hey, look, listen here now, David. You bloody two hundred pound off me for your car insurance. Man, we've had it before. I'm wait. sick of it. There's Jackie, there's Stephen, there's everyone. Just you listen to me now. Don't start. Right, you owed me two hundred pound that you bought off me for your car insurance. Yeah. Right. Then you gave me hundred pound back because you said they owed you hundred pound for the. No, I mean I'm not on about that. I'm on just, about the. Fa- no. Well, just listen to me one no, minute. No, mum, because that isn't fair. No, oh no, just a minute. You're all taking the piss out of me. No, we don't. Yes, okay. you do. Just listen, right? So you owed me hundred pound and you gave me hundred pound back. No, I didn't. And then know. one day he come. Anthony, and you was going for t-shirts, so you borrowed the hundred pound back off me. And I give you that back, but you I'm on about... You me back, David. Mama then, did. you borrowed the five hundred pound to, bu- to buy the car. No, right? well, well, I've been talking to Jackie anyway, and she turned around and she said she'd give me hundred pound off that hundred and fifty shows you. And then we're right, because then that's just the telly out the way. What are you f- talking about? <laughs> anyway, I'm not arguing any longer, that's it. Wait, just a minute, you. Oh, I'm going. Right? You borrowed £500 to buy that green car. Yeah. Right? And then a few months ago, a couple of months ago, you gave me 200 off it. Leaving 300 the And then you give me the 300 the time, it? Eh? The same old story all the time. No, it's I never not. win. Because I've ended up at £100 <laughs> short. I'm going anyway. Who's there with you? David, yeah? she was absolutely fantastic. Mavis! Who's that? <laughs> Mavis, <laughs> Mavis, this is Steve Pank. Give over. You're a liar. Mum, you're not the radio. I'm not. <laughs> you lame pig. <laughs> Give over. Mavis, is there anything you want to say to this marvellous son of yours? <laughs> you love me? <laughs> yeah, very much. <laughs> That's it, man. Give over. Honestly, I know it's getting you going. Hello? Hello? Nana? Hello? Mum? What? You're not going to believe it. What? I got a phone call at half past eight this morning off the council. Yeah. I can't... They're disputing me having the house. Why? Because you're down with me next of kin and you've been reported to the council for being a nuisance neighbour. It's put me at high risk. How can I be, be reported? Somebody's reported you. Yeah. It's like, you give your name in Elsie Thurston. I've got you down on my form as my next of kin. And they're disputing it now. They've got to investigate it because you're at high risk. Oh, you must be joking. Because I'm related to you. I'm shaking. Right, I'll get on to that Mike Fitzsimmons. Who's that? The housing officer at Aswood. Right, what are you going to say? I'm going to ask him why he's down as that. I, don't, I haven't even got a tenancy. No, but... Because you're living at my nan, as you see, you're causing the nuisance round there. Right. I I told you to keep your mouth shut, Mum, but you won't, will you? Right, I'll ring them. Right. Right. All right. right. Hello? Hello? Hang on, I'll ring her back now as uh, the guy from the council, should I? Right, hang hang on a minute. Yeah. Hello? Hello, uh, M- Mrs Thurston. Yeah. Uh, John Simmons here for the council. Hello. Uh, we've had Heather Bennett down. Right, I was just going to ring you, actually, yeah. Uh, right, uh, but your name has come up on the computer as a, as a nuisance neighbour, Mrs How Thurston. How can it do that? Uh, I haven't even got a tenancy. Well, well it says here that uh, there's been a number of complaints about you with uh, with your loud mouth, it says here. <laughs> Now, we've had problems with a neighbour next door, and I, all I've done, no, no loud mouth, I've rang the police, and I've... I've uh, ex- excuse me, love, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to hear you. Have, you got, have you. have you got a TV on in the background? Yeah, just a minute. Could you, could you just turn it down? Yes, thank you very much. Right, go on. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, as I say, it's coming up on the, uh, you know, that you've been threatening local children, it says here. You must be joking. That is something I will never, ever do, threaten children. Well, that's, that's what it says. I'm only reading from the, from the, from the computer screen here. Right. Uh, that, uh, you know, you've been threatening local local residence, it says. No, no, I, I can assure you, I'm not, you know, I'm not in a state to threaten local residents. Well, I'm, it says here that you slapped one of the kids. Uh, they were being naughty and you slapped one of them. I slapped one of them? Uh, apparently so, yes. 
Right, I think I need to talk to Mike Fitzsimmons over there. Uh, you get, you know, a real good uh, hiding, and, and apparently you've been abusive to, to local pets, it says here. Oh, come off it. That, that's what he says, love. I, as I say, that, that's why I told uh, Mrs Bennett that uh, there was a problem. Yeah, it's your threatening nature, apparently. I sort of slapped your child. I've been cruel to pets. I don't know where this has come well, from. Well, as I say, I, 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 I... can get reference. I've been in my job for 22 years. Yes. Uh, I can get references. And, and you've got a drinking problem, apparently. <laughs> Do you know the last time I had a drink? Uh, this morning, by the sounds of it. Oh, thank you. Well, you're struggling with your words, aren't you, love? You know, you're sort of moaning. I'm on medication. Oh, you've been, you've been, uh, got medication, have you? Yes, right. thanks very much. Right, okay then. So, um, <coughs> uh, <coughs> we cough it up, love, that's the best way. Um, so, uh, what do you make of this then? I just make it that it's a load of rubbish and, you know, I don't need this. And uh, to say I've got a drink problem, I'm struggling with my words. Uh, well, I've, well, not well, had a, I've not had a drink since May. Since uh, half seven this morning. Right. So, um, what, uh, what, um, No, I beg your pardon, what is your name? Don't accuse me of drinking, I do not drink. Well, I, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that you've drunk a lot today, but, uh, obviously you've been, uh, you know, you've been at the bottle, haven't you? I beg uh, your pardon? I, I'm sorry? I've been at the bottle this morning. Well, have you had beer and cornflakes for breakfast? No, I haven't. All I drink is tea. If you'd like to come round and see me now, you're very welcome to. And a little nip of whiskey, no doubt. No, no. I'll just hand you back to your daughter anyway, here, here she is. Hello? Hello? Hiya. What's he saying this for? I don't know, I told you to keep your mouth shut, Mum, but you won't, will you? When did I last have a drink? I don't know. It's have morning. I been on the bottle this morning? I don't know. I'm going to report him, I'm telling you. Is, is she there? Hand it back to me. Uh, hello, missus. Hello. Right, what, what, would you, what do you want to do? Do you want to meet up? I do, yeah. And we can discuss this, no doubt, uh, in the local pub. Will, will that be better for you? Is this a wind-up? Well, of course it is, Elsie. You took your time, didn't you? Sure, I don't know, is it? Elsie, it's Steve Pink. Get lost. <laughs> Say hello to her, Heather. Hello, Mum, gotcha. <laughs> 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 all right, then. All right, then. Bye. 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 Are, you, are you off now? Are you, are you going already? Come on, Jeff. She can't wait. She needs another drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Gums, can I help you? Neil Dobinson. Just one moment, please. Right. Design. Can I speak to Dobinson, please? Who's calling? Pardon? Who's calling? John Carey. Thanks. Hello, Neil speaking. Speaker, please. Let's speak to Neil Dobinson, please. Yeah, speaking. John Carey. Oh, yeah? Let's you believe you're having a party. Yeah. It's been passed to us by one of your neighbours who are a little concerned, uh, Mr Dobinson. We're just checking that you do you do realise you need an entertainment licence for a gathering of over 50 people. Well, it's not 50 people. Uh, how many have you got coming down? About 30. Well, we will be sending somebody down. It's just that the neighbour is quite concerned because of the noise last time from all the DIY you've been doing. Are you planning just 30, or would it be more than 50? No, it won't be more than 50, no. Now, the other thing that they're concerned about is that you're going to erect an unsightly marquee in the garden. No. Right, well, as long as you, you realise that you can't do one of those. Right. And if the party were held without the licence and over 50 people, it could be a maximum of £2,000 fine. Roger. Uh, it's just that obviously they've written to us uh, rather concerned about the noise you've been making in the past with DIY, you see. And no, I it's totally incorrect on noise on DIY. I beg your pardon? Totally incorrect on noise on DIY. Well, in fact, there's a next door neighbour who's, com who's constructing a patio and all sorts of things. All I've done is redecorate the house. Well, I don't want to get into that. I mean, all the letter goes is Who's actually sent the letter? Well, I can't mention names at this point. I don't want to cause any friction between neighbours, you know, but they... Well, well, I'd like to know, actually. Well, they mentioned about continual noise nuisance from all the DIY taking place. No, uh, I just... What's your name again? It's John Carey. Hi, right, John. Hang on. <laughs> And have you got this number? I beg your pardon? Have you got my works number? Well, we've got it on the file. On what file? What do you mean, on the council tax file? Sorry, John, is that C-A-I-E-Y? That's right. Okay, so, and your telephone number is? The situation is, though, I just want to check with you, uh, Neil, because I don't want you to, you know, to obviously get into any trouble with this. Obviously, we have to, you know, follow it through once we get a complaint like Right, this. what's your number, please? That's right. I want to make sure that you're not having over 50 people, you see. That's okay. All right. Yeah, okay. But can I get into a bit more about this DIY stuff? What exactly have you been doing? All I've been doing is redecorating and the actual house had um, like all built-in cabinets from the before, before the shop I bought, before when I bought it, yeah, right, it yeah. had all internal d um, cabinets in it. And how much noise have you been making then? Not that much at all. Do you know, do you use do a lot of hammering and stuff, you know, late at night? No. 
Well, I don't understand this at all, then, you know. I mean, they said that you, you know, you're a right trouble causer since, uh, you know, since you moved in. I'd like to know who this is. Well, like I said, I can't mention who it is who's written to us, you know, because uh, I don't want to cause any friction. Oh, there's a chap next door who's building a, a, a bloody watch. Has he built a patio? Well, I don't want to get into all that. on the front lawn. Yeah, well, I don't want fact, in well, fact, I don't want to get into all that now, do I? Sorry, you Plants a lorry on this front, what you call it, what's on the on the road. That shouldn't even take a lorry on the corner. That to, what's that got to do with this? What's it got to do with this? If somebody starts complaining, I have a home. Well, I mean, they, they, you know, they're quite concerned, like I say, about uh, this party that's imminent and uh, the number of people that are going to turn up. I mean, I can understand it if you're going to be bawling and shouting. All I've t- done, all I've done is invite the neighbours just to be neighbourly. And how many have you got coming then? Eh? Hey? I said, how many have you got coming? Are you a c- councillor? Are you supposed to speak to me like this? To speak to you like what? Just give me your number. I'm just trying to sort it out, Neil, right. you see. What? I mean, Vince and Jonathan told me to, uh, to give you a call, you see. Who? Oh, you're joking. <laughs> You're joking. Oh no, Pink. Oh, you, I'm shaking. You have you, you bleeped his words out? We've had to bleep him, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how did you find out about them? Nobody knows about them, okay? Well, Vince and Jonathan have dropped me a line with all the details. He oh, said, no. give him a call, get him going. Oh, you got me, I tell you, I bite me, I don't know where I go. And then don't you just go, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll need a cup of tea. Thanks for your orders, I don't believe this. How many people are going? Oh, loads. <laughs> loads. Oh, God. Neil, do you want to say anything to uh, John and Vince before we go? Oh, I'll, I'll ring them. I don't, I don't, oh, my, I'll... Wait till I see them. Oh, Jesus. Go have a lie down, Neil. Whoa. Hello, Betty Brown, Hello, could I speak to um, Mr. Swiggs, please? I'm sorry, it's... it's oh, did, what did you say, Mr. Swiggs? Yeah, Mr. Swiggs, Will Swiggs. No, sorry, you've got the wrong number. It's Betty Brown, Wiggs. Oh, but, oh, right, OK, oh, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Um, I needed a wig and I wondered if you if you had any. Uh, we do have uh, Jen Swiggs, yes. Yeah. Is it oh. Jen's wig you want? Um, yeah, 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 that's right. Um, I need, I need a wig sort of situation because, you know, some of my hair's gone and I decided I didn't like it and it wasn't really becoming and I was getting a bit of jit for it. So I just thought if I could get some sort of wig arrangement and I wonder what you might be able to do for me. Uh, well, it, it depends on, um, colour and style, etc. How soon could you get me an, a light brown one? I think the best thing I could do is pop, put um, a brochure in the post for you and you let me know what you want. Well, I need it tonight for the Mexico game, really. Uh, I haven't got one that will suit you for tonight. I've got a dark, dark brown. I haven't got a light one in, I'm afraid. Right. How would I need to, like, measure my head so you could see what sort of wig that I needed? If I just photocopied a picture of my head and sent that, could you tell from that or would you need something better? Well, maybe a measurement would be a bit of an idea, wouldn't it? What I need really, what I need really is some um, two side bits, two little side wigs, because I've, I've got a strip of hair across the top of my head, uh-huh. but I just need to fill, you know, the other bits in. I really haven't got anything like that in at the moment. Um, certainly won't be able to do that for you for tonight. Right. Have you got, like, maybe a long wig that maybe Cher might have worn and just cut some bits off that and make two side short wigs from something like that? Well, certainly I've got plenty of short wigs, yes, but they're rather expensive just to cut up. Well, you know, money's no object, really. Oh, isn't it? Oh, no, not okay. at all. No, not right. at all. Because, I don't know, I just need something quite urgently because I've been informed that my current style is not really suitable for a footballist of my calibre and I somebody see. who's leading yeah. out his country really Perhaps shouldn't American have... American then, yes? A what? Perhaps American. A magician? American. What, 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 have you got a wig like that? Well, I'm sure we could arrange you one if that's what you wanted. I don't think Victoria would like that. She doesn't really like the one that I've got now. Really? And yeah. that's like my real hair. Yeah, I see. Would you, have you seen, you know, the, they've put the pictures of my, my ikad all over the paper and that, but do you think it looks high fashion or bloody daft? <laughs> it looks super. Oh, thank you. I might keep it then. Yes, it looks lovely. Oh, like. thank you. Thank you very, You're very much. You're welcome. Have you met the Spice Girls? Uh, no, I haven't. I have. Have you? I well, married one of them. Have. Yes, yes, I thought you might be. Yeah. 
Yeah, lovely. Lucky you. Well, no, lucky her as well. <laughs> In fact, lucky us. Because we're lovely. Yes, you are indeed. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello, Hello there, is that the funeral directors? It is. Well, I rang up my local swimming baths. I said, is that the local swimming baths? He said, it depends where you're calling from. Yeah. So I rang up a local building firm. I said, I want to skip outside my house. He says, well, I'm not stopping you. <laughs> is this Steve Pank? <laughs> How the hell did you know that? Well, I recognise the voice. Well, listen, there's a report today in the paper that says all funeral directors are, uh, are miserable. And I don't... We're be- certainly not. Well, exa- I don't believe a word of <laughs> it myself. <laughs> We're wonderful people. Exactly. And uh, that's exactly the reason I'm making this call, because I want to prove that you are. Oh, we all have tremendous... So the exactly. It says here that you have to be miserable to go into that line of work. Well, I don't have to be miserable to go into that line of work. Well, I don't... Get out of here. Exactly. Get out of here. So I was in my car and I was dr- <laughs> driving along and the boss rang up and he says, you've been promoted and I swerved. <laughs> and he rang up a second time and he says, you've been promoted again and I swerved again. Yeah. And he rang up a third time and says, you managed to director and I went into a tree. And a policeman came up and said, what happened to you? I said, uh, I careered off the road. Did it get any better? I'm doing my best love here. You know. <laughs> Goodness gracious me. <laughs> so I was getting to my car and this bloke says to me, uh, can you give me a lift? I said, sure. Uh, you look great and the world's your oyster. Go for it. <laughs> How did you get this number? Well, you're in the yellow pages, love. Yeah. Well, who are you? My name's Tracy. Tracy who? Tracy Ryan. This is Tracy Ryan, everybody. You are more than welcome. Oh, Tracy, it's lovely to speak. I so. couldn't, couldn't help you with a funeral at all, I suppose. No, well, well maybe after today. a little quiet at the moment. <laughs> well, maybe after today's show, who knows? <laughs> right, thank you so much. No, thank you. It was lovely speaking to you. Oh, lovely to speak to you, Tracy. Take care. Keep them smiling. I just thought we should try. Bye-bye. Wonder Wonder Tommy, how are you? Erko, please. Erko, in which town, please? Uh, Planet of the Apes. In which town again? Thank you very much indeed. In which town, please? Well, I didn't tell you at the start, Planet of the Apes. One moment, please, while I transfer you to Mr. Provisor. Wait, wait, hang on a minute, you've not even looked yet! There is no listing for a town called Planet of the Apes. Oh, dear. Have you looked under Galen? There is no looking for Galen or Erko or Planet of the Age in the UK. Right. Is there anything else I can help you with? Um, you could look for the old lady who saw the fly. <laughs> the old... Let me just transfer you for further assistance. Have you looked? I'm transferring you now. I'm sick of... I'm, do you know, to be quite honest with you, I'm getting sick of being bounced around all over the place. Let me transfer you to my supervisor for further assistance. Yes, but have you had a good look before you start supervising me? Yes, I did, and there is no listing for the old man or no, the old woman. You see, that's why you can't find it, because you're not looking under the right category. It's the old lady who swallowed a fly. Now, if I don't get hold of her, I think perhaps she might die. I'm transferring you now. Thank you. How can I help you? Yes, Supervisor, thank you very much indeed. Have you got uh, the number for our, um, little Bo Peep, please? Bo Peep, thank you. I'll tell you, it's, it's always nice to speak to a supervisor, because you always feel like you're in safe hands. So it's nice to speak to you. So do you have the street address? Sheep Lane. On Sheep Lane? Thank you. It might be listed under a different name, because nothing's listed. Lamb Lane? I do apologise, nothing's listed. Not a thing? No. Um, you could look under Simple Simon. Simple Simon, is this the name of a business? No, private number. In which town, please? Pie City. In Pie City. Thank you. May I have the neighbouring area for Pie City? Hollands. Hollands? Yes. I'm only showing Hollands in Somerset. Oh, dear. dear. I can't believe this. Have you looked under Old Mother Hubbard? How do you spell the last name? Christ, did you go to school or what? H U B A R D. Hubbard. I have several listings for Hubbard. Do you have the initial? But do you have Old Mother Hubbard? We don't have a specific name under Old Mother Hubbard. We only have initials. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yes, Foghorn Leghorn. (laughs) Do you have the address? The Coop. 
Nothing's listed. Is there anything else I can help you with? What, what do you mean, is there anything else? You've not helped me at all! Waste of time. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hello, yes. Hello, uh... Hello? Hello? Yes, we can't hear you very well. Uh, can I speak to the lady, please, who's got the cockatiels? Yes, hang on. Take Thank you. Yes? Hello, can I speak to the yes. lady who's got the cockatiels, please? Yes. Yeah, who, who am I speaking to, please? Mrs. Reed. Uh, Mrs. Reed? Yes. Yes, it's uh, Ian Brooks from Environmental Health, Mrs. Reed. Yes. And a uh, bit of a delicate subject, but we've had a complaint about your cockatiels. What the hell? Uh, about the noise, about the noise and uh, obviously the size of it. We're led to believe that you've got about 30 cockatiels, is that right? Yes. Yes, well, one of your neighbours has complained about the incredible noise coming from your property. And uh, we'd like to come down and see it today, if that's possible, about uh, about one o'clock. Well, I've got some babies at the moment, that's all, you know, I've got some adults. The thing is, is that you do realise that in a property of that size, you can't have more than five birds. Five? Without a special licence, so you are going to have to get rid of some of them anyway. So when I come down with the bloke uh, today, about one o'clock, uh, we will be taking, uh, you know, 25 of the of the cockatiels away. So could you decide which five you want to keep? Well, no, I can't because they're nesting. I can't take any away. Well, we'll, sorry, we'll take them away and they can have the uh, the little babies and then we'll sort it out for you. But, but we can't because I don't know which are the parents and which are the babies. Right. Well, I mean, haven't you got any consideration at all for any of your neighbours at all, Mrs. Reed? if you don't mind me asking? Yes, all my neighbours are all right with me. No one's ever said anything to me about the birds. Yeah, but it's a private residence. You know, it's not a bloody zoo, is it? Look, would you like to work with my husband? Oh, uh, no, not really, no, because I want to try and sort this out with you. Oh. Hello? Yeah, who's this now? Uh, Mr. Reed. Uh, yeah, Mr. Reed. I was just saying there to, uh, to the old bird about the fact that uh, we've had a complaint about the number of cockatiels you've got. Yes. Uh, one of your neighbours has complained about the noise, yeah. and it'll be coming down today about one o'clock, but I was just saying that in a property of that size, you can't have more than five birds. Who said this? So we're going to have to take some of them away. Okay, then. Is this the RSPCA? Uh, no, environmental health. Well, I've never heard of such things. Yes, I know. Well, uh, you know, I mean, as I said to uh, to the wife there, I mean, it's it's not a zoo, you know. It's it's a house you're living in. Well, it's my own house. Yeah, I know it is, but uh, but you know, you've got to have some consideration well, for other people. people around here that's got hundreds of birds. Yeah, but you've got thirty cockatiels, and they're horrible, dirty little things, aren't they? They make a lot of noise. No, well, there's, there's no things. If they were noisy, of course I would. I would uh, definitely we wouldn't want it. But they're not noisy birds. No, they're but, yeah, but, yes, but in your opinion, they're not noisy. But uh, your neighbours, I mean, sleepless nights with the dirty things making all sorts of noise. No, they're not. They don't make it after dusk. They're dark any other bird. If you know about birds, they go dead quiet. Well, what do you do? Throw a blanket over them or something? Keep them quiet? No, I mean, you I... don't know nothing about. Well, birds. obviously no. I mean, I'm not. I'm not uh, an expert. No, you know, we're like, birds. Uh, like you are. Dust comes. It's dirty. It, that's the end of them. Yeah, but what about during the day, you know, squawking and all sorts of things? Because they're horrible things, aren't they? No, they're not. They're not horrible things. Makes all sorts of noise. Anyway, so you've got no consideration for anybody at all, Mr. Reed, apart from yourself, obviously. Uh, the, of course I have. Uh, the, we're, we're, so I say we get on well with really all that. You don't care about anybody else apart from yourself. That's pretty obvious to me. Uh, uh, you know, I'll, I want to get on to the RSPCA. Well, it's just nothing to do with them. It's to do yeah, with I'm environmental, on to them now. environmental health. It's to do no, with. I'm getting on to the RSPCA. So I'm, I'm telling you now, I'll be down about one o'clock. Good. And come down where you like. Eh? Hey? You can come where you like. Well, like I say, you know, I mean, if you could sort them out, that'd be great. No, I'm not sorting nothing out. Well, this isn't the sort of attitude to have, is it, Mr. Reed? You know, I can see why they're getting cheesed off with you. Hello? Hello, you still there? Thank you. Thanks for calling the grill. Kenny speaking. Yes, hello there, hello. It's uh, David Bowie here calling you from Leicester Square, London. How are you doing? I'm very well. How are you? Hey, I'm very good. I'm very good. Listen, I wanted to book a table for me and two of my mates tomorrow night. Can you do that for me? Um, of course. That'd be good. Just do us a nice, quiet table. Could you do that? I sure will. Let me, uh... Oh, boy, our reservation book is not here, but I can take it down, though. That's good, that that's good. That will not be a problem at all. What time can you do it for? Any time that you would like to do it. Our d dinner's from 5 until 10. That's great. Let's make it 8 p.m. Listen, I've got some of my friends here. Could I just put them on the line so they can discuss some of their needs of with you? To speak to Jagger. Sh okay. All right, who's that, then? How you doing? Do you have, right, some of those, like, you know, large plates, right, with, um, what you put the carrots on, like, mozzarella around the outside, yeah? Of course we do. Tomorrow, that's How great. many people would you like it for? Um, I think, hang on, I don't know. Hey, Roger, come over here and sort this out, will ya? Oh, dear, oh, dear. 
Um, yes, this is Roger Moore. Can I help you? Yes, sir. How many people would you like it for your party tomorrow night? Well, I'm sorry, who is this? This is Kenny. I see, Kenny. Well, there's going to be three of us tomorrow. Okay. Now, listen, Kenny, this uh, eating establishment of yours, is it going to be um, dark enough to convey a certain atmosphere? Of course it will. Will it also be light enough so that if people wish an opportunity to see me, they can do so? Of course. Let me just return you to David. Okay, thank you. Have you got all that? I do have, but what would, what last name would you like me to make the reservation under? Have you got any karaoke facilities there? Uh, no, I don't, but we have a piano, though, and you can always jump on there. We'd love to have you do that. Oh, you pretty things. Don't you know you're driving your mothers and fathers insane? <laughs> This has been a pretty remarkable conversation for me so far. Yes, it really is. It's going to be quite a party. Tell me exactly where you are. We need to know. We're right on the corner of Wilshire Boulevard and Ocean Avenue. Because, you see, we're celebrating my mate's birthday tomorrow night. Good deal. Yeah, that's Steve Peng from 95.8 Capital FM. <laughs> And, Mr. Bowie, what time would you like me to make it for? Well, let's make it for 8 o'clock. In fact, tell you what, forget it. I think we'll go to our favourite chippy in Dagenham. Oh, well, give us a go one time when, when you're in town, OK? Hey, We're going to go to the chip shop and have chips and spam. <laughs> <laughs> Ninety-five point eight Capital FM, Steve Peng Show, Johnny Colshaw. Hello again, Steve. Right, listen, today um, we've had a tip-off that Bruce Willis, the great Hollywood actor, is uh, staying at the Dorchester Hotel, and uh, we're going to call the Dorchester, get hold of Bruce, or attempt to get hold of Bruce, uh, posing as his very good friend and business partner, Sly Stallone. What do you think? Hey there, Bruce, it's me. Yeah, let's call Bruce Willis. Yeah, man. Here we go. Here we go. Good morning, Mr. Dorchester. Oh, hi there. Uh, can I have uh, Mr. Willis's room, please? Wilson. Willis. Oh, Willis. Yeah. Hello. Hi there. Is that Bruce? No, it's not. Yeah, it sounds just like him, man. Mm. Listen, um, I'm wondering, uh, you know, do you have time to like get together later today? This is not Bruce, man. I'm sorry. You have the wrong number. I don't. Please don't call that. Uh, Bruce is sly. Man, I'm not f Bruce. Quit trying to f with me. I'm trying to get some sleep. All right. What's what, what's the matter? Look, um. Look, I'm not Bruce. Right. Well, you see, I was um. I had this script I saw, um, and I thought it'd be just great for what you. What are you doing? A sly f impression? I'm not what? Bruce. Look, <laughs> My last name is Willis. I'm not Bruce. Leave me alone. Hey, not, no, look, you have to see the script, right? A mad game show host, Hi. right? And uh, he says, nice to see you, to see you nice. And oh, I can't believe you could do this to me. Oh, I'm so hurt, man. <laughs> hey, Bruce, we love you, man. <laughs> hey, we love you, man. Well, no, I did. You did love him. Yeah, hey, I don't love you no more. <laughs> no more. <laughs> you know? Adios, baby. Hello, good morning. Can I speak to uh, Mrs. Alwyn Humphreys, please? Speaking. A very good morning. Is David Ferguson? Oh, yes. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Humphreys. We've had a letter off one of your neighbours. Yeah? I mean, I just want to check a few facts out with you about the fact that you've been stealing plants from their garden. Me? Uh, and not only that, there's, there's also something about the car parking space as well. There's been arguments over car parking in the property as well. No. And also, it goes a little bit further. I mean, I can't believe this. Something about kicking their cat. No. Uh, this is Mrs. Alwyn Humphreys, isn't it? It is. Yes. Well, can you shed some light on it, then? What exactly has been going on? Which cat am I supposed to have kicked? We've got seven no, on our own. I'm not exactly sure. Siamese cat, I think it is. Who's this? David Ferguson. I don't think we've ever spoken before. I don't know what 
Get it back. What I'm trying to do is help you out, Mrs. Humphries, and sort it out. I'm just sort of, you know, in the middle here. We've had a complaint, and uh, I'm just ringing you to try and sort it out. If you can shed any light on this. Oh, you're going to send letters to all the row as well, are you? Well, the, the, as I say, the complaint is specifically against you. There are three points: the stealing the plants, the rights of car parking, and also the kicking of the cat. Kicking of the cat? Never kicked the cat. Well, which, that's what it says here. Which cat? Well, like I said, I don't know specifically. They just put a Siamese cat. No. All right, then. Well, I was trying to sort it out, as I say, but, to, you know, to save any nastiness and to save you having to come down here, but, uh, uh, that's fine. If you want to do it that way, we'll do it that way. That's, that's, that's... Well, well, why don't you send it to me husband? The complaint is specifically against Alwyn Humphreys. Is that you that I'm speaking to? Well, that's Alwyn Humphreys, yeah. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. So why should I want to send it to your husband? The complaint is specifically against you. Well, because he's, he's, he's part out sort of with me as well. I mean, how long have you been there stealing stuff, if you don't mind me? Oh, I steal plants from every guardian on this road. Ah, well, that's, uh, you've, you've, you know, you've admitted it now, haven't you? I'm joking. Well, I don't think it's very funny. Don't uh, you? Neither does this neighbour. You've been stealing plants off. I don't steal plants. I don't know what you're talking about. You've just been about. saying you've been stealing plants. Anyway, I've got to go. I've got to like, wash her up. It's like banging me head against the brick wall. Is, is it? So, is it quite a rough family then, yours? Oh, no. I've been brought up, really. Oh, no. We haven't got a rough family, no. No, apart from stealing and kicking cats. And no, <laughs> Parking your car illegally. Illegally? Uh, I can't have got a po car point in my back of garage. Don't be stupid. If anybody's stupid around here, I think, uh... Hey, don't, don't call me stupid. It's you, to be honest. Uh, well, listen, like I say, can we just get to the bottom of this stealing plants no, business? No, you can't get to the bottom of anything, because I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you, you admitted it before, that you've been stealing plants. Just, that were a joke. They were a joke. Right, Don't okay. have me talking now, because I can't. Hey. Anyway, what's going on? I don't, know, I, I don't know what on earth you're talking about here. Yeah, you're just what? delirious, aren't you? No, you are. What's your, what's your name again? David Ferguson at your service. So can you tell me how long you've been stealing plants then? I haven't been stealing plants at all. Well, I don't steal plants. I can buy them. I buy them myself. And anyway, have you seen signs in my garden? If you saw that, you'd die. It's size of a postage stamp. But you still steal plants though, no, don't no. you, you thief? <laughs> What are you going on about? You! Stealing plants! Have you seen eyes in my garden? I haven't even got a garden. Well, exactly. So you obviously resent paying out for a small garden. <laughs> so you think, oh, that's no. a nice one. I'll have that rhododendron there. I haven't got a rhododendron. What do you go out with your spade at, you know, midnight and dig it up? Who's this? Rosebush. Oh, I fancy that. I'll put that in my front garden. <laughs> Do you go around sort of stealing from vegetable patches as well and stuff no. like that? No, no, I haven't given them. My dad grows them. All right, how, many, how many houses have you done over this week, if you don't oh, mind me asking? Oh, I don't know. I can't remember. Right. It's <laughs> pathetic, isn't it? Have you ever been in trouble with the law? Never. Never. It's always the first time I went. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's Pank, Steve Pank. <laughs> Who set me up then? Anne Shenton. She's a... <laughs> oh, dear me. Yeah? Well, we have seven of them that live next door, but one to hold to put never kicked up. Right, well, listen, if you can stop thieving and, uh, <laughs> and stop mistreating animals... <laughs> Oh, and have you got a message for Anne before we go, you daft bat? I'm not going to get up now. <laughs> anyway, listen, I must be going. And yeah, go and annoy somebody else, yeah, will I'm you? <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm off to annoy somebody else now, Alwyn, yeah. Thank you. Listen, it's been lovely talking to you. All right. And uh, get a bread poultice on your chest, that'll right. keep you through. <laughs> See ya. Television. Um, hello, can I have the uh, Brookside production office, please? Well, who's speaking, please? Um, it's Tony. Tony, okay. Hello, production. Who's that? It's Lindsay Productions. Oh, uh, Tony here. Uh, Tony Blair. Listen, um, I wondered, you may have heard, um, I've been taking part in this um, radio soap opera um, in, in Russia. Have you heard about that? I haven't, no. It's gone rather well, actually. And I was just wondering, you know, given this, and, you know, given the storylines that I've discussed with the producers, would there be any chance of, um, you know, apart from me and Brookside, you know? No, you need to speak to Rick Madison. He's not in yet. You can speak to the secretary. Do you think he'd be able to, you know, do us some signed photos, you know, for the kids and that? Yeah, sure. You know, they're, they're real fans of, of, of Jimmy and, and the entire team, as, 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 as I am. Um, so, what do you think the chances might be of a part for me in, in Brookie, you know? Can I take your number and someone can ring you back? 0171. Yeah. 4848958. And what name is it again? Tony Blair, you know. Right, okay, then I'll get someone to ring you back. That's marvellous. Listen, listen, what, what, Linda, Linda. Lindsay. Lindsay, um, may I say you've been very helpful and very kind. And, oh, you know, thank it's been, you. It's been very marvellous of you to assist me like this. Um, thank you. Could I, you know, just sort of do a quick audition for you now? 
No. And you, you can tell me whether I'm any good or not. Well, and I'm answering you back. Could I do it just now? No, because... Here we go. Here we go. Listen, listen. All right, Jackie, lend us 50 quid. I need it, Jackie. I'm desperate. I'm desperate. You've got to sort me out. I mean, that was a sort of, you know, Jimmy portrayal, you know. Was that any good? Yeah, yeah, very good. Really? Mm. Honestly? Mm. Really? Gosh. I guess I want to call you back because I've got to go on to the other phone, I'm afraid. All right, listen, I've, I've just had the most marvellous idea. You know, imagine the scenario. Tony and Cherie Blair move out of 10 Downing Street because it's being redecorated. And, and so we've got to spend some time in Brookie. Yeah, that's And we, great. we can be there for a week. Yeah, that's you know? great. I mean, I, I'm sure that would, like, get everybody watching, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. What if I say, um, Oi, come in, Ron, can I park the Moby outside your fellas? Yeah, great. Is that good? Yeah, great. Listen, uh, Lindsay, I, I, I've watched the programme for many years, you know. I always had a bit of a thing for Doreen Corkhill, you know. Any chance of bringing her back? Hello? Um, hello? Hello? Hello, Tony Blair here. Who's that? Ah, tell you what I'll do then. I'll save myself for the Steve Pink Show at 95.8, capital FM. My Hello, could I have reservations, please? Would that be for room reservations? Yes, it would. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you speaking. Hello there, is that, um, are you from the special visits area? Yes. Yes. All right, they've put me through. This is uh, Martin Marino from LZ Management in Hollywood. Uh, calling regarding a visit from Sylvester Stallone. Okay. Now, obviously you'll have had celebrities staying with you before and certain arrangements have to be made beforehand uh, to, to make sure that everything's okay. Mm -hmm. Can you cater for that? Are we giving you enough time here Absolutely. to, uh, that, to that, arrange everything? I have Mr. Stallone with me. Would you mind speaking to him? Just for a moment? That's fine. Okay. Great. Sylvester? Yeah, hi, Keith. Hi. Yeah, hi, Sylvester here. You know, I'm, um, Martin was saying I'm over, you know, uh, next week, Wednesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, basically, what, what do you got? We got two days to stay here, so, you know, what, what are you going to do? Uh, what type of suite would be your preference for this day, Mr. Stallone? Yeah, well, you, <laughs> you know my favorite, uh, you know, just the best that you got. Okay, the Oliver Messel again? Just, just remind me, how big is that? Is that really big? I need a very big room, very grand, lavish. Do you have that? Is that what it is? Quite large, yes. No. It'd, be, it'd be about the largest uh, roof garden that we have. I just okay. That's good. That's good. Now, um, you know, this time on this visit over, um, I can't really help it, but I'm going to have my uh, my dogs with me, and I wondered if I could, uh, you know, if I could have them in the room with me. You know, hope this is no trouble with you, but I want my dogs in the room with me. We don't really allow the dogs. That's well, I know, but you're gonna you're gonna do it with me because I'm not everybody else. Now, the other thing is basically that uh, you know what I want is to yeah, you know, do you have one of those? Um, I didn't. I, I'm sorry, but I didn't catch what you wait. The last thing that you said. What I was saying was, well, the dogs. You know, that's okay. What I also need is to have one of those gray things and uh, one way there. Is that okay? A gray thing that goes all the way along, sir. Oh, man, you know, and more than I thought you said this guy was gay. No, basically, what I'm saying is, do you have? In the way, and you know, the lawn there, and the, you know, the tortoise, and, on, and, and right by the window. Would that be okay? Can you do that for me? Um, Mr. Sloan, I don't, I don't want to um, not be able to do anything for you for your stay. I'm, I'm sure that we can put it all through. Can mm -hmm. I take a contact number since I can just check everything out and call you back? Now, listen, um, during my stay, you know, when I'm over here, you know, um, I'm going to be. Uh, uh, have you heard of Sharon Stone? Yes, I have. Yeah, well, um, she's going to be with me for this stay, but listen, nobody must know about this. This must not get out under any circumstances, do you understand? Yes, sir. This must not get out under any circumstances, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I don't want me to get upset, don't want Sharon to get upset either. So, you know, don't say nothing about, you know, Sharon Stone being here. Whenever you see her, you know, she's just some... Some woman or anything, and uh, and there's one, you know, basically, and um, you know, if you can, uh, you know, and then we're there, great. I understand, sir. And also, um, you know, see, uh, yeah, busy, you know, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. That's very good. You've been really helpful. You've been really I hope helpful. So. You know. I hope so. That's great. You know, maybe, you know, seeing as Rocky's just had his 20th anniversary, you know, maybe I can bring some gloves. Me and you can have a fight. It's all right, sir. I've, act I've actually met you a couple of times when you've been in. Yeah, well, I don't remember. No, that's okay. That's okay, okay. We, we've got a number for you, Keith. And it's uh, 0171. 
Four eight four eight nine five eight. Sorry, sorry, four eight. Four eight nine five eight. And just ask for Steve Peng at Capital FM. Thank you for that. Keith, what's your second name? Oh, I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, you're a star of London now. Hey, thank you. You are just a star of London. <laughs> and Sylvester's just got one more last thing to say to you. <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you, you know, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if he calls again this time, it really is going to be him. So, you know, just be as good as you were before. All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> mm. <laughs> The Plaza. The Plaza. Hello? Yes. Who's this? The Plaza Hotel. Oh, I'm sick of these phone calls here, is it? The Plaza Hotel. Who are you? Can I help you? Uh, uh, what? What are you saying? The Plaza Hotel. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll get, go get the urinate then. <laughs> Hello? Yes? Hello, Who's this? Listen, sir, I have no time for this. Who's I have no time for this Hello? nonsense. I have no time for this nonsense. This is Hello? a very exquisite hotel. I have no I'm time for this nonsense. I'm sick of these phone calls here, I am so sorry. No time for this nonsense. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll go get the urinated. You're going to get who, David? Hello? Dr. Fleming's office. Oh, I need to speak to a dentist quickly, thank you. What's your name? Uh, the name is Steve, Steve Pank. I've got really bad toothache. Can you help me? Sir, I have to patch you to the dentist, but I need all the information first. Can you spell your oh, last name? Oh, right. The thing is, I can't get down to see you because I haven't got a car and there's nobody to drive me. Could you tell me, you know, how to do it and I'll do it myself? Give me instructions over the phone. I don't know. I'm not a dentist. I have to patch you through to the dentist. Oh, what it's just, a, you know, name? when I used to live in England, my dentist gave me instructions over the phone once. I mean, granted, it was an emergency, but he told me what to do, you know. Uh, I mean, that's why I brought my what own... What is your last name, sir? I brought my own drill, you know. The pain is terrible, though. It really is. Sir? Yes? What is your last name? Oh, it's Penk. I thought I told you that. P-E-N-K? Yes, have you not been listening to me? What is your telephone number? That's right, well, I told you that. Now, you must have done something like this before offering a 24-hour service. Sir, give me your telephone number, please. Uh, right, I mean, can somebody get back to me, uh, you know, yes. immediately? Because the pain is terrible. I'm suffering here, you know. Sir? It's terrible. What uh, is your telephone number? And I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll try and drill it myself Sir, now, you what know. what is your telephone number? Because the pain's driving me crazy. Uh, you can tell me what to do if I get the drill here now and just put it... <laughs> Terrible. Thanks for your concern, you old bag. One minute, one minute. How can I help you? A uh, big bird, please. Sorry? A big bird. In which town, please? Sesame Street. Can you spell that, please? Uh, S E S A M E. Sesame Street, you look for a big bird. Yes. What type of business, please? It's, it's kind of a children's play area. <laughs> I do apologize. I have transferred you to my supervisor for further assistance. Please stay on the line. Oh, oh, right. Uh, can you not. Uh, oh. How can I help you? Oh, I've been transferred. That's lovely. Uh, yes, I'm looking for Big Bird, Sesame Street, please. Big Bird? Yes. In which town, please? Uh, Sesame Street. One moment, please. I do apologize, sir, today. Oh, no, don't you worry about it. You're doing a mighty fine job there. You're looking for Big Bird E in Sesame Street. That's right, yes. One moment, please. Thank you. Let me transfer you to a supervisor for further assistance. Oh, no, no, no supervisor. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much indeed. One moment, please. How can I help you? Oh, another supervisor. Lovely. Um, I've been trying to get the number for uh, Big Bird, Sesame Street, and there appears to be no, uh, no joy. Nobody can find it. Big Bird? Uh, that's right, yes. In which town, please? 
Uh, well, yeah, well, I mean, it, it lives on Sesame Street, but I'm not exactly sure which area that is. Let me transfer you to a supervisor for photo assistance. One moment, please. Thank you very much indeed. For the supervisor. How can I help you? Hello there. Uh, yes, Cookie Monster, please. Cookie Monster. Please. Which town, please? Sesame Street. Which area, please? Well, I'm not exactly sure which area it's in, to be honest. Can you repeat the business name you're looking for, please? Uh, Cookie Monster, please. Cookie Monster. Please. Of Sesame Street. Please. Which information do you need, please, for Cookie Monster? Well, I need the bloody number, which is why I'm calling you! Thank you. Hello? Yeah, I'm calling about the advert in the paper. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah is it still available? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've still got it, yeah. Oh, great. How much is it, then? Uh, 180. 180 quid. How much? Uh, 180 pounds, or, or near offer. 180. 180 pounds? That's a bit expensive, isn't it? Um, is it one of those new, you know, new deluxe types then? Uh, uh, no, no, it's, it's just like the, the, the basic one. Well, I only paid a couple of quid for the last one at the local DIY shop. Oh, well, I mean, it, it's in very good nick. I mean, 180 quid, is it, it's not a lot to pay for a moped, is it? A moped? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought it said moped for sale. I'm looking for a new head for me mop. Oh, are you stupid or what? S sorry? I said, are you stupid or what? Well, thanks for your time, anyway. <laughs> Bye! Hello? Oh, hello there. Could I speak to uh, Phyllis Dunn, please? Speaking. Oh, hello there, Phyllis. Now, I know you might find this a bit hard to believe, but please believe me, it's uh, it's David Bowie here on the phone. Oh, yes. You, you, you're a caterer, aren't you? Yes. Well, you've been highly recommended, so I wondered if you'd cater for me. When? Well, you see, Phyllis, I'm having a party. Right. It's to celebrate the re-release of The Laughing Gnome. Right. And so we want a top party, and I wondered if you'd cater for it. I will. Do you know the laughing gnome? I don't, no. My husband here might know it. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a real big hit of mine. It's probably my best work to date. So what can I do for you? Well, have you ever catered for a rock star before, you know? I, I mean, have. I have. Who's that? Tommy Steele. Who else have you catered for? What other rock stars? Because, you know, they can be a bit fussy about the food, you know. If you tell me your date, that's what's most important. Just got to put these things in advance or it can all go wrong. I've been all through this before, you see. Mm -hmm. You've got to book early and get it in soon. I'm sure you'll agree with me, Phyllis. Well, uh, should I give you my other catering number and you can ring them and they'll book it in for you? Yeah, do you know, you were recommended so highly by a yeah, very well, good friend of mine. His name's Mike Osborne. I think he's been catered for by you previously. Well, you ring 01923. Yes, yes, yes. It's going to be such a good party, you know. Maybe you'd like to come along yourself. I'm... There's going to be bingo and the disco, too. Lovely. And the DJ's going to be Jarvis Cocker. Mike. Are you a fan of Pulp? Well, if you ring up, we'll arrange a booking, OK? Can you do for me a tomato ketchup sandwich? Uh, I'm just running my husband to the station now, all right? Will you just have a word with my manager to confirm the booking? Well, yeah, I can sort it out for you, Phyllis. Uh, if you get, uh, you get back in touch with me, it's 0171. Are you still there, Phyllis? Yes, writing it down. Why, are you a slow writer? 0171. Oh, you're still there. 4848. Yes. And that'd be 958. And your son, Paul, said I should give you a call. All right. And, and wind you up, Phyllis. Thanks a lot. And it's Steve Pank from, uh, from Capital FM. Thank you. And you're on the air right now, Phyllis. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Phyllis. Bye. Are you going? Yes. Why, why are you going so soon? I'm going to the station. Bye. Why are you going to the station? She's going to the station, everybody. Bye, Phyllis. One minute, one minute. How can I help you? Yes, yeah, very good morning to you. Um, have you got uh, number for Fowl's, um, silences? I'm sorry? Fowl's silences. 
It, it, it's a motorbike shop <laughs> in Manchester. How, how do you spell the name? S. Hello? Yes, well, I'm just into it. Well, can you spell the name, please? Oh, a little bit of patience. F. O. L. F. Silence. Hello, you have a terribly bad line. Yes, well, Hello. I know you're trying you to... to try calling again for a better connection. You're trying to pretend you can't hear me, aren't you? I know exactly what you're doing. So, so you know, you can hear me, and you know you can. <laughs> it's Salt Silences Motorbike Shop in Manchester. Now don't make me lose my temper. Have you found it? I'm normally a very mild-mannered person, but I can only be pushed so far. Right. Must be transferred, Mr. Supervisor. How can I help you? Supervisor, thanks for heaven for that. Hello? Yes. Have you got the number for Souls? Silences. Souls, S-O-U-L. Uh, uh, oh, uh, excuse me a moment. Seems to have a yam button there. Hello? Yes, it's a motorbike shop. Mm hmm which one? Uh, in Manchester. Yeah, can I have the name, please? Yes, Souls Silences. It's a motorbike shop, so Souls Silences. Silencing, I think silence, is it? Uh, no, silences, not finance, silences. It's, it's a motorbike shop. I'm crap, I can't remember. It's souls. <laughs> silences. That's Sierra Austin Lima Sierra, is it souls? Yes. And that's in Manchester? Yes. Is it coming up? No, we don't have a little for soul silences. Right. Was like the motorbike company in the area? Uh, no, not really. It was, it, was, it was that one in particular that I would have to, because I bought a motorbike from them about, uh, must have been about 66 years ago. <laughs> so, we don't have anything at all. Right. Is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, you could try, if you would be as kind. I'm very, I'm very grateful for your patience. Uh, Sh Cheryl's Sandwich Superslaw. In Manchester as well? That's right. What's the name again? Cheryl's. Cheryl, what's in the name? Yes, I, you know, I, 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 I seen Cheryl, um, Cheryl Baker, you know, from Book's Do you, do you remember, uh, Book's They were in the Eurovision Song Contest, uh, a few years ago. And in the Sandwich Shop? Sandwich, no, Sandwich Superstore. Cheryl's... Sandwich Superstore. Yeah, is that, I, I, oh, Cheryl's Sandwich Superstore. That's right. They, they sell sandwiches. And is that like a takeaway sandwich store? Yeah, well, you know, uh, make, they make sandwiches uh, and they, they sell them to, um, to, to, to shops. And, um, Hello? Sorry about that. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine, thanks. I got, I got my tongue stuck in my throat. <laughs> oh, I got it, I got it wedged. <laughs> I got it wedged at the back of my throat. I thought, I thought I was a goner then. Ooh. It's, it's always like, it's always nice to have a, a reassuring voice on the phone. Oh. Anyway, have you got the number for me? No, we don't have anything with Cheryl's sandwich shop at all. Uh, we don't have a sandwich shop in Manchester. Yes, yeah, <laughs> Let me just do the first case in Oxford Street in Manchester. Is that all right with you? Yes. Yeah. yeah, shall I put you through? No, just a number, please, if you wouldn't just mind. Just a number. Uh, thank you very thank much. You. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for calling 118 118. Hello? Hello, um, is Bernard there, please? Hello? Hello, um, hello, is that Bernard? Yes. 
Uh, there it's, uh, Richard Wilson here. Oh, yes. How are you, Richard? Oh, not too bad at all. Not too bad. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm terribly sorry to call you at home, um, but I, I felt that I should, uh, really. Yes, because it was a storm in a teacup, wasn't it? It was a load of nonsense, wasn't it? I was winding her up and... Oh, yes. I was, that's what it was there for. I mean, it's, it's so really getting, you know, totally out of hand and out of order, isn't it? Sure, Richard. Don't worry about a thing. Well, no, no, absolutely not. And, you know, I, I was really just, you know, watching the tape back... Yes. Earlier today, and you know, I'm, I'm really rather cross about it, actually. Yes? Thinking about it, I think you were bang out of order. Yes, well, you're, that's a good impression of... Uh, no, uh, don't give me that, for goodness sake. I only uh, came on there just to have a bit of a laugh. I that's see about things up to old games here. Oh, for God's sake, Manning! <laughs> we thought we were going to get you again! Aye. Well, listen, give us the uh, give us the true story of what happened there. What's going on here? Well, it, it, you know, she can get some people on there to wind up, you see. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll do the winding up this time. <laughs> you, you could say that's that. My, yeah. That's my game. So I knew she's going to get on the racist and sexist. And when she said, are you a racist? I, I thought, well, I'll say yes, you see. <laughs> because her next question would be expecting me to say no. It was a real good wind up. And they fell for it, left hook, line and sinker. Yeah, but did he know that you were winding him up as well? Oh, God, you was drinking before, and... Yeah, we... In the green room, yeah, of course. Yeah, but were you drinking afterwards? And we shook... No, well, I had to get back to the club, didn't I? So <laughs> we're shaking there, we shook, we shook hands, you saw it on television, we shook hands. Hey, you really got him going, though, didn't you? Oh, yeah, but he's put, put the show on the map for him, I'm sure that's what they wanted. Well, listen, Bernard, I'll tell you what we'll oh, do. Oh, that's absolutely marvellous, honestly. No, no, no. impression it is absolutely marvellous. Well, I'm appearing on the Parkinson programme next Thursday, so perhaps you're going to appear with me, and that will give you ample opportunity to... Apologize and bow down before me. Well, I demand it. He was just trying to... I was only just having a bit of a light-hearted laugh and he's trying to stitch me up like a right old kipper. <laughs> it's a wonderful... It's a wonderful impression. <laughs> you know, I'm very surprised a fight didn't break out between us like on the Jerry Springer show. Well, listen, while, while Richard Wilson's here, I think you should get down on your knees and apologize, Bernard. Richard, you have my full apology... If I offended you, I know I didn't, because you know you're a very intelligent man, and uh, you know I'm not a racist, and you know I'm, I'm a wind-up merchant like yourself. <laughs> God bless you, and keep keep making us laugh. You know I'm a fan of... Well, uh, you know, Bernard, I find it very touching, and I, I'm very happy to accept it. And as a parting word, get stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> it was all getting so nice there. Get off, Manning. God bless you, sir. See you, mate. Hello? Hello? Who's this? Who's this? Hello? Hey? Hello? Who? I'm sick of these phone calls, who is it? Who is it? I want your name. Who is it? Who's this? Hold on, hold on, hold on, I'll get, go get the ear name then. Get your ear <laughs> Hello? What? Yes, man, who's this? Who is it? Hello? <laughs> I'm sick of this. What's going on down there? You off your head? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah mate, it's Lee. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Who's this? Who keeps seeing me? Who keeps what? Hello? 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 Who are you? Who's this? Who's this? Hello? 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 How are you? I'm sick of these phone calls, who is it? So am I. I want your name. No. Who are you there? I'm not telling you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll get, go get the ear name then. Hello? Can I give you a thing? A news desk, please. Is a news story that you're giving? It is, yes. Right, is it for television or radio? Uh, it's for either, really. Either. And is it something that's... Ha Sorry, I'm just asking so many questions, but there are... There's more than one news desk. Is it something that's happening now? Uh, yes, it happened uh, a few hours ago, yes. Right, and it's obviously a home story. One well, man. Thank you, thank you. News organiser. Uh, yes, it's on news desk. It is. Yes, I've got a story for you if you're interested. Go ahead, sir. Uh, two associates of mine, uh, Jack and Jill, went up the hill near to their home, and uh, there's been a bit of an accident. Right. We believe that they actually went up to fetch a pail of water. Yeah, who is this? 
Sorry? Who is this? Uh, David Mansfield. Yeah. Now, uh, once they got there, there was a bit of an accident and uh, Jack fell down. Uh, he sustained some minor head injuries, but unfortunately Jill came tumbling after. And what, what's the story? Now, the thing is, is that Jill was fit enough to help Jack uh, mend his head with some uh, nearby vinegar and brown paper, effective in the short term, I'll let you believe. <coughs> so you're not interested, then? Thank you for calling Hotel Joseph. I'll just speak my assistant. Can you please slow down? I couldn't understand a word of that. Hello, Hotel Joseph. My assistant. Beautiful. Yes, very good morning to you. Is it the hotel in Prague I'm talking to? Yeah, Hotel Joseph. Uh, yes. Oh, great. I was, I was hoping that was the, uh, the, uh, the very same. Now, could you tell me a little bit about the hotel? Can I tell you something about hotel? Yes, what it's like. Uh, okay, so our hotel oh, uh, is... I'm, I'm sorry, could you just hold on a moment? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Want me a second? Yes, you were saying. Okay. Uh, yes. So, Hotel Joseph is design hotel. We're looking very minimalistic. We have uh, mostly yes. Yes. Uh, white colors right. and uh, uh, pink. What? Sorry, and sorry, orange. sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. Could you just hold on just a moment? Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. You were saying. Uh, I was saying that Hotel Joseph is design hotel, uh, done by every rich designer, Czech designer, and it's looking very minimalistic with glass walls. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm really terribly sorry. The only word I caught there was minimalistic. Uh, the rest of it was just a lot of garbled nonsense. Uh, okay, so, sir, no problem. So I will try to give you my colleague, maybe he will speak a little bit uh, understandable I'm so, I'm so, for I'm, you. I'm, okay? I'm, I'm sorry, colleague. Hello, my name is Sam, I'm here to you. Sorry, are you the colleague? Yeah. Very excellent. Um, could you tell me about the hotel? Uh, what would you like to know? Uh, well, I want to know what it's like, what the rooms are like. Hotel Joseph is a design hotel. Uh, I'm, I'm, so I'm sorry, could you just hold on just a moment? Yes. Thank you. Speaking. Uh, Mrs. Honeyman, please. Yes, yeah, speaking. Oh, I'm so pleased I got all of you, Mrs. Honeyman. It's uh, Jenny Wiseman from Thames Water. Yeah. I hope you can shed some light on this for us, uh, Mrs. Honeyman. We're going to have to uh, shut your water off from one o'clock today. What for? Sorry? What for? Uh, the reason being is that. Uh, oh, what's well, going wrong with it? Well, what we've done is we've, we've traced something back to your property. Now, I can't believe it myself, but we found lots of tropical fish and goldfish coming out into the system. Tropical fish coming out of what? Out of the water? Are you flushing tropical fish down the toilet? Uh, yeah. Well, you, you do realise that you're contaminating the water by doing that, don't you? Not tropical fish I ain't flushing down the toilet, no. You just said that you're flushing goldfish down the toilet. Yeah. Well, you're contaminating the water, you do realise that, don't you? I'll tell you what, you want to blame the aquatics, please. Then the bloody sold the dodgy fish in the first place. I'm sorry, love, what was that? You want to blame the place where I've got the dodgy fish in the first place? Well, I don't want you to start shifting the blame to somebody else. The fact is, it's you who's well, flushing... he sold a fish with one eye. It's you flushing them down the loo, you silly old sod. But I ain't no bleeding silly old sod. I never said such a thing. Yes, you now, did. Now, the thing is, you do realise, don't you, it's a, it's a £3,000 fine for doing such a thing. Pardon? A £3,000 fine, my love. I ain't paying no £3,000. I ain't got it. I'm sorry, love? I ain't got it. I ain't paying it. Well, I'm, that's what it's going to be. I mean, what on earth possessed you to flush... Where was I expected to put the fish? In them to the tank? What possessed you to start flushing fish down the toilet? What possessed me? Because they were deep. Yeah, but you're supposed to bury them, aren't you? Oh, be don't talk stupid. Be flushing them down the loo like that. Don't, don't bury fish, don't talk silly. Well, it comes back into the system, you know. You can't be doing things like that. Oh, it comes back in the system? Well, of course it does. Anyway, listen, from one o'clock today, we're going to cut your water off uh, for uh, at least a couple of weeks, it'll be. I'm taking this further. You're not cutting my water Well, I'm off. sorry, love. We're going to have to cut it off uh, today. But from one o'clock today, you'll be without it for at least uh, a couple of years. What? Hey? You're the best couple of years. What was it? Hey, what about the other people in this block? Yeah, 
they're not flushing fish down the loo, are they? That's my sister, and she's next door, and she's been round here as well. Yeah, you but, hang on a minute. Yeah, but has she been flushing fish, cloth ears? Yeah, not so much of the cloth ears. Let me try and make this uh, rather clear for you, Mrs Honeyman, because I can understand you're a little bit thick. Yes. It's going to be at least a I'm three... I'm not th- thick at least about a, what's it, about uh, I'm thick. At least a £3,000 fine, and you'll be cut off for at least a couple of years. Yes. You'll have to have a standpipe in your garden, all right? What? So is that all crystal clear for you, Grandma? I'll give you, Grandma. Well, I'm just saying, is it all clear to you? Well, it is clear, but I ain't agreeing with it. I'm going to go and see a solicitor about this that's, today. That's a little bit speak. slow, aren't you? I'm going to go and see a solicitor about this today. Well, if I was you, I wouldn't go and see a solicitor. I'd go and see Emma and Samantha at the house studio in Beckton. Why? What they... Oh, no. Because they've written to me. This is Steve Pank from 95.8 Capital FM, Jackie. Oh, no. <laughs> Five point eight. Hey, Jackie, you are as nutty as a fruitcake, aren't you? Oh, God, on Billy. <laughs> uh, yes, this is Jackie Honeyman in Backton on the Steve Pank Show on 95.8 Capital FM. Good one. All right, I've been eight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jackie. Yeah? Love you, man. Right. I'm sure somebody's winding me up here. Here, here, here. Hello. 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 Am I getting through? Oh, my God. Yeah. Hello. Welcome to One Minute. One Minute, how can I help you? Uh, Dr. Spock, please. 
Park. Yes, please. Inch Town, please. Uh, well, it's the SS Enterprise, I think it is. US Enterprise. Um, he's the chief science officer, <laughs> led to believe. Yeah, I think this is, is this in London, or...? Uh, well, you could try Manchester, uh, see what that brings up. So her name is Spark, S-P-A-R-K. Uh, no, it's S-P-O-C-K, uh, Dr. Spark. A doctor, you said? Uh, Dr. Spark, yes. Dr. Spark, S-P-O-C-K, you That's said. right, yes, Dr. Spark, yes. In Manchester. Uh, well, you could try that. I mean, he's all over the place these days. So this only says Dr. Spark. Nothing for Dr. Spark. That's correct. Okay, thank you for your help. Is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, well, seeing as you're on, you really could. That's that's, that's awfully kind of you. Uh, Big Bird? Big Bird. Big Bird, yes. Big Bird? Yes. Oh, it's Big Bird. Uh, Sesame Street. Oh, one moment, please. Thank you. I will transfer it to my supervisor to find Big Bird for you. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, she's gone. Hello, good morning. Can I speak to Mrs. Ellis, please? Yes, Mrs. Ellis speaking. Uh, it's Dave Rogerson. Do you remember me from uh, Malabeev Campsites, Cornwall? Oh, yes. You were staying in number 27A, is that right? That's right, yes. Uh, the Easter weekend, wasn't it? Yes. Well, we're still waiting for payment of the £62.50 we invoiced you for. We paid it. No, this was for the smoke damage, the interior. We've had to get everything dry cleaned, you see. The smoke damage? Yes. Uh, you've been smoking in the caravan, is that right, you and your husband? Yeah. Well, this, obviously, you know, we've had to get everything dry clean with the curtains and the cushions and the bedding and stuff. And, um, it's £62.50. I did put that all in the letter when we wrote to you. I've had no letter. Well, it's £62.50 if you could get it off to us as soon as you possibly can. I'm sorry, I'm not paying for smoking. Well, the, there's you, no way. Well, we, did, we did tell you when you arrived there was no smoking in the vans. Nobody told us. Well, it's, it's, it's inside the van, if you read all the details inside the van. Well, I think it's a big con myself. I beg your pardon? I think it's a big con myself, if you ask me anything. Well, we have, I mean, there is a, a, an actual sticker inside the van that says no smoking. Well, we never saw that. We never heard nothing about Well, I mean, no you're smoking. bound to say that now, aren't you? Well, I, I mean... I, 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 you, I'm, I'm gobsmacked, to be honest with you. Well, I mean, it does actually say that's why we put a sticker in there, no smoking, you silly woman. I mean, uh, Don't start silly woman me, love. I beg your pardon? Don't start silly woman me. I'm just saying that's Well, I'm all... just saying, we paid for the holiday, we don't know nothing about smoking, well, and we've paid it and we're getting, you're getting no more off Well, that's the reason that we put the stickers in the Well, bands. I'm very sorry, we've seen nobody stickers about smoking. Well, I mean, you know, I'm a... And I'll tell you something else, I was disgusted with your caravan, to be honest, if you uh, want to know the truth. Well, what, well, I don't want to know the truth, I'm just saying that, you, you know, you well, were smoking... Well, I'm telling you. You were smoking in the van and it's £62.50. And I wasn't always. smoking in the bedroom. £62.50, I'm I very said. sorry, you're getting nothing. Don't start it's on your eye horse for I'm me, telling man. you. I mean, are you thick, you or what? I'm telling you, it's 62... Are you thick? Because you're not getting it. Well, you it's... charge everybody else on top of the caravan. Well, most people, Pathetic. you know... Most people... Pathetic. Most people don't smoke. Pathetic. I've never seen a campsite like it in my life. Well, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? Well, you tell me what's wrong with it. You told me there was the last caravan to be on the site, to be taken up. Well, there was you no know... on the site. What are you going on about? I beg your pardon? There was no you're on the site on the us. Well, apart from you and him, you know, making all the racket every night. You what? You, you and your husband making a racket every night. I mean, I was going to fine you for that, but I thought I'd let you, you off. You must be f***ing joking. I beg your pardon. Don't start with me, Don't mate. Don't you start with me either. Don't you start. I'll get a solicitor on it. Well, you do. You just I start. will. Well, it's £62.50 Miss, anyway. You're getting nothing. You better get it paid. And uh, what are you going to do if I don't? Well, I tell you, you're going to be in court over this, well, I tell you. you do what you f***ing want. Who's made a complaint about a racket? I beg your pardon? Who's made a complaint about a racket? We've had a couple of complaints about you. Playing loud music and all sorts every we night. We didn't have a f***ing wireless. Did the man playing loud music? Have you got the right people? Well, of course we've got the right people. Mr and Mrs Ellis, isn't oh, it? I'm f***ing sorry, but you're out of order there, mate. You, you're right loud mouth, aren't you? If yeah, hey, I, I you can be louder and all. If you don't mind me saying I so. I can be louder. Anyway, get it paid, you old tart. You off. I beg your pardon? Off. Well, there's no need for language like that. No, then it? I'm not an old tart neither. Well, I... you know, two can play your game, mate. I beg your pardon. Two can play your game. Well, I'm, I'm no tart, but never have been and never will be. Well, your brother says that you were. What brother? Your brother Jeff has written to me. Jeff who? Jeff Ellis. I haven't got a brother called Jeff Ellis. Oh no, no, no! Hang on, your brother-in-law Jeff Ellis. I haven't got a brother-in-law Jeff Ellis. Oh yes, you have. Oh, have I? Well, I'm f***ing telling you, you're getting f***ed all. Do you, right. know, do you know who this is, Linda? I don't know who it is. Well, it isn't the guy from the campsite. Well, who is it? It's Steve Pank from Key 103. What, you dad? <laughs> all the bloody language, you know. Linda, what were you like? No, no, <laughs> we, never mind all that, you cheeky old get. <laughs> 
don't know what I'm like until the start, but you do now, don't you? Do you know, he says to me, he says, she's absolutely fantastic. She's got a brilliant <laughs> sense of humour, and she'll really give you a mouthful. <laughs> and I did. Well, I've never heard the bleep machine bleep so much in all my life. <laughs> <laughs> Quite your dad's bugging and give me a heart attack. <laughs> the pretty girl's husband's just got out now. He'd have killed himself laughing. Linda, have you got a message for Jeff before we go? Tell him I'll be kill him when I get my hands on him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll strangle him. Hey, Linda. What? Thanks very much. It's all right, love. Bye. Later. Yo, yeah, is, uh, is David Letterman there, please? I've just flown into New York myself, you know, just now, and uh, I had to get out of the UK. You're getting a lot of bad press back there, and uh, I've left our kid there and everything. Just had to get out. It was just driving me nuts, you know. So I've uh, just landed in New York about an hour ago, and uh, just wondered if you're wanting me on the show. If we want you on the show? Yeah, you know, just come on the show, and I'll, you know, set the record straight and uh, do a few acoustic numbers, whatever you like. You were, you were wondering if you can get on the show? Yeah, it's Liam from my race. Um, it's hard to say because there's always, I mean, it's hard to say because... We, we already have our lineup for next week. I mean, you know, it'd be good to get us on, you know, I mean, you know, don't have, you know, none of these, like, you know, little, sort of, like, you know, half ass sort of, like, grade three celebs, you know, get us on. Get me and our kids on, you know what I mean? Proper stars, you know what I mean? But like I said, they already have the guests for next week. Our musical acts are already set up for next week, so. They need some, like, British rock and roll on, you know what I mean? Because, okay. like, we're the governors, you know what I mean? We do it proper, we do it right. You can, you can call back again next Monday and find out if, if that would be possible. Gaz on, Gaz on, you don't want none of that, you know, hootsie and the blowfish nonsense. You need us. You need us, you know, the likes of Oasis and, you know, the Dooleys and, you know, when, um, you know, the new seekers and stuff like that. Well, I, I, I can't say, I can't say because I don't, I don't make that decision. Yeah, because I need, I need to get on. I don't want to do nothing on British TV because I'm sick of British TV, you know. Uh, you know, all the British press are continually slagging me off saying I'm losing it and I keep on smacking people. Which I do, but I'm like, you know, really like annoyed with them saying it all the time. And uh, I don't, I don't want to do nothing with like British TV or British press. I want to come on your show, like. Yeah, I hear you. Well, I've, I've been, I've been doing a bit of preparation. You know, uh, them top ten lists. What you have? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, uh, I've written out a top ten list of people I'd like to smack. Oh yeah. Like th that Jerry Springer's on there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jerry Springer. Let's get a load of like freaks together and take the Mickey out of them. Mm -hmm. Jay Leno. But Jay Leno, all he, all he does is like, he just, he just copies Dave, doesn't he? Oh, you think so? Yeah, he just copies him, you know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. Noel Edmonds, he can have a good kick in. All right, who would, you, who would you like me to, like, beat up in a drunken rage? You know, anyone who really gets on your nerves? Not, not enough to smack. What about any ex-boyfriends or something like that? Do you want me to get them for you? <laughs> and that's Steve Pink at 95.8, capital FM, needs a damn good kick in. If me and Patsy will do that together. Thank you for calling the Los Angeles Times. If you are calling from a touch-tone telephone and know the extension of the party you wish to reach, you may enter that number at any time during this recording. Hey! To subscribe to the Los Angeles Times, yes. and for all subscriber services, enter 1. If you need assistance, please wait, and an operator will be with you shortly. LA Times, this is Melba, how can I help you? Hi, is that the Los Angeles Times news desk? Well, this is the LA Times, I oh. made switchboard. Have you got the news desk there? Yeah, we do. Are you looking for information or giving no, a story? I'm giving a story, if that's possible. Big story. Hang on, sir. Thanks. LA Times. Oh, uh, is that the LA Times news desk? Yes. Yeah. Got a story for your chief. Thought you might be interested in. For what section? Uh, well, just g general, a big story. Uh, do you pay anything for stories? No, it can't be general. It has to be a department. We have metro, we got sports, we got national, we got foreign. Well, if I give you the story, you, maybe you can judge for yourself what okay. do you think. Well, it concerns, uh, it's a local man, uh, Mr. Porgy, I think he's called. Local man from here in L.A.? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Mr. Porgy. Now, he runs, um, it's a, it's a pudding and pie business that he runs. He's making pies? Uh, well, he has been for a number of years, yeah. Now, as far as I know, uh, he's run this business for years. Putting, like, cocaine in the pies? I'm sorry? Is he putting something illegal in the pies? Well, he's been kissing girls and making them cry. There's nothing wrong with that? Well, no, but the really interesting bit is uh, when the boys come out to play, uh, this Georgie Porgy ran away. What's well, life. I'm so sorry? There's not much you can do about that. Yeah, but they've not seen him since, so, um, you know, I mean, a great story, obviously, you know. That's a missing person, I would call the police. So, is, is it something that, uh, that the LA Times could run? Not really, no, I never thought somebody kissing and somebody disappearing. That's... So, who should I call with this, then? I'd call the, the LA police. 
Right, and, yes. and, and, and do, you know, will they, will they pay for a story like this? They might. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bless you. Okay. Hello? Mrs. Talkington, please. Hello? Mrs. Talkington. Yes, speaking. Tameside Council. Oh, hello. Hi, it's about the windows. Yes. Uh, did uh, uh, Mr. Williams call yesterday? No. Have you had the, the letter yet through? No. What letter? Right, it's uh, well, about the windows, because uh, it looks like it's going to be the end of the year now before we can do them. Well, I've already got it in. Right, but you, you needed some more, though, didn't you? I need one in my um, son's room. He's not even been to have a look at it yet. Right. It's full of wood lines. Yeah, it's just that the workman had mentioned it to one of our chaps. So. Right. Right. You're wanting the other the other window done. Yeah. And uh, because of the budgets, it's going to be the end of the year. Is, is that a problem for you? Yeah, it is. It's full of wood like it's crawling. You know, obviously because of the budgets, it's, it's going to be the back end of the year. Uh, I mean, they're not getting into the house, though, are they? They're in the bedroom. They're crawling up the curtains when it's da when it's raining. Oh dear, that's, that's that's pretty bad, then, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll, I will put you at the top of the list, but it's going to be like you know October, November time. You got uh, the joking. I mean, this house was a dump when I moved into it. I mean, uh, good I, I God. beg your pardon. No, I mean, you know, you're, you're lucky to have a house. It's a bungalow, actually. You know, the way things are these days. But I, I'll try and get you down before Christmas. Oh, that's very kind of you, that. Well, there's no need to be sarcastic. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying... being sarcastic. I mean, total dump. I mean. It's just disgusting. Well, you've uh, you've got a four hundred pound bill here to settle. Oh, <laughs> you were what? Four hundred pounds for the window that was fitted, the bay window. Oh yeah, sure, yeah. You were oh, told, no, no, that, no. Yeah. You were told at the time that I you were charged told, for this. It's a council. How can I pay a four hundred pound bill? Well, you were told that right from the start. Don't start giving me this now. I'm sorry, but then I'll go welfare right? I'll go wherever, but I am not paying a bill. Well, I'm telling you, you're gonna have to pay it. Well, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're gonna we're, we're gonna be increasing your rent by at least five pounds a month. You've got no damp, no. Uh, well, I, that, that was the, the reason I was calling you to let well, you know that. I'm sorry, but you can go and bowl. Hey? I'm sorry? Bear with me a moment. Hello? Oh, sorry to slam the phone down. No, I'm sorry, I'm very sorry, but I am not paying no bill. No, yeah, it's just cost me a fortune. I've spent over a thousand pounds on this dump that you lot put well, me in. Well, it's not a dump at all. Is it? Have you seen it? Coming round and have a bloody look. Well, I got sorry before you moved in. I'm it? sure you did. Well, if you were the inspector, you need a white right stick. Well, I'm don't... sorry, no, I'm sorry. What? No. No what? I'm not paying a penny. Well, you're going to have to pay. Well, I'm not paying. Well, we're automatically going to take out your standing charge. Well, try. Go on, try. It should be you what was paying me for moving into this hole in the first place. Well, yeah, there's no pleasing some people. No, is there, there isn't, no. I've never complained to you lot, ever. Well, but when you, you put well, me in this, then that was it. Well, you're having a good go now, aren't you? Yeah, I will, yeah, because I'm very, very annoyed. It well, took... I've had to go and see two counsellors to get me job done in the first place. Don't start shouting at me like this. Then you come round and see it. Go on, come round. I've already seen it! No, you haven't! Well, you do realise it. I mean, I'm being very serious now. If you don't pay for these windows, we'll have to take that bay window out. Hello? 96.2. The Revolution. Revolution. 96.2. The Revolution. One money, one money. How can I help you? Sooty, please. Sorry? Can you repeat the name, please? Sooty? How do you spell that, please? S double O T Y. Sooty. S S for Sierra or for Oscar or for Oscar? It's S for. Here we go again. It's S for. S for sausage. O for octopus. Yeah. O for. Uh, origami. Uh, <laughs> T for television. And Y Y for yellow. Yellow, yes. Sooty. Okay. Are Sooty plants? Could this be the one? No, he doesn't sell plants, no. What type of business, please? Uh, puppet. <laughs> Sooties. Could this be Sooties Customs? Uh, I don't think so, no. You know. Sooties Fox Ballooning or Sooties Properties? No. It, you might find it easier if you look under Sweep. 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 S for Sausage. W for Window Cleaner. Yeah. E for Echo. Yeah. E for... Edwin, 
And P for peculiar. Sweep. I have seen T and sweep. Excellent. And several number. Well, that's extraordinary. You found it for me. That's absolutely perfect. Put me through. Sooty the sweep in wording. Will this be all right? No, not sooty the sweep. No, this is sooty and sweep. Yes. So you've not found it, have you? Oh, God, disappointment again. Sooty <laughs> sweep service. <laughs> See, you raise me hopes and then, <laughs> and then you rugby. shoot me down again, don't you? Sooty eh? and sweep. I almost thought I was there. Sooty and sweep, yes, sooty and sweep, not sooty the sweep. Okay, I'll connect you now, thank you. All oh, right, okay, let's see what we end up with. That should be interesting. Thank you for calling 118118. Putting you through. Hello, I'm sorry, but there's no one here to take your call at the moment. If you'd like to leave your name and number, someone will get back to you as soon as they can. Thank you. Hello, it's Big Al calling. Um, uh, is Sue there? Because <laughs> you, uh, call me back when you get a chance. Thank you very much. Good morning, Clark. How many handing in the air? Ooh, we got a real problem here. Uh oh. What is it? I've got a leak. You've got a leak? Where is it? In the kitchen. Okay, is it under the sink or? There's water everywhere. Okay. Can you be a little more specific? There's about a foot of water now. Oh, okay. Uh, My mum and dad have left me home alone and it's just everywhere. What city are you calling from? Downtown. Okay, hold on a minute. Are you there? Where have you been? Oh, <laughs> well, I'm trying to check with dispatch and see when I can get somebody down there, but he's on the phone. No, I need a plumber. Mm -hmm. Um, don't worry about the money because I know where my dad's wallet is. Okay, well. <laughs> There's water everywhere. Yeah, I'm sure there is. I'm in deep trouble now. Okay, I'm going to give you a phone number to uh, plum uh, Clark Plumbing that's probably very close to you. Can you do it for me? No, I can't. How long does it take to dry carpets? I don't know, ma'am, but here's the phone number if you want to take it real quick. But what should I do? I need to stop the water now. Um, <laughs> here, let me give you this number. Are you ready? You're a grown-up, aren't you? I can't tell you what to do because I'm not a technician, but if you want to take this phone number and call, I'm sure they'll be more than happy to help you. How old are you, anyway? Yeah, you're not a technician, but you're a grown-up. Okay, are you going to take the phone number or not? But what do you think I should do? Yeah, what the hell? Drown, kid! Oh, yeah. Hello? 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 Hello, is Alison Spence? Yes. All oh, right, well, he's given me your name anyway. Uh, well, the reason I'm calling is I'm actually believe you do a bit of uh, the kissogram stuff. Yes, I do. You would? Yes. Uh, do you mind working with animals? Well, it depends what kind of animals they are. Right, well, that's great. So what exactly, what experience have you got? What have you been doing? Well, it depends what people want, really. Right. Are you quite busty, then, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> I'm sorry? <laughs> are you quite busty? Oh, oh dear. Well, uh, well uh, you answer the question, girl. No. Right. Yeah. And have you ever worked with a... <laughs> have you ever worked... Have you ever worked with a python? No, but I'd like to. So what, you know, what exactly can you do with a hula hoop? Well, it depends who's inside the hula hoop with me. Right, okay then. Well, is there any chance we could get together, uh, hopefully this, this evening? <laughs> And a little wine bar somewhere. But can you limbo dance? Because, uh, you know, what we like to do, obviously, to get a bit more excitement, is we like to set fire to one of those poles, you know, and you dance underneath it. So how low do you think you can get? Oh, how low? I suppose if you take your clothes off, you really can't get any lower, can you? <laughs> let's, uh, let's be honest about it. So, I'll, uh, shall I pick you up tonight, then? We'll go to a nice little restaurant somewhere. Yeah, that'll be fine. Right. That'll be absolutely okay. marvellous. Well, as long as we don't bring uh, Miss Tucker and Miss Rainer with us, we'll be all right, won't we? <laughs> 
Alison. Yeah. Steve Penky. Hello, Stephen. <laughs> Well, they say that you're constantly winding them up and they thought the best thing to do is to drop me a line and get you back. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Alison. Bye, Steve. Bye. Yeah, we're fine. Hello, can I speak to uh, Alan, please? Can I ask who's calling? Uh, yeah, the name's Dave Mansfield. Just one moment. Oh, Dave Mansfield on the phone for you. Dave Mansfield. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, I'm calling about the advert, uh, the window closer. Well, I mean, that's an old ad. Where did you see that one? Well, it was it was passed on to me, actually, but uh, I just thought I'd give you a call because I, I feel it's something I could do, you know. OK, well, I'm in Bexley. Is that near to you, or...? Uh, well, it's not, too, it's not too far, really. OK, But, mate. um, you know, how many windows do you like me to close a day? How many windows? Yes. But I guarantee you two leads a day. Sorry? I guarantee you two leads a day. But how many windows exactly will I be closing? How many windows will you be closing? But, I mean, how many exactly? Because it doesn't specify in the ad, you see. Well, there is no, there is no guarantee. It's just as many, many as you want. And what do you do? Do you get paid per window that you close? Is, is that the way that it works? Well, send me a CV, we'll have a look at it, and then obviously we can take it from there. Right. And what, what sort of windows will, will, will they be? You know, will they be sort of school windows or, or house windows? Or, or House windows, commercial windows, anything. I mean, it sounds like a very easy job, you know, yeah. uh, to be honest with you. Um, so it's not difficult, it's just finding someone who wants to do it. I, I didn't even realise there was such a demand, you know, for people to uh, close windows. Well, so. there's not many. I mean, who, who do you n normally do the work for? You know, lazy people, is, is that why uh, you have to go around and close their windows for them? Yeah, have you done it before? Yeah, uh, well, I've, I, you know, I've closed a few windows at home, you know, okay. um, when it's got a bit drafty. Send, send me a CV anyway. Right. And we'll have a look at it, and obviously we can, um, if we like the information that you're giving us, then we'll arrange an interview for you. Oh, you're, well, you're a very nice man, very kind man, but, okay. um, uh, like I say, uh, so, so what, you know, where will it be? I mean, obviously office blocks are the better, because you get more windows in, in the office blocks, you know. Yeah, it's, it's all, all local stuff. I mean, obviously the CVs I send, you know, they won't specify that I've been closing windows. But it doesn't matter, as long as it gives us a background about what you've been doing, and a bit tells me a bit about you, then obviously, if I like what I read, then we'll arrange... Well, there's no question, there's no question you'll like what you read, you know, but, uh, you know, if anybody can close a window, I, I certainly can, you know. Okay, then. But, I mean, why can't you do it yourself, you know, you're a bit of a lazy boy. I'm too busy, mate, too busy. You're too busy to close a window? Well, as I say, send me a CV, we'll have a look at it, and as I say, if I like what we see... So we'll arrange for you to come down and have a chat with us. That's that's great. Well, listen, it's been lovely to talk to you. That's fine, David. And uh, and I look forward to uh, to closing a few windows in in the not too distant future. Okay, David. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> what the hell was that all about? Hello, Marina. Yeah. Where are you? I'm. I'm. I'm uh, right. Hey, can you get go outside or something? I can't hear you properly. I need to speak to you urgently. Well, of course. Have you had any letters from the insurance about the dishwasher? Have we had any letters from the insurance? Yeah. No. I've just had them on phone to me. Yeah. And they're suing us for two and a half grand. Why? And they said they sent letters. They're blaming you. Me? Yeah. For. for Nattering up the washing machine and the tumble dryer. They said we're washing your bras in it with these bones in it and that. With washing what? Washing your bras in the washing machine and they dried them in the tumble dryer. They said that's caused the, the breakage in them. Get lost. The last time it was just the, the jets were needing well, cleaning. They said they sent two letters out and they can't are suing us for two and a half grand. Well, they, they can try and sue the arse off me, tell them. Because they're blaming you personally. Why me? Because they said, cause of the way you're using them. They said your attitude every time the service man comes out has been bad. Where's these letters they sent you? I haven't got no letters. Oh. Well, can I keep that from you? Well, I don't know. I mean, what, what have you been doing to tumble dry then for him to say this? Well, they can try and say because I'll tell you now, right, I have done nothing wrong. The time he came, it was the Jets and he cleaned them. Yeah. And I've, yeah, but he said you got, all, you got all aggressive with him and started swearing at him. You never did that. Don't do that. Oh, that's what he said. They're saying in this letter that he was really aggressive and, and threatening to hurt him. All five foot on me. Said you were really aggressive. But where's these letters then? Are, are you keeping them from me or somewhere? Oh, yeah, I've got about six of them. Well, what are we going to do? Don't let them say. I don't give a shit anymore. Let them say. There's two and a half grand, Marina. Don't just say let them sue. All right, get your money back from your flaming flight then and pay with it with that. Well, that's not my, not my fault. I have broke it. You're the one who's broke it. Craig, I don't give a shit. If they want to sue me, let them sue me. I'm not bothered anymore. What are you checking out on me for? I can't go to Spain now because you've brought the 
the appliances. Listen, I've got to go because I'm working here and I've got to coat still off. Well, tell us those big, tell us those big bony bras of hers that's causing all the problems. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Marina. What was that? Lang- what was that language then? <laughs> Heavens above! I thought you were a lady. <laughs> Craig, I am bloody shaking here. Terrible language, that. That is not my brab, it's his brab. It's That's his brab. It's <laughs> bigger than mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, yes, this is Marina Seymour, everybody, on the Steve Pink Show. And, um, well, she was she was biting a little bit there, Craig. She was going a bit there. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, when we realised that she had to get back to the client, we thought, oh, we, yeah. better, ju- we better jump in now. I was waiting for you, then. So whose hair are you cutting today, Marina? I'm cutting my sister-in-law's hair. Uh, Carol. Carol, right. Yeah. I was about to say hello to Carol. Carol who? Carol, Carol Lee. Right, you almost forgot who her name <laughs> was then. She's gone. Yeah, she's completely gone. <laughs> anyway, Marina, nice to speak to you. Good to speak to you. Now listen, keep those bras out of that washing machine. <laughs> I will. All right, darling, have a nice day. You too, thank you. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. I'll bye. kill you, Craig. See you later, darling. Bye. Hello. Hello, can I speak to Caroline O'Malley, please? I'm afraid she's not here at the moment. Can I get her to call you back? Yes, uh, hopefully you can, actually. Um, we're just wondering what time we can deliver this fridge freezer today she ordered last week. Oh, uh, what, sorry? Uh, the fridge freezer she's ordered. We can deliver it today. I'm just wondering, you know, if, if somebody will be in, basically. That's the reason I'm calling. A fridge freezer? Yes, yeah, she ordered a fridge freezer on HP last week. You are kidding me. No, this is, uh, this is Ferguson's uh, Electrical Shop, and uh, she ordered it last week. Right. And uh, I'm just wondering if it'd be all right to deliver it today, because our bloke's in the area today, you see. Uh, I think somebody's got the wires crossed here, actually. Um, I was away last week, and I know that... Uh, are you sure she has done this? She's ordered it, that's right. She ordered it last week, in fact. And she says that uh, we could deliver it today or, or tomorrow. She's put down the form. I mean, she's paid for it. I mean... What? I mean, you know, she's paid the deposit. Oh. Uh, but she's got it on HP over two years, you see. And she said that she's going to pay for it. Well, she has. Well, presumably. I mean, I... I and she uh, signed for it. She, she has. signed for it. Yes, she has. I yes. Think, can I come in and see you? Well, the thing is, is that, you know, we've got to deliver it today. It's already paid for. No, I'm sorry. You can't deliver it here. There's no way. Well, it's already sorted out. I mean, that's I between... Don't care. Well, it's, it's between you and her to sort it out. No, it's not. Well, what we'll do is, do not deliver the fridge freezer. I'll come in and see you. Well, we've got your address. We, I mean, the guys, you Just know... Just hang on a minute. There's somebody at the door. Just hang on. All right. Sorry, um, my car yeah. broke down and the, um, the RAC are here. All right. Um, well, I mean, uh, about 10.30 we should be down no, then this no, morning. No, no, do not deliver anything here. So I'll see you later then. No, excuse me. Hang so, on a minute. Watch. You are not going to deliver anything here. Well, she signed for it. I don't give a toss what she signed for. She is, we are not having a fridge freezer delivered here. Well, it's not, I mean, obviously, you know what I mean? My dealings are not with Mr. you, Ferguson, I mean... We are not having a fridge freezer or any other electrical item on HP in this house. Well, what I'll do is... Well, uh, you will just go and take a running jump because well, we're not having anything well, delivered. No, what I'll do, if you calm down a minute, let me get a word in edgeways. Right. What I'll do is I'll uh, drop it off. No. And then you can sort it out with your daughter. I'll drop you off in a minute. We are not having anything delivered. I don't care what she's signed for. We've got a cooling off period or whatever that's No, you on. haven't. She, she signed for it. When did she sign for it? She signed for it on Thursday of last week. Right, well, you, 24 you have seven hours. days cooling off no, or you whatever. Don't. 24 hours at our shop. That's off. Uh, we are not having anything delivered. Well, how... I will come into the shop. Where are you? Sorry? Where are you? Well, it doesn't matter where we are. The, the, Look, the, mister. I want to know where you are so I can come in and cancel. The fact is, I'm dropping it off half past ten. If you like, I'll put it on your garden if you like. You can shove it up your... I beg your pardon. You know what I was going to say then, but I'm not going to say it. Well, that's not very ladylike, is it? Goodness gracious. Maybe because I'm not feeling very ladylike at the moment, but you're not going to deliver anything here. Well, what's your children like signing for stuff if they don't want it? I've no idea. She must have been brainless or brain dead at the time. Well, a bit like yourself, obviously. Well, you can just go and shove it up your... Anyway, what's all... Hello? Hello? <laughs> I don't think she wants a fridge freezer then. Hello? 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 I think we got off on the wrong foot there, didn't oh, we? Oh, God, is it you again? This... this is Liz, isn't it? Yeah. Liz, this isn't a guy called Ferguson, and I'm not from Ferguson's. Yeah. Your daughter has written to me. Oh, the little s***! I'll kill her. To wind you up, this is Steve Pink. Oh, I don't believe it. Oh, I'm gonna kill her. I've got the RAC here. It's Steve Pink. It's just what's in there. I'll kill you. It's Steve Pink. Oh, Caroline. Oh, 
you know, it's not, it didn't go out or anything, did it? Of course it, it did, live. Oh, you rat dad. <laughs> oh, you absolute. <laughs> oh, God, I'm you a few oh. bleeps in there, Liz. There wasn't, was there? Oh, a few bleeps in there, Liz. Oh, dear God. Oh, you'll be the talk of the neighbourhood today. <laughs> oh, no. Is there anything? Is there anything you want to say to Caroline? Just about wringing the neck twice. Should she start looking for somewhere else to live? I hope so. <laughs> it's, it's, it's imminent. Yes, it is, yes. Thank you very much, Liz. You're welcome. <laughs> that bag. Right, OK, I'll get her back somehow. Thank you, Liz. All right, then. Bye-bye. <laughs> City Hall, can I help you? Um, hello, is that the American Army? Yes. Well, I've just been listening to the village people, so I thought I'd give you a ring. Who is this? Um, the name's, uh, Julian. Julian Cleary. How may I help you, sir? Well, I just wanted a bit of, um, information about, uh, joining the army. If, um, perhaps you could, uh, provide it, if that'd be all right. What would you like to know? Can you expect, you know, interesting, exciting things if you join? Yes. I thank you. Um, so it's not just playing soldiers then, by any means, I suppose? No, sir. How soon would it tend to be before you, sir, uh, pardon? who are you with? Um, are you with a firm? Are you conducting a survey? Well, I'm, I'm certainly not, um, you know, doing a survey. I was just asking some questions, really. Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from over here. Over where? Um, Leicester Square in London. Are you thinking of coming here to the United States to join the Army? Well, I'll give anything a go, you know. All I wanted to know was, um, how soon is it before you, uh, get to go somewhere fancy? Somewhere what? Somewhere fancy. Somewhere nice, you know, sunshine or... Uh, sir, these questions are dependent on a bunch of, uh, a bunch of lot of things, and I don't mean to cut you short, but, uh, this stuff can take hours on these questions that you're asking, and I wouldn't want to give you piecemeal, uh, answers. If you want to find out more about the Army... Next time you're in New York, why don't you come into my office and we can talk then. Do you have anybody who works there who looks like Windsor Davis? All right, sir, I don't have time with this for this. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely boy! <laughs> Hi, oh, have I got through to, uh, is that Florida? Yes. Oh, hi, this is Steve Penn calling from England. Yes. How's it going there? It's fine. Oh, we're all a bit worried about you. It looks like an English day out there. Oh, what, what, you mean it's, it's miserable and throwing it down? Well, it's cloudy and it's really not even raining. When I was there, it wasn't raining, so it's not raining here. So you're all safe then? Yes. That's the main thing? Yes. Uh, well, listen, you couldn't do me a favour, could you? Yes. Uh, you couldn't put the phone outside, could you, so we could have a listen to the wind? Uh, it's not that windy, and I don't have a window. Oh, really? No, it's oh. not bad at all. Because we just want you to have a listen to it, you know, from a safe distance, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it's not bad out at all. Right, because uh, obviously, you know, we're, we're glad we're not there, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> I know, I'm certainly glad I'm not. But uh, is there any chance at all you could sort of hold the, the, the phone up a little bit so we can have a little listen to it? You can't, there's nothing to listen to, sir. There's no, it's not windy where you can even hear it. Oh, how disappointing. I thought there'd be uh, tractors and all sorts flying through the air. No, there's nothing flying through the air. Oh, really? Uh, but you're all safe. Yes, we're all safe. That's the main thing. Everybody in Central Florida, I assume, is safe. And, and what's your name? My name's Linda. Oh, Linda, well, it's lovely to speak to you. Do you live locally? Yes. Right, uh, and, and what do you, I mean, have you lived through a hurricane before, Linda? Uh, nothing that came this close. All right, so anybody who's got family in Orlando, on holiday, they're perfectly safe. Yes, in fact, planes are coming back into the airport now. Oh, are they? Yes. Excellent. Linda, it's been lovely to speak to you. Well, you take care. We all love you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for calling Nikki Clark, one of our highly trained professional staff, We'll be with you shortly. Hello, Nikki Clark, Amanda speaking. How can I help you? This is a test of the emergency Wally Gator system. This is only a test. Uh, Max and I, please. Hello? This is a test of the emergency Wally Gator system. This is only a test. Hello? <laughs> Concludes this test of the emergency Wally Gator system. Had this been an actual alert, you would have been instructed to run! The zookeeper Mr. Twiddle is coming! Hi! Save yourself, don't you know? <laughs> Thank you. One minute, one minute. How can I help you? Thomas the tank engine, please. Thomas the tank engine. Yes, please. Thank you. 
In which town, please? Uh, the island of uh, Sodor, I think it is. Oh, I do apologize, but there's no listing called Thomas the Tank Engine. There's not a thing. No listing. You could look under the fat controller. Sorry, fat controller. Fat controller, yes, that's the one. I have one listing for the fat controller, however, the listing is ex-directory. Oh, right, okay. Anything else I can help you with? Yes, you can look for brains. Sorry, brains? Brains, yes. Which town, please? Uh, Tracy Island. Okay, one moment. So I'll transfer to my supervisor. Supervisor. For this Lovely, thank you. I'll transfer you now. Thank you. Have I help you? Brains, please. Brains in which town, please? Uh, Tracy Island. Tracy Island, thank you. Thank you. You're the supervisor, are you? Yes, I am the supervisor. Thank you. We do have a listing here for brains, and this is a general number. I'm afraid it's not in Tracy Island. It's in Cardiff. No, it's definitely Tracy Island. Right. You could try under the hood. The hood? Yes. His eyes light up when he gets angry. Um, right. And the address is still in Tracy Island. It is, thank you. We do, we do have several numbers for the hood, but it's not in Trace Island. <laughs> but does his eyes light up? I'm sorry? That's the main thing. Uh, otherwise it's not the hood that I'm looking for. Does it actually say uh, on your computer screen whether or not his eyes light up? No, um, we don't have that information. Right, it's obviously the wrong hood then. Okay, well it's... Is there anything else I can help you with? Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Is that Mrs. Fitton? Yes. Keegan's Travel. It's about the trip you've got coming up. Which trip, sir? Uh, it's just to confirm it, uh, all the details. I think it was booked through your husband. Oh, well, you better ring him. Um, the week in Southport, Mrs. Kay's boarding house. We've got all the final details here. Can I, can I send them down to you today? <laughs> you can do what you like, yes. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> what, what, do you what do you mean? <laughs> Have you been there before? Oh, yes, it was terrible. No, it's, uh, I think he called me a few weeks ago and we've just got the final details through now. <laughs> you won't be taking the dog with you, will you? I haven't got a dog. That's great because she doesn't like dogs down there. No, okay. Uh, she really doesn't. It, uh, she's had hairs and all sorts all over the place. You won't be taking any children with you either, will you? Oh, no, I haven't got any. That's great. <laughs> all right then, so, um, I'm not exactly sure of the date. Are you, are you sure yourself? No, I'm not. I thought this was a surprise and some surprise it is. <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> it's, it's very nice, Mrs. Kay's boarding house, you know. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, she spent thousands on it, you know. <laughs> Had a terrible problem with damp a few years ago, but that seems to have gone now. Oh, good. Uh, it's just a bit cold in the rooms yeah. at night. <laughs> so, if you could take some extra underwear with you, you know, some thermals. <laughs> Thermal, yeah. That would be great. That would be great. Really sure. <laughs> oh, no, dear. It's, you seem to think it's some sort of joke, but I can assure you it's not. <laughs> I can assure you it is, No, because I'm not bloody going. No, I tell you, I've spent weeks trying to sort this out, because it's very popular, Mrs. Cage, you know. I'm not going, and that's it. Uh, she had Danny LaRue stay there one year, you know. Did she? And, uh, I mean, she gets all the, obviously, all the panto stars stay there. Norman Roberts and his uh, balloon circus was there last year, in fact. Oh, it's, as, as you can see, it's big time, you know. Who, who are you? Sorry, I don't know you. Yeah, well, well obviously, you know, you've never spoken before, have you, silly woman? <laughs> I don't believe it. So, uh, <laughs> I hope you have a lovely time. You All know. right. So but uh, the only thing is, is that if the wind is, is in that direction that day, there's a hell of a, of a smell, you know, from the near uh, sewage farm. <laughs> sewage, oh yeah. God, yeah. I mean, well, uh, let me tell you, in the hair today, I won't be going. Well, on a, you'll have a lovely time. 
because uh, they, they get all the top videos there, you know. Right, okay. And, uh, and on a Wednesday, <laughs> every other Wednesday, she has a bingo night. Oh, right. Yes. <laughs> uh, you could win a continental quilt. God. <laughs> I don't believe this. <laughs> anyway, when you come down, if yeah. you could bring uh, Paula McAdam with you. <laughs> I'm sure you have a lovely time. No, I'm not bringing Paula McCadden. Well, she's written to me. Yeah. Paula's written to me. Uh, this is Steve Pank. Oh, my collect. God. And you're live on the radio at this very moment. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Oh, my God. We're famous at last. I go from one stage to another. Well, I, I know for a fact that, well, she's told me that so your husband's planning a little surprise for you. Yeah. And, uh, and I don't know what that surprise is, but I hope it's a little better than Mrs K's boarding house. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got anything you'd like to say to Paula Collette? Yes, Paula. It's a good job I just got off the phone in time, isn't it? <laughs> Well, she just called you, actually. No, I just called her because the little boy's sick. Well, all the best, Colette. Right. And have a lovely holiday. All right, thank you very much indeed. Wherever you're going. Yes, I hope it's somewhere better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, is that the old windmill? It is. Yeah, hi, hello there. Uh, came in over the weekend, and uh, I, I was rather d uh, disappointed in the taste of the Tetleys, to be honest. You was? Uh, yes, I was, yes. Why didn't you talk to me then? Uh, I'm sorry? Why didn't you talk to me then? Well, I couldn't find any any, any management around at the time. Where, when was this? Uh, it was on Saturday I came in, and, uh, you know, it, it tasted like cat's piss, to be honest with you. It's a new keg on, I know that, so... Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was very disappointed, and, uh, I, in, in particular, I mean, I don't know who you are, but, uh, you know, the landlord, he had a face on like, you know, like a slapped arse. I mean, I couldn't believe it. And yeah. what, was this Saturday morning, Saturday morning? It was about Saturday, uh, Saturday afternoon, yeah. I mean, it was... Oh, right face like thunder. I don't know if something had happened, you know, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't feel very welcome at all, to be honest with you. All right, okay. Well, you won't be coming back then, will you? Yeah, well, I can assure you I won't be, no. Okay, but I, th I, thought right. it's, I thought it's something that you should know, you know, you, sh you should really know these things. And uh, has he gone? Oh, I'd better call him back then, haven't we? Irritate him a bit more. Good afternoon, Well, there's no need to put the phone down, you know. I mean, I was only expressing an opinion, uh, that's all. Okay, well... This end of conversation. I mean, like I say, I've been, you know, I've been in once before. I'd like to come back again, you know, because it's mm -hmm. quite handy for me, but, uh, you know, no atmosphere, really. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, then. Well, you've expressed your opinion. Thank you very much. And uh, you're not the life and soul of the party, really, are you, to no. be honest with you? Well, okay, then. Thank you very much. You don't take uh -huh. criticism very well either, do you, really? Uh -huh. So, oh, he's got again. Right, okay, well, should we uh, just call him one more time? <laughs> really cheese him off. You know, women. Les Wood, please. Thank you. Les, it's Steve Pank from 95.8 Capital FM. Yeah, all your regulars have written to me, Les, to give you a call, <laughs> mind you. Are you sure about this? There's quite a number of them here, Les. We've got this fax with about 300 names on it. Oh, right. Yes, this is the great Les Wood from the old windmill, <laughs> live on the Steve Pank Show. Oh, thank you very much. So, uh, listen, uh, your Tetley's uh, doesn't taste like cats. Uh, it's, it tastes lovely. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm sure you'd be delighted to hear about that. Right, okay. So, have you got any message to, uh, to these, uh, these uh, regulars? To, to those people. Yeah, how about banning them for life, Les? Uh, no, I don't think we better do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah but, think of the profits, uh, Les. Think of the profits. Yeah, okay, then. <laughs> well, perhaps you will pop in and have a drink. I would love to do that. Right. Well, thanks very much for winding me up, anyway. <laughs> All right, Les. Okay, then. See you, mate. Yeah, bye. Good morning, King's Castle Nush. What can I help you? Hi, Sarah. Yeah? Uh, it's Wendy. I need to speak to her. Yeah, of course. All Cheers. right, I'll just get her. Okay, thanks for that. Hello? Lynn? Yeah? You better come back to the house. Why? The bloody police have turned up. Why? The police and the RSPCA. Why? But apparently the people at the back, yeah, have reported you and said that you, you don't feed them, you mistreat them. You know the rabbits? Yeah. And that they're living in squat and they've got... The bloody cages here, they're taking them away. You are, you, are you joking with me? No, I'm not joking with you. Well, I'm not to get this. home, David. Well, I've had enough of this. I, you know what I mean? I'm the one to get a flat for this. Well, put them on the phone. Pardon? Put them on the phone. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute. I'll tell you what, you've got to sort this out then, because I'm fed up with this. So, I mean, it's ridiculous. No, put them on the phone, I just said. Good, I don't start on me. It's your rubbish, your fault. I'll speak to you, mate. Uh, hold on, hold on, just let me get in. Hello, love. Yeah, what's the problem? Uh, well, they're a bit thin. Uh, we're a bit uh, concerned about them. They're a bit thin? Yes. Uh, you, I don't think you've been looking after them very well. You don't... Oh, I don't even believe it. So, just give me a minute for my phone. 
You don't think I've been looking after them? Not at all, no. I've, I've, I've told your husband we've got, we've got to take them away right now. Oh, Steve Pink! I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> I'll just hand you back to your husband. Hang on a minute. Alright, cheers. Steve Pink, don't believe it. They're taking him away. David, it's Steve Pink. I'm not that. It's Steve. I can hear his voice. And I've listened to him for donkey's years. I know his voice sounds like. I'm a mess about you. Yeah, I got, well, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but there's no way on earth that my rabbits are thin. But they get better fed than you, you know that yourself. Well, the fat, tell her the fat then. <laughs> put it back on. Hold on, I'm just going to put it on. Yeah, fat rabbits. We well, got... what, what's up with them? Well, the fat now. The fat? Yeah, I was wearing the wrong glasses at the time. Was ya? Uh, the fat, bald. Yeah. Uh, and, um, mad staring eyes. <laughs> um, so you're going to take them all away? Yeah. Yeah, and your husband as well. Oh, you can have him. <laughs> yeah, we'll take him, lock him away. Um, oh, God, we didn't last very long with you, did we? No, and you know why? Because I've listened to you for that many years. <laughs> I can recognise your voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, I am Steve Pank, the man of I a know. thousand voices, as, I know. You, as you know. I know. Uh, all those voices <laughs> that sound the same. Exactly. Um, anyway, listen, have you anything you want to say to Dave before um, we go? No, I just tell him that I'm going to kill him when he gets home because he's just made me run out the room and leave my children on their own. <laughs> what, your children on their own? I'm at nursery, I'm working at nursery. Oh, right. <laughs> All right, then. We'll let, you get, we'll let you get back to the kids, then. All right. Cheers, Steve. Nice to speak to you, Dave. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. See you, Dave. Bye. That was a nice try, Dave. Oh, uh, cheers. Okay. See you, mate. <laughs> Is that the zoo? Yes, it is. Yeah, I wonder if somebody can help me. I've got a problem with a minky. With a what? A, a pet minky I've got. A pet minky? Yes. I'll put you through the animal inquiries. One moment. Thank you. <laughs> easy, boy. Yes. Easy. Yeah, uh, hello? Hello, is Hel your friend's office. Oh, please? yes, I wonder if you can help me. Uh, I've got a problem with, with uh, a, a monkey, a pet monkey. Uh, it's just that I'm looking after a friend's uh, pet monkey and it's getting a bit vicious and I don't know what to do. I, mean, I wonder if somebody can help me down there. I don't know if you are aware of it. Right. But um, it is illegal in Australia to hold monkeys. Oh, right. Well, he, I should say it's not, it's not mine. It's a friend of mine and he's gone away for the weekend. It's just that he's already tried to bite me and you don't think it's going to attack me, do you? Because I'm a little bit, you know, it's a bit scary, all of this. Well, see, I can't give you advice because of the fact Come here, little fella. Come here, little fella. Ah, ah, went for me then. Uh, because it is illegal for yes. uh, people to hold monkeys in captivity. Oh, right. Unless they have, it is quite illegal in Australia for Right. I, I just, I'm, I mean, I, you know, I'm very grateful for your time. It's just that I'm a bit frightened right. because I'm, I'm in the house on my own and I don't, I don't want to leave it, obviously. Is there anything I can do to calm it down? I'm not in a position to advise you. Yeah. Uh, we're not... <laughs> As a zoo, we we do hold animals of that kind, but we, being an A-class zoo, we yes, would right. handle them as they should be. I, um, mean, I mean, I'm sure you can understand my concern, though, can't you? And, the, you know, it's yes. the thing is, you know, it's showing its teeth, for God's sake. But, uh, you know, obviously it's getting a bit excited. I'm just I'm just terrified it's going to go for me, you know, because it's... Uh, it's I can imagine that, too. It's it sounds the, very frightened. Yeah, it's tearing, tearing the place apart, you know, at the moment. And... and <laughs> Where, where, where are you? Well, I'm, I'm downtown, you know, but I'm just a little bit worried, you know, I, I don't know really know how to calm it down. It's looking really nasty now, and it's showing its teeth, you know. Easy, boy. Easy. You know, what? what? Ah! An organisation which is called the Primate Association. What do, I want, I don't... what do I want that for? I want you to come and sort this monkey out. It's attacked me. Beg your pardon? Well, can't you get round and get somebody to sort it out? Well, I think you could uh, you could approach a vet. Well, couldn't you get round and sort it out? You're a zoo, aren't you, for God's sake? 
Right then. Oh, don't you worry about me. He's had me arm off and run out of the front door, but don't worry. Thank you. 95.8 Hello? Hi, Dad. Who's that? It's Eve. Where are you ringing from? Um, I've just met Sam. Um, Dad, you swear you won't have a go at me. What's happened? Um, Sam had a belly button pierced and I have mine done too. The man won't let me leave until I get money. I haven't got enough. I haven't got enough money. And he won't let you leave? No. Well, I've got to come up there. Tell him I can't let you go, love, until you've paid. Oh. Where, where is it? Where, let me speak to him. Okay, hang on, I'll just get him. Hang on. Hello? Yeah? She's having problems paying this. Yeah, uh, how much is it? Uh, well, there's a nice double piercing in a belly button. That's £137.25. Plus Are you v serious? Plus VAT. Are yeah. you serious? Seriously, yeah, that's what she asked for, a double piercing. I'm, I'm going to be up there in ten minutes. You're not charging my 14-year-old daughter £170. No, no, £137. No, you're uh, not charging anywhere near plus... that. I'm coming up there and I'm well, bringing the police. Now, the tattoo of the eagle on her back, uh, that's another £65. Oh, God, I know this is. I know this is. And normally, <laughs> sir, we, you know, we don't... We don't pierce anyone under the age of 18. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if I come down that radio station, I'm going to pierce you as well. <laughs> but she, uh, she, she brought a letter signed by you okaying this. <laughs> I can't believe it. But I've got some great news for you. The shaving of her head. <laughs> I'll throw that in for nothing. I'll tell you, I'm going to shave her head when I get home as well. This is Steve Pink. <laughs> oh, God. Do you know, I was just about to punch someone's lights out. Do you know, the problem we find, you know, with some parents, obviously like yourself, is <laughs> they have no control over the kids these days. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Toby? No, no, I'm all right. You've done me up there. You've done you me know, up. you were on your way, boy, weren't you? I was, I was, I was, I was, I was just getting in my van and picking up a pickaxe handle. And it was going to be a tattoo shop that wasn't no more. I don't want to mess with you, Toby, boy. <laughs> well, listen, she's, she's bored, you see. She's on six weeks summer holiday, so she's faxed me. <laughs> she said, you've got to call that dad of mine, Panky. <laughs> you right. She wants his belly button pierced, then. Is that a yes or no? She's got about two hopes, and one of them's Bob Hope. <laughs> Bye. See Bye. you, Toby. Bye. Bye. On shop. Hello, mate. Is that the dry cleaners? Okay. Hi. Have you got some number for uh, another dry cleaners? How do you mean? Uh, well, I, no, it's just that uh, I brought a pair of pants in there the other week and uh, you made a right pig's ear of it. So I, I just wonder if you've got a number for another dry cleaners. No. You know, because obviously, you know, you being in the trade, you'd know uh, better dry cleaners than obviously you are. Oh dear. Well, if I'm going to be an argument with your wife. No, 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 I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm being polite. I'm just You're being polite? I'm just asking for a number, that's all. I just wonder if you got a number. I think you've had a row with your wife and lost, haven't you? No, no, I'm just asking for, I'm just, you know, asking for a number for a dry cleaners. I wonder if you'd be as polite as to help me out. Well, why should I do that? Well, because as I said... you're criticising my work. Well, as I said, you know, I mean, yeah, right pig's ear of it, you made. Made the right pig's ear of it? Yeah, you know, I didn't want to come back and be argumentative at the time, but, uh... Well, you should have done. Right. Well, as I say, have you got a number? Thank you. Bonjour. Hello, bonjour. I'm calling for a job, Hot Lips. Excuse me? I'm looking for a job. Uh, can you put me through to somebody? Yes, of course. Not for long, please. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Rain drops keep falling on my head. Is that you, Is that you, Rubber Lips? Sorry? Hello, is that you? Yes. Yes, I've been put through. I'm looking for a job. I'm hoping to come over soon, uh, get some work. Okay, so, well... What can you offer me, Chief? Uh, where are you calling from? Well, I'm calling from England. M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E. Okay, uh, I will give you another phone number oh. if you want more information. Well, can't you give me a bit of information, my lovely, my sweet? Because I'm, I'm hoping to come over next month to the lovely Paris... And I uh, get a job at Disneyland. Because a lot of people say I look like Aladdin. No, no, I don't speak English very well. Don't you know who Aladdin is and you work for Disney? I, I don't know. Do you know I've seen The Lion King 37 times? 37 times. 37 times. And I always cry at that bit, you know how the father dies. Okay, could you just hold the line? Oh, are you going to be long? No, no, no. Oh, not very long. Be as quick as you can okay, then if you can, my you sweet. Much. 
Hello? Yes, hello, hello. Hello, can I help you? Oh, I hope you can, yes. I'm just calling for a job. I'm hoping that you can fix me up for the summer. Okay, and when would you be able to start? Oh, I can start as soon as you like, my lovely. I'll entertain the kiddies. Okay. Yes. And, um, do you speak any French? Not really. Uh, but I won't need to. Well, I can be one of those costumes. Well, um, it depends. I mean, uh... What the type of job you're looking for is to be a character, is it? Is yes. this a character? I'm flying in, hopefully middle of next week, so if you could pick me up from the airport, that'll be great. Uh, so if you're flying in next week, what you should do is you will call a number. I'm going to give you a number that you call when you get to Paris. Right, and I'll come... And I'll you come... will have an interview on the telephone, first of all. Oh, great, and I'll come straight over and see you. No, no, uh, no, sorry, but right. you'll call us first. Right, could you tell me, uh, why do the French always push in in queues? Why do the French always push in queues? Yes. How I do ca- you know they always Well, because I came queues? over the other week. Half term it was, and uh, oh, they were all pushing. It was terrible. It was. I tried to get on the Paris of the Caribbean. They were pushing in left, right, and centre. They were. Uh, but listen, once I get a job over there, there'll be none of that nonsense. Why? What will you do about it? Well, you better put all the English to the front, obviously. Sorry. I said I'll be letting all the English into the front. You'd be letting the English into the front. Well, of course. How would you let the English into the front. Well, I'll be saying, are you French? And if they say yeah, I'll say right to the back then. <laughs> and you think it'll work? Of course, of course, of course, of course it will. Because it'll keep the English happy, won't it? Well, it might not keep the French happy. Well, who cares? We can't, we can't employ someone that just wants to keep their own race happy. We what? need someone that's going to keep everybody happy. Oh, is that is that right? Yeah. Oh, right. It seems very strange to me. Right, no, does it seem strange? Oh, well, it does really, yes. Yeah? How but, come? Uh, I... How come? Well, it just does. Uh, Why? Do you think that if you come, if you're English and you come to work in Disney, that uh, you just take care of the English? Well, of course. Right, so when would you like me to start then, my beautiful? <laughs> Okay, what I'll do is I'll take your name. Right. Okay, just hold on a second, I'm going to get a paper. Right, very good. I've got the paper. Right, you ready? I'm ready. I'm listening. Oh, right, it's Phil. Phil, yeah. My Pockets. Phil? My Pockets is my second name. One minute, one minute. How can I help you? Cinderella, please. Cinderella? Is this a dress agency? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's a private number. Uh, all one word, Cinderella, yes. Could that be listed under a different surname? I'm not getting any match for Cinderella. Uh, you could try the Ugly Sisters. Die Rezeption Grünberger, was kann ich für Sie tun? Uh, Merry Christmas! Yeah. Yeah. And uh, your name is? Grünberger. Grunschberg, did you say? Grünberger. Oh, uh, hamburger, right. Uh, and <laughs> my name is Steve. Yeah. And I'm calling from Manchester, England. Yeah. And I'm just calling to wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> hey! So fantastic. Isn't that lovely? Yes. Uh, this is our 12 calls of Christmas hamburger, and um, we're just, you know, calling around the world to wish people a, a Merry Christmas. Okay. Because it's, you know, it's the season to be jolly, isn't it? Okay. And uh, what will you be doing for Christmas hamburger? Um, so it's not hamburger. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, it's the same like Green Hill, but in, in German. Uh, Green Hill, it's Grünberger. A uh, Grünberger? Yes. Ah, right. So what will you be doing for Christmas? Working. Uh, working. That's it. Right. Well, listen. I'd be very happy if you could if you could wish uh, everybody in Manchester, England, a happy Christmas in German. Would that be possible? Okay. So right now. Uh, if you can. Okay. So that's schöne Weihnachten. It's Merry Christmas. Oh, that's lovely. Well, if you could, you know, wish the people in Manchester, England, uh, a very Merry Christmas, that would be lovely. So, uh, ich wünsche allen Menschen in Manchester eine schöne Weihnacht. That's Yay! it. That's lovely. Okay. Well, it's been lovely to speak to you, and I hope you and your family have a very Merry Christmas hamburger. Oh, no, not hamburger. Uh, uh, yes? It's, it's Grünberger. Grünberger. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. So be happy. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello? 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 Big Al, in which town, please? Uh, Shaw. Shaw in Oldham? Yes, please, thank you. What type of business is it, please? Uh, yeah, he's uh, a debt collector. I have a list called Big Al's in Wirral, however, it doesn't say what type of business. Yes, it might be listed under Knucklehead, if you want to uh, have Knucklehead. a Knucklehead. Knucklehead, yes. Moment, please. And this is in Shaw as well? It is, yes. Thank you. 
No, nothing called Knucklehead. I do apologise. Right. Um, it might be listed under Knee Breaker. Knee Breaker, thank you. Yes. I tried searching in a wider area for you, but there's no listing as well for Knee Breaker. Nothing for Knee Breaker. Um, yes. could you try Flat Nose? Flat Nose? Flat Nose, yes. Yes, nothing, um... It's not, it's not coming up at all? Nothing. Hmm. Okay, you could look under one final one, perhaps under Scary Man. Scary Man, thank Scary you. Scary Man. <laughs> yes, um, let me try to return my supervisor for further assistance. One moment, please. Oh, supervisor, lovely. How can I help you? Um, uh, gangster, please. Gangster? Gangster, yes. <laughs> yes, which town? Uh, Shaw, sure, Oldham. Oldham, sure. Yes. What's your address in Shaw? Uh, I've not got the address. Uh, oh, it might be listed under Bruiser. Have a look under Bruiser. <laughs> Can you repeat the name, please? Yeah, Bruiser. What type of company is this? Uh, he's a debt collector. And part-time hitman. Hello? Get in, it's me. Hiya. Hey, that tire place has just phoned me. What for? Paying me on to 85 quid. For what? For some tires about the ampage. How have they got my number? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they bung me and said we want 85 quid. Oh, no, you... we don't. Well, have you given my number? No. Well, that's what they said. Yeah. Well, you've heard it all. I have. Oh, that's not what they're saying. Well, we're 85 paid for what? Well, you've been back at all how many times, haven't we? It's got it on the receipt paid in full. I know, but you've been back three times, haven't we, for some more tiles, and you say we owe 85 quid. What, did for them three? That? Did you pay that, that last time? Yes. Have you got receipt? Oh, God, I don't know, John. Have they got my number? Have, you, have they rung you and given, you given my number? How could I give them that when they're on my mobile phone? I don't even know what it is, John. Oh, what's happened? And who were it that's bought for you? That Neil. What did he say? Says we owe 85 quid. You've been in, took some tiles and not paid. Which tiles? Not know. How many? Not a clue. He just said you owe 85 quid. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't even know where they've got your phone number from. Did you give them your phone number on that day? I haven't given them phone number. You must be giving it up. They've rung you and you've given my number, they said. They've I've... rung me? Yeah. They have not. Well, that's what they're saying. Because they have not f***ing rang. They have not f***ing rang me at all. No, they've just said that. I've got no money paid. I've got, I've got no money to pay 85 quid with. I'm not paying it anyway. But you should have paid it. What do you know I should have paid it, you f***ing up it? Well, you should have f***ing paid it. You've I have paid it anyway, so and... don't even... What? You've been in the two times and, pay, and obviously I'm paid it. I have? Stop the tails. But we haven't. Why would I do that? They won't let you take them. Why did they have to confirm my number then? No, well, you better ring them up after. I won't be ringing them up. I'll be going up. I'll go up then, I'm sorry. I'll be doing. I'm trying to find that receipt now, sure. I've got it, it's here. See, paid in full and Muppet. Who's a Muppet? Who's that? <laughs> Is that Karen? Yeah. Karen, it's Steve Pink. John. <laughs> you dumped. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to absolutely bang you. I've got it here as well. <laughs> oh, you said you'd do. Right. <gasps> I can't believe you've done that. Do you know, that was uh, the, the words he didn't really want to hear. John, you dumped. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'd dump him if he ever did that to me. <laughs> oh, really? Is that, is that what you said to him? <laughs> yeah. So, um, Karen, the wedding is still on for next August, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, get those uh, those tiles paid for, you silly woman. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> God, you rat bag! <laughs> Can't oh. believe you've done that to me. I've gone bright red. <laughs> nice one, Doddy. I'll get you back. 97 FM. Um, hello, is that, um, that's what Plymouth sound, is it? Yeah. Hello, um, who's the DJ on the air right now? Um, she's called Danny, you're speaking to her. Oh, hello there, hello. listen, we're listening, um, it's Robbie Williams, I'm in my tour bus. <laughs> right. And we just had you on, on the air, and Frank's the tour manager betters that I couldn't phone up and get on the air and right. see if you could play one of my songs. I can indeed. Can you? Yeah. Which ones have you got on mine? 
We've got kids. She's the one. Let me entertain you. Supreme rock DJ Millennium. It's only us. Freedom. Lazy Days. Strong. Old Before I Die. Angel. That's a mate. That's nearly all of them, that. Ah, not quite. That's great. Which uh, one do you want? Uh, Millennium. All right. I've not heard that for a bit. Uh, right now, I can imagine. I know. <laughs> Whereabouts are you? Do you know, I've got absolutely no idea. I'm just, um, I'm just on me, t- you know, in the bus. On the tour bus. And Frank C uh, said, uh, phone him up, and he got the number. Right, OK. Are you in Plymouth, yeah? We are. Fab. We are. We're not, like, gigging or anything, no. but, um, you know, we're just... Just, just cruising around the hoe and the barbican. Yeah? Yeah, I do. <laughs> All right, then. What's, so you're Danny, are you? How old are you? I'm 26. <laughs> 26? What do you look like? Go on, I'm getting an image in my mind, so I want to know whether it's right. <laughs> oh, what a mucky laugh. Do you look like Jerry? Jerry Halliwell. Yeah. Nothing like her. Nothing like no, her? No, no. Probably about the same height, but that's better... Oh, that's all right then. Yeah. Right, gotta go now. I've got to do a link. All right. All right. Um, are you going to put us on the air then? No. Oh, go on. Let no. me say a quick hello on the air. No. Your, uh, your song's coming up next. All right. Well, thanks for having a word with all us. All right. No problem. All right, love. All right. Hang on. I've got eight seconds. All right, love. Today's best mate, 97 FM, Plymouth Sound. The weirdest, bizarre phone call is going on as I speak. I'll tell you about that in a minute. If you'd like to get your request on the radio, give us a call and uh, tell you about this phone call I've just had uh, from Robbie Williams, apparently. Uh, one seems to know how many Robbie Williams tunes we had uh, on the playlist. And uh, he requested to hear Millennium. And I uh, have to say hi to Frank C, who's also the tour manager on the tour bus, currently cruising around Plymouth. So uh, this one is also for you guys. Hello. All right, hey, thanks, babe. That's all right. Thanks, love. <laughs> all right. All right, then, bye. All right, have a good show. I will do. All right, thanks, love. Bye. Tra. Good morning, Miramar. This is Jim. How am I direct your call? Hello, is that the hotel? Yes, sir. Oh, I was hoping you could give me some information. I'm hoping to come and stay at your hotel uh, later this week, but I just wondered what the hotel's like. Well, we have a pool and jacuzzi in the central courtyard. Is it warm? The weather right here, right right now, is very warm. Yeah, I mean, is, is the hotel warm? Because I've stayed in a few hotels that uh, that were very cold, you know. Oh, no, no, this is, this is warm. As warm as you'd like it to be, we have a thermostat in each room. In fact, there was one hotel I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I hear you. So what other facilities do you have then? A swimming pool. Nice. Uh, we got a jacuzzi. Oh, it sounds like heaven. And yeah, we got a health center that opens at 6 a.m. Oh, I think I want to run to you. I think the last time I was in America must have been, uh, oh, the summer of 69. Were you working there then? Oh, no, no. That's almost like uh, before I was born. Oh, please <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> you don't uh, you don't have uh, hard pillows in the room, do you? Well, we have two different kinds. We got the, uh, the down pillows or yep. feather pillows. And we also have the uh, surgical pillows, or the, what we call the foam pillows. It's just I've stayed at uh, a lot of hotels, and the pillows in the room are always rock hard. You know, I can't oh, sleep. Oh, gosh, that's so fun. Now, the maid won't just walk in, will she, without knocking, because I do like to sleep uh, on oh, top no, of the no. bed naked, and I've had some very bad experiences over the years. Our policy is they have to knock, and in fact, uh, we also have a do not disturb door hang. Yeah, but they do tend to ignore those, don't they? Well, no, not here. Right. Absolutely not. Because I do okay. like privacy, you know. Oh, yeah. Now, would it be possible to have a security guard on the door so it doesn't happen? That's on, a, on an individual basis. Mm-hmm. So. Did I mention that uh, I am a professional musician? Because I play with an English rock band, so obviously I'll be bringing my, my drum kit with me. Oh, and, what's the uh, name of the band? Well, it's a very famous band uh, in England. I'm sure you've heard of us. Uh, the band is called Steve Pank is a Maniac. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're a big band in, uh, in in the UK, so it's obviously, you know, I'll need to practice in the room. That won't be a problem, will it? Well, if it's a- after 11 p.m., that could be. Unless you uh, rent a bungalow, which is located on the ground level. And I could play the drums all night then, could I? It would be much more difficult to disturb anybody uh, if you rent the bungalows. Yeah. The problem with me is I still think I'm 18. I'll tell you, I'll be 18 yeah. till I die. I, I really oh, will. cool. Have you got uh, many of my CDs in your collection? Uh, I'm sorry, I've... I just have, I just stopped following music for for a while. What's your favourite song of ours? Because uh, I think we've had a few uh, few hits in the states uh, with my little stick of Blackpool Rock. Do you remember that one? In fact, I really haven't followed any new groups like in the last ten years. Boiled That's beef definitely. and carrots. Boiled beef and <laughs> carrots. You must have heard that one. That's, that was a big hit for us. So listen, Irene, I really care about my fans because uh, everything I do, I do it for you. So I'll bring some CDs over, and uh, you know when I arrive, and you can have a listen to us. Oh, cool. My name's Jim, by the way, Jim, the hotel. Operator. Well, listen, Jim, I want you to be really honest. Have you ever really loved a woman? 
Uh, yeah, it's kind of a tough question for me to answer right now. Yeah. But, uh, sir, um, I've got to uh, move on. So i got some other callers here. Well, I've got to say, Jim, you give good phone. Uh, okay. You come down anytime. See you, Chief. <laughs> Race Hello, is that Ascot Racecourse? It is. Well, I was going to turn up next week to see one of the races, probably the 345. Um, I was wondering, shall I go through the main gate, along the driveway, past the steward's enclosure, then alongside the lawn, behind the kitchens, just in front of the dustbins, along the next side road, and along the side there, into the car park? Yes, it's the main car park now, and parking there in the space next to the bottle bank. Or... Um, do you think I should uh, go along Poland Street, left into Festive Road, all the way up to the roundabout, along the A583, through Westby with Plumptons, into the dual carriageway, into the NCP, pay my £3.80 and park there instead? Uh, it's entirely up to you, sir. How long is it exactly you've had no personality whatsoever? <laughs> if you don't mind me asking. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> one minute, one minute. How can I help you? Uh, Winnie, please. I'm sorry? Uh, Winnie? Is this a business? Uh, no, it's a private number, please. How do you spell the surname, please? Uh, T-H-E... P-O-O-H. Which town, please? A uh, hundred acre woods. <phone rings> Nothing for Winnie the Pooh, then. Good morning from P103. Good morning. Good morning to you. Hello? Mrs. Flynn, it should be. Yeah. Uh, Neil Clark, Engineering, British Telecom. Yeah. Uh, you've just recently got your phone, is that right, love? Yeah. Right. Uh, how long have you had it now? A uh, week tomorrow. Right, we're just uh, trying, just calling you just to try out for the logistic compression factors. Uh, you know, what the solidified readings are. Yeah. We just need to try a few things. Have you got a few minutes that you can spare for us? Yeah. Just so we can test the line. Uh, Is there any chance you could just whistle down it so we can get a reading on it? <whistles> yes, a bit longer if you can. Do you get that, John? No, just a bit longer if you can. No. I can't. Oh, I you know, you, you can't you whistle. Right, do you get that, John? Yeah, you got that. That's, that's, that's terrific. Right, could you do me a little favour now? Um, could you put the phone down and go to the other side of the room and just shout for us? Uh, yeah. And we'll see what sort of reading we get there. So just put the phone down. Hello? Yes, we got that. That's, that's <laughs> great. That, that reading was fine. Right, okay. I just need you just to shout down it now as loud as you possibly can, just so we can get the distortion level on it. Not quite yet, though, because I don't think John's ready. But, you ready, John? Yeah. Right, okay, when you're ready, Mrs. Flynn. Can we have to shout? Uh, yes, as, as loud as you possibly can, yes. Okay, when you're ready. I don't know what the real death. Yeah, well, I know, I know, but, um, uh, you know, we have to do this when you get a new phone in, you see, otherwise you could have problems with it. Yeah. Uh, in your own time, then. Uh, I don't know what to shout. Well, just shout, just shout, hello, as loud as you possibly oh, can. Okay. All right. Oh! No, I mean, really let yourself go if you can, Mrs. Flynn. I as, did. Uh, uh, no, as loud as you can, oh. as loud as you possibly can. Oh. Okay. Oh! And can you make it last uh, a couple more seconds longer? You know, sort of spread the, the spread the hello if you can. Oh, yeah. All right, as long as you can. Hello! Oh. Just a bit longer, about five seconds if you can. Go. Uh, oh, all right, John. Yeah, when you're ready, Mrs. Flynn. Oh! That's great, that. Yes, I think we've got all, all the stuff that we need there. Uh, just before we go, it may sound a bit strange, but uh, we need some unusual sounds. Could you do some chicken noises for us? <laughs> uh, just before. Joke. No, it's not a joke. Just before we go, if you could just do a few for us. Boop, boop, boop. Could you just do a few now? Alright. Okay, when, when you're ready, love. <laughs> um. Boop, 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 boop. Right, did you get that, John? Oh, that was terrible. Yeah, could you do it? Could you do it again, Mrs. Flynn? Just one more time for us. Right. Uh, do you feel foolish at all? I do. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, yeah. Your, your friend Becky said that she probably would. Oh, you what? Who's this? Because Becky's written to me. You see. 
to tell me all about your new phone. Written to her? This is Steve Pink from Key 103. Oh, <laughs> I don't believe it. You're lying. How are you, Sue? <laughs> I don't believe it. I'm going to kill her. Our good friend Sue Flynn has just had a phone fitted, Steve. Give oh, her it's a... been on the air, hasn't it? Give her a call. Yeah, you're live on the air. Oh, right now, my Steve. God! <laughs> I feel alright, innit? <laughs> Could you make some more chicken noises for me, Sue? <laughs> I feel a nit. Sue, you are so fabulous. <laughs> I'm gonna slatter. her. Could you do some monkey noises just before we no, go? No, I bloody won't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it's gonna happen to me. Hey, Sue, you had no idea at all, I did didn't, you? no. I thought, I mean, cos I phoned British Telecom up this morning about <laughs> my beer. Thank you very much, Sue. Oh, I'm gonna kill her. ありがとうございます。ご飯のグランドインターコンセンタルホテルにございます。え、ごめんなさい。てれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれて
Yeah. Hello there, it's uh, William Haig. Yeah. Just thought I'd, you know, just phone it for a chat. Say hello, see how you're getting on, that sort of thing. <laughs> it's quite a good imitation. Well, that's, uh, you know, it's, um, I mean, we do get quite a lot of imposters calling our central office, so I can understand what the lady was saying when uh, she was explaining that you get quite a few yourself. So, uh, just thought we'd find out, you know, how it is, how you're keeping, everything okay. I'm just trying to work out who it is, really. <laughs> Well, of course, it's... Uh, it's you know, very well to get through the network, anyway. I tell you, that's, uh, you, 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 must have, you must have taken them in very well on the switchboard. Well, no, all it was, I mean, I was talking to, um, you know, John Prescott the other day, and um, he said that you wanted, you know that uh, share exercise video that, uh, that you were interested in having? <laughs> Well, it's just that, uh, you know, we went to the, uh, you know, the car boot sale, me and Fionn, around the corner, and we, we've managed to find it. And so um, we've got that copy, and perhaps I can, you know, let you have it in the Commons later today. Well, I think it would be very helpful just hand it over at Prime Minister's questions. That well, I think that would be very good. Perhaps the two of us... A better exchange than usual. <laughs> well, I think so. Maybe the two of us, we could, you know, stand in front of, you know, Madam Speaker and do the work out together. Oop, I think he's gone. Was the Prime Minister not aware at any time that this wonderful tribute and greeting was coming from the Steve Pink Show at 95.8 Capital FM? Will the right honourable gentleman tell us that? Hello, Thomas Theatres. Hello, is that the London Palladium? Yes, it is. All right, is Richard Walls there, please? Richard Walls? Uh, please. Right, this is just a box office at the London Palladium. Oh, I so see. Well, have you got a number for that? Is Karen Walls there, then, please? I've got really no idea who, who you mean, I, unless you can tell me who they work for or something. I'm not going to be able to help you, I'm afraid. Uh, are there any walls there? No, there isn't. No. So what are you telling, what are you telling me is that there are no walls at all at the London Palladium? <laughs> No walls at all. Well, you better get out then before the ceiling collapses. Oh, <laughs> absolutely hysterical. Thank you very much indeed. Who's that? Who's it? It's Penky from Capital FM. No, it's not. <laughs> That's you? very poor indeed. Uh, it's very really. poor, isn't it? I know, it's, uh, it's terrible. I'm losing Normally, it. Normally, you're quite funny, no, I always think. I'm losing the plot completely, to be honest with you, these days. Walls? Well, blame a guy called Frank Palmer. Frank Palmer. Yeah, because he's the guy who emailed me and said you should try this on a phone call. Frank Palmer rings no bells. On no, the no, no, he's just a listener. I didn't expect you to know him. All oh, right. He says just call somewhere, Panky. Ask if there's any walls there, and if there's no walls, deliver that fantastic punchline. It's going to make me laugh for years to come. <laughs> yeah, do you think it, it, I qualify for my own spot now at the London Palladium? Well, I think you know we could try and sort something out for you. I mean, yeah. we'd have to sort of like maybe work on some material for you. Well, you and I could be like a double act, couldn't we? We could be, yeah. You know, I, you could be the straight person, then I could deliver that punchline at the end, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've always thought of myself as quite a straight person. And, and you are, by the way, what, what's your name? My name's Keely. All right, Keely, let's, let's just do it one, one more time and very quickly we'll fly through this. Here we go, Keely. Right. Uh, hello, is Richard Walls there, please? He isn't, I'm afraid. Well, is Karen Walls there, then, please? She isn't here, no. Are there any walls there, then? There isn't, no. So what are you telling me? There are no walls at the London Palladium. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not finished yet. I'm, I'm sorry. Not, I'm not. I thought that was it. Wait for the punchline, right. Kayleigh. So There are no walls here, no. Right. Well, you better get out then before the ceiling collapses. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. Keely got to go. All right then. Got to play some more music and destroy my career. Okay then. Bye, Keely. Bye. Bye. Hello? Hello? Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, great. Uh, is that the rental place? The rental place? Yes. In Boring? In where, sorry? What are you asking about? Is that the, the rental place? Are you looking to rent? Yes, I am, yes. Okay, and you're looking in Boring? In where, sorry? In Boring, Oregon? Yes, is, and is that where you are? Uh, not right at this moment, but this is the right number. Right, well, you're boring me so far, so I must be the right place. <laughs> so, uh, what, where, where do we take it from here, then? No. Uh, hold on, let me... Okay, then. Hello? Yes, hello? Yes. Yes, is that boring? Pardon me? Is that boring? Boring Oregon? 
yes, what about boring? That's right. Uh, okay, so where do we take it from here then? This is the rental place, is it? Well, are, are you calling on an apartment? Uh, no, not, not, not as such, really, no. I, I just thought this was the rental place. I'm looking to rent somewhere. To rent commercial or, um, uh, living space? Uh, either, really. It doesn't really matter. I just need some property. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure. How did you get this number? I've definitely got the right place. This is definitely boring. Well, you're certainly boring the hell out of me, so uh, thank you very much. Likewise. Thank you. Bye bye. Disneyland information. This is Rebecca. Hello, is that Disneyland? Yes, it is. I wonder if you can help me. I'll try. What time do you close? Today, we're open from 10 a.m. till 8 p.m. Right, and where exactly are you? I'm in Disneyland right now. Yes, where is that exactly? In Anaheim, California. Right, and what time do you close? 8 o'clock. Now, what's the best way to get there? Well, I'm not sure. There's a lot of construction going on, and we're about 35 miles from Los Angeles. Is there much for the kids to do? Oh, there's lots for the kids. Right, I know, I've never been before, you see, so, uh, so I'm just working out if I can get there in time. What time do you close? We close at... Eight o'clock tonight. Right. And do you sell food inside the park? Yes, we do. Right. And you close at? Eight o'clock. Right. So I should have enough time to get there. How much is it? Forty-one dollars for an adult. Yes, I'm just calling them, love. Hang on a moment. It's just the wife asking if I'm calling you. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, what time do you close? We close at 8 o'clock tonight. Right. 8 o'clock, love. So <laughs> what, what time do you open in the morning? <laughs> Today we're open at 10 in the morning. And you close at? 8 o'clock this evening. So what, uh, what time's the last admission? Today would be 7.30 at night. And you so close at what time? At 8 o'clock. Right. Is there anywhere to park? Of course. So when you, when you take the freeways... Remember, you take the you can, park, you can park on the freeways, can you? That's great. No, not so, on the freeway, you, uh, but you park in the parking lot. Right. You don't okay. park on the freeway. And do you have guided tours? Yes, we do. Right. Well, listen, you've been very, very helpful. Thank you very much. You've been very kind. Okay, you're welcome. And that's covered everything. Uh, did I ask what time you close? 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock tonight. We close at 8. Would you like to check? Would you like to phone a friend? <laughs> Did you have any questions more about Disneyland? Um... Is that your final answer? <laughs> hey, comedy genius you are. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've got any more questions apart from what time did you close? Eight o'clock. Well, thank you very much indeed. Okay. Have a lovely day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Morning, Hello, can I have the news desk, please? One moment, please. Thank you. Okay. Oh, hello. I've got a story to uh, give you. Yeah. Um, do you get money for it? Um, well, it depends on what it is. Um, right, perhaps I can give you the details then. Um, my name's Dick Hickory at the dock. Um, just to let you know that there was one or two small mechanical problems. Yeah. Uh, when the mouse actually ran up the clock... So, what's this all about? Um, well, what happened next was that the, the clock struck one, um, <laughs> causing the mouse to actually run down again. <laughs> and uh, my name's Dick Hickory at the dock. Yes, that's, that's very kind of you to let us know about that. Thank you. I'd, I'd get to the scene pretty quick if I was here. <laughs> yeah, I'll be <laughs> Bye. All right, how much do I get for that? <laughs> Nothing, I'm afraid. Thank you. <laughs> okay, bye. Hello? I'm a looking for a job. You're looking for a job? Mmm, for something to do. Come down and pick up an application for me, you know. What'll be me working hard? Well, you'll be working on all stations, including you'll be, you'll all be cooking, serving up burgers. Cooking? Serving up burgers. Burgers? Yeah, the lot. No, no, what about, what about my salary? Your salary, well, it depends. It, it, over 18, your salary's higher, obviously. Uh, manage, management opportunities are high. I've only been here three months and I'm a manager, so mm. pretty easy to pick it up. Mm, you must be pretty good to become a manager so quickly. Yeah, not bad. Mm, it's the love of love. Mm. Now, how many weeks off am I gonna get? How many weeks off? Well, you can, you can, 
pretty flexible so when you need time off you just book it in advance right mm. book it a week in advance and then you can mm. just have it off like that because it's when I do me touring yeah. I've got to have my time off to do my gigs yeah that's right so you the manager in the place well there's two managers in the place at the moment mm. you're going to pop down and get an application then well yeah you know do you want to take down my name hold on I'll just get a bit of paper take down my name for my application firm Go on then, I've got, got a bit of paper, go on. Mr. Yep. L. Yep. Lover. Mr. L. Lover. Mr. Lover, Lover. I've got that name, you're going to pop down for an application for me? Mmm, I sure am. No. Oh, yeah. Are you going to put a word in? Not so, because you got to take me on. Yeah, probably. I'll be the best staff member that you've ever had now. Oh, yeah? Well, I want a big office and a lot of time off and a big, large, motor-driven by Frank Buff. Sort me out me pension for when I'm 63 and a pretty secretary in a cupboard with me. I'm telling you, this yeah. is shaggy. Can you try and sort that out for us, then? <laughs> Get it sorted out, Chief. Gonna sort it out now. I'll do the doom ban run. Hello? Yes, your name is? Just a moment, okay? Right. Hello there? Hello. Are you somebody are you somebody else now? Yes. Your name is? Susanna. Susanna. How are you, Susanna? Fine, and you? I am very well indeed. Uh, nice to speak to you. <laughs> I, I was hoping to come and stay at your lovely hotel. Mm-hmm. If that's possible. Uh when? Is is uh, is Gwenita still working there? Gwenita? Yes, is she still working there? No. Oh, dear. Uh, well, last time I came she was there, uh, so, so she's not there anymore? No. She had a face like a bag of screaming weasels. No. Oh, right, so she's not there anymore? Uh, no. Great shame, really is. So, um, can you sort me out then? I don't know. Probably for next week, I need a room for next week. Yes. Um, give me the name of the client. Uh, the name of the client is Paul Lockett. Do you need a single room? A single room, yes. For when? Um, Saturday. Saturday, okay. You call me from a company, it's a, um, a private? It's, it's a private, yes. Okay. For so I'll be arriving Saturday? Saturday 22nd? If you say so. No, um, 15th. 15th for one night? Yes, guess again. Yeah, 15th. For one night? Just the one, Mrs. Wembley. Okay. Right, so, um, can, can I ask you a question? Yes. Have you got rid of the flea problem? Yes. Because last time I stayed there, uh, terrible fleas in the hotel. Uh, I was itching for weeks, I was. Hmm. Uh, have you managed to sort that out? Uh, yes. It has? Yes. Uh, what's the first thing you scratch in the morning? Can you repeat again? What's the first thing you scratch in the morning? The first uh, scratch? Yes. Uh, what do you mean? Sorry. It's a perfectly reasonable question. You know, you know, when you wake up in the morning... Yes? What's the first thing you scratch in the morning? Scratch? Yes. Mum, you're not going to believe this, honestly. What? Right, you know, like I said, I was going out on site today at work. Yeah? Right, well, I was carrying a monitor and I tripped over the doorstop and I dropped it downstairs. Yeah? Right, well, work has said I've got to pay for a new one by tomorrow and the, the 520 quid. Well, we ain't got 520 quid. Mum, but I lose my job if I don't pay you by tomorrow. Yeah, I ain't mean, got it. I ain't got it. Mum, but I need it. Well, what, what, what do you want me to do? I can't get all the money like that. Well, Mum, I'll lose my job if I don't get it. Well, Leanne, there's nothing I can do. I'm sorry, I haven't got 520 quid. Well, I thought Mum for mental health people when there was, like, this Mum, I need the money. Leanne, who am I going to get that money off? Who? I don't know. Who? Well, if you, if you can think of somebody, I'll ask him. But I'm telling you now, I haven't got that money. I'll tell you exactly how much I've got, 150 quid. That's exactly how much I've got. Well, go sell, you, sell yourself for all I care. Mum, I need the money. You cheeky <laughs> Mum, I really... Mum, I'm going to lose my job. I need it by tomorrow. <laughs> I think she's put the phone down. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> hang on, hang on, let's call her back. Hi, sorry I can't take your call right now. <laughs> I just leave your name, number and message. Oh, God, she's put your answering machine now. Uh, okay, I'll call her again. Hi, sorry I can't take your oh, call right now. Alright, okay, hang on. I'm really sorry. I'm don't give a shit. You talk to me like that. After everything I did to you, I will pack your stuff and f without him. F talking to me like that, you cheeky. Mum. Mum. Oh, dear, dear. Mum. <laughs> no, she's gone again. We need to defuse this one, Leanne. My oh, gosh, she's kicking you out of the house. Oh, no. <laughs> God, a minute, you'll be homeless. Hi, sorry I can't you. Living... <laughs> I could leave your name on the... Hang on, hang on, hang on. You'll be living with me tonight at this rate. Hang on. <laughs> Hi, sorry I can't take your call right now. But if you could leave your name number and message. Hi, sorry I can't take your call right now. Hang on, she's not picking up the phone here. <laughs> If you just joined us, uh, this is Mummy Dearest, uh, part three now. Leanne Watson winding up her mum, Tina Watson. Uh, Tina put the phone down on Leanne, uh, now refuses to pick up the phone. Uh, so Leanne is, has had to leave work, uh, with her boss's blessing, uh, to get a taxi home. Uh, your home is five minutes away, isn't it, Leanne? Yeah, by taxi. All right, hang on, we'll try one more time, hang on. What? Is that Tina? It is. Tina Watson? Yeah. Tina, uh, I've got some news for you. What? Uh, <laughs> Leanne was winding you up. Leanne, tell her to your mum. I am all, I'm in my taxi on my way all now, don't kick me out. <laughs> I've got, I'm gonna lock up. Tina, she was so frightened you were gonna kick her out of the house. <laughs> She's actually- I've lost work now, I'm in a taxi coming home. <laughs> She's actually in a taxi coming home to see you. <laughs> I'm gonna kill her. <laughs> In fact, I'm going home now to pack a bag and kick it out for winding me up in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tina, I've got to say you were sensational, Tina. You know, we've been trying to call you back and the, the, the phone's been uh, been turned off. Oh, yeah. So, uh, have you got any, I mean, any loving words now you want to say to Leanne? Yeah, I'm going to love her when she gets home. <laughs> In fact, I'm ordering a taxi to put a bin bag thing. <laughs> hey, uh, Tina, we've got some other news for you. Go on. Uh, the other news is, uh, Leanne hasn't got any money, so she needs you to pay for the taxi when she gets home. <laughs> I'm not even in, I'm walking the dog's <laughs> <laughs> She can go and sell herself for all I care. Hang on, you're not at home. No. Oh, Where God. are you? Blind. I'm, I'm out with the dog. I'm in the middle of the park, screaming my head off at you, and everybody's looking at me as I'm a weirdo. <laughs> hang, hang on, Tina. I, I've, I've got a picture of this in my mind now. So you're in the middle of the park shouting at yourself because you're so angry with Leanne. No, I'm shouting at my phone, shouting at her down the phone. <laughs> and everybody's looking at me as I'm walked, and the oh, dog's just running off. Tina, you are wonderful. I'm uh, going to kill her. Listen, could, is there any chance you can walk home now with the dog because Leanne needs some money for this taxi? <laughs> Sell herself? Yeah, she told me to sell myself. She can go and sell herself oh, now, can't she? Heavens <laughs> above. Right, Leanne, what you need to do then is you need now to turn the taxi around and go back to work and get the money off your boss. <laughs> nah, I'll be home in a minute. Yeah, but, you, right. yeah, but your mum's not- Yeah, but your mum's not there. Are you gonna pay for the taxi? No, the park's only across the road from where I live. I'm gonna go home now and kill her. Sweetheart, oh. I, I can't come see you in two weeks' time. Why? Oh, I, I don't know. I've, I don't know what I'm, I'm doing. What I'm going to do. I've, uh, I've crashed the car. What? I've crashed the car. It's a right mess. I don't know how, how I got out of it. Uh, and I don't know what I'm going to do. I, you know, I have to come back try for train or something, but I, I don't know what else to do. Speak to me. Speak to me. I can't. What do you mean you can't? I've crashed the car. No, I'm in hospital right now. <laughs> 
Speak to me, sweetheart. I can't, I can't, uh... Richard, you're winding up, aren't you? Yes. Of course he's winding you up. <gasps> <laughs> it's nice that she's so concerned. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Oh, God almighty. <laughs> I know you're winding up. Yeah, hello, love. I'm dying. I'm dying. Oh, hang on. I'm just watching Trisha. I'll call you back in five minutes. Rich? Yes? I'm not stupid. I'd think of the f***ing day out. Sweet talking woman. Sure. <laughs> you're not funny. Good heavens what? above. That is not funny. No, no, yeah, absolutely. Well, actually, no, it is funny. No, um, it isn't. It's just that you aren't funny. No, it's uh, well, stop swearing now. What's up with you? That is not funny, Auditon. No, call him Mr. Auditon, if you don't mind. No. Anyway, Rona, nice to speak to you. Nice that you were so concerned about the love of your life. <laughs> Heavens above. Nah, nah. Oh, hang on, she's gone. Wasn't it lovely that she was so con <laughs> concerned for your health? <laughs> Right, Richard, well, uh, good luck with the rest of your relationship. Okay. Have you got a message for Rona? Yeah, I love her very much, and she'll probably kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she probably will. Yeah. One minute. One minute. How can I help you? Friar Tuck, please. In which town, please? Sherwood Forest. Sherwood Forest. Please. Can you spell the name of the business, please? Oh, the name of the business? Yes. Uh, M-E-R-R-Y. <laughs> yes. Uh, M-E-N. Merry Men. That's... <laughs> in Sherwood Forest, did you say? Please, thank you. You know what type of business this is? Uh, financial. I'm sorry, there's no listing for Merry Men in Sherwood Forest. Could this be listed under a different name? You could look under Maid Marion. Maid Marion? Please, thank you. One moment. I'm sorry, what I have is the number for Maid Marion Restaurant in Edwinstow. No, I don't think she runs a, a, a restaurant. Um, you could look under Little John. I'm sorry, there's no listing for Little John in Sherwood Forest as well. Nothing, no. Okay, you've been so helpful, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Anything uh, else I can help you with? Uh, have you looked under Robin Hood while I'm here? I'm sorry, there's no listing. No. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello? Hi, who's this? This is Javon. Javon? Yes, hello. Oh, yes, it's a terrible line, this end. I'm very sorry. Uh, I'm calling from Great Britain. Is that the real estate place? Yes. Oh, great. Well, uh, can you help me? Because uh, we're going to move the, the family over very soon, and I don't know the area very well, and, and I wonder if you can help me. Okay, yes, I can. Thank you very much indeed. Great. Wh what area are you uh, looking to move into? Well, in particular, uh, disco. What was that? Sorry? <laughs> Hold on one second, okay? Great, thank you very much. Hello? Yes, hello? You want to be ne located next to a disco? No, 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 in the place, uh, Disco, Michigan. There is no Disco, Michigan. Uh, Disco, Shelby Town, Michigan. Do you remember when it first Okay. I mean, you must know what I'm talking about, surely. No, surely, I don't. Oh, all right, well, you work in the area, don't you? Uh, yeah, but not the disco, Michigan. Well, I'm sorry, did you say disco? Don't rock the boat, baby. Rock the boat. I don't take the boat, boat. Rock the boat. I don't rock the boat, baby. Rock the boat. <laughs> <Chapons>. <laughs> right, so what can you fix me up with, then? What can I fix you up with? Yes. Um, what's your price range? Well, we're looking to spend, uh, probably, uh, up to $250,000. Uh, but it has okay. to, it has to be in disco. Oh, what a night! So, what have you got there? Let me get your name and number. Well, you're not much help, are you? Let me get your name and number. I can give you a call right back. How about that? What? <laughs> Hey, you're in, are you, are you sure you're not in disco yourself? 
Oh yeah, yeah, I am. Disco. Oh. You said you said disco. I said disco. 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 Hey. Disco. That's what I'm talking about. Don't rock the boat, baby. Rock the boat. I don't take the boat. Don't rock. Now you understand what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Yeah, great. Anyway, listen. I've got to go. You sound like you're having a great time down there. <laughs> See you, Chief. All right, man. Ta-da. Thank you for calling Ross Morgan and Company. Please stand the line for assistance, or from your touchtone phone, you may enter an extension or zero for the operator at any time. Good afternoon, perfect. I was told you were the people to call. Okay. I'm looking for a property. If uh, if uh, if you can help me. Okay. What are you looking for? Well, I'm uh, you know I'm not that familiar with the area. We've just moved in from London, England. Um, so you know I'm just looking for something that's is spacious, you know, clean, light, and overlooking the bins. Overlooking what? Uh, the bins, if that's possible. Uh, is, is there anything that, you know, I mean, price isn't a problem. Is there anything that, that immediately springs to mind? Any good good areas that I should move into? Burbank, let's see. Burbank. Oh, one bedroom in Burbank. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for probably a couple of bedrooms. Oh, okay. But Burbank sounds nice. I mean, if, you know, if you're recommending that, you know, that sounds lovely. Yeah, Burbank is nice. The only thing, I only have one. <laughs> one bedroom available in Burbank. Just the one, yeah. Is it near a sewage farm? Pardon me? Is it near a sewage farm? No. Right, okay. And, uh, is the, you know, hopefully, it's, you know, is it, is it near one of those big power pylons? No, it's only a triplex. Right. Only a three unit building. Okay, well, it sounds wonderful. It sounds, uh, how, how much is that? Uh, 925. 925? That's excellent. What's that, a week? A month. Nine Great. That sounds really good. Excellent. Uh, and, uh, do you know if that is overlooking the bins? What is the bins? The bins. I don't uh, know what that is. I can't make it any clearer, love, you know, overlooking the bins, you know. Um, that, that'd be great. I mean, it sounds perfect and the price sounds wonderful. It really does. Um, is there an ex-convict living next door? That'd make it complete. I don't know that. You don't, don't, you, don't so. you don't know about the neighbours? No. You're not that familiar with the neighbourhood? No. Uh, right. Uh, any drug addicts living nearby? I don't know, sir. Right. I don't know anything. The only thing I know is about the tenants that live in the triplex. Right, and what are they like? We have two ladies in the front unit and a couple with a young young man on the, the back unit. Great, fine. Uh, and, and they don't mind a bit of noise, do they? Noise? It's pretty quiet. The building's pretty quiet. Right, uh, excellent. Well, <laughs> it'll be quiet until I move in. Because <laughs> I play the drums, you know, with a rock and roll band. Oh. And, you know, I like to practice, so uh, it sounds fantastic. Excellent. So, what time can you show me around, then? Um, it's a residential area. I don't know how the people will feel about drum playing. All oh, right, well, you know, I'll put a few pillows around it and keep it, you know, try and keep it down, but uh, I've got to practice. Got to practice four hours a day, they say. So, uh, what time should I meet up with you? Uh, let me check our schedule. Great. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't have any appointments for the property till... Saturday morning at 11. Saturday morning. So is it best if I call you back then, uh, Friday? Uh-huh. I'll call you back Friday and we'll try and set up a time and, uh, and hopefully I can come down. All right. Uh, and will there be, um, will, you know, is, is, is there a socket so I, uh, we can plug in the electric guitars and stuff? Yeah, there are plugs, but I, I don't, regular plugs. Right, fine. And, and there'll be enough, uh, obviously there'll be a, enough room to, to, to store all the, you know, the amplifiers and stuff. Uh, it's a very large one-bedroom apartment. Right, that sounds great. Excellent. Fine. Uh, okay. L lovely. All right, well, thank you very much, and hopefully I'll, uh, I'll, you know, I'll see you down there on Saturday. All right. And, uh, but it's definitely overlooking the bins, you say? I don't know what bins is. All right, well, we'll check that out on Saturday. Thanks very much. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. See you, Chief. Captain speaking. All right, love, how you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How's your day going, love? Is it all right? Yes. Oh, it's nice, it's nice. Um, yeah, can you fix me up, please? Um, I want to be, uh, you know, accommodated. Yes, when is it for? Um, it's like five days' time. Okay, arriving in five days. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want, you know, I want, yeah. Okay, that's fine, that's no problem. All right, that's... that's... would be £160 plus VAT. I don't see any pound, right? If I'm on property budget now, right, does that mean, you know, when I get out, I've got, you know, money or something? 
Sorry, could you just repeat that? Oh, yeah, sorry. It's like, you know, that's like how much it is, right? Now, if I write then, like, put the budget down, like, you know, do you want that now, like, do I do, you know, do that, like, when I'm, you know, maybe, you know, I'm name a name? Well, you can give me your name now, and I'll make the reservation now for you, or you can give us a ring back, where, whatever you prefer. All right, so name uh, Jagger. Okay. Uh, Michael, you can call me Mick if you want to. You know, what's the best, like, stuff you've got? You know, what's the most, I want to, you know, real nice, you know, spammed up room, you know, I'm going to be coming back off tour, you know, it's got to be nice. So, you know, what's the most spammed up best room that you've, like, got in the old plane? Okay, just bear with me, I'll check for you. Oh, All right, thanks. So, so, you've been very well, I'm very grateful, thank you very much. Just one second. Hello, I've just checked, we have one of our park suites available. Oh, that's sounds nice. Where have you been? Yeah, I've just checked in the system if we have our best suite available. All right, I thought you just, like, nipped to the canteen with yeah, a cup I of tea and a fag. I just had to make sure I can give you the best room. Oh, thank you so very I much, thank you very check much. availability on that. You're lovely, you are. You're really nice, you know, find the best thing, because, you know, these days I always make sure that, you know, I'm, you know, in my house, you know, unnecessary damage while I'm in my overbangs, you oh, know. Of course. Do you do that as well? Uh, no, I mean, that's, that's the best I can offer you now. I don't know how much they pay you, but you should get a lot more money because you're lovely you are. You know, normally people put the phone down on me, but you're gorgeous. <laughs> um, right now, I mean, I've got a bad back, right? You know, mm -hmm. now that I'm about 108 or whatever it is. Um, could you get me, um, you know, in the room, like, you know, some kind of, you know, waterbed? We don't have water beds, I'm afraid, but if you have a problem with your back, I think a yeah. bed board, a bed board should be fine because then the bed shouldn't be too soft, I suppose. Oh, so that's nice, that's can nice. If you a bed board, that's fine. Right, 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 right. So you're on, get me, you know, so men then. Okay. Listen, um, I'm bringing my celebrity, like, pal with me, right, so I put his name down as well, and that's, uh, Steve Pink. Oh, thank you. Well, Lordy Miss Claudie, is that Heartbreak Hotel? Excuse me, sir? Is that the hotel? Yes, this is the hotel. Oh, that's great. I just wondered if you could give me uh, some information. I'm coming to stay at your hotel in the next few days, and I just wondered if you could tell me, uh, you know, what sort of facilities you've got. Okay, let me jump to the front desk, please, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, fantastic, Martina. Oh, hi, Martina. Yes, I'm coming to the hotel in a few days. I just wonder if you could tell me, uh, you know, a few of the facilities you've got down there. Okay, uh, we have an outdoor pool and jacuzzi. Is there any we dress restrictions when you eat in the restaurant? Uh, you know, will I be able to wear my blue suede shoes? Yes. Oh, great. Well, we're currently in, uh, in Viva Las Vegas. We we'll hope to be flying in in the next few days. Uh, I just yeah. hope the flight is a little better than it was uh, when we flew to Vegas, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell you, I got off the flight at the airport. I felt uh, all shook up. Uh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was a, it was a terrible flight. Uh, are, are the staff quite tactful at the hotel? Yes. Right, yeah, it's just that yes. I'll be arriving with a girl of my best friend. So okay. uh, if anybody rings up asking for me, I'm not there, if you know what I mean, Martina. Okay. Uh, you okay. know, she's a hard-headed woman, so I think it's better if we keep it quiet, you know. <laughs> There's a lot, lot, okay. of, lot of people around with suspicious minds, so the quieter we keep it, the better, really, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, right. we can arrange that. Right. Will it be all right if I bring the hound dog with us and keep it in the room? A dog? Yes. Will An be, animal? Will dog? That, yes. Will that be possible? No. No, we don't have animals in the hotel, oh. aside from the guests. Oh, right. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're a cheeky monkey, you. Well, we actually are hoping to get married when we get to the hotel. Is there a chapel nearby? Well, you probably want to get married in Vegas before you leave because it's so prevalent there because we yeah. don't have that here. I'll tell you, there'll be some crying in the chapel that day. I really will. <laughs> uh, I don't think the girlfriend's mother likes me, so that's why we've flown over here to get married. So, oh. Yeah, she keeps okay. calling me a devil in disguise. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. No, yeah, you probably want to get married before you leave. Well, she's just got a wooden heart, so that's her problem, you know. Oh. So, I mean, is, is there a chapel we can get married uh, nearby to the hotel? No, not, not uh, right away like that. Mm, I, th uh, I think we both feel, really, we should get married now, or it, uh, it might never happen. It's now or never, basically, you yeah, know. Yeah, do it before you leave Las Vegas, because you can get married in five minutes there. Oh, right, right. I just can't help believing that me and my Rockahula baby will uh, live happily ever after, you know.
So do, do the rooms have jacuzzis in them? <laughs> no, not inside the room, no, sir. Oh, and how much is it for a double room, if you don't mind me asking? Thank you. $170. That's all right, Mama. Okay. Mm. Mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just got some jailhouse rock in my teeth. So, oh my wh- where exactly are you? In the ghetto? Uh, no. Well, I think we'll be staying one night with you, I think. Okay. Uh, listen, you've been so helpful so okay. far. I'm so grateful for time. <laughs> what did you say your name was? Polk Saladani? <laughs> Martina. Martina, right. Well, I'm stuck on you already, Martina. You've been so okay, helpful. Okay, thank you. Uh, are you lonesome tonight? No, a house, house full of guests here. Right, it's just that you sounded a bit fed up, that's all. Uh, oh, no, 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 yeah. no, I'm not. I'm fine, I'm sorry. So, are, no, you, sorry. are you way down from the city centre? Uh, we're in the valley. Right. Perhaps you'd like to come to the wedding, if you're free. Uh, just that you sound like you could be a good-luck charm for us. Oh, oh, no, but I'll be happy to check you in and maybe give you a suite or something. Well, we'll be having a party afterwards, of course, at the hotel. Perhaps oh. you'd like to come to that. Oh, maybe I will. <laughs> <laughs> Is everything okay? No, it's just my father. He gets very emotional at times like this. Yeah. Oh. Don't cry, Daddy. Oh, yeah. Would you like to book me in, then? You'd like to make reservations would you, would you like to book me in? Yeah. What's the last name? The name is King Creole. King Creole? King, K-I-N-G, and... Creole, Creole. yes. That's your name? Yes, that's my name. Do you know Martina? Uh-huh. When no one else will understand me... <laughs> When all, everything I do is wrong, and it's always there to lend a hand in everything you do. Martina, that's yes. the wonder, the wonder of you. Oh, that was very nice. Thank you. I'll remember that always. Bless you. Okay. Anything else? That's it, Martina. I'll call you back. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Muslim Bromley Chelsea Thomas speaking. Oh, hello there. Uh, I'm after some shoes. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just wondering what sort of prices you have. What sort of prices you have? Yes. All sorts. Uh, well, it's uh, obviously children's shoes I'm after. All right, I'll put you through to the children's department for a moment. Thank you. Pass me the soap, will you, love? Hello, children. Hello? Hello? Yes, I, 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 who we're speaking to, please? Claire. Oh, Claire, I just wondered if you could help me. I'm after some children's shoes. Right. And, uh, and I just wondered, really, what sort of prices you've got. Um, depends what you're looking for. Uh, well, I'm looking for the best, which is obviously why I've called at Russell and Bromley, obviously. What, what kind of price range are you looking at? Well, if you could guide me, really, I'm just looking for the best, you know. Well, what is it you're looking for? Well, shoes. What kind of shoes? Uh, well, uh, children's shoes. Right, boots or um, sandals, <laughs> canvas. Uh, hang on, just hang on, excuse me, just a second. Uh, I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry to disturb you in the bath, but this is broken. Well, I- I'm sorry about this. My daughter's just coming. I'm in, I'm in the bath. I'm That's sorry. That's all right. Yeah. Um, what- what's the problem, love? What's broken? The electric fire. Here, catch. Are you right there? <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> I've told you not to throw those things around the room. It's coming in here, throwing electric fire. I'm in the bath. <laughs> oh! <laughs> You're right. So the wind down, Miss Hale's that. It really did. Can I go back to the shoes now? Uh, oh, I, you know, I think I'll have to call you back, to be quite honest with you. Right, am I going to be on the radio? Steve Pink, I think? No, it's nothing to do with that. Nothing, bit. are you sure? Nothing to do with him whatsoever. Are you sure? No, absolutely not. Uh, your name again was? Claire. Claire who? The Smith. Claire who? The Smith. The Smith? Yes. Oh, that's, that's lovely. It's a well, lovely name. It's been lovely to speak to you. And you. And, uh, and listen, Claire, if you're ever in the bath... Don't uh, put an electric fire in there. Absolutely. Right. Uh, that's, uh, that's very good advice. Bye. 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 Abbey Road Studios. Um, yeah, hello. Is that, is that the studio is there? Is. Oh, that's good. Um, listen, I've been asked to call you by my manager, Don King, who, who recommended you. I have to record my voice at, at some time. This, I'm only here in London for a few days, and I'm really up against time, and I wondered if you, you'd be able to record me. I'm afraid I have no control over what is recorded. You'd have to ring the studio manager. But do, do, do you know if that, if, if that could be done, if that could be possible to be done? I, I couldn't tell you. I have nothing to do with that part of the uh, business here, I'm afraid. Um, what I'm trying to, I'm just really up against time. You know, I'm trying to put myself forward for, you know, for a deal in sportswear advertising, which I haven't done for a long time. Um, and I need to just record my voice. 
And, uh, you know, my manager, Don King, said that, you know, he said, you should, you know, Mike, you should call Abbey Road because, you know, they would do you the best. Well, I'll say, I told you, I have nothing to do with that. So you'd have to speak to the studio manager. Uh, it's not until tomorrow, I'm afraid. Is, is it a very good studio there? This is Abbey Road. It's the best there is. Oh, that's a, the, the best there is? What, what, what makes you think it's the best? When you think of a recording studio, who is the fir- what is the first studio you think of? I guess Abbey Road. You know, exactly. that's, that's why Don King said, you know, Mike, you have to phone them and, you know, make sure you do it today. Right, well, um, I'm afraid you'll have to get your manager to phone in tomorrow. Do you think that they might be able to help me overcome a problem? Uh, what problem would that be? Well, you see, you know, I mean, you know, my image is very aggressive, you know, that, you know, boxing in the form of heavyweight champion in the world. Right. Um, and, you know, to do this sports for advertising, I have to sound aggressive. Right. And I have to sound like, you know, like Mike Tyson, the, like, like who I am. Well, I suggest you get yourself an image consultant. We only do recording here. We don't do anything to do with images. Yeah, but the thing is, you see, you know, when I record my voice, you know, I want, I want to sound like, you know, who I am. I want to sound like Mike Tyson, the heavyweight champion of the world. Oh, well, as I say, you get yourself an image consultant or somebody that can teach you to do that. It's a, we it's just, a good we just do sound recording here. We don't have anything to do with images. I'm Mike Tyson, and, you know, I'm, I'm very appreciative of your time, you All know. Right, thank you very much, Mr. Tyson. In the, in the States, we don't get this help. You see, what I want to try and do is, you see, I start off talking as Mike Tyson, but you see, if I get too excited, I turn into Elmer Fudd, and I'm not convincing as a boxer anymore. I sound like Elmer Fudd and not Mike Tyson, and I go looking for that naughty little rabbit. That's right. Well, you carry on looking for the naughty little rabbit. Sorry. uh, Listen, what what, what are you saying to me? Listen, I'm the former heavyweight champion of the world, so don't talk to me this rubbish. You understand me? Right, yeah. Because otherwise, you know, I'm going to find you. We'll get in the ring. We'll get it on you. It's going to be in trouble. Is that right? Okay, then. Yeah, Yo, you tell him, Mike, you know, and I agree with him. So, you know, don't do nothing like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know, you know what you mean, Harry. I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, who are you? Who is that? This is Steve Pang from 95 Part 8, Capital FM. Well, I thought it would be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were brilliant. What's your name? Uh, I can't tell you. Oh, no, you've got to tell us now. Uh, you... This is the star of Abbey Road Studios, and uh, you know, you've got to tell us your first name, at least. Oh, I can't. <laughs> Too much trouble. You're going to get 15 million people calling you now saying, we heard you, we heard you. Yeah, yeah well, that's why I'm not giving you my name. <laughs> yeah, you're no fool. Listen, you're a great sport. Yeah, listen to you every day. All right, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Hello, good morning. Mrs. Ferguson, please. Okay. Hello, Mrs. Ferguson. Yes. Hello, good morning. It's uh, Paul Grayson, RSPCA. Oh, all right. Uh, oh, I'm so glad I've called you in. Will you be in later? Um, what's it for? Well, uh, it's, we've just, uh, we've had a letter this morning from somebody about, uh, about your animals making an awful lot of mess outside the house. You mean hitting the dogs? Sorry? Hitting the dogs. Have you? Is that what you're saying? Somebody said I hit the dog. Well, I'm not saying anything. I mean, that's what you just said, that you hit the dogs. I'll tell you what, I was going on holiday today. Well, you, there's no chance of that. No, I'm not. I'll wait for you. I should think you will. I will. Uh, because I don't like your flippant attitude, to be quite honest. Who the f*** do you think you're talking to? I'm sorry? I said, who the f*** do you think you're talking to? Well, there's no need for that, is there? I'm just trying to sort it out, that's all. I mean, Let's I... Sort what out? Okay. Let me tell you something, my friend. You've got a bit of a nasty streak there, haven't you? Let me tell you something, right? I've got three dogs, and there's no way in the world I would hurt or hit these dogs. I'm going to wait for you. Well, I should think you will as well, if you've been uh, you've been nasty towards your dogs and they've been... How dare you? ...been messing everywhere. How dare you? Well, I haven't said anything. What's up with you? You just said that I've been horrible or I've done something to my well, dog. Well, you said that you said. He said you've been, you've, been, you've been smacking the dogs. I mean, we can't have that sort of thing. Smack my dogs? You know I don't even give my dogs dog food. So you smack them and you don't feed them? I give them food that we eat. Well, that can be classed as animal cruelty, that, you know. What? Because, well, they might not be able to handle that sort of food that you eat. Listen, I, I would not hurt my babies for the world. I mean, if you, do, if you don't mind me saying so, Mr. Ferguson, I'm not being funny, but uh, you sound like you're a bit of a psychopath to me, you know. I think you're a prick, isn't it? I'm sorry? I said I think you're a prick. Oh, dear, man. no need for that. It's goodness gracious. Uh, but, uh, you've got a bit of a nasty temper, haven't you? One minute you're fine, the next minute you go off, you know, and this is what your neighbour was saying. Uh, you know, one minute you're fine, the next I don't mi- give a f- about my neighbour. Next minute you're throwing the animals around the room, you know. How dare you. I don't hurt my dog. I should think you don't. So why would your neighbour write a letter like this, then? Have they got something against you? What do they say in the letter? Well, I'd rather not go into that now. I'd rather see you face to face, you know. But, uh, they do say you're a bit of a lunatic. No! No! Listen, I've got a little boy and I've got a little girl. I know this is wrong, but the little boy follows me everywhere. I love this little dog. But I love this little girl. But I, yes, I do favour 
um, my pepper. So what you're saying to me then is that uh, you're kinder towards your dogs and you are towards your children? Mm. Oh, we'll have to get social services onto this one, I think. What for? Hey? What for? Well, you just said that you're kinder towards your dogs and you are towards your children. I don't believe this. I don't believe it either. It's, it's an eye opener to me. I don't believe it. I really don't. I don't believe it myself, and, and Ruth Weston certainly won't believe it. Who did you say? Is it Ruth? Ruth Weston? Now, that's my sister. That's right, yeah. She knows I wouldn't hurt my dog. That's right. Well, she's written to me to give you a call, you see, Wendy. Wind you up. What do you mean, give you a call? It's Steve Penk from 95.8, Capital FM. No! No! Steve, please could you wind up my sister about her dogs? She treats her dogs like humans. She's very fussy about them. <laughs> if you could pretend to be the RSPCA, give her a call. She never. Yes, everybody, this is Wendy Ferguson on The Penky Show, 95.8 Capital FM. I'm going to, when she wants a cigarette, she's not getting one. Yeah, it's amazing how many people say that. No, you, I mean it. Are you going to kill her, what, stone dead or just very <laughs> slowly and painfully? <laughs> I'll do it pain. I'll do things she doesn't like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Wendy, we yes. love you. Thank you very much. We've got to go. Okay. Hello. Oh, is that, is that Brexit, David Beckham? Yeah. All right, there, it's, uh, listen, it's Liam from Oasis. I'm sorry to call you home. Can you talk for a moment? No. No. It's just this gig I want to let you know about, um, in about, like, three weeks' time. And I wondered if there'd be any way of, like, you know, getting you down for it. Uh, pissing, yeah. You what? Making me pissing, yeah. I, no, no, listen, uh, Alex, give, give us your number and... I don't think he did. He did, that's where we got it from, cos I know him quite well and that, you know what I mean? Yeah, of course you do. Listen, it. three weeks, we've got this gig going on, right, at Wembley Arena. What I wanted to... Um, listen, I'm, I'm dead sorry to call you home and that and get you mm. up and stuff. I'm sorry about that. But I've, I'm just, like, running off, so I just thought I'd, like, you know, try and call you and catch you just now. Got this gig going on. Three weeks' time. <laughs> <laughs> That's where he went, and then we called him back. Hello. Hey, Bexy, great goal last night. <laughs> How are you, Davis? I'm not too bad, sir. <laughs> <laughs> David, this is Steve Pank from 95.8 Capital FM. Okay. And you're live in London right now, Dave. Okay, no problem. <laughs> So listen, you and Liam then get this uh, get this thing together because the idea you see. Right. Well, uh, in fact, maybe you can tell him Liam what the idea is just very quickly. Yeah, well, that's it. You know, we got some of the city players on stage, and like you know, me and like you know, Patsy's <coughs> coming. She get on great. We are Vicar. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. We'll sing it once a while, right? And then yeah. me and our kids and the city fans and the city players give you a good kicking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then, yeah, right. <laughs> hey, that's top. I knew you were a top bloke. I knew you'd go for it, Max. I knew you were. Top. So are you, Dave? All right, thank you. Right, listen, you've got uh, Brian Kidd to blame for this. Right, I will do. I'll so, have a go. Uh, are you training later today? Yeah, in about an hour. All right, well, when you see kiddo, just tell him that we called you. I will do. All right, Dave, you're a top no, guy. No problem. Cheers, Dave. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Today would have been the day the Bexy would have been late for his training if we hadn't phoned him up. RAF Museum. Is that the RAF? It's the RAF Museum. Oh, that's lovely. Now, you know we're entering the main tourist season now? Yes. I just wonder if I could be a service to you. Oh, one moment, I'll put you through to our marketing department. Oh, that's awfully kind, thank you. New marketing. Hello there. Hello. Um, you know we're entering the main uh, tourist season now? Right. And I just wonder if I could be of any service to you at all. Do you mean to sell toys? No, oh. no, nothing like that, nothing like that at all, no. With it being the Royal Air Force Museum, uh, I could come down and play me trumpets for you. Right. Um, it's just, uh, you know, obviously with the, the American tourists, they really would love it. I could play a little bit now to give you an idea. Could you fax through? <laughs> Good afternoon, it's David Kidd. Oh, goodness gracious, what happened there? Uh, I was just saying to that delightful lady there that, uh, with it being the main uh, tourist season, uh, I wonder if I could be of service to you. In what respect? Uh, well, come down and play me trumpet. I see. Uh, now, the thing is, obviously the American tourists would love it, uh, because, um, you know, obviously with it being the, the RAF... Tell me, did you, uh, publish any details at all? I'll play a little bit now, if you like. No, no need for that. Um...
Uh, is that the extent of your repertoire? That's it, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> it's a... Makes your lips go chapped after a while, to be honest. I bet they do, yes. Mm. Right. May I take your details, please? And what I'll do is I'll pass on the information to our marketing manager, and if he's interested, he'll get in touch with you. You're, you're a very, very kind gentleman, really. I mean, do you think that there is much, uh, there is much hope, really, for me? Don't ask me my opinion on music. Adds to the atmosphere, I'm sure you'll agree. <laughs> what I suggest is... Drives the neighbours round the bend, I tell you. I'll bet it does, yes. It would certainly drive me round the bend. What I suggest you do is increase your repertoire. Well, I, I can only play the one tune, that's what I'm saying to yes. you. you know, I mean, yeah, I, I, well, I, go, go and learn another but tune. as you can hear, it's note perfect, you know. Would you like to give me your name and your number? Certainly. I mean, what would, would the best thing to do would be to come down, perhaps, and we can give it a trial run tomorrow, if I get down for, uh, for say, 10.30. No. And uh, no, set myself up outside. No, and, not at all. And then, obviously, you know, uh, you can get feedback during the day from the tourists and see what they think. Wouldn't want you to do that. I mean, as I say... Well, uh, which part of the word no do you not understand? I can see it being a wow for the, for the tourists this yeah, summer. Yeah, I remain you know. to be convinced of that. Right, now let me tell you completely honestly, I'm getting really fed up with hearing that tune. I've asked you three times for your name so that I could pass that on to the managing, the marketing manager. Would yes, you like right. me to do that? Well, if you could, but um, what I'll do myself is I'll turn up in person... Please and, don't do that. ...and then uh, play a few tunes for you. No, uh, please don't do that. Well, actually, not a few tunes, it'll be the one tune, you know. No, uh, I don't want you to do that. I know that the tourists will love me, they really will. And, Wrong, and, uh, it'll right. It'll go down a treat during the summer. <laughs> It'll be the talking point of London, it really will. Try the Tower of London. It really will be a wow this summer, and, uh, and, you know, you'll be the talk of the company. Okay, because, uh, and do you want me to give me your name? I mean, as far as I'm concerned... Yes or no? I I'll put it down as your idea. Are you going to put, give me your name? It could mean promotion, the sky's the limit. Are you going to give me your name? Uh, certainly. Well, well, what's your problem? I'll give you one more bus, though. No, thank you. <laughs> we'll leave it there, then. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Pardon? Merry Christmas! Hello? Hello? Mary? I'm sorry? Merry Christmas? Uh, Merry Christmas, yes! One moment. <laughs> do you think he's looking for somebody called Merry Christmas? <laughs> yeah, I genuinely do. <laughs> <laughs> so he's looking for a guest called Merry Christmas. No, Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas, yeah. yes. Let's see if Mary's in. Hello. Merry Christmas! Hey. Hey, how are you? I'm okay. Great, who's this? Hello, is that Mary? Yes. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Hey, uh, who's this? My name is Steve Penk, and I'm calling from Manchester, England. Okay. And we just wanted to call and wish you uh, uh, a Merry Christmas, Mary. I don't have any idea who you are. Uh, well, obviously not. Uh, no, but we just wanted to uh, call and wish you a very Merry Christmas. Do you know how early in the morning it is and I don't really care? Oh, really? Right. Is it very early in the morning? <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> Hello, reception. How can I help you? Hi, is that Ipswich? Am I, am I calling Ipswich? Right, yeah. Oh, lovely. Uh, I've got a call for you um, from Ipswich, Massachusetts. Can you bear with me? Yep. I'll just put them through. It'll take me a few seconds, but just bear with me a second. William Hotel. Hello, can I help you? Excuse me? Hello, apparently I've been put through to you for some reason. Okay. No. Uh, it's the Whittier Motel. No. Hang on, is this Ipswich, Massachusetts? Yes, it is. 
Well, say hello to Ipswich, England. Uh, Ipswich, England? Hi. Hi. Ipswich, England. Say hello to Ipswich, Massachusetts. <laughs> hey, who is this? Well, this is a thing called United Penk Nations. And what we're doing is that we're bringing places closer together in the world and making it a happier, well, a happier and a smaller place. So tonight we're bringing together Ipswich, Massachusetts. Hello. Hello. With Ipswich, England. Hello. Excellent. Hello. Hold on a minute. Now, Ipswich, England. Is there a question you've always wanted to ask Ipswich, Massachusetts? No, not really. Right, that's excellent. And Ipswich, Massachusetts. Is there a question you've always wanted to ask Hold on Ipswich, a who, England? Who are Ipswich, Massachusetts? What is it? Ipswich, Massachusetts, USA. Yeah, but who are they? Well, it's, it's a place in, in Massachusetts, USA, it's called Ipswich. A joke. I don't know what Yeah, but why, why are you people here? Hello? Hello? Is, that, is this Ipswich, Massachusetts now? <laughs> it is right now. Yeah, isn't this exciting? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Bringing together Ipswich, Massachusetts and Ipswich, England. Excellent. So, um, what can we do for you then? For who? For who? What? Hello. I, Hello. Thought it, I thought it'd be nice to sort of link the two of you up this evening. What, why link? Why link up Ipswich? Oh, you're so suspicious, you aren't you? What's up with you? <laughs> Chill out. Massachusetts is being nice. What's up with you? <laughs> I don't know. I don't really. Do that. Good God, woman! <laughs> Come on. Do you know who you're? Do you know who you run from I've, Ipswich? Of course I know. I've called. Who? We've called. Is it the Holiday Inn or something? Yeah. Well, there we are then. Oh, we called the Whittier. Yes, so we, and we've called somewhere else in Massachusetts. But isn't this exciting? You see? I bet you didn't even know there was an Ipswich, Massachusetts, did you? No. Not at all. <laughs> I bet Massachusetts, you didn't even know there was an Ipswich, England, did you? Yes, I did. Oh, you did? I have a whole brochure on it. Sorry, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't got none on your Really? Is there enough information to fill a brochure about Ipswich, England? <laughs> I guess there is. <laughs> <laughs> well, go on, if you've read the brochure, tell me something interesting about Ipswich, England. So where are you from? Ringham, how did you do this thing? They, they have better they have better looking um, hotels and motels than we have in this town. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it's a bit, a bit of a dive, is it? <laughs> Just a bit. <laughs> it, antiquated. Wait, so, <laughs> so, yeah, right. So what you're saying is the arsehole of the world? Oh, that's New Jersey. Oh, that's New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, well, you've obviously never been to Ipswich, England, then. <laughs> no. Right, OK, well, listen, this has been very nice. Uh, thank you, Ipswich, England. That's OK. And thank you, Ipswich, Massachusetts. You're welcome. Hey! Have fun. There we go, another very successful United Penk Nations there, bringing together this evening the lovely people of Ipswich, Massachusetts, USA, and the lovely people of Ipswich, England. Thank you very much. One one eight, one one eight. How can I help you? Uh, Peter Rabbit, please. Peter Rabbit. Peter Rabbit, yes. In which town, please? Uh, Cozy Borough. Is this in UK? It's near the Big Fir Tree. I have Peter Rabbit in France. It's in Ambleside. No, no, it's Peter Rabbit, Cozy Burrow, near the Big Fir Tree. Do you have a postcode for Cozy Burrow, please? I'm afraid I don't, no. So I'm searching for Cozy Burrow, however, there's no listing. Right, it's not coming up. Yes. You could try uh, Miss Tiggy Winkle. Can you spell that, please? I certainly can. M I double S. Yes? T-I-double-G-Y. Miss Tiggy. Winkle. <laughs> Winkle, is that her surname? Uh, Tiggy Winkle, yes, Miss Tiggy Winkle. On which road, please? Uh, near the big fir tree. <laughs> <laughs> Can I transfer you to a supervisor for further assistance? Well, I'd rather you didn't, sir, because we're doing so well here. Now, um, could you try, if you can't, is it bringing it up? No, Miss Tiggy Winkle. Um, you could try Jemima Puddle Duck. Can you spell the surname, please? Uh, P U double D L E. Puddle. Duck. What? <laughs> could it be Puddle Duck? Jemima Puddle Duck, yes. In which town, please? Well, unless you've not found it. Well, once again, I, I'm sorry to repeat myself. Cozy Burrow near the Big Fir Tree. One moment, please. It's gracious. You're all bloody day at this rate. 
if it's if it's not bringing it up, you could try for Lopsy and Mopsy. <laughs> <laughs> One moment, please. I'm trying to speak to a supervisor for further assistance. Oh, forget the supervisor. I haven't got time for this all day. Gracious. Hello? 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 Hello, are you daft? Yes. So how long have you been daft? Oh, forever. Yeah, about 30 years. About, sorry? 30 years. 30 years? Uh -huh. And, uh, and of course, the question I've got to ask you is, uh, you know, are you Mrs. Daft as daft as a brush? Uh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what it is, it's a radio station. We just spotted your name in the, in the book as Mrs. Daft. Oh, I, I think I'm the only one in the book. Oh, it's fantastic! <laughs> we, we had to call you, and I, I thought, we've got to call her and see if she really is as daft as a brush. <laughs> Absolutely. So you are as daft as a brush, then? I am as daft as a brush. Well, maybe we should call somebody who's uh, who's a brush and find out if they're as daft as you. <laughs> they couldn't be. They couldn't be? <laughs> no. So, uh, Mrs. Daft, uh, thank you very much for talking to us. Don't worry. It's Steve Pank from 95.8 Capital FM. Steve Pank. Lovely to speak to you. <laughs> and you. See you then, you daft sod. Right. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye now. Bye. Good morning. Yeah, hello there. Is that, um, is that the zoo? It is, yes. Um, I wondered possibly if you could help. I should try. Um, because, you know, I've got a real problem here. Well, if, you, if you'd like to tell me what the problem is. I'm really running out of time, seriously. If you'd like to tell me what the problem is. Well, I was just having an absolute nightmare of a time, really. I've never known it like this before. Um, have you got anybody there who can kick a ball straight? Uh, yes, I should think so, yes. Right, oh, that's good, because, um, so many key players injured right now, you know, I'm, I'm just running out of ideas. Ideas for what? What, what have you got there that, um, you know, might be able to help out in this situation? Is this a football game? Well, well absolutely, yeah, you know, that's the business that we're in, you know, um, have you, um, have you got any giraffes there? We have, um, but unfortunately they can't play football. Well, I'm not too sure about that. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, Dave Beckham's, you know, good on corners and that, but, you know, we would need someone to, you know, get up there and, you know, the giraffe with the, the long neck would yeah, be... Oh, yes. Do you have any, you know, pretty big animals there? We do. We have elephants, yes. Yeah, I mean, what what sort of, you know, I've range got, of big... I've got cross waiting. I'm going to have to go now. I suggest you try someone else. I was wondering if you had any sort of African water buffalo or perhaps, uh, you know, elephant or giant woolly mammoths. I mean, uh, given the size, they would be great in goal because they'd block most of the goal up. I mean, um, what deal can you do me with water buffalo? I'm not even sure we have water buffalo, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm afraid on all animals are wild. They can't play football. In that case, I mean, what deal can you do me on um, zebras? You're going to have to try somebody else. I've, I'm, I'm too busy to take this call. I mean, this is for the good of the country, darling. I mean, um, what deal can you do me on zebras? You know, black and white colours, Newcastle United would help to keep Alan Shearer feeling at home. Right, well, um, well, I suppose if I'm really desperate, I could get Steve Penk up front there. Maybe Dave Jensen on the wing. Uh, Terence selling the prize at half-time. France 98, here we come! Hello? 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 Yeah, hello, is that like the uh, emergency plumbing kind of place? Yes, sir. Oh, that's good. Thank goodness for that. Listen, I've got a major problem going on down here, and I wondered if you could, uh, you know, come out, maybe help us out here. Yes, what's the problem? That's good. Well, uh, I'm staying here in this rented house while I'm over here, and um, what seems to be happening is that, uh, you know, turn the pipe on, and uh, along, you know, the way there, and I said, hurry down the stairs, and the tea kettle, and my oh, man, Kevin Wall insulation, and um, it, it just didn't happen after that. I mean, uh, did you come across this problem before? I didn't quite get you. I'll tell you again. Um, you know, we turn on tea kettle and all on the way there, and then I'll carry wool insulation, and as, uh, you know, our way downstairs, and it's just not happening, you know? What didn't happen? The whole thing, you know, like I'm saying, you know, coming all the way down there, turning the pipe on, and this is the way there, and um, here it happens, and there it happened, and, you know, and my nerves end with this now, you know, I mean, have you ever fixed something like this before? Do you think you can do it? I still haven't got what the problem is. Listen, man, I've been up all night with this thing, right? I've been trying to put it right. I cannot understand one word you're saying. Don't understand the way you speak. Do you think you can fix it or not? You know, you're a plumber, you know about this stuff, can you fix it? Can I fix what? The problem, you know, I've been what telling you, I, I told you four times what the problem is. I told you four times what the problem I is. I don't understand what you're talking about. Well, it's just you turn the thing and, you know, nothing happens. what thing? What is the thing? Well, you said, uh, listen, you know, look, don't get me mad, man. Don't get me mad. I'm sorry, call I someone else, please. I go, I go down the stairs. Please call turn, someone else. And I turn on the top tap and, you still there, man? 
Well, I don't think so. Guess I'm gonna have to do my own pipes today. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Hello, can I help you? Yes, hello. Is that the plumber? Yes, sir. Ah, oh, yes. Have you just had a phone call from a very strange gentleman trying to explain his problem with his pipes? I did. Oh, and I, I know. cannot follow one word what he said. I can't follow one word either. That, uh, that in fact, was Sylvester Stallone. You know the Hollywood actor? Oh, <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I know. You've just slammed the phone down on Sylvester Stallone. Can I you believe- am sorry. Oh, I know. He's devastated. He's in tears. No, you see, what happened is I tried to uh, ask him to explain so that I understand what he's saying. Oh, right. Well, he has a, he has a bit of a mumbling problem, you see. Uh, yeah, because uh, it's extremely difficult. So I was trying my endeavor best. Oh, and what your name is? I'm Vincent Hilton. Oh, Vincent. Well, listen, it actually wasn't Sylvester Stallone. It was Steve Pank from 95.8 Capital FM. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Why do you do this to me? Hey, Vincent. Yes? You're just the best. Stop it. Dorchester. Hello there, is that the Dorchester Hotel? Yes, it is. Is Jim there, please? Jim who? Sorry? Jim who? Jim, mind if we come and stay with you? <laughs> Sorry, is it, is it a guest in the hotel? No, a little trouble, you know, Jim. Jim who? Jim, mind if I come and stay with you? Oh, right, okay. Well, I'm doing my best here, love, you know. Oh, thank you. House of Parliament, good afternoon. Hello, um, is that the House of Parliament? It is, yes. Yeah. Yes, can I speak to Tommy, please? Tommy who? Sorry? Tommy who? Tommy, you will always be beautiful. <laughs> to me, you'll always be beautiful. <laughs> um, is he there? I don't know which, I mean, there could be a million Tommies here. Which Tommy is it you want, you're talking about? Uh, what about Steve? Have you got a surname for me at all? Yes, yeah, Steve, I'm after. No, but you'll give me a Tommy and Steve. Yes, well, uh, forget Tommy, I'd like to speak to Steve. Steve what? Steve Upper Lip. <laughs> Steve Upper Lip. Bye-bye, sir. Hello? Steve Peg on 95.8 Capital FM. Who's that? My name's Natalie and I'm ten years old and I wonder if you could help me. Who's that, first? You might might have the wrong number. Hold on a second, stay there. Well, I'm doing this project at school and I decided I want to write about you. Hold on a second, how'd you get this number and who do you want to speak to? You. Well, how'd you get the number? So I just wondered if you'd spare me some time. No, I want to know how you got the number first. From Channel 4. From Channel 4? Yeah. Okay, who gave you a Channel 4? Well, I've got a good idea of the piece I want to write, but no, I who just... gave you the number of Channel 4? I can't remember his name. Okay, well, when you find out who gave you the name, bring me back then, all right? I think if I do a good job, I could get top marks off my teacher for this. Really? Okay, now. See what you think. I want to call the piece Shane Ritchie, Showbiz Has Been. So you want to what? I want to call the piece Shane Ritchie, Showbiz Has Been. What do you think? So what do you think then? Shane Ritchie, showbiz has been. Oh, you. Oh. Oh, oh. Was that your little one? That was Natalie. <laughs> this is not going out on air, is it? Oh, thank God, he's on the big breakfast this week. We'll call him again. Oh, <laughs> you. Oh, I don't believe you. So, mate, this, what are you like? so this is the title of the piece then. It's Shane okay, Sh- Shane Ritchie, Showbiz Has Been. What do you think? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Shane Ritchie has been to the top. Unlike Pinky, who's got a long way to get there yet. <laughs> you charred. Was that really Natalie? No, it's say hello, Natalie. Come on, say hello. Hello. Hello, you are so persistent, just like your old man said. <laughs> Natalie, do yourself a favour, don't go into the business, get an education. And get a proper job, all right? There is no future in what your dad's doing. Don't let your father down, Natalie. Come on, you're doing a good job. <laughs> Love you, Nat. So, listen, you're starting this week on a big breakfast. You're killing it, aren't you? Oh, mate, it's killing me. I swear to you, this is unbelievable. Oh, we, we've got to be up at four o'clock in the morning, OK? Yeah, it's And I'm like, staying in a hotel, we can, and there's people just going to bed. As well, I'm, and I'm thinking, no, that's me. That's what you I'm normally... Not, yeah, you normally I'm, go to bed about four in the morning, don't well, you? Well, I've been on tour for 15 months like, around the country. And all of a sudden now, it's like getting used to... But now what I'm trying to do, because like me and Chris, you know Chris, my sister, yeah. we're like trying to stay awake now from nine o'clock and then go to bed about 8.30. So I'm running around doing things I've never, you know, like I'm just sitting there like looking at traffic lights, I'm reading magazines, 
I'm just doing anything to keep me occupied. What are you doing tomorrow? You want to come out for lunch? Just keep me occupied. So I don't fall asleep. Mind you, your company might be snoring in the next 20 minutes. I'll tell you what, why don't you make a TV show about it? Snoring with Pinky. What a great show. Snoring with Pinky, presented by Shane. What do you think? I love it, mate. They'll love it. The network will love it. They love you now, anyway, don't they? You radio jocks now. You're the rock and roll of light entertainment, aren't you? <laughs> hey, listen, yeah. Shane, we all love you. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Give now a kiss for me. See you, boy. See you, Stevie. Bye, Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shane, this is showbiz has been, I'm thinking. And you're the last person I thought, I can't believe I didn't think of you. <laughs> what? what, what? Good morning, Robert Middleton Crystal speaking. Can I help? Hey, sorry, it's Sammy. Hello, you all right? Uh, right, there's a bit of a problem at all. Right, what's up? Do you know your car on the front? Yeah. Well, some guys turned up with a tow truck. Right. Apparently the neighbours have complained about it being sat on the front and it's not me for months. It was me last week. But apparently, um, this, this guy reversed his tow truck and he's hit your car. Oh. What, do you want me to... But don't forget, it's registered in mum's name. Yeah, but I mean, I can't claim on me, show me. Well, I, what, oh. I don't know what you want me to do, though, know, Chris, he's at the door now. Is he there? Put him on the phone. I can't, he's in it. Well, he's in his van at the minute. Right. What you need to do, you Turn need to take the light, details. Love. Crystal, he's just said that he smashed your lights. Right, well, tell him that... Get his own details. Line, put, put on the line to me. Yeah. Hang on, he wants to speak to you, Crystal. Yeah. Hello, love. Hi, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Um, uh, I've need... smashed your light, love. Right. Well, what do you want to do? Do you want to just give me your details and I'll just find out how much it is for you? Yeah, new I'll, I'll pass them on to... Is this, is this your, your sister? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. I'll pass them on to your sister. But I, I, I've smashed the front wing as well as she told you that. No. Oh, right. Yeah. You just said you hit it, but she's not too sure because she's not well, you see, so I don't think she'll go out of the house at the moment. She's not well? No. Oh, um, right. If you just leave all your details with her. Right. I mean, are you are you towing the car? Uh, well, if we can, yeah, but it's buckled all the wheels, so I don't know if we can tow it, you see, that, that, that's you the problem. You can't understand why you're moving it, because I've been, it's taxed, insured and everything. Well, it, it's illegally parked, love. Why? Uh, well, it shouldn't be parked there. Uh, that, that's the reason that we've come down to move it. Uh, but as I was backing into to put the car on the back of the truck, I, I smashed into it, you know. Uh, I'll just hand you back to your sister, hang on a minute. Ah. Uh, Sammy. What? Give me one minute, I'm gonna phone Rob. No, Crystal, Crystal, don't. You can't go now and leave me, Crystal. Crystal, just I can't it. come home, Sammy. Oh, what is there anything I can do? Right, you need to take his licence plate number. Right, yeah, he's wrote all that down, but right. that's not the part. Crystal, he smashed your car up. I, I, know. I haven't got insurance, can you tell her that? He's just said he ain't got insurance, It's Pink, you idiot. It's not it Pink. It is. It's not it Pink. Is. Crystal, I'm being serious. It is. You've got me on the radio, haven't you? I haven't got you on the radio, Crystal. I'm off work sick. Do you think I'd get you on the radio? Yeah. Of course she's got you on the radio. <laughs> it's Steve Pink. <laughs> <laughs> it's Steve Pink, I know it is. Yeah, it is. Taxi, how may I help you? Oh, is that the cab company? Yes, it oh, is. Oh, what a tragedy. I've missed the train and uh, I need to get to Memphis. Could you give me a price to get to Memphis? This is a taxi company. Yes, I know that. Uh, but it's uh, it's very important I get to Memphis. I really need to get there. To Memphis, Tennessee? That's right, to Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, could you give me a price? Uh, sir, I mean, that's a long way. Yeah, I know it is. Uh, that's why I'm calling a cab company. Why can't you just take a plane? Well, because there aren't any leaving in the next uh, couple of hours, and I really need to get on my way. Uh, Okay. Uh, oh my God! I mean, I'm not feeling. I'm not feeling very well at the moment. That's why I missed it. I think I've got a bit of that night fever that's going round. You know, <laughs> I'm just about staying alive. I tell you. So, uh, how much are you going to charge me for this, Chief? Where are you? Are you jive talking? No, I said, where are you? Oh, I can't quite understand you. I'm sorry. It's, it's a bad connection. This end. Just outside Hollywood Bowl, I am. Okay, you're inside of Hollywood Bowl. We don't service that area, sir. How far is it to Massachusetts? To Massachusetts? Yeah, is it is it a long way? The state of Massachusetts? Well, of course, yes. Where are you originally from? I'm from England. Oh, are you really? Yes. You know what? I don't know about Massachusetts, but I can give you the proper cab number. Yeah. Um, to call that services Yes, and you should be dancing. You're just the best you are. Oh, thank you very uh, right, much. Right, because uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to Elvis Presley's house, you know, because I've always been a fan of Elvis. I'm so excited. What do you mean you're going to Elvis Presley's house? Well, I'm going to Graceland, you know. Oh. Um, Somebody just said to me, how deep is your love for Elvis? Well, I can't tell you. I just love him. I've always, sir, had, I've always had a secret love for him, I suppose. Sir, why don't I give you the cab number that services your area? Oh, that's great. I suppose it's just words at the end of the day, isn't it? But 
Sir, words are all I have. Anyway, I'll have to get there. So how much do you reckon it will cost me? Have you got any rough idea you know at what, all? Sir, I really don't know because it, it depends on where you are. Do you have a pen and paper? Of course I do, because I won this trip, you know. Okay. Everybody's so jealous back home, they said, Steve, you win again, and here I am. Okay. Sounds like too much heaven, doesn't it, really? Sir, do you have a pen? Of course I have, yes. Okay. Here it is. The phone number is 213. My granddad once met Elvis in Germany, you know. Sir, Uh, the phone number is 213. He was in the New York Manning disaster, 1941. Do you remember that? Sir, the uh, phone number is 213. Maybe you and I could sing an Elvis song together. What do you think? No, sir. I'm not trying to be rude, but I have, like, tons of phone lines here. I gave a letter to the postman. Come on. He put it in his sack. Come on. Sir? And by yeah. early next morning, he brought my letter back. She wrote upon it, return sender, address unknown. No yes, such person. Yes, sir? No such hey. phone. Yes, sir, hello? Hello? I really would listen to you, but, you know, I'm at work right now, and I have tons of other phone lines. So if you like the other number... Three old right go. He's a man of the He's a man of. Would you like the other phone number? Why well, are you going to join in? Sir, you know what? I'm at work. I really can't. One night with you. Would you like the other number, sir? He's great, Elvis, so isn't he? Ah, uh, yes. He's one. He was wonderful. I was a fan of his when I was younger. Also, the dreamboat. He really was. What's your favorite Elvis song? Um, sir, I don't know. You know what? I really have to go. Would you like the other number? What about the beach? Bee Gees, they're good, aren't sir, they? Sir, Bee Gees, stay alive. Would you like the other number? Stay alive. Ha, ha, okay, sir, ha, I really have to go. Stay alive. Stay alive. I used to like bury myself in all that long hair, and uh, you know, maybe he was nice, wasn't he? Thank you. Up here, hello. Hello there, cheeky. Uh, can I speak to Matron, please? One second, please. Yes, I'm calling about the job. Which one is it? Uh, it's the part-time uh, cook required. Call back in the next half moment. It is quite busy at the moment. Well, couldn't you give me the information? Yes, what would you like to know? Are you well, looking for something straight away? Then? Well, I am really, yes. I mean, it says part-time, but, yes. uh, you know, obviously... That, what sort of hours can that, you do? That could be doing for the time being. Well, any hours really at all. You know, I'm, I'm very easygoing. Uh, I'm very discreet, to be quite honest with you. Now, what, what was the name again, you said? Michael Osborne. Michael Osborne. Can you call back then? Uh, well, I, I, I'll, try, I'll certainly try my best, but, you know, I'm in demand at the moment. Now, uh, will I need to take a full medical before I start? No. Oh, thank God for that. What would you like me to do? Bring down something that I've made? I'll speak to Matron and then she will call us back or give me a telephone number. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch any of that. Can I have your telephone number, please? Right. Now, the uh, thing is, I'm making a lovely toad in the hole right now. I could bring it down so that you could see just how fine a cook I am. Yes, I don't, I don't doubt you, but Matron is busy at the moment and I can't tell you very much about the job. I'm sorry, darling. Uh, what language are you talking? Do you mind? I said Metron is busy at the moment. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. I I sounded like nonsense there you were talking, but... uh, Hello? Thank you very much. Hello? Mrs. Barbara White, please. Yeah, hold on a second. Thank you. Hello? Mrs. Wise? Yes? Oh, I'm so pleased I've got hold of you. It's Gareth Roberts from the Refuge Department. Oh, yes? Yeah, I'm not to believe there's been a problem. Well, we have had a lot of problem with these wheelie bins, you know, since we've had them. Yes? They don't come for about four weeks at any one time, and I don't know why. What do you mean? Well, they, they come about every four weeks. But have you I mean, been... they're supposed to come every week, aren't they? Well, they are, really, yes. Have you been leaving them out? Yes, yes. They're left at the bottom of the pathway. They, they say that they're not presented properly, but they are. They're left at the bottom of the pathway, and um, all they've got to do is take them down a couple of steps. Well, the excuse I had before was that because they've got wheels on them, if they take them down a couple of steps and they break the wheels off, it's down to them. Well, I mean, obviously in a situation like this, uh, obviously I, I have to get both sides of the story, but they say that you've been quite abusive towards them. Abusive? Uh, I haven't even seen them. Uh, the other thing that they mentioned is that uh, you're a bit tight. Tight? <laughs> in what way? Well, tips at Christmas. You've not tipped them for years. <laughs> no, but no, I definitely wouldn't now, I tell you. I mean, one of them, uh, Jack, says that, uh, that you've got a, you know, a face like a slapped ass. One of them. 
Oh, is that right? That's I'd like to meet Jack then. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah, is that right? Yeah. I've never seen Jack or any of them, so well, I we, don't know how he knows that. Well, we hardly see him these days, you know, he's yeah. uh, a bit of a skyver. No, uh, and one of them says, uh, the other week, you, you went to see him with a metal pipe. A what? He said he just looked at you and he saw your eyes glaze over and you went to with a, <laughs> the metal pie. Absolute nutcase. Pay for this service in my council tax, so I expect this to be done. Uh, well, not really, no, no. I mean, yeah, you know, you have to make sure that you tip, and then, uh, and then if, you know, if you tip... Oh, yeah, I'll tip them next time I see them, all right. And, uh, you know, you make cups of tea and stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. Then, 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 then you're all right. Oh, well, they think this is the Hilton. Uh, you know, they do look after people who look after them, you know. <laughs> yeah, should, should, well, they should... don't look after me. Right. Well, I mean, does Donna Crump and uh, Nicola Hendry look after you very often? <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was a lined up. <laughs> Oh, she's completely they've been, lost it. They've been trying to get me all the time, I tell you. <laughs> yes, this is Barbara White, live on the Steve Pank Show on 95.8 Capital <laughs> FM. Thanks very much for calling. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> Bye now. So don't forget, we're only a matter of weeks away from Christmas, so some tipping this year. Oh, I should certainly tip them, yeah, OK. <laughs> get your purse out, you tight swine. <laughs> OK, then, Steve. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Bye. Good morning, Welcome. Just how can I help? Oh, hello. I wonder if I could uh, make a quick inquiry. Yeah? Uh, well, you see, I wondered uh, whether or not uh, you have a diesel at your uh, forgot petrol station. Diesel? Do you sell diesel? Yes. Oh, you do? That is good. Uh, if so, uh, how much is it? Is it uh, correctly priced and in line with the prices of your competitors, yeah? You're talking to the travel lodge. You have to ring another number for that information. Now, what if you're opening hours? Are you open 24 hours or do you get to tea time and I arrive and find that the whole place is short, isn't it? No, we're open 24 Thank you for being very helpful indeed. Um, and I can get uh, the diesel at your place and then I do not have to go home by walking or by some other means like in the days before monkey. No, I don't think you will. You are being very nice and very cooperating and being very kind indeed and thank you very much. Uh, tell me, are you also selling that other stuff that they have like, you know, in the plastic bags where you sell sticks out on the forecourt? Do you have all that? Pardon? Have you got those bags of sticks and, you know, just sell flowers to get me out of trouble with, like, Madge and Charlene? Are you a lunatic? Am I a what? <laughs> You're a lunatic. Oh, heck. Well, can you believe that just as everything was going so well? Point, yes, hello, is that San Francisco Police Department? Yes, you do. And a very good day to you. Good day to you too. Uh, this is Stefano Penchino, the amazing man calling from England. I'm sure you've heard of me. Go ahead, Mr. Patino. Right. Is there somebody I could speak to, please? I don't understand, Mr. Patino, what you need to talk to them about. No, it's Mr. Penchino. Oh, Pacino. Uh, yes, the amazing man. What I do is I do amazing things, love. That's why I'm called the amazing man. Are you sure you've not heard of me? Um, well, it's not that, Stefano. Um, I don't know what you need the police for if you're coming to perform here. Well, what I do, what I do. Are you American? I'm American, but I'm also answering the phone. Amazing. What, do you need a permit? Is that what you're asking for? A permit to earn money or something? Well, what I do, love, is I do amazing things all over the world. And what I'm hoping to do next week when I arrive in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. is sing a duet with my uh, glamorous assistant, Mildred. And, um, seeing as we're in San Francisco, I thought I'd sing I Left My Heart in San Francisco. Oh, I think that would be a good idea. That's right. On the Golden Gate Bridge, while sellotaped to a decorating table with Mildred still on my chest. I'm sure you'll agree, amazing. Amazing. You can't see there being too many problems with that, can you, my old darling? I wouldn't have the foggiest idea, but the, the California Highway Patrol is who you would need to... If you're going to do it on the Golden Gate Bridge, you're going to have to discuss it with them. Right. I mean, I won't need uh, a permit or permission from the president, will I? Uh, you'll probably need a permit, yes. Right. You should probably stop by the police department when you get here before you do it. Have you got a decorating table, or should I bring my own? Uh, probably you should bring your own. Right. I mean, obviously, it does take uh, nerves of steel and a certain amount of amazingness to do what I do, you know. Where uh, are you calling from, Stephanie? Well, from England, that's right. All the way from England. What, what's the address? Do you know the words to I left my heart in San Francisco? No, I don't. You'd have to go to a music store. It's just that I'm not quite sure, you see. I left my heart in San Francisco. That's the only bit I know, really. Do you know any more? No, I don't. You'll have to go to a music store. Right. You haven't got Tony Bennett's number, have you, love? 
I don't. Right. Would there be uh, a few officers around to help me set up the decorating table? I'm sure there'll be lots of officers once you go to the police station. Right, because they're very difficult to put up on you on your own, you know. <laughs> Would you like me to bring anything over with me when I come over? Are you short of anything? <laughs> no, thank you. You know, a bit of bread or milk? Nope. Uh, biscuits, sausage rolls, anything like that? No, thank you. Right. Is it windy on the bridge, love? Because if it is, I might have to make a few crucial adjustments, you know. It is tonight, but I have to go now. I have to answer 911. I left my heart Bye -bye. in San Francisco. Have a good time. <laughs> Bert Lancaster's a big fan of mine, you know. And you look him up when you get here. Uh-huh, I gotta go. Would you like to join in with me before you go? No, thank you. Right, I'll see you next week then, gorgeous. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, love. Is she gone? I left my heart in San Francisco. Skyview. Hello, is that Gatwick Airport? Yes. Hello, is Richard Walls there, please? Um, this is the Spectator's Gallery. Which part of the airport do you want? Uh, well, I was just told to call Gatwick and, uh, and, and, uh, and he'd be there. You probably need to call, say, um, five zero. That would give you information and probably you might get, because there's no, no such person here. Is, uh, well, is Karen Walls there then, please? No. Mm -hmm. Nope. Are, are, you, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Uh, are there any walls there? No, no walls, no. There are no walls there at all? No. Well, you better get out then before the ceiling collapses. <laughs> there are no walls there. You better get out before the ceiling collapses. Oh, it's a, it's some seems to be like a joke to you, but... Uh... <laughs> a little joke, you know. <laughs> All right, I happen to be on a job now. All right, thank you then. <laughs> little joke, you know. <laughs> there are no walls there. You better get... Oh, please yourself. Caesar's Palace, may I help you? Hi, is that Caesar's Palace? Yeah. Uh, Las Vegas? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're coming over uh, very soon for a holiday. Uh-huh. And I just wondered what's the best way to cheat? To cheat? I'm sorry? The best way to what? I said, I just wondered, what with us having children with us, what's the best way to beat the heat? It's been cloudy and raining in Las Vegas. And if we're playing roulette, is there any special way of making sure we can win? I couldn't tell you that. They have, um, in the gift shop, they yes. have cards that show you how to play. Oh, really? They have these little cards that show you how to play play blackjack. And what's what's the guy called that spins the wheel? What's he called? Dealers. Oh, the dealers. What about if you bribe them? You know, can you win that way? If you bribe them? Yes. What do you play? Blackjack? I played all of. Crap? I'm sorry? Do you play craps? I'm not that bad, to be honest with you. <laughs> A lot of people get caught cheating. Oh, do they? Because, well, because they have cameras. Once they see that you're counting the cards or something, right. well, I mean, they if you, can see that. Well, if Dealers you could tell me the table, that. if you could tell me the table where they haven't got cameras, that would be great. You know, oh, no, they got cameras yeah. everywhere. Oh, re really? On, on every single, on top of every single table. Have they really? Table. Oh, crikey, no. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe we could do it between us, you know, we could split the money. <laughs> But you know what? We can't gamble, though. Oh, you employees can't? And, yeah, Caesars employees can't gamble. Hey, now we, we, we you see, know. I mean, you see, that's what we could do as a team. You know, I could uh, I could play the tables for you. Oh, and no. you could give me the inside information. <laughs> hey, we could make a fortune, love. <laughs> you wouldn't have to sit on the phone all day talking to fruitcakes like me, would you? <laughs> that's true. You know, you could live a life of luxury, couldn't you? Yeah. A life that I'm sure you richly deserve. Uh, you sound like a hot lady to me, if you don't mind me saying so. Oh, really? Well, oh. thank you. You sound like a real, a real dolly. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. No, no, you, you, you really you. do. You really do. Really? Uh, now, oh, absolutely, yeah. Oh. I mean, you sound absolutely okay. gorgeous to me. I, I, I'm getting off work right now. Oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, I thought we could have, we could have made a fortune, you and I. I know. Oh, right. So, listen, when I come down, then who should I ask for? I'm Christine. Christine, the gorgeous one at Caesar's Palace. Exactly. How will I know it's you, Christine? You know my voice, right? So, have you got a big chest? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. But you're absolutely gorgeous. Well, thank you. Yeah, right. I appreciate that. Nice. Uh, okay. You're, you're welcome. Try not to cheat because you you might get caught. So the advice then, really, uh, from you, Christine, is don't get caught. Really. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously, if I get caught, Christine, I'll blame it on you. <laughs> See you, honey. Bye bye. 
You. Yes, hello, is that the limousine company? Yes, it is. Yes, hello, my name is Troy Tempest, personal assistant to Prince. Uh, I'm just wondering if you can help us. Okay. Now, uh, I must stress at this point that money isn't a problem, but uh, Prince, as I'm sure you may have read, is very fussy, is very particular. Mm. Can you help us, basically, is the bottom line? Well, what do you need? Who's the driver going to be? Who's the driver going to be? Yes. Uh, that all depends. When do we need the car? Probably for next Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday? He's arriving in L.A. next Wednesday. Now, have you got have you got a pen at all? I'm sorry, a what? Have you got a pen? A pen, yes. Yes, you can jot down these uh, these do's and don'ts. Can you make sure the driver doesn't talk to Prince? Uh-huh. And also make sure he doesn't make eye contact with Prince. Uh, can you do that? No eye contact. Okay. Uh, we'd also like new carpet in the limo, if that's possible. New carpet in the limo? Yes. Uh, it's got to be purple. Uh, it's got to be purple carpets, obviously. Can that be fixed? What would the billing be on this, sir? Uh, well, like I say, money is, is really not a problem. There's, there's, there's no problem at all there. Can we put it on a credit card? Well, we can. We can deal with that. I mean, I just want to make sure that you can help us, because we've had a few limo companies that aren't that accommodating, you see. Yeah, I understand. The only thing that, you know, we can take care of the no eye contact, and we can also take care of the no talking, but the purple carpet is it's tough. Well, let's run through a few more of the other things. Uh, could you also make sure the driver doesn't go above 50 miles an hour, because uh, Prince gets very nervous, you see. That's fine. He can do that. I know this is all a little weird, but we must insist on this, you see. Uh -huh. uh, could you also make sure the driver doesn't whistle because he hates whistling? Alrighty. Are you getting all this down? Yeah. Right, we'd also like to arrange a couple of girls in the limo. Could you do that? Arrange a couple of girls in the limo? Yes, could you do that for us? Unfortunately, no. And obviously get the limo resprayed purple as well, if that's possible. It's really tough in any of our cars because, you know, it's just... Uh, hold, hold on a second. Right. Hi, this is Gary. You were talking to Larry about a car for Prince or something? Yeah, that's right, yes. I'm just going through a few of the do's and don'ts, uh, basically, see if you can help us. Okay. We, we, I don't know if you got me through a referral or what, but if you did, you probably know we're a very low-key, very discreet company, all corporate work. Yeah, right. Um, uh, I mean, he also insists the driver plays only his music on the in-car stereo, so we'll send over some Prince tapes. When, when, when did you want to do this? Uh, probably sometime next week. Uh, probably Wednesday of next week. Okay, did you, did you want to set up an account uh, with us? Well, no, we pro no, we'd probably pay cash for this. Uh, we don't do any kind of cash runs ever. Yeah, I need a credit card today or tomorrow. I need you to fax over a signature. Okay, that's, that's fine, Chief. There's no problem there. But I just want to run through these do's and don'ts because, as I mentioned to the other guy, you know, we've had some problems with other uh, limo companies. Could you also make sure the driver uh, knows all the words to his songs because he might just start singing and he'd like the driver to join in, you see? We're, we're really, really strictly caught, but we're used to business people sitting in the back of the limousine. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's, that's where Prince is going to sit. He's going to sit in the back. Right, no, no, I'm saying, but sitting there, you know, reading their paper or making their phone calls. To yeah, their I mean, you know, we could be talking big money here. I mean, he's, 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 he's quite prepared to pay anything that, uh, that you want for this. Well, we're not in this just for the money. We're in this to really make our clients happy, but we want yeah, our Yeah, well, I mean, you're going to you're gonna make Prince happy here, Chief, if we get this sorted out. I, I'll tell you what, why don't you give me your number where I can reach you? Sure, no problems there. It's just that if the driver doesn't know the words to the song, Prince could throw a wobbler. All right, what's your number? Sure. Uh, also, for security reasons... Uh, okay, Pri what is your number, Prince, sir? it's very security conscious, you know. Excuse me. Is, you Excuse see, me, sir. What? You give me your telephone number. I'll give you in a minute, but I want to get this no, sorted I need, out. I need you to give me your phone number, and we'll have somebody call you. Now, so the driver can't conceal any hidden weapons, we Excuse must insist... Me, if you can't give me the phone number, I have to hang up the phone. We must insist Goodbye. the driver drives naked. Is that okay? Hello? Hello? Thanks for your time. Thank you. Hello. Uh, Mrs. Caulfield, please. Yes, speaking. Uh, good morning, Andrew Cooper. Sorry? Uh, the council. Oh, right. Uh, well, yes, um, we've uh, received this biffa bin back. You know, we got the biffa bin back. Ah, yes. Um, we're still waiting for payment of this broken lock. Payment of a broken lock? Yes, uh, £32. That's not a bill. Uh, the only bill I've had off you, I've just had it for this month, is the much... The, the lock was broke when it came. I've I'm afraid it wasn't sure it broke before it came. I've reported it three times to you, that lock, because I wanted a new biffer, because all the other units were using it and I couldn't get anything well, in. Well, that's the other thing as well. It's £32 for the lock and £76 for other people using it. You uh, really have got to be kidding. So how soon can you get it down to us? Well, like, I'm not. There's no way I'm paying for a lock. Well, I'm I, mean, I mean, obviously I can understand if you've not received the bill. I'll get it off to you today. Oh, well, what about the, the rubbish that was put in there I pulled out? It hasn't even been put in your bin. 
I've, I've, I've got chucked out of the unit for emptying that bin. Well, calm down, you know, I mean... The, 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 I'm not calming down. £76 for somebody else's waste. Well, that's is. right. Well, that's what it is. But it isn't. I pay for that bin every week and I'm not paying £76 for somebody else's rubbish and I've already taken it out before you received it. Dear death, I've told you, £32 for the lock. That's how much it is. But you just said £76 for rubbish. Well, that's it for... Yes, that's, that's a separate bill, but £32 for the lock. Because, you know, you broke it, didn't you? No. I phoned you three times and all they kept saying to me was, that lock hasn't been working since I got it. Now, if you ask one of your drivers that comes to you... He'll tell you that I've reported it three times. Are you a bit heavy-handed? No, I'm not heavy-handed. It was broke when it came. We got a key and Well, we you're bound to say that, aren't you? You know, I mean... Uh... No, I'm not bound to say that. If you get onto your staff, they kept saying, we'll get back to you, we'll get back to you. I've had my bin where I've had, out of a month, out of different months, I've had two weeks, it's not even been emptied. I've rang you up and told your staff it hasn't been emptied. They did nothing about it. Well, you I'm know, there's nothing I can do, love. It's £32 still, pounds for this lot. I still paid the bill, so I've paid you money that I shouldn't have paid anyway. Well, you know, it's another £32 pounds coming your way. I'm not paying it. It's what do you mean you're not paying it? It's a course if you don't pay it. Well, send me to Score, it'd be nothing new. What do you mean, it'd be nothing new? Well, I don't, score doesn't frighten me because I can take you. I've got some solicitors. What, today. have you broken the law before? No, I haven't broken, broken the law before, but I've got a good solicitor. Well, you're in prison, have you? Anything like oh, that? Oh, yeah, don't be so bloody funny. Well, do I mean, you guys make me laugh? Who the hell do you think you are speaking to me like well, this? I'm just uh, trying to get to the bottom of it, you know. Let's like, get to the bottom of it. You're accusing me of breaking a lot that I haven't broken. Well, of course you've broke it. I've rang you and rang you about that. It looks lot. like you've you, you know, you had a hammer to it or a crowbar or something. Have you got an attitude problem? No, not at all. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of and it. Your attitude right? is absolutely disgusting. I'd like to speak to your superior, to be quite well, honest. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to put you through to him. You get me into all sorts of trouble. Of course I will. This is my job. I have to sort it out and I'm dealing with, the, you know, trouble and causes you don't have like you all the time. you with the attitude that you've just come on this phone with. If you had to deal with the sorts of idiots like you that I have to deal with... I'm an day. idiot, am I? Well, of course you are. There's no doubt about right, that. Right, well, I'll tell you what, I'll put this phone down and I will ring your superior. In fact, I'll write to him. Well, I mean, it's best that we sort it out now, no, don't you think? No, it isn't best we bloody sort it out now, you ignorant little... I Who the hell do you think you're speaking to? I beg your pardon, there's no need to get on your... Never mind, I beg your pardon. No need to get on your high horse. Me on my high horse? You've already got on the phone and got on your high horse. Well, I'm just saying, it's £32. You can do it for pound, or right up your ass, sweetheart. Well, there's no need for that, is there? Goodness gracious. <laughs> Good morning, Bruce Sherwave, class speaking. How can I help you? Oh, all right, Zaya. Um, listen, I want to get a flight sorted out, uh, and I wonder if you could, like, do it for us, yeah? Right, yeah, where's it flying from and to? Well, before I, like, give you all them details, I've just got to know, you're going to be, you know, very discreet about it, aren't you? You know, I don't want no one to know I'm travelling or nothing. You know, it's got to be discreet. Can you sort that out? Yeah, well, what we do is um, we, we put into the reservation your name. Right, and if someone was right. to come through and try and get details, we don't give out that information unless you right. have given us authority. That's good. All right. Well, it's, uh, listen, it's Liam Gallagher from um, Oasis. And uh, we've just had a flight a little while back and it was just like a complete... You know what I mean? Cock up from start to finish, so I don't want no one to know about this one. No press, you know, no TV, no radio, nothing. It's got to be, you know, d discreet as that. Okay, so where's the flying from and to? Got to go to LA. And how many seats are you needing? Just me and our kid. Just two. But two? Yeah. Okay, and are you wanting to travel uh, first class, club class or economy? We want a good flight. We've got a gig and all that, and, you know, we just want to go into it, you know, feeling good and that. And, like, last time, I mean, for God's sake, you know, on the way to Australia and that, it was just like a, a pain from start to finish, you know what I mean? No wonder I became irritated slightly. Do you want me to reserve anything for you? What's your first name? I don't know your name or nothing. Uh, my name's Claire. Oh, Claire. Listen, you will look after us on this flight, won't you? And oh, I won't get no hassle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, I always look after you. Last time, I mean, you know, on the, that flight to Australia, it's a long way, a long time. There was this fella giving me jip all the time. Just like all the time, giving me jip, you know, this and that, you know, giving me just hassle all the time, so... I mean, I ended up smacking him, didn't I, you know? And then, like, this kid was sick all over us, you know? Right, okay, so are you want, uh, do you want me to go ahead and book this for you? So after that, I had to, you know, smack the kid's dad, you know, for, like, not looking after him enough and that. Right, okay, so... And the bloke in front, you know, the bloke sat in front of me, he was like balls, but he tried to comb his hair over his head. So that was, like, completely ridiculous. He deserved a good smack. Right, okay, sorry, it's just that, um, we, would you like me to reserve this for you? We just had enough by this time, so we thought we'd throw a few 
you'd sally around and just like trash the place a bit but you know I mean you'd have done the same thing in our position wouldn't you well I don't know but anyway would you like me to reserve it for you You'll take us on, that's that's great, that, yeah. Right, OK, so if I can have your surname, please. Stick it all in. Uh, can I bring, listen, uh, make it three seats. I've got to bring my manager with me, yeah? Right, so you want three seats. Hold on one second. Put it in the name of Penk. Uh, that's uh, that's Steve Penk at 95.8 capital FM. <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> I've been putting you on mic for absolutely ages and we've been putting you on holes and that and we are absolutely wetting ourselves laughing here. Yeah, that's Steve Penkel pay for it all. <laughs> oh, you pigs, I can't believe that. I'm absolutely shaking. Well, listen, I've got to say, Claire, after all that, I think British Airways deserve to give you a huge pay rise. Oh, yeah. Get under the bus for me. You are wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Claire. Thanks very much. We've Bye. Gotta, we've got to go. Bye. Hilton Paris, bonjour. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, thank you. Is that Paris Hilton? Yes, it is. <laughs> Paris Hilton, you get it? But it's not Paris Hilton, you think? Oh, oh, right, right, it's the hotel Paris Hilton. That's right. Right, not the person, right? No. Okay, well, you put me straight there, haven't you? Uh, and your name is? Celine. Uh, Philip? Celine. Oh, Celine. Yeah. Yes, well, my name is Steve. All right. And, and I'm calling from Manchester in England. Yes. Um, we're just calling you, Celine, to wish you a very happy Christmas. Thanks a lot. Uh, you too. And what will you be doing for Christmas, Celine? Yeah, I'll be there tomorrow, yeah. You'll be working tomorrow? Yes. Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, what, will, what will the rest of the family be doing? Um... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. So yeah. what, what do French people normally have for their Christmas lunch? Oh, my... I don't know in English, so just one second, one second, please. All right, okay, she's lost interest. Frog's legs. <laughs> Snails. Direction, bonjour. Merry Christmas! <laughs> hey, how are you? I'm fine, and you? Well, you sound lovely. What's your name? <laughs> My name is Sabrina. Uh, who, sorry? Sabrina. Oh, that's a lovely name. And uh, what will you be doing for Christmas Day? Um, <laughs> I want to have a, um, a Christmas dinner with my parents. Yes. And you? Uh, well, I'll be uh, getting together with my parents, uh, um, and my sister, uh, <laughs> and obviously all the kids. Oh, yeah. Hopefully. That'll be nice, and we'll play games in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. What games do French people play on Christmas Day? Um, I don't think we play games. On Christmas Day, no, right. just have dinner. Yes, like all the French people. <laughs> yeah, and then what do you do after that? Um, fall asleep. Uh, yes. Great. <laughs> okay then. Well, listen, it's been uh, it's been lovely to speak to you. And uh, is there any chance you could do me a little favour before you go? We would see. Uh, well, <laughs> what what, what, I can do. what we're doing? We're calling you uh, from a radio station in Manchester, England. Yeah. So right now you are broadcasting to the whole of Manchester. So could you wish everybody uh, in Manchester, England, a happy Christmas in French? Is that of possible? Of course. Okay then. Right now? Yes. Je souhaite à toute la ville de Manchester un très bon Noël. Yay! Is it okay? Fantastic you were. <laughs> well, I hope you and your family have a lovely Christmas. Thank you. And, uh, and, you and a happy new year as happy well. Happy new year to you. And thank you for speaking to us. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Happy, happy Christmas. <laughs> Joyeux Noël. Good evening, Caesar's Palace. This is Tracy. Oh, hello there. Is that the gambling place? Yes, it is. That's Caesar's Palace. Yes, it is. Oh, a very, very <laughs> good morning to you. You too. Good evening. Uh, yes, good evening. Yes, it's, <laughs> it's my first time in Las Vegas. Uh, could yes. you give me some advice? Have you got a few minutes you could spare me? Ooh. I just thought I'd give you a ring ring. Uh, how do you play this roulette game? <laughs> Let me give you a roulette and I'll tell you. Hey, you're that? very helpful. Oh, thank God. you. Welcome to America. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Bob Squares can help you. Yes, hello. It's my first time in Las Vegas. I just wondered if you could uh, if you could spare me just a couple of minutes of your time to give me some advice. Okay. How do you play this roulette game? What do you mean, how do you play it? You, you, you get chips, and you get a, everybody has their own color. Right. And then you can play it several ways. You can bet the numbers on the inside. And as I say, you can bet them the numbers straight up, or you can put them on a, on a, on a line that may call it a split, and if it's, it's covering two numbers... Or you can put it on a corner covering four numbers. Right, so how much money, money, money could I win? Well, the, you, as much as you bet. I mean, there's no limit to what you can win or lose. I mean, you know, I guess so, there is to it. 
to what you can lose, but not to what you can win. So the winner takes it all. Well, yeah, right. Mamma or, mia. Yeah, the winner, whatever number hits, and then you can bet the, around that number, you know, with, like I said, corners and splits. Yes, is that and, the best game to play then? Uh, you know, is that where you can win the most money? No, I mean, you can win, the, you can win money in any game. It's, you know, it's just a question of what your preference is. You know, you can bet uh, on the roulette, you can bet odd and even, red or black. You yes. Know, the high numbers or low numbers. Is that the name of the game, then, to win as much as you can? <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say that. Right. Is Fernando still working there? Who? I was told to ask for Fernando. Fernando? I don't know who Fernando is. Oh, what about Chikatita? Who? Is he still working there? Who is that? Well, I must be honest, I've never been to Las Vegas before, but uh, I have a dream of winning, you know, loads of money. So, where exactly is Caesar's Palace? It's on the Strip. It's called by Flamingo and the Strip. Is it anywhere near Waterloo? What is Waterloo? Uh, I thought it was another casino. No, we have nothing by that name. We have the Mirage. It's next to the Mirage. And it's across from Bally's. Right. Well, yeah. I suppose one of us is going to win, aren't we, at the end of the day? It'll either be you or me. That's true. One of us, one, one will win. You or the casino. Have you ever won anything yourself? Well, I don't play, really. I play I around with the slots once in a while. Yes. Is, uh, is Las Vegas a summer night city? It's, um, yeah, it's a very nice city. Right. Oh. Where are you living? Uh, sorry? Where do you live? Uh, well, I'm, I'm from England. I know, I can tell that. Where, do you live in England now? Yes. Is that where you're calling That's me That's where I'm calling from, yes, oh. because uh, we're planning to come over in, in the next few weeks. Are you just coming to visit us because you have your own casinos over there? Well, yeah, but not as good as Las Vegas, obviously. Yeah. Uh, well, this is the entertainment capital of the world here. There's a lot to do. A lot of shows and a lot of, lot of things to see. Are you the Dancing Queen? <laughs> the Dancing Queen, no. No, that, that isn't you, then? No. Oh, no. it's not Bob the Dancing Queen? No, no, that's not that. <laughs> Are you the one with the angel eyes? No. Come on, Bob, lay all your love on me. Come on. All right, well, listen, anyway, it's nice talking to you. I've got to get back to my section here. I just thought I'd pick her, gave me the phone to answer a couple of questions for you, but all I got... All right, thank you for the music, Bob. All right, you are. <laughs> all right, bye. Take a chance on me. <laughs> Cafe Romance is Kurt. Nice to speak to you, to speak to you. Uh-huh. Yes, how may I help you? Please yourself. So, uh, so what's your name? This is Kurt. How can I help you, sir? Kirk, Kirk, that's marvellous, marvellous. Now, the idea of this call is to order a table for four to celebrate my birthday. Well, we don't reserve tables. Right, well, you have 45 seconds to give me all the information I need, starting from now. Who am I speaking to? Uh, it's Bruce, Brucey. Last name? Forsyth. And what is this for, sir? Well, it is for my birthday, and there's me and four of my marvellous friends, and I wondered if you could speak to one of them now, uh, the lovely Jim. Okay. Right, oh, that's great. Super smash. And that was, uh, that was Brucey there, of course. Now, what did you think of him? You know what, sir? We're really busy right now, and I explained to him that we don't take uh, reservations. It's first come, first serve. Right, I see. Uh, we always do enjoy having him on. So, it's, uh, it's Kirk I'm speaking to, isn't it? Yes, and um, like I said, I'm... That's great. So, uh, so, what do you do for a living, Kirk? What's your job there? Sir, this is... I'm not mean to be rude or anything, but I just, if you, what time are you coming in? Are you coming in tonight? Could I just discuss the menu with you? What, what do you need to, we have a 24-hour menu, we serve breakfast, we serve sandwiches, we have uh, steak, prime rib. Well, that's sauces. absolutely right, Kirk, and I've, I've got a copy of the menu here. Now, Kirk, Kirk, can I tell you what you've won? Let me tell you what you've won. It's a chance to talk right now with the wonderful Dale Winton. Hello there, Kirk. How are you coping? This is Christine. Where did you spring from? Um, were you just speaking with someone else? Oh, well, yes, I was just talking to Kirk, and then he disappeared. Don't think he could hack it, poor boy. Listen, we're just organising the restaurant. Can you give a bit of information to my friend Lily? In regards to? All right, what's your name? What's your name, love? Mine is Christine. How hey, Christine. It's Lily here. All right, all right, all right. You're having your restaurant. Do you know in your restaurant? What I want to know is, do you do chip butties? I'm sorry? Do you do chip butties in your restaurant? A buffet? Zero, zero, zero. You don't know what a chip butty is. You know, a load of chips and a load of bread. You know, a proper chip butty. All right, don't worry about that. Do you do, uh, do, you do scouse? What is that? You've never had scouse? No, what is that? Zero, zero. It's all like bleeding burgers over there, isn't it? <laughs> never mind about that. All right, you must do this. Do you do cow's eel and beef dripping? No, we don't do that either. <laughs> zero, 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 zero. No, Carrie. Adding a thousand. All right, well, I'll ask you one more thing. Do you sell boiled Steve Pank from 95.8 Capital FM? I don't believe so. Because we'd all like to have that, believe me, boiled Steve Pank. I've never heard of any of this. Well, could you get it sorted out for us? I, I know, I'm sorry. Oh, dear me. No, I mean, uh, well, we're coming down for the party. Is there any chance you could sort it out for us? I personally cannot help you. Oh, dear. Okay, any of the above items you're looking for. Oh, dear, dear, dear. <laughs> And you are Christine? Yes. Oh, Chris. Well, can we all come round to your house, Christine? You can cook it for us. Oh, please. I don't cook for myself. Oh, don't you? Oh, you're <laughs> no. all the same, you 
Yanks, <laughs> aren't you? Laziest I'm sin. sorry. I don't cook. You never cook? No, not oh, really. Are you married? No. I'm not surprised. <laughs> uh, listen, we've got to go, love. Thanks a lot. Nice to speak okay. to you. Listen, you too. Hey, uh, Christine. Yes. I love you, man. Oh, you too. Palladium Says Door. Yes, hello. Hello, Palladium Says Door. Oh, hello. Can you hear me, Mother? Is that the Palladium? Yes. Yes, hello. It's Stefano Penchino here, the amazing singing cowboy. I'm sure you've heard of me. I can't say that I have, but oh, carry on. Please. right. Well, I was given this number. Yeah. Uh, what to do is to sing country songs whilst perched on a chair, sell a tape to the top of a 90-foot ladder. I'm sure you'll agree. Amazing. And I was just wondering if you'd like to book the act. I think you're on to the wrong place, my friend. You want management later on when they I mean, come in. They're well, onto the stage door at the moment. Well, the London Palladium is the number that I'm after, and I appear to have got that. Yes, you have that. I yes. mean, I know for a fact that Waylon Jennings is seeing the act, and he was uh, he was quite speechless when he saw it. Mm. Have you ever seen the act before? No. No, I, mean, I haven't. I mean, I can honestly say you've never seen anything like it. I see. And your name is? I'm the stage door man. Y yes, your name is? Well, you don't want my name. You want the manager's name when you ring up later on. Right, are you, I mean, are you always this miserable? No, no, I'm not miserable at all. Oh, you sounded a bit cheesed off to me, you know. So, I mean, what's on at the moment, then? No, I'm sorry, I think you're wasting my time. I'm certainly not wasting your time. Yes, you, you are. You're talking to the amazing singing cowboy. Really? So, could you cancel them and put me on instead? Oh, please. What? Spare me, will you? Spare you what? If you want to, if you want to book spare the you palladium, down. you get on to the proper authorities. Yes. Because, you know, have you heard of Rhinestone Cowboy by Glen Campbell? Will you, will you please either get off the line or ring back later when the management are here, because I don't, uh, I don't take bookings, I'm the stage door man. Right, so you're basically no use whatsoever then, is that what you're trying to tell me? If you, if you infer that, yes. Right, because I always do Rhinestone Cowboy, it always brings the house down, you know. And, uh, and I also gargle with custard the greatest hits of Don Williams. That's been known to go down extremely well. So, shall I send you a video down of the act, then? No, not to me, you don't. I don't want you. Pardon? I don't want your video, thank you. If you, if you want the Palladium, get on to the proper people. Because it's quite impressive, I can tell you that for nothing. Oh, please, will you please get off the line? Like a rhinestone cow... Hello? Good morning, Windsor Castle. Yes, yes, I wonder if you can help me, please. Yes, well, is it about visiting the castle? Yeah, could you speak a little louder, please? Is it about visiting the castle? Yeah, but what exactly do you mean? I wanted to know if you wanted to uh, visit the yeah. oh, Can you hang on a second? Yes, yes, I wonder if you can help me, please. Yes? Yeah, could you speak a little louder, please? Yes? Yeah, but what exactly do you mean? Who do you want to speak uh, to? Yeah, oh, can you hang on a second? Yes. yes, yes, I wonder if you can help me, please. Yes. Yeah, could you speak a little louder, please? Who do you want to speak to? Yeah, but what exactly do you mean? Who do you want to speak uh, to? Yeah, oh, can you hang on a second? Yes, yes, I wonder if you can help me, please. <laughs> yeah, she's gone. Section. Yes, I wonder if you can help me at all. Uh, I am British and I'm hoping to do some work in Sweden in the early part of the year. Well, and have you got to work permit I'm wondering, I'm wondering if you could, you know, you could give me some information well, on what you, you need got, to do. Well, you've got to have a job offer first. You've well, got I've, to have a contract of employment well, I've certainly got, oh, Excuse me a second, the phone's going. I just hang oh. on a sec. Sorry about this. Hello? Yes, yes, I'm just on the phone. I'll call you back a couple of minutes. Yeah, all right. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Yeah, sorry, you were saying, big girl. Yes, you've got to have an offer of employment. Well, you I've actually yes. got to have a contract from Sweden. Well, I've certainly got one of those, so I'm ready to go. Yes. Yeah, well, then well, I, I can... Just, I just... What? Then I can send you to application. Oh, hang on a minute. Sorry, the phone's going again. Well, I think you've got to call back later. Hello, you know, I can't... Hello, hello, yes. Just a couple of minutes. I'm just on the line. I'm very busy. Yeah, I'm on the phone to the embassy. No, not Bernard's Club, no. I'll call you back in a couple of minutes. All right, bye. Yeah, sorry, you were saying about I that. I can send you to application form. To application which you form. you return to us filled in together with the contract and two passport Oh, sorry, the phone's going again. I'm sorry about this. What is it? Such a busy day. Hello. Yeah, yeah, just a couple of minutes. I'll get back to you. Yeah, all right. Bye, bye.
So let yeah. me take your name and address. Sorry, you were saying two forms. I said that I can send you two application forms, or if you come to the embassy and yeah. fill in two application forms right. together yeah. with the contract yeah. and two passports. Oh, hang on, sorry, the phone's going again. My can God! You, no. I believe this. Hello, yes. It's, oh, yeah, two minutes, I'll get back to you. Yeah, all right, just give me two minutes. All right, bye. Yeah, I don't think I'd be able to take your name and address you, know, you because your phone seems to be ringing the whole time. Yeah, you have to come such to a busy the embassy. Day. Such a busy day. Yes, so, I know. You have to come to the embassy. Did you say two forms then, did yes. you? Oh, I'm, hang on, the phone's going again. Yeah, I know, come, but I mean, you have to come to the embassy. Hello, yes, yeah, a couple of minutes. Um, two minutes, yeah, back to you in two minutes, right. Yeah, so you were saying then? I was saying, for the third time... How many times have you said this? The third <laughs> Third time? Yes. Right? That you need to fill out two application forms. Oh, I can't believe this. No, but I can't either. I can't have a conversation with you. Hello, uh, hello, yes. This is impossible. What? Has she gone? (laughs) Swedish Embassy? Hello? Yes, you're looking for a cook? A cook. Oh, a cook, yes. Yeah, um... It's an advertisement you've seen. Yes, it's the, it's the advertisement, yes, as I've seen in the paper. Oh, right. Um, look, I'm one of the sisters on one of the units. Right. I'll put you across to the kitchen. Thank you. And you can speak to the chef there. Just hang on, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello? Hello? Can I help you? Yes, I'm calling about the, you know, you're looking for a kook. Yes, we are. Yes. Um, the thing is, the administration's closed now over the weekend. Is it possible you could bring back on Monday morning? Well, it's, uh, it could be a bit difficult. Could you just give me uh, just a few details about the job? I don't, I can't really. No, you have to speak to Miss Kite. She's in on Monday morning. Well, can't you give me any details at all? Is it, it's, you know, full-time, part-time? It's 35 hours, and um, that's as much as I can tell you, really. Well, I'm very good at cooking. But have you got your 706 and 2? Pardon? Have you got your 7061 and 2? Yes, I've certainly got one of those. Right. So, uh, what should I do then? Right, well, if you could ring on Monday morning, is that okay? Yes, Monday morning. And speak to Miss Pyatt. And how soon would you want me? Well, I don't know. You know, we'd have to have an interview and everything. Yes. Okay. Right, well, you know, I am very good at cooking. Right, well, I'm sorry, but you still have to cover an interview anyway. Right. Uh, will I be able to wear one of those masks? Sorry? One of those masks. Because, you know, the cooking smells get on my chest, you see. Hello? Who is that? Sorry, it's Sue Braithwaite. Who's who? Sue Braithwaite. Who? I've just told you! Sue Braithwaite. Is somebody having me on? No, no, you know, everybody says this. My mother, you know that song Johnny Cash made, A Boy Named Sue? Yeah. Well, my mother was a fan of Johnny Cash. I've suffered over the years, believe me. And nobody ever believes it. So, um, is, is there any chance you could get them to call me back? Can I get your telephone number, please? Yes, you can. It's 236... 236... 0103... 0103... Yes. And your name is... Sue Braithwaite. Yeah. Right, then. Okay, then. So, shall we send you an application for if you, As soon as you could, if that would be possible. Yeah. Um, or, if you like, you could ring again Monday. Right. And have a word with uh, Sue Pyatt. And your name is? Mrs. Valentine. Christine. Christine. <laughs> right, Christine. Well, thank you very much for your time. Okay, then. And could you... Uh, will uh, I have to say... What? Hello? Yes? Did you want to say something else? No, did you? No. Right. No. Okay, then. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. What's the nice one about you, Captain? Uh, Michelangelo, please. Michelangelo, in which town, please? Uh, the sewer. The sewer? Is that the name of the town? It is indeed, yes. That's where they live. Thank you. What's the nearest um, area, please? I don't know, because it's kind of shrouded in secrecy. What type of business, please? Crime finders. Yes, I have several listings for Michelangelo, but uh, nothing specific for the sewer area. I have a listing for Michelangelo on the high street in Hampton. No, you could look under Donatello, that might bring it up. Donatello, thank you. Donatello, yes, uh, crime fighters. I have a listing for the Donatello, but uh, this is on du- uh, Duke's Mill, in, on Broadwater Road in Romsey. No, are they all listed together? Because they normally work together as a team. You could look under Master okay. Splinter. 
Thank you, and very pleased. Thank you. I'm going to transfer you to the supervisor for this. Supervisor. Please. Thank you, and very pleased. I'm going to transfer you now. Thank you. How can I help you? <laughs> supervisor. Lovely. Hello. 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 How are you? I'm good. How can I help you? Now, we're looking for Master Splinter. Have you got him listed? Master. Master Splinter. It's called Master Splinter. Master Splinter, yes. Image down, please. The sewer. Definitely called Master Splinter. You definitely called Master Splinter, there's no question about that. I do apologise, as well as thing coming up for Master Splinter. Could this be listed under a different name? It might be listed under Leonardo with a blue bandana. He's In which town, please? He's the leader. Uh, the sewer. <laughs> can you spell the name of the town? I can, again, yes. Uh, T H E S E W E R. The sewer. One moment, please, while I transfer you to my supervisor so for, for further assistance. Right. You're all day at this rate. Take it away, Hawking. Supervisor. <laughs> Swift. Is that your real voice? Yes. Uh, How can I help you? Uh, if you can't. I'd like to speak to Raphael, please. Raphael? Yes. In which town? He's please? the bad boy with the red bandana. In which town? At uh, the sewer. You're looking for Raphael to the sewer? Yes. Okay. Let me just transfer your call to my supervisor. So I don't think you. <laughs> supervisors have they got? How can I help you? Ah, uh, supervisor. Uh, Raphael, please. Raphael. In which town, please? The sewer. In which town is this? He's, well, the sewer. Can you help me spell that? I'll tell you what, I'll spell it for the 48th time. T-H-E-S-E-W-E-R. Thank you for that spelling. I haven't got all day, you know. I've, I've, I've... Goodbye. What? Good morning, it's Fashion Learning Centre. Can I help? Uh, Felix, please. Sorry? Can I speak to Felix, please? We don't have a Felix. Uh, oh. You've got the wrong number. I'm sorry? I think you've got the wrong number. Well, if I've dialed the wrong number, why did you answer it? Hello, is, uh, this is Penky. Is that Penky? No, this is Channel What How to Help You. How can I help you? Uh, yes, this, uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't understand a word you were saying then. It was gibberish. Uh, this is Penky. Uh, am I calling Penky? I'm sorry, sir, and I'm in which department? Yes. Do you speak English? Yes. Oh, lovely. Well, your English is very fine. Uh, and I'm uh, a patronising sod. Now, uh, this, this, my name is Steve Pank. I'm a sorcerer. I'm sorry? Um, sorcerer means you're, you were training the line, that right? Yes. Do you know before when I said your English was fine, uh, I was lying because it's shite. Um, now, uh, you're actually <laughs> live, uh, and we're talking to you like, you're actually saying hello to the British people. Oh, you want to chat to the British people? That's right. Yes. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Thank Christ for that. Uh, thought it was going to be a long and, night. Uh, and uh, yes, I'm Rona Sarsen. Would you mind me to the front desk for you? Um, whatever you said, it's fine by me. Yes. Oh, just have attention to you. Thank you. What was she saying? I think she said she's going to transfer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, hello, hello, yeah. hello, this is Penky. Is that Penky? Hello? Hello? What do you mean? Uh, this is Penky. Am I speaking to Penky? 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 You mean the room guest? Um. Yes! The, this is the name? That's right. Well, I'm I'm Penky, and uh, and are you Penky? Oh, uh, no, here is the, the horizon floor reception. Yes, I know that. Uh, that's the reception, but uh, but you're actually in Penky. So, uh, as I say, this is Penky, <laughs> and I'm calling Penky. <laughs> what, what do you mean, Penky? Uh, what? What do you mean, Penky? 
Uh, Adam, you speak to him. I've lost interest. Whereabouts is your hotel? You, you mean the location? Or? Yeah, the location. It's in Beijing. Beijing. And which part of Beijing is it in? It's, it's in Penki. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what, that's what we thought. So, you're live on the Penki show in Penki. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Anyway, listen, it's been lovely to talk to you. Yeah. Nice to speak to you. What do you mean? I said it's been nice to speak to you. Yeah, okay, me too. And, uh, and, you know, if ever I'm in Penky, uh, Penky will come and lock you up. <laughs> anyway, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Good afternoon, Megan Airlines. Can you put me through to lost property, please? Is that possible? You mean lost and found? Uh, yes, please. Oh, what did you lose? Uh, I've lost me bollocks. Uh huh? Yes, I've just uh, flown in from England and, uh, and I've lost them. Hold on. Let me change for you. Hold on. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Hi, is that uh, JFK Airport? Yes, this is JFK Airport, sir. Great, is that lost and found? No, this is Alitalia Baggage Service. Oh, great, well, maybe you can help me. Um, I I've lost something. What did you lose, sir? Did you lose a bag? No, I've lost me bollocks. Okay, uh, did you, where did you lose it, sir? Uh, what, sir, what are you talking about? What, what is it that you need? I've just flown in from England uh, and I've lost them. Yeah, but this is Terminal 1, sir. Did you arrive at Terminal 1? Yes, I did, yes. What airline? Eh? What airline? What, the airline that you work for? Alitalia? That's the very same. You don't fly from England, sir. Well, no, no, we, we, we flew into, um, where did we fly into? I think we flew into Florida, then we flew up from Florida. Oh, uh, you're completely off, sir. This is Alitalia, JFK, Terminal 1, and I do not go to Florida, sir. Right. Well, okay, can you give me uh, some better information, maybe? I, I still, I don't understand what is it that you lose. Well, I've lost me bullets. What is your bullets? <laughs> A bag? What? Hello? 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 <laughs> I don't know who it is. Hello? That was too farmyard. Wait a second. No, farmyard? Is that deck tight? Yes. Yes. Hi, it's Steve Pank from 95.8 Capital FM. Oh, right. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, what do you want? Who are you? Bob. How are you, Bob? Oh, all right, mate. This is Steve Pank from 95.8 Capital FM. Oh, well, I've heard myself on the radio. You're on the radio right now. Don't get no money. Hey? Don't get no money. Of course you don't. Oh. No. <laughs> See you we got to go. ta -da. Thank you for calling the Los Angeles Zoo, where we make it a great day and a great place for people and animals. Please wait for assistance. Los Angeles Zoo, this is Tony. Uh, is that the monkey man? The monkey man? Yes, is that you? That's, that's gonna be me, hold on. Oh, lovely, thank you. You there? Yes, I'm still here. Are you Tarzan? I'm sorry? You're asking for the monkey man. I'm asking, no, are you Tarzan? I'll tell you what it... <laughs> 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 Sorry, your name is? Tony. Tony. Tony, the, I'll tell you what it is. I've just come out into the back garden. I swear to God there's a bloody monkey in the garden. No! Honest, I tell you, I, honestly. 
I Where do you live? Well, I'm just, I'm, all, I'm, here, I'm, I'm over here on a holiday. Uh, we've come over from the, you know, the United Kingdom. I'm staying with some yeah. friends. I, I'm not quite sure what part of town it is. Um, and uh, there's a monkey. They've gone out for the day and there's a bloody monkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, easy, 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 boy. As you can, you know, no, so, you're playing a joke on me. No, I'm telling you, there's a monkey here. What, big, big, what am I supposed to do? Call the police department. Well, I can't do that. Waste the time. They're busy people. You're wasting my time. No. I'm a busy person. No, don't do such a thing. Don't be silly. What no. do you mean, don't be silly? Now, listen. Now, listen. It's a big black thing with yellow teeth and, and the mad staring eyes. What am I supposed to do with it? Call the police department. <laughs> easy, boy. Easy, easy. Give him a banana. You know what? what? I can't have this conversation with you any longer. I must go back to work. Either call to the police department or deal with it, dude. What? <laughs> what? What do you mean, deal with it? Deal with it. I gotta go. What, what's your name? Bye. Hey! <laughs> we gotta call her back. We gotta, yeah, gotta call her back. Hang on a minute. Let me just call her back. Thank you for calling the Los Angeles Zoo, where we make it a great day and a great place for people and animals. Please wait for assistance. Los Angeles Zoo, this is Tony. Can I help you? Tony, here's the deal. <laughs> Tony, here's the deal. Okay. You saw through us in a matter of seconds. Let me explain what this is. My name is Steve Peng. I'm calling from a radio station in the United Kingdom. I don't think this is a good idea because I'm at work. <laughs> yeah, I know you're at work. But uh, you saw through us in probably about, probably one of the quickest ones ever. What do you reckon, Adam? Ever. She was so quick. <laughs> so, Tony, say hello to your fans in the United Kingdom. Hello, people in the United Kingdom. Right, and what can I do with this monkey? Hey, I already told you what to do with it. You don't really want me to tell you what to do with it at this point. Yeah, go on, tell me, go on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, there he goes, he's off again. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Tony, oh. we, gotta, we gotta go. Well, have a good time. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> easy, boy, easy, easy. Calm down, calm down. Good morning, McLeod, Valley. Uh, yeah, hello. Is that the is that the car wash place? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Super, lovely, smashing. Um, now, how big is your car wash? Well, I actually do it by hand. You do it by hand, right? That's great. Super. Do you enjoy it? Stuff like that. Do I enjoy it? So you're sort of you know keeping busy at the moment and things like that. Uh, well, it's ups and downs, ups and downs. Put it very much so. Right, super. Well, I'll, I'll wish you all the very best of luck with that. Tell me, what's your name, please, sir? Uh, what's this all in relation to? You know, just. I like to, you know, be friendly and call people by their names when, uh, you know, just having having a chat about, you know, before the car wash and stuff. Yeah, right. Well, my name's Gavin. Gavin, right. Okay. Gavin, now, I just wanted to ask you, now, I've got four cars, okay? Yeah. So, you've got it, the time it takes for the board to evolve to say whether it's okay if I bring all four cars down at once to be washed. Right. Um... Is that going to be all right, Gavin? Well, when are you thinking of? I do need an answer from you. Yeah, when are you thinking of? All right, well, sometime early next week. Well, I do three days. Just so long, Gavin. Just so long as I know it's going to be possible at some time. That's great. That's super. OK, OK. Now, Gavin, Gavin, I've got to ask you. Got to hurry on this one. Uh, could I check that my cars are not too big to actually be washed? Right, what have you got? OK, Sound well... like limos? Well, we've got four garages here at home... So, perhaps we can check each one, okay? Yeah. Okay, over to Tony. And one! It's a Bentley. Yeah. And two! It's a Jag. And three! It's a Merc. No. And in number four at the end... Yes, it's my wonderful sit-on lawnmower, and I wonder if you could do that as well. <laughs> is that going to be all right, Gavin? Yeah, yeah. Gavin, this is Steve Pank from 95.8 Capital FM. <laughs> And you're on the show right now, Gavin. Am I? Yeah, you're live to London right now. Yeah. What's your second name, Gavin? Harkness. Gavin Harkness? Yeah. Yeah, oh, all right. Don't get overexcited now, will you, Gavin? No, no, no. I was just amused by uh, when the way you said it. All right, have you got uh, Have you got a message for any of your friends uh, before we go? Um... Yeah, not really, Steve. Well, I don't really know. Oh. I mean, I always listen to you, and I've always thought... Whenever I heard you, I thought... 
As if I found me, I'd, uh, I'd not understand it. You didn't have a clue, did you, Gavin? Well, I thought when you went to the way there, it's, uh, you might have actually caught it on the tape when I said it to the wife, but... Uh... What the hell's he talking about? <laughs> right, Gavin, we've got to go! Yeah? Hey, Gavin! Yeah? I love you, man. OK, have a nice time. Here, Gavin, come with me and let me show you what you could have washed. Hello, Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I speak to Amanda, please? Speaking. I'm sorry, I was just on the other line. There. I'm sorry about that. Right. I'm calling for the bus company. Oh, I yes. I've spoken to uh, to the bus driver who accepts no liability at all for this. He accepts uh, no liability at all. Not, not whatsoever, and uh, and obviously, uh, well, not obviously, but claims that it was your fault. Well, no, because my car was stationary parked on the road. Well, he claims that you pulled out in front of him, love. Sorry? Uh, just try. He, he claims that you pulled out in front of him. The car was stationary and the car was parked. Uh, and obviously what I'm trying to do at this stage is obviously get both sides of the story. Now, I've got his side of the story. Could you once again, I know you've written in with all the details about this, but could you give me the, uh, your side of the story again? Well, no, my car was parked stationary on the road. I mean, my car, how can I hit him if my car's parked outside work? So, hang on a minute, now, this, is a, this is a completely different story to the story he's given me this morning. He claims that you pulled out of a side road. How can I pull out of a side road if I'm not even driving my car? Well, he didn't mention anything about you being stationary. He said that you pulled out of a side road. Well, that's a load of crap. That is an absolute load of My car was parked outside work. And that was the reason that he banged into the side of your car, which obviously makes a great deal more sense, you know, if you're pulling... Well, how can... How can no, well, I'm not pulling out of a road. My car was parked outside work. Uh, John. Yeah, just, just go and get it. Well, put him on the line. I'll tell him. I'll tell him what he did. Right, so I'm going to make it up. He's just, he's just come in now. You've got witnesses to it anyway, so I'm not even arguing with you. Yeah, hello. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, hi, love. Who's that? Bus driver. You know what you did. You pulled out You to know me. what you did. I've been telling my boss here. I don't you. care. I don't care what you've you been telling. Don't I don't... don't... No, no, you shut up now. You, start you lying know to... what you did. Don't you start lying to me. Um, I'm not... Come down here now and I'll tell you what you did. You're going to get me in all sorts of trouble because he's in... I don't care now. what trouble you're getting. I've I don't been... care what trouble... Pulled out to the side road. What? Sure, I did not pull out of any side. My car was parked. Well, you're bound to say that now, aren't you? What do you mean I'm bound to say that? I'm sat in work. How can I be driving my car? Obviously, you don't want to make a claim on your insurance, and you have to. You know, what do you mean? I don't want to claim on my insurance. No way, I'm claiming on my insurance. You it's you not my fault. You want us to claim on our insurance? That's right. I want you to claim on your insurance. Not a minute, love. There was two of us there. No, I'm gonna minute, love me. You were driving your car. I was driving the bus, and you pulled out in front of me. No, 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 no. I'm going I'm gonna minute I'm there. I'm going one minute. What do you think I am? So I'm sorry. Do you want me to tell you what I think you are? What do you, look, I've been driving buses now 15 years. I don't care if you've been driving buses 115 years. How long have you you been can't drive it, can you? Well, you see, you can't drive your car. I, I, no, I can drive my car. That's it, no, but you at can't. At the time, I was not driving my car. My car was parked. You don't think I just go driving into cars willy nilly, do you? What? You don't, you want to say that again? You don't think I just go driving into cars willy nilly, do you? No, well, obviously you can't drive either. You're too old to drive, too thin, I don't know what. Dave, she's lying through her teeth here, honestly, you know, I... No, I'm not lying through my teeth. She really just pulled out in front of me. Uh, excuse me, right, I'll tell you what, come down here and I'll tell you what you did and I'll show you what you did to my car. Well, what are you going to do, ugly face? What, don't, pardon? What did you say then? I said, what are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? I'll do a lot about it, mate. That's what I'll do. But you've got a cheek. You've got a cheek? I've got a cheek. You pulled out in front of me like that. I did not pull out in front of you. Yes, you did. I didn't. I don't, I don't believe this. What's your name? I've argued long enough with I you. I don't care. No, I'm not arguing. I want your name. You ugly old tart. Pardon? Argued with you long enough. Put your boss back on now. I want to speak to him now. Well, you can't... This is disgusting. Put your boss on now. No, you're disgusting. I am... What? This is disgusting. Anyway, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I've never used your bus company because I don't believe it. Oh, you're as rough as a dog's life. I'm as rough... Pardon? Anyway, look, I'm going to have to go. I can't sit here arguing. No, no, no. You can put your boss on now. No, you don't want to speak to an old slapper, are like you? Don't you dare speak to me like that. Speak to Steve Payne instead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe this. <laughs> oh my <Mate>. god! <laughs> you know, when you go, you really go, don't you, Amanda? Oh my god! <laughs> I nearly hit the bus driver the other day. <laughs>
<laughs> you nearly did what? I nearly hit the bus driver the other day. What, slapped him? <laughs> yeah. What, you like? <laughs> he hit me car. Anyway, listen here, you have got to go now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks a lot, Steve. <laughs> See ya. Hello? Hello, this is Mr. Bill Codger, please. Pardon? Hello, this is to Elizabeth Booth, please. Yeah. Is that you? Yeah. This is Paul Green from British Telecom, my love. Yeah. Have you had problems on the line? Yeah, we do, yeah. So we've had a few complaints from that area, so we're having to check out a few lines, you see. Hello? Now, yeah. What, have you got a couple of minutes you could spare me? I'll be very, very quick, as, as quickly as I can. We need to check the VD overhang modules. So well, what it is, you see, this is um, a care call phone. It's a what, love? A care call phone. Right, OK, then. But what I need to do is just check the uh, the grunge vector half metrics readings. So can you can you shout down the phone for me? Just, just so that we can get a reading to make sure that it's not yeah. distorting, you see. Yeah. Yeah, so could you just shout down the phone for me, love? Just just go sort of, yeah! <laughs> yeah! Yeah, a bit louder if you can, love, so we can get a reading on it. Hey! Yeah, just really let it go if, uh, as much as you can so we can get a reading. I've got to shout again. Yeah, as loud as you can. Hey! All right, you get that, do you get that, George? You're getting a reading on that. Yeah, it's just slightly distorting. Now, what we need is we need to find out the distortion ratio. Could you whistle down the phone for me? I can't whistle, love. I'm sorry. Oh, right. Well, if you could just sort of go... Are you having me on? No, no, if you could just sort of make some noise. Are you sure? Absolutely. Here, there's the husband. I know people think it's funny when we do this sort of thing to check the lines. Hello? Yeah, who are you? Are uh, you Mr. Booth? Yes. Yes, a very good morning to you, Mr. Booth. This is uh, Paul Green from Telecom. We're just testing out the line because there's been a few problems in that area. And we just need to check out the VD overhang modules to check for distortion ratios, you know. Could you whistle for me? I can't whistle. I need some unusual noises to be able to check out the distortion ratios, you see. I mean, could you make, like, chicken noises for me or something? A what? Chicken noises. No, this is right on a minute. The telephone engineers don't do that, you know. They can uh, test the line without this. No, I, I need to get some noise down the line. I mean, I can test the line, but I need to get some distortion readings on it, you see. How about that? What are you doing? Tapping on the phone. Yeah, a bit louder if you can, actually, Mr. Boo. That's quite helpful. Yeah, that, that's very helpful, Mr. Boo. Is there, can you knock it a bit more for us? Oh, no, come on. Here, here. Is that all right? That's great. Could you blow down it? No, as, as hard as you can. You know, fill your lungs and blow down it as long as you can so we can get rid. Ready, George? He's going to blow down it now. Right, as, as quickly as you can, Mr. Booth. Well... Oh, are you still there? Yeah. Yes, we won't be here all that long, you know, we want to go out. All oh, right, you've got it on the speakerphone now, have you? Yeah. Right. Well, we can't hear you very well. Could uh, Mrs. Booth come back on the phone so we can get a, a, you know, a close reading on it? No, listen, the engineers don't do all this. Look, listen. Just get on with it, you old bag, and do it. <laughs> Thanks very much. Hello, is that Flo? It is. I was giving your name by Mrs. Briggs. Uh, you run a home help, is that right? Yeah. Uh, well, I, you know, I'm after uh, somebody looking after me, to be honest. Uh, she suggested that I give you a ring. Yeah. Uh, perhaps you could give me a bit of details about yourself. I can't do that because I do it for the services. Sorry? I do it for the services. Well, couldn't you do it on the side, you know, because I need looking after and she suggested you were the best person to call. I'm sorry, no. Well, I pay very well, you know. Uh, I'm sure you do. I mean, be, you know, be cash in the hand, I mean, uh, you know, but I need somebody to look after me because I get very lonely and I need the company, you know. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. It's, it, I, I, I can't. Because I can't cope with all the ironing and the pots. What do you charge normally? I, I don't, because I can't do it on the side. Can't you spare me a few hours a week? A few hours a week? Yes. How do I fit it in with my own help? Is this a wind-up? No, of course it's not. No, I was giving your name by Mrs. Briggs. I thought you might think this, because she says that you work, you know, uh, for somebody else, but I, w I needed somebody, and she suggested I call you. I don't know Mrs. Briggs, though. Oh, well, she certainly knows you. You must have a bit of a reputation, then. So, how often do you think you could come and see me, then? I honestly can't. Where do you live? Sorry? Where do you live? Cornwall. Eh? Hey? I can't go to bloody Cornwall. Well, it's not that far, is it? This is a f***ing wind up. Is this this bloody radio? I beg your pardon? This is that f***ing... Is it bloody radio? Listen, I do insist on walking around the house naked. That wouldn't disturb you, would it? <laughs> no, it certainly wouldn't, but 
I'm not going to bloody Cornwall. I beg your pardon? I'm not going to bloody Cornwall. It's a lovely place at this time of it's year. It's absolutely gorgeous, but if you can get down here, I'll look after you. Right, well, you know, what am I supposed to do then? Because I can't cope with the ironing. You can't? Well, send it down to me then. Right, I mean, how soon do you think you could nip down and see me then? Well, you just send me my fare ticket and I'll come down at any time to see you. And what do you normally cut charge? Well, if it's Cornwall, I'm afraid it'll become very expensive. Will it? It certainly will. All right then, Flo. Well, listen, um, how well do you get on with your son? My son? Yeah. Which one? Anthony. I'll bloody kill him. I'll kill him. I know it. I bloody knew it was either. <laughs> Why? I'll tell you, I'll kill the little f***. Flo? <laughs> what? This is Steve Pank from Q103. I know. I bloody well knew I'll kill the little f***. I will just you wait. And you're on the show at the moment, Flo. Sorry? You're on the show at the moment. Oh, s***. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, the old bleep machine was working overtime there, Flo. Was it? <laughs> Listen, have you got a message for this son of yours? Because I'm sure he'll be listening. Yeah, because he'll need a whole melt by the time we're finished with him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Flo. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Hello? Uh, Mrs. Eileen Burgess, please. Yes, thank you. Mrs. Burgess? Yes? A very good morning to you. Uh, the name is Paul Williams from the Refuse Department. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, regarding the, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the bag that you dumped. Yes? Have you settled up the bill yet? Well, I didn't even have to do anything because I said to the chap down the bottom I'd leave it. Yes, well, it's just come up on the computer this morning. That's the reason that I'm calling you now and I wanted to try and ring you. But when, that, when he was dumped and I went back down, because I went as far as the high street and come back down. Yes, right. And they said it was too far gone, it had gone through the next machine. Right, well, right. I, I, yes, well, obviously because of all that, you know, we had to go through the procedure and it's £150 that yours, I'm afraid. No, but I said to the chap there, I said, no, don't worry. I said, because it's only about seven or eight pounds worth of stuff there. I said, so it's not worth worrying. He said, oh, OK, then it was left to stuff. Oh, well, he said, no, he said that you're in a right state and you need your clothes no. back. Oh, that's what he said. No, no, no. Um, no. I, I, well, I can recall exactly what was in there. There was about three pink... Ta- they're only used for hairdressing towels. Yes, right, I understand. Oh. But, I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, uh, you know, they do get a bit worked up down here and that's why I wanted you to call you myself, you oh, know. Oh, no, no, oh, no. Oh, no, it's terrible. But uh, £150, anyway, you're going to have to pay us, I'm afraid, because it, we've already done it now. So if you... No, get- I wasn't notified. No, 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 that's all wrong because I, the chaps down there know that I go there regularly virtually yes, every other know. day. But it's s- rubbish because even to the dustman, he has so little to pick up here on a Monday. Yes, I know, right. I take it all to the yard. I mean, for a, I mean, I could do it for £145 for no, cash, no. you know. It's not what it, I said there. Yeah, a little envelope, said, you know, for my attention. Yeah, I said, no way. I said, I don't want to pay that. He said, well, I don't blame you. Well, I, I don't blame you myself. You know, £150 is terrible this day and age. But like I said, I could do it for £145 cash. Oh, no, I'd have to take this further because I'm not going to pay that. Because I told the chat there and he knows that I said to him, no, mm. I don't want to him because he turned around and said... What would have to be done if it was yeah. to be collected? You know, so how long have you been later. stupid then? Well, it, this is it. Well, I shall call in there tomorrow as soon as I possibly can. Mm. But when I went back, he said something. So how long have you been stupid then? Pardon? Sorry? I said, when I spoke to the, gen- <coughs> the gentleman there, he's a uh, stubby chap, and I think he comes from Greenhide now. Yeah, a little it. stubby, uh, was he a little stubby fat bloke? That's right, yes, I think yeah. his nephew or someone works was there he, was, well. it, was it the guy with the beard who walked with a limp? He's always there. He's got a list as well. He said to me, now, if this had to be done, he said, I'd have to write out a ticket. Yes. And it'd have to go on to the... I said, oh, I'm not going to go to... No, I can't blame you myself. And I, you I said, know... No way. I know. No way am I going to pay you that money. It's going to put me in a difficult position, uh, but I could do it for £130. And that's my last no, offer. No, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into that yard tomorrow morning. But did he not explain it to you, or are you, are you a little bit uh, well, slow no, because I'm, you're getting no, old, you know? I'm quite all right. I understand. He said to me what the procedures are if yeah. it was wanted to be cleared out. Are you a little bit deaf, though, because you're getting old, if you don't mind me asking? No, I'm not deaf. I'm no, oh, no, not no. old. No, I'm not being salty. Right, a fair point. You know, I, like I say, I have to put both sides to it, you know, because... Hold on a minute. My husband's just come here. Well, you know when I put the, the stuff in the yard and I said to you, I said to the chaps, oh, no, leave it. I'm not worried for it. He said it's cost me £150. I said, I'm not £150. I didn't ask him to clear the tip. Oh. And he said to me, I'm not like this or something. No, I'm not. Yes, I know. Uh, Mrs. Burgess. I'm raving. I'm sorry? I'm absolutely... 
furious with the chat. Furious? I know your voice has gone higher since we started the conversation. Uh, oh, now, probably the, Jim, wouldn't the, you? I know, I know, I know. Uh, the thing is, the guy said to me is that, uh, you know, like I say, this is, this is just him talking, that you're as daft as a brush. I beg your pardon? That's what he said. He's, Right, well, I'm going to call him there tomorrow, and I'll take your word. He said that I'm as daft as a brush. That's what he said. He said okay, as, as th- fair enough. Who are you? As thick as they come, he said. Right, who are you? What is your name? If you don't mind me asking, you know, I mean, how uh, how long have you been stupid? I'm not stupid. Oh, right, fair points, then. Uh, you don't have to jump down my throat. I'm just, uh, you no, know... No, I'm not jumping down your throat. That's what I'm saying, you know. You know my name. I know who he is, but right. I don't know who you well, the are. The thing I don't understand, though, about all of this is that uh, how can you throw a bag of washing on the dock... Now, listen. ...and take your rubbish down to the wa- laundrette? No, 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 no. You listen. Oh, I had several bags of rubbish, right? Yeah. In the boot of the car. With me? Are you there? I'm still here, yes. yes. Yeah, I had pants several off bags of rubbish in the boot of the car. Hmm? And I picked up, now, we come not very far from the North Christ State, and I had just two small bags to one side. But as we come through the estate, the bags, all being the same, were all tied in knots, right? And I picked up the ones which we usually put, because my daughter's changed cars anyway, right? Mm -hmm, But mm. I picked up just that wrong bag. But you must admit, though, it's a bit of a silly thing to do, wasn't it? Yes, all right. At that time, it was a silly thing to do. But oh, I yes. put the cat there and then. I don't want that cleared out. Silly woman, are you? What is in there? I'm not interested in it. Right. Well, listen, when you call back tomorrow, uh, you'd have that. If you could ask for uh, Dave Burgess. Ah, this is the wind-up, isn't it? Well, of course it is. Thank you very much. It took you long enough, Eileen. No, is it? It's Steve Pank from 95.8 Capital FM. I'm not quite sure this is what he thinks. Either. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Bloody tell him. Yeah, we should have been in podding washing. Hey, listen, Eileen. Yes? We love you, baby. <laughs> Cheers. So, newspapers. Hello, is that the evening standards? We are, yes. Yes, a news desk, please. Hello, news desk. Yes, hello, I've been put through by the switchboard. Oh, is yeah. this the number to call if I've got a news story? News story, yeah, news desk here. Right, do you pay for stories? Yes. What would you do, send a reporter down? Ah, uh, well, it depends what the story is. Well, I think it's a story, uh, otherwise I wouldn't have called you. Indeed. Now, I'm sure there's something going on across the road. Right. Well, the bloke across the road plays uh, in a local rock band. Uh-huh. Hello? Uh, yes, so, sorry, have you got the details? Well, you've only said to Oh, sorry. A bloke I mean, uh, plays in a local rock band. Sorry, I didn't know you were taking notes. Uh, he's the piper. Plays the pipes. Go on, yeah. yeah. His son's name is Tom. Yeah. And I think there's some kind of uh, thieving going on, you know, thieving of livestock, to be quite honest with you. Thieving of livestock? Of Where li- is this? What's of, the address? Of livestock. Well, it's it's South London. Yeah, well, give me the address, would you? Well, I, I, at the moment, uh, well, oh, okay. I, I've heard some, uh, you know, I heard some disturbance last night... Uh, looked out of the window and uh, and I know because I could tell he had a pig under his arm. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was laughing. No. Well, as soon as I saw, you know, as I saw, as he saw me, uh, away he ran. And he was the piper's son, you say. And well, his uh, name was Tom. Well, as far as I could tell, uh, and the way it looked to me, yeah. uh, Tom, Tom, the piper's piper son, son stole a pig and away, and away he, he ran. ran. Uh, the pig was eat. And he got beat. No, uh, yeah, no. Tom, Tom was. Yeah, he was beat actually. Yes. Was he? And Tom went howling down the street. Street, yeah. Uh, so, oh, so somebody else has already called. Yes, indeed. So is it? Uh, is it? A, is, is that a story that the Evening Standard can run then? I'm not so sure if it is really. No. Uh, second page. Not really. Business pages. I don't think so. Really. Sports pages. I don't think it's really an Evening Standard news story as such. Pull out supplement on a Friday? <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, thanks for ringing us. Uh, you're very welcome. All uh, right. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye. Oh, she's gone. Thank you. Hello? Hey, Dad, it's me. Hello, me. Can you talk? Yeah, why? Right. Uh, Dad, I've crashed my car. I've Where? I've crashed his... On Osborne Street, I bumped into a, um, a bin, binman wagon thing. Yeah. And all the binmen are going mad at me. Why? Because they're saying it's all my fault. What happened? I was coming out of the top of John Street, and then I looked both ways, and then I, I came out, and they just appeared out of nowhere, and I've gone into the side of it, and my car's a mess. Well, you need to just 
calm down. Just ignore what they're saying to you. Fuck off! And they're being really horrible. Look, can you hear them? Gotta cost a fortune, this. And they're saying it's not my fault, and I don't know what to do. I'll just, just tell him, tell him just to take the details. Of the, the I've got the details. Put your father on. Uh, hello? What? Hello? Hello? Oh, uh, this is Nobby here. Who? Uh, Nobby. Uh, my, Nobby who? My boss is going to go crazy here. She's, that, uh, doesn't, that doesn't really concern me at the moment, mate. All I'm saying, yeah, all I'm saying to you, out, right? She pulled out of this side road. Uh, right, well, that's, that's not an issue at the moment, is it? Right? Obviously, something's happened. There's been an accident, and you're upsetting my daughter by the way you're talking to well, her. She's right? upsetting me, you know. I mean, I'm going to be... Well, right, I don't really care about right her trouble, upsetting you. Right trouble over this. I mean, she's stupid, this girl, or what? You know, no, I've told you, mate. Don't talk to me like that. How long, right? how long she had a license for? It's an accident, for? all right. Well, it's so, well, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I mean, I, I, I could lose my job over this. Why would you do that? Because of the accident, you know, and obviously all the damage to the bin wagon. I mean, it's paused off the road for the day, this now. Well, that's unfortunate. Accidents happen, don't they? So you have to treat it calmly. Do not swear and abuse my daughter. I'm not, I'm not swearing. I'm, well, not, I'm telling you. I'm not and swearing. And calm yourself down, then. She's stupid, she is. I mean, you're absolutely stupid. Pulling out of a side road like that. I'll be taking this matter further, let me tell you. Well, you tell me what you like, mate. I'm not concerned about you. Well, like, like father, like daughter, obviously. Well, uh, I don't give a f about what you think. Yeah, At the end of the day. You sound a bit stupid as well on the phone. So All right, well, tell me to get some police down there to you, do you? Telling me to calm down? I'm telling you to calm down. Who do you think you're talking to? Obviously a bed. Uh, well, I, I, was, I was thinking exactly the same, if not worse, to be honest. The only person who's a bed is would appear to be you, so go away. I'm not going to talk to you. I'll put your daughter back on. Hang a minute. Hello? Just ignore him altogether, Jimmy. Just have nothing to do with him. He's a pillock. I know. Just take all the details of the VIN wagon, right? And the driver. Make sure you get the driver's details. Tell that stupid father of yours to get down here. Dad. If I, if I come down there and up on his back, I'm telling him, you can tell him not to stay away. Just, have, just, ignore, just ignore him. He's obviously a n He's all lip. What shall I do about my car? Lippy, that father. Lippy. And then just yeah, push, him, push, him sure, push him back on. Push him back on. Hello? I'll tell you what. Get, get out, just get off the, my daughter's phone now. Right. Do you, do you want the don't want to talk to you, just go away. I'll give you the details of the bin wagon. No, you don't need to, I'm not, I'm not even going to listen to you, mate. Just get off this phone. Right, okay, uh, well, uh, the registration number is... Just get off the phone, mate, I'm not going to talk to you. Right, I'll just hand you back to your daughter then, hang on a minute. Dad, just, I can't, I can't write, my hands are shaking. Will you just take the details down for me, I'll ring you back in a bit. No, I'm not going to talk to him, he's a pillock. Tell him he's so a unless, moron, tell him he's a moron, love. So unless you calm down, no. you, you, you give him nothing. He's a moron, he is. Yeah. Go away. Anyway, uh, uh, Mr. Ratledge, Mr. Ratledge. Just trying to go, trying to go away. I'm not going to talk to him. Yeah, Mr. Just Ratledge. Anyway, uh, what you need to do, uh, John, is you need to uh, contact Steve Penk. Oh, I see. <laughs> Absolute get. <laughs> <laughs> You absolute sod. <laughs> I really, 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 really am. Look, I haven't sworn at you. Do you know, John, <laughs> uh, she said, she said that this is payback time for all those times you've wound up. <laughs> Absolutely marvellous. I love it. I love it. I like it. Bye, love. Oh, Hang on, he's not putting his phone down. I can't believe it. <laughs> 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 Hello? Hello? Steve, you still here listening. Anyway, listen, that's it, Gemma. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think you got him hot, line and sinker. Well and truly. All right, see you, Gemma. Thanks a lot, mate. Bye. Hello. Get the Frankie Vaughan off now. Right. Yeah, hello. Hello. Yeah, hello. Uh, who am I talking to, please? Terry. Terry. Hello, Terry. It's uh, Steve calling uh, all the way from England. Okay. Right, Terry. Uh, yes, you sound very underwhelmed. The reason I'm calling is that uh, I'm originally from Stockport in England, and I'm led to believe uh, you're in Stockport, South Australia. Well, that's true. Great! That's great, then. Well, I'm just interested to know what it's like, Terry. Ah, uh, just a little country town. 
Uh, Cherry, I, I, I'm not being aware of the time difference. I haven't woken you up, have I? Well, it is midnight. Midnight, right. <laughs> okay. Well, I apologise for that, Cherry. Um, <laughs> I'm really sorry. Uh, you're not working tomorrow morning, are you, Terry? Uh, yeah. All oh, right. <laughs> right. So it's midnight, and you get woken up by this fruitcake coming from England. Uh, yep. I suppose it's not really a good time to talk right now, is it, Terry? Well, not really, no. All oh, right. Uh, well, I won't keep you long. Right, how, yeah. f how far are you from the coast? About 30 kilometres. About 30 kilometres. Right, it's just that I run um, uh, a fishing fleet uh, in Stockport, and uh, I just wondered if it's, if it's, you know, if, it, if it's anything like that. No, not at all. Stockport used to be a um, stop on the way between the ocean and the mines, and it used to be a, uh, a stop-off point for the stock. Right. So if you, were, if you had your bullock wagon, if you had it would your... be an overnight stop for your bullocks. It would be an overnight stop for your bullocks? Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, how, uh, how is it you ended up there? Because you were taking your bullocks somewhere, were you? We don't have bullocks in, uh, in Australia anymore. Oh, right. What's happened to them? Well, we got cars instead. Right. <laughs> You've kind of lost me, really, Terry. Um, right, so you're using, uh, bullocks to get around on, um, instead of cars? Yeah. Right. Well, it sounds, uh, absolutely dreadful where you live, to be honest with you, Terry. Um, why have, uh, why have you stayed there for so long? It's a nice place to live. Oh, it's a nice place to live, right. Uh, well, not from this side of the water, it isn't. Um, right, okay, well, listen, Terry, it's been, it's been nice to, uh, to speak to you. I, I'm, uh, I'm sorry we woke you up. Who's we? Who's, oh, no, it's a figure of speech. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, Terry, thanks very much. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Chester good morning. Oh, it's a lovely day, isn't it's it? Smashing. Yes. yes. Are you open today? We certainly are, yes. Yeah. Have you seen my donkey anywhere? Your what? Yeah, how much exactly is it to get in? <laughs> it's £8.50 for adults. Oh, Children. it's a lovely day, isn't it? It is. Yes, are you open today? We are. Have you seen my donkey anywhere? Chester Zoo, good morning. Yeah, how much exactly is it to get in? It's £8.50 for adults. Children aged 3 to 15 are £6.00. And the trees are free. Oh, it's a lovely day, isn't it? It's a lovely day, yes. Yes, are you open today? We certainly are. Have you seen my donkey anywhere? Oh, it's a lovely day, isn't it? <laughs> Director Inquiries, can I help you? Uh, yes, hello. Have you got the number for Director Inquiries, please? 192. 192. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. I know. Uh, hello there. This is uh, Sylvester Stallone here. Uh, would it be okay to uh, put me through to uh, Mr. Clinton, please? This guy's looking like in advance. Uh, yeah, hello there. I wondered if uh, you could put me through to the President's Secretary. This is uh, Sylvester Stallone here. Uh, this is the President's scheduling office. How may I help you? All right, that's good, that's good. You see, uh, I just wondered if, I, first of all, I'm sorry that I didn't call on my direct number first, uh, which the President gave me. That just got wiped off my computer, so uh, I come through this way. What it is, I'm trying to organize a kind of super rock concert uh, for my partner Jennifer. We have an anniversary coming up quite soon, and uh, I wondered if the President might be able to come along to this just to make it, you know, extra special for her. Right. Well, um, if I could ask you to please send us a fax, I'll be happy to give you our direct fax. Right, I'll do that. I'll, I'll send you the details because, you know, it's going to be an amazing concert. I got uh, Phil Collins on the drums. Uh, we've got Slash uh, on the guitar. Uh, we've got uh, Mick Jagger and David Bowie on vocals. And uh, we would like to kind of have, you know, maybe the president would like to just make it real special and real good by appearing and uh, playing the saxophone so well as he does. Uh, yes, um, it certainly is possible, but we do have to have your request in writing. If I can give you a fax number and you send us a right. note. Tell me, is the president there right now? Um, not available right now, Is no. he in at the moment? Would you, uh, would you be able to ask him if he'd uh, accept uh, a call from me? Because... Uh, 
we're pretty close buddies at the end of the day, you know. Yeah. I'm sure you wouldn't mind. Yeah, I understand. Well, if you'd like to give me a phone number, I'll pass that message along. And then if you would take our fax number, we could go both directions on this. Okay, so what you want me to do is just uh, get a little con, a drum dirt, dash on the door, and uh, the fan, and uh, would that be it? Right. Because uh, it's going to be an amazing concert, this. Uh, you know, we've got Bernard Manning as the compare. We've got all the top names here. Yeah, right. If, uh, if the president comes and makes it extra, you know, special, it's going to, you know, get me out of a lot of trouble. Because, you know, it's, uh, I kind of had a few dates I shouldn't have with, uh, you know, Mavis Riley from Carnation Street over there. So uh, this will get me out of a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you for calling. We're going to have the concert at Leicester Square in London and uh, tell the president to look out for Mr. Steve Pank, who's going to pay him on the night. $18 in a little brown envelope, and that'll be just right. Okay, thank you. Hey, God bless you. Miami Steve, I'm calling from England, and yeah. these, this is our 12 calls of Christmas. We're just calling around the world to wish people in different countries a very happy Christmas. Who am I speaking to, please? This is not important things. You can tell me what what do you uh, what do I want? want yes, I'll finish. Uh, what's the yes. matter with you? Right. And uh, you called us. What's the matter with me? Well, that's a long story. Um, right, well, I only wanted your name just to be pleasant, that's all. But if, uh, you know, if it's putting you out, you know, forget it. Oh, yeah. Christmas. Yes, uh, that's uh, Christmas, yeah, you know. Merry Christmas. Um, I'm sorry, this is Merry uh, Christmas. Uh, a company, so... Yes. Uh, I, I'm now, I'm working now, so... Yes, uh, yes, I, uh, 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 yes, I know you are. I know you're working now. Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hard work this is. Yeah, I know you're working, but I was just calling just to wish you a very happy Christmas. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome, you're very welcome. Could you wish everybody in Manchester, England, a very happy Christmas in Chinese? Oh, uh, yes, I will wish you. Could you do that? In Chinese? Yes, please. Uh, please wait a moment, sorry. Okay, thank First you. Caller, 1930 Jazz Bar. Pulling teeth? Call somebody, I'll be trying to wish you a very happy Christmas. You got all this nonsense. Uh, uh, excuse me? Hello? Hello, uh, sorry to have a couple waiting, sir. Yes, uh, uh, thank you for keeping me on hold for five minutes. I'm sorry, uh, I first, uh, must, uh, told you that, uh, this is Oriental Riverside Hotel. Yes, I'm just a fool, you know, yeah. I know where I'm calling. This yeah. is Shanghai. In Shanghai? Yes, yes, Hello? I know, yes. China. Yeah, I'll tell you what, let's keep yeah. talking at the same time again. <laughs> it's extraordinary. Um, all I want you to do, if it isn't asking too much trouble, uh, is to wish everybody uh, in Manchester, England, a very happy Christmas in Chinese. Say it in Chinese? Say it in Chinese, yes. Yeah, Merry Christmas in Chinese. Yes. Uh, 圣诞快乐. Hey! It only took us two and a half hours to get there, didn't it? Right, well, well nice to speak to you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. And I hope you have a lovely, okay. lovely Christmas. Ah, uh, me too. All right, well, thank you very much. Ah, uh, thank you. You have a lovely Christmas. Ah, uh, thank you. And lots of love to you and your family. Okay, thank you. All right then. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. New York, Milker speaking. Good morning. Uh, very good morning to you. Uh, this is uh, Lord Penk calling from Manchester, England. Yes. Uh, did they say I'd be calling? I'm sorry? Did you receive the fax? Can you hold for one moment, please? You fax directly to the front desk or to the operator, sir. Right. Well, actually, if you could tell me a little bit about the presidential suite, I'd be most grateful. Can you hold for one moment, please? Thank you. Hi, thank you very much for your patience. This is Lucian. I'm the manager on duty tonight. Uh, hi, this is Lord Peng calling from Manchester, England. Yes, sir. Uh, how are you? Uh, I'm just interested in the uh, presidential suite and some details about it, if that's possible. Well, in terms of uh, suites in that particular caliber, uh, do you have any specific dates for us, Richard? Uh, it might be the back end of next week. I mean, you know, obviously money is, is not a problem. I, I just simply want the best, you know. Uh-huh, I understand. Let's see what I have. As far as suites of Dawn along those lines are concerned, I think it might be the suites that we have on the 51st floor. They're at the rate of 15,000. There's two of them. One faces north, the other one faces south. 
Right. Is that 15,000 a night? Yes, sir. Right, yes. Yeah, let's see. And what do I get for the 15,000 pounds a night? Uh, and let me see, bear with me one moment. Well, the rooms are pretty spacious, first of all. Huge bath, it's a fantastic bath. One of the, the, the bathrooms have views, literally windows, uh, right there. One of them has a view of Central Park. Nice. And uh, they have terraces uh, and fireplaces as well. A huge living room. Uh, one bedroom each, however, and very high ceilings. And it's very ornate. Uh, this is... Uh, these rooms have been completely redone. They were reopened about three months ago. They have uh, widescreen plasma TVs and state-of-the-art stereo equipment. Now, as far as reserving them, you'd have to go directly through the sales office, however, or the reservations manager. Right. But at this point, I do have them available, let's say, for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of next well, week. Well, that's, that's when we're thinking of flying in. Uh, is it possible to get some, because uh, I, I, I'm also a, a, a gymnast, uh, is it possible to get some parallel bars in there? No, sir. We don't have any. Of All right. To do that. Could you um, could you get them in? <laughs> no, sir. Well, I don't think that would be applicable. That sports equipment of that nature wouldn't really be a good idea. You don't have enough space on top. Well, of the that. fifteen thousand a night. I mean, for heaven's sake. Um, well, the, the rate doesn't mean that it can accommodate uh, parallel bars, sir. It's kind of a different story. You know, the ceilings are not that high. I mean, when you're in parallel bar, I mean, you're looking at 20-foot ceilings, maybe. Uh, can I take a note of your name, please? My name is Lucian. L-U-C-I-E-N. Lucian, you've been very, very helpful. Can I just give you uh, just a, a few things that, that I'd need in the room? Well, sir, uh, what that, we need to do that is you we, could, need, we need um, to I'm talking, it. I'm talking. That you, could, um, that you could check with somebody to make sure that's okay. Okay. What would you like to have in the room that we can look into? First? Um, well, I, I, I'd be very grateful if you could look into the parallel bars for me. Okay, well, sir. I will confirm this for you. Uh, plate of sausage rolls. Sausage rolls. Is that what you said, sir? Indeed. Okay. Is there anything else, sir? 200 packets of Jaffa cakes. <laughs> 200 packets of chocolate? Of uh, Jaffa cakes. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, a table tennis table and a donkey. Very well. I'll relay this information to the reservations department and they'll look into it and get back to you. You've, I tell you, you've been so helpful, Lucian. You really have. I'll leave it there. One right, one right. How can I help you? Uh, King Louis, please. King Louis, in which town, please? Uh, the jungle. Sorry, we're looking for King Louis in the jungle. Please. One moment, please. Nothing coming up. Let me transfer you for further assistance. Please stand the line. All right. Well, there's another no there's another name if uh, if it, if it helps at all. Yes. What's the other name? Uh, Shere Khan. Shere Khan. Shere Khan. Yes. One moment. Thank you. In which town is this? The jungle. One moment, please. Nothing for that name again in the jungle. Oh, I'm right. I'm doing our search for that. So nothing, for Khan. so nothing for King Louis or Shere Khan in the jungle? No. No. You could try for Baloo. Hello? Hello, Big Brother. Yes, hello. Um, it's Chris. Um, first of all, I, I just wanted to say thank you once again for the opportunity of the um, experience, but I've begun to dwell on, on what's happened to me and um, I have some doubts. Really? What doubts do you have? That I could have been genuinely voted for eviction so quickly. Mm. I believe that the public actually found me very entertaining and... I think you're right. So why should it be that I was evicted so soon? I haven't got a clue. That's just up to the general public. Well, I'm not too sure that it is. I believe that maybe some people within the production company decided that maybe I should leave so it was fixed. No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, that's, that foliage sculpture that Jack D did, what I could have done far better than that. Mm, absolutely. But the thing is, I... It's certainly not rigged by the production company. It is left totally up to the general public who is voted out. 
Okay, okay, so please, okay. Please don't um, sort of spend a lot of time thinking about it. And it's certainly nothing personal that the general public phone in and say, yes, vote them out. Well, thank you for that that counselling. Also, which has... you raise a lot of money for comic relief. Yes, yes, and, and we should all. that's a fantastic thing. Good, good. Will you all be in touch afterwards? Well, yes, indeed, indeed, but I, I was wondering if perhaps I have not been on the rejectionalized side of the sculpture which resulted in the available voting which caused the past remembrances to be scrutinized. I mean, would you agree with that? Yes, well, I, I, really, I really don't think you should think too much about it. I won't, I promise. Um, please don't. I will, I, in fact, I've written a poem to cancel. Really? Yes, to cancel myself. Really? Could you read it to me? Yes, okay. Oh, fantastic. Big Brother House, oh dear, oh dear. I was in there, but now I'm not, I'm here. Thank you for your counselling. Would no there be problem. any chance that I could maybe just go back in just for one last day just to see everyone again and say hello? Oh, that's certainly not up to me, I'm afraid. Put um, a word in for me. I'll try. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Thank you very much for calling. Hello, Patricia. Hello, I'm calling about the Office Juniors job you got advertised. Right, well, you need to talk to Mr. Bridge and he's not in at the moment. Well, come to talk to you. Pardon? Eh? Pardon? I said, couldn't you tell me about the job? Well, I don't know much about it. Well, but... couldn't you tell me what you know? I don't know anything about it, really. Well, you're a frat lot of use, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> Well, is it full-time or part-time? I think it would be full-time, but I think it would be. And is it sort of general office duties, is it? Well, as far as I know, but there again, I don't know for certain. Can Mr. Bridge ring you back when um, he gets in? Yeah, it's a bit difficult at the moment, because I'm all over the place today, you see. Well, can you phone him back, then? Well, I'll certainly try, yeah. Um, it, it doesn't mention if it's, um, if it's, you know, three-litre or two-litre. Oh, I don't know. The car, you know. The car? I thought we were talking about an office junior. Yes. Well, I got a car at the last place. Sorry? I said well, I got you a... You don't get a car with this one. Don't I? No. Well, that's a little bit me, isn't it? Yes. Um, right then, how many weeks off do I get? Oh, I don't know. Can you phone Mr. Bridge back? Ask for Mr. Bridge when you phone back. Right then. All right. Well, should I send my CV down? Well, I think this is what the advert said, wasn't it? Did it? Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure. Right. All right. And, uh, and what else would you like me to do? I don't know. If you can ring Mr. Bridge back. Well, what are you doing answering the phone, woman? Pardon? What are you doing answering the phone if you don't know anything? Hello? <laughs> it isn't something I said, is it? Information touristic, buongiorno. Information touristic, buongiorno. Si? Si? Mi dica. Vervita! Pronto? Pronto! Pronto? Pronto? Si! Si! Oh, she's had enough, thank you. Good morning, thank you for calling Do It All. How can I help you? Hi, I wonder if you can help me. Yep. On a bit of a dilemma here, we've been doing a bit of structural work and the RSJ has shifted and all we've got is a bit of 2 by 4 What do you reckon we should do? Oh, uh, we don't, uh, we, we don't sort of get involved in things like that. Um, RSJ is a, is a building thing. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, they didn't do what I told them. Um, I can't really advise you on that because we're not professional builders. What should I do then? Uh, the only thing I can th think of is, is yellow pages and try to find a builder in the yellow pages. Can't you help me? I'm really stuck here. Well, <laughs> we're not professional builders. I don't know what the circumstances are. Um, is there anybody there that can help me? Well, no, because we're not builders. It, 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 it's not a sort of... <laughs> we're, we're, we're a DIY store. Oh, God's sake, like area! RSJ's a construction. The spirit level just isn't right. Dave, pass me that router. Yeah. RSJ, is, is, it's a building thing. It's, it's not really, we're not knowledgeable on that. I thought you are the expert. Well, no, no, we're not the experts. We are DIY people. RSJ's are not DIY. RSJ's is a structural thing. Which well, is get your finger building. out then. <laughs> oh, 
Say shells? Yes. Oh, great. I've got the right number. Uh, who am I talking <laughs> to? <laughs> Christopher. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry? Christopher. Uh, Christopher. Yes. Could you just hold it? Hang on a moment. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Right. Um, oh, can you just hang on just a moment? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Could you uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your lovely hotel? Okay, my hotel. Yes. You will see the photo on uh, on uh, uh, the mail or? I'm sorry. Do they allow you to pick up the phone every day? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um. Can you? Uh, <laughs> can you just hang on a moment? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Now, uh, you were telling me about the hotel. The hotel? Yes. It, what, is it four or five stars? Three star. Three star. Right. Yes. Well, that will explain why, uh, why you're picking up the phone then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what is it that you do? What do you personally do there? I'm the receptionist. You're the receptionist? Yes. Right. Um, oh, can you just hold on just a moment? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and what's the pool area like? In the hotel there are two swimming pools. Yes, right. There's the one big and the small one. Now how deep is it in the deep end? In deep end. How many feet is the water? Okay, 1.5. 1.5. Excellent. Uh, yes. Right. Now, how do I find the hotel? Where is it? My hotel is in the south of Mai. Yes. At Belaza. Right. Opposite the Plantation Club Hotel. Oh, lovely. Well, I was hoping it was. What's the weather like? Weather. Today it's rainy. Oh, rainy? Rainy. Oh, I, well, yes. I don't want to come there then, do I? It's because it's rainy here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't want to go from the rain to the rain, do I? Um, <laughs> oh, can you just hang on just a moment? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Hello? Yes? Repeat the question again. Uh, what are you wearing? Short and vest. Oh, are you? Ah, oh, nice. Uh, now, oh, can you just hang on just a moment? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Decorations to put up and things to buy and things to make and Christmas cards to send. So many things. I want to get off. Wait, wait, Jay. It looks like you have pencil and paper. Mm. Mm. What are you doing? Hmm? I have to go. 